Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is tree. T-R-E-E. Really? You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! When did he get out? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! Well, here I am again, starting off the new year with a new sponsor. Now, before we go any further, I want everybody to run down to the corner and say hello to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. As long as you're down there, you might as well buy one. (laughs) George Fenneman, who's first to take a whack at the $1,000 tonight? A bachelor and a spinster, Groucho, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, Miss Mary Hopkins and Mr. Oscar Lind. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss uh, Hopkins, uh, Mary Hopkins. That's right. Uh, you're a spinster? Yes, I am. Wait, where, where are you from, Mary? Well, originally from Newark, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Why'd you leave there? Weren't there any eligible bachelors in Newark? <laughs> <laughs> no, I came out to California with the Prudential Insurance Company. Well, that's a good policy to follow, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the best. <laughs> Os- Oscar Lind, is that right? That's right. Related to Jenny Lind? She's my sister. <laughs> I have a sister by the name. But it's not, not the other, Jenny. No, no. You're a bachelor, and uh, where are you from, Batch? Well, I'm originally from Chicago. Why'd you leave? Weren't there any eligible spinsters there? Oh, yes, there were. Mm-hmm. That's why I left. <laughs> how, how old are you? I'm 51. 51, yeah. And Miss uh, Hopkins? Uh... Uh, close to 40. <laughs> How close, Mary? <laughs> oh, I still have a couple of years to go. Which way? <laughs> right way. <right. laughs> I can't understand a girl as pretty as you not being married. Oh, great job. <laughs> well, you're a very attractive couple. Now, let's see what you have in common. Uh, Miss uh, Hopkins, which do you prefer, the gay sporting type or the quiet, shy, unconscious type? <laughs> well, I think I like a little of each. Oscar, are you gay, debonair, and witty? No, not exactly. Well, are you shy, quiet, and unconscious? Oh, I think I'm a little of each. Well, that's a nice combination, huh? He's half witty and half unconscious. (laughs) Oscar, I trapped you into that. You can forget the whole thing. Let's pretend it never happened. Uh Well, I always think it's fair that a couple about to be married should know each other's bad habits. Uh, What what about the bad habits? Do you have any bad habits, Oscar? I snore a little. How do you know you snore? That's That's what they tell me. That's what they tell you, huh? Oscar, who tells you that? My family. Your family? Yeah. You mean Jenny Lynn comes in and tells you what's happening? Where does, uh, where does Jenny Lynn live? Oh, in Englewood. Mm-hmm. And you snore clear across town, huh? <laughs> Well, you're both good kids, and inasmuch as you'll soon be married in just one minute... You're going to have a chance to make $1,000. And now, here is news about the first showing of the greatest new model which has ever borne the name DeSoto. It will be on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers on Tuesday, January 10th. A new model in every sense of the word, because it is new from bumper to bumper. The smart-looking full-width front grille gives this car a look of power, which its high-compression engine so justly deserves. Its graceful new back has sleek new lines, new fenders that have a graceful sweep to them that will serve to make DeSoto the car that catches the eye of everyone who appreciates beauty of line and clean, modern design. 
Yet, with all its style advantages, here is a practical car. A car that delivers such operating economy that it will truly delight you. It has more visibility in its big rear window, which has also been lowered for comfortable vision. Bigger brakes with less pedal pressure. A truly roomy trunk. Chair-high seats. Wide, wide doors. And, of course, being a DeSoto, it lets you drive without shifting. Tuesday, January 10th, is the day to see it. The first day. Don't miss the unveiling which takes place at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, let's see if you two are going to be our winning couple and get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that $20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's going on out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected current popular tunes as your category. Is that right? Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to bet? Ten. Jerry Fielding will play. You give me the name of the song. Uh, gentle people. Come on. Out the whole, the whole title now. Dear hearts and Dear gentle people. Dear hearts and gentle people. Is right. yeah, they're on their way. They have $30, Groucho. Now, you've got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $30 will you try? Twenty. What is the name of this song? Don't cry, Joe. is correct. They're climbing, Rocho. They have $50. All right, you're climbing. You got $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 will you try? 30, 40. Talk up. Remember, you're going to be married soon, 40. so you'll have to start talking to each other. 40. You're going to try $40. Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. What is it? Come on, take a stab. Nothing? Oh. Well, I'm sorry. It's slipping around. Oh, yes. They now have $10. That's a shame. You still got a chance with the big money. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 10 are you going to go for? Five. Five? Is that all right with you, Oscar? Oscar, stop dreaming of Jenny Lind here. (laughs) (laughs) We'll bet the 10. Let's see if you can identify this song. I can dream, can I, is correct. And they wind up with $20. You wound up with 20 bucks. Thanks and good luck from your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away. You still have a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still tree. I know it, George. Perhaps the next couple will say it, though. We asked for some housewives who lived in Hollywood, and just before we went on the air, Mrs. Etta Turkle was selected to be on the show. Her partner is the Honorable Gordon L. McDonough. Member of the United States House of Representatives. And here they are, folks, meet Groucho Marx. Oh, welcome to You Bet Your Life and a Happy New Year. And if one of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. Honorable Gordon L. McDonough, eh? You're, you're a congressman. Eh? That's correct. Is everybody honorable in Congress? Eh? <laughs> I certainly hope so. How long have you been in Congress? I mean, in, uh... <laughs> I mean, uh, in, in Congress. This is my third term. Third time, eh? You better look out, dude. One more offense and you'll get life. <laughs> I, are you married, uh, Gordon? Oh, yes. Who was the Speaker of the House? Sam Rayburn. <laughs> now, come now, you're not married to Sam Rayburn. <laughs> Who's the speaker in your house? Oh, Mrs. McDonough, of course. Any little minority, minority parties at home? <laughs> yes, I have a family. How many squawkers do you have, uh, Gordon? Seven. <laughs> Raising your own votes, eh? <laughs> yes, they're all able to vote. Uh, can I ask who they vote for? Uh... You can guess. <laughs> so can you, you know. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Teichel, is that right? That's right. What, what does your husband do, uh, Mrs. Teichel? He's a salesman. What does he sell? He 
siding for homes. Siding? For homes. I mean, what, what kind of... Insiding or outsiding? Or... <laughs> uh, Etta, how old are you? Are you? Are you old enough to vote? Yes. How long have you been voting? Fifteen years. <laughs> Add to that 21, that makes you 36, is, is that right? Well, make it 34. <laughs> you were voting illegally two years? <laughs> As a voter, do you feel there's anything wrong with the country, Etta? Well, I think so. Nothing serious. No. Well. What? Taxes are going up. Employment is going down. Well, look, Etta, if you feel that way about it, why don't you squawk about it? I do. Well, who do you squawk to? My husband. <laughs> what does he say? Well, he don't say anything. He just sits there and listens to the radio. <laughs> why don't you complain to your congressman? Who is your congressman? Well, begins with a T. I'm not sure of his name. Is it Truman? <laughs> no, he's from Missouri. <laughs> Didn't you say you lived in Hollywood? Yes. Well, uh, shake hands with your congressman. Uh. <laughs> There's two more votes for you, Gordon. Uh. Didn't you know that Mr. McDonough was your representative in Washington? I had no idea. <laughs> Can you tell me who played Red Butler in Gone with the Wind? Claude Gable. <laughs> well, Congressman, my advice to you is to get a job in the movies playing Congressman. <laughs> what is your party, uh, Etta? You don't have to answer that, but if you don't, we well, throw you in jail. I, I don't <coughs> pick the party, it's the man. You voted for Clark Gable, huh? <laughs> Now, uh, Mrs. Teichel, I don't mean to be too hard on you. Most of us don't know our congressman. In fact, if it wasn't for Barclay's marriage, I wouldn't know who was vice president. <laughs> Do you have any special job in Washington, Gordon? I'm a member of the Public Works Committee and also a member of Subcommittee on Flood Control. The public gets the works from every committee in Washington. <laughs> have you been the author of any important bills? Yes, I'm the author of the bill that's now in, being investigated right here in Los Angeles for a, an Air Force Academy yeah. and also for the uh, improvement of the Los Angeles Post Office. I obtained $1,760,000 for that during the last Congress. What's that? Uh, uh, put uh, fresh ink in the... No. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Do you have any message for the voting public, uh, Congressman? Remember, this is only a half-hour program. <laughs> Well, of course, the important thing is to let your congressman know how you feel. Mm -hmm. I see. Mrs. Uh, Tackle, how do you feel? Oh, fine. <laughs> well, that's what you wanted to know, wasn't it, Gordon? <laughs> well, Congressman McDonough, it's been a privilege to have you here, and when you get back to Washington, I want you to stand up there on the floor of the house and tell him Mrs. Tackle is feeling just fine. <laughs> Now let's play the DeSoto Plymouth game. You bet your life for a thousand dollars. You run your twenty dollars into more than our other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The Bachelor and the Spinster won twenty dollars. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your twenty dollars. You selected nicknames of states as your category. Is that correct? That's right. All right. Now here's your first question. How much of the twenty are you going to shoot for? Ten. All right. What state is known as the Hoosier State? Indiana. Indiana is right. And they're on their way, Groucho, with $30. Oh, uh, remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to try? 20 Three of them. All right. What state is known as the free state? It's a tough one. <phone rings> Mrs. Teichel, you can think, too, you know. <laughs> oh, I just can't. Well, I... Uh... I'm sorry, the bell is tolled, and it's, it's Maryland. Now you only have $10, is that mm -hmm. right? Right. $10. How much are you going to try now? Ten. <laughs> $10. Okay, what state is known as the show-me state? Missouri. Missouri is correct. <laughs> and they're on their way again. They have $20. All right, now you're climbing. You got 20 bucks. How much are you going to try the 20 Uh, 20 <laughs> What state is known as the bluegrass state? Kentucky. Kentucky is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $40.
Thanks and good luck from your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Well, we'll soon know who's going to be tops tonight and get the chance at the $1,000. Fenneman, who's leading? Well, the housewife and the congressman are ahead with $40. And Groucho, the secret word is still tree. It is. <laughs> we invited some sailors to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected apprentice seaman John Stafford, and his partner is Admiral Frederick C. Sherman. And here they come. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers, mates. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. An admiral and a sailor, eh? Uh, sailor, where are you from? Arkansas. Where are you stationed now? Terminal Island. John Staff Stafford, is that right? Yes, sir. You related to uh, Joe Stafford, the singer? No, sir. You wish you were? Yes, sir. <laughs> admiral uh, Sherman, is that right? Where are you stationed, Admiral? I'm not stationed anywhere. I'm retired. Why don't you wear your uniform? Don't you ever wear it anymore? Well, when I'm retired, I'm not supposed to wear the uniform oh. except on uh, national holidays or occasions of great ceremony. Mm -hmm. Well, do you wear it around the house? <laughs> no. Never put it on? Not in a long time. Does it fit anymore? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I think it still fits. <laughs> oh, you have tried it on there. Huh? <laughs> Oh, by the way, do you, do you kids know each other? <laughs> Fred, uh, shake hands with Joe here, huh? How you doing, sir? Sailor, you look nervous. Uh, is this the first time you've uh, been close to a microphone, John? Oh, it's the uh, first time I've been close to an admiral. <laughs> <laughs> Say, the admiral looks a little nervous, too. <laughs> Maybe he's never been this close to a sailor. <laughs> Fred, Fred, uh, I'll call you Fred. Uh, you don't want me to keep calling you Admiral, do you? No. You're just wearing your suit around the house. And... <laughs> now, th this is not said in any derogatory sense, Fred, but uh, what kind of an Admiral are you? Huh? Well, uh, I'm what they call a full Admiral. You mean you just ate? <laughs> What other kind of admirals are there? Empty admirals? <laughs> well, they are. Fred, would you enlighten me? What, what kind of admirals are there? Vice admirals. Uh, uh, vice. Well, that sounds very interesting. <laughs> John, uh, uh, what, what is your title in the Navy? Seaman apprentice. How long have you been in the uh, service? Just several months. Mm -hmm. And what did you... Uh, Start out with, huh? What rank? Seaman apprentice. <laughs> well, don't look now, but your rank is dragging, huh? <laughs> are, are you married, uh, sailor? No. No what? I'm not married. <laughs> is that the way you bring up these sailors, Admiral? No, sir. Tell them what to say, Admiral. Say no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> I'll pipe you overboard. Huh? <laughs> I wish I knew what that meant. Huh? <laughs> I'd pipe him at that if I wasn't smoking a cigar. Huh? <laughs> now then, are you married? No, sir. <laughs> Admiral, what about you? Before you got married, did you have a girl in every port? No, that's an old myth. I don't care how old she is. <laughs> You didn't have a girl in every port? Did you have some port in every girl? Huh? <laughs> uh, Admiral Sherman, uh, how, how long have you been in the Navy? Well, I had almost 41 years' service when I retired. What was your biggest mistake? <laughs> well, when I was a student aviator down in Pensacola, I tried to taxi a 105-foot wing-spread airplane through an 80-foot drawbridge. <laughs> That wasn't when you retired, though, huh? <laughs> what was your most exciting experience, Admiral? Well, I think it was when I was uh, captain of the aircraft carrier Lexington in the Battle of Coral Sea, and the Lexington was damaged and had to be sunk later by our own torpedoes. 
What was your biggest thrill, uh, Admiral? When I stood on the bridge of Missouri and Tokyo Bay and watched the Japanese sign the surrender terms at the end of World War II. Well, that's about as big a thrill as anybody could have. I didn't know you were quite that much of a war hero. Wouldn't have cracked all those bum jokes about you. <laughs> You're going to have quite a job following this chap here, sailor. Yes, sir. Now, sailor, come down out of the rigging. I want to ask you a few things. <laughs> In your Navy career, what was your most harrowing experience? I guess that was the time I forgot to salute an officer. You're lucky they didn't make you walk the plank. Huh? Did you get a demotion? Oh, no, they can't do that to me. <laughs> there's nothing lower than the seaman apprentice. Why do you say you weren't demoted? Because there's nothing lower than the seaman apprentice. <laughs> well, Fred, now that you're retired, how are you spending your time? Feeding pigeons? No, I've been writing a book for the last two years. Oh, you're an admiral, all right. <laughs> now, what's the, what's the book about? Well, its title is Combat Command, the American Aircraft Carriers in the Pacific War. Admiral Bill Halsey has written a foreword for me, and it'll be on the book stands on the 27th of January. Well, put me down for one of the first copies, will you? Anybody doesn't buy a copy, we'll have them court-martialed. <laughs> Do you have any advice that would benefit our sailor here, Admiral? Well, yes, I'd advise him to make the most of his opportunities in the Navy by advancing himself, going through the trade schools, and taking the correspondence courses which are available to everybody in the Navy. What about you, sailor? <laughs> sailor, what advice have you got for the Admiral here? <laughs> Seaman don't have advices for admirals. <laughs> go on, go ahead. Go ahead, as one sailor to another, slip him some advice. Tell him where's the best place to find some girls. Uh... <laughs> Would you say uh, Hollywood, Hollywood and Vine? Well, uh, I've always had pretty good luck on her Sunset and Gower. <laughs> Well, there you are, Admiral. <laughs> How soon will you be over there? No, oh, I'm not interested in that anymore. Well, you're retired, all right. <laughs> well, uh, I must say that the Navy has acquitted itself admirably here tonight. Now, gentlemen, you're going to weigh anchors for the DeSoto Plymouth thousand dollar question. You run your twenty dollars into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big money. Fenneman, remind our listeners who's ahead. The housewife and the congressman are ahead with $40. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You selected Smiths and Jones as your category. Now, you have $20. How much do you want to try? Ten. And I think we can gamble on ten, yes. What is the name of the Jones girl who recently married David O. Selznick? Jennifer, wasn't it? Jennifer Jones is right. <laughs> yes, they're on their way with $30, Groucho. <laughs> how much of the 30 will you try? Fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen, huh? Okay. What was the name of the famous Smith who was a friend of Pocahontas? John Smith. Captain John Smith is right. They're climbing now. They have $45. All right, you got $45. How much are you going to try? Here's your third question. Twenty? I think twenty, yes. Twenty. <laughs> what is the uh, first name of the former golf champion named Jones? Um, Bobby. Bobby Jones is right. <laughs> They're really on their way now. They have $65. All right, you're shooting along with $65, and here's your last chance now to beat the other couples. How much of the 65 are you going to shoot? 30? 35. <laughs> 30. 30, then. 30. <laughs> you're going to wind up in irons, you know that. <laughs> what was the name of a famous Smith who was a governor of New York? He wore a brown derby. Al Smith. Al, Al Smith is right. Total of ninety-five dollars. Take for the admiral, there, huh? and that means that the sailor and the admiral, with their ninety-five dollars, get the chance at the Desoto Plymouth thousand-dollar question.
Yes, no matter what make of car you now drive or expect to buy, don't make a decision until you visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer on Tuesday, January 10th. For that is the big day to see this truly new model, the new DeSoto. A car with feature after feature that's new. A car whose beauty of line and great performance will do more than all the talk in the world to thrill you and your entire family. A car so smartly designed that you'll want it standing in front of your home. A car so skillfully designed that it brings a whole new concept of driving ease, of roominess. As for economy of operation... Here again, mere words cannot do justice to the power at your command of its high-compression engine, to its long-life valves that add thousands of trouble-free miles to your driving pleasure, to its bigger, easier-to-apply brakes, to the tiptoe hydraulic shift and fluid drive that lets you drive without shifting. This year, more than ever before, it's DeSoto that is pointing the way to automotive beauty, economy, comfort, with not just a few changes, but an entirely new model. So next Tuesday, January 10th, make sure you see this new DeSoto at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And here are the sailor and the admiral, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. When George Washington was given command of the Continental Army, his commission as general was signed by the President of the Continental Congress. Who was this President of the Continental Congress? Okay, what is the answer you two have decided upon? I think it was John Adams. No, I'm sorry. It was John Hancock. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $95 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget... The big question will be worth $1,500. Well, it's time to let Bing Crosby have the air, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. When driving your car, don't depend on the other guy. Suppose he's depending on you. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is milk. M-I-L-K. Really? You bet your life! The Soto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Anybody got a dime for a cup of coffee? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's face to try for it? A couple about to be married, Groucho. They were selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, Miss Marie Fortin and Mr. Harry Chauze. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, youngsters. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. 
It's a common word, something you'll uh, find around the house. Mary, uh, 14, is that... Uh, Four, 14. <laughs> Harry uh, Chaussee, is that right? Chaussee. Chaussee. Huh? Where are you from, Harry? I'm from Salix, Iowa. Where's that uh, near? Any place? Oh, next Sioux City. <laughs> Why did you leave your hometown there, Harry? I would have come out to the west. Well, was it a good move when you left? Oh, I think so. I met Marie by coming out here. Well, answer my question. Uh, was it a good move? When you... <laughs> I made a mistake when I left my hometown. If I hadn't made the mistake, I wouldn't have had to leave. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so you two are going to get hooked up, huh? Yeah. Well, that, that's very nice. Huh? What kind of work do you do, Harry? I'm a machinist in Arabian American Oil Company. Saudi Arabia. You going over there, over there? Yes, we're going back over there. How did you meet Superman here, uh, Marie? Well, I met him in the first grade. We went to school together. And never had another fellow from the first grade up to oh, now? Oh, yes. <laughs> you just took him as a last resort, is that it? <laughs> what, what about you, Harry? Have you had any other girls in the uh, interim between the first grade and Arabia? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most lying laugh I've ever seen. <laughs> Did she accept you immediately after you worked up enough courage to propose, uh, Harry? No, not right away. You had to squeeze it out of her, huh? <laughs> you remember the circumstances of his big love scene, Marie? Uh, well, he took me dancing to various places around the city, and, uh, well, he didn't ask me to marry him. He asked me if I wanted to go to Arabia. <laughs> That's certainly a roundabout proposal if I ever heard of it. Driving, I must try that sometime. Driving with a guy on the car and you say, I'd like to go to Arabia. <laughs> and what is there about Romeo that caused you to fall in love with him? Oh, his charming personality. <laughs> Could you give us an example of your face? <laughs> <laughs> Just stood and grinned at her, eh? <laughs> Probably seems like a very nice fellow, Marie. Now, what do you like about Marie, Harry? Mm, I guess it's her sense of humor. <laughs> she has a good sense of humor? How do you know? She always laughs at my jokes. Huh? <laughs> How do you know she's laughing at your jokes? <laughs> How do you know it isn't the string on her corset that's tickling her? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Did that ever occur to you, Harry? Huh? I don't think she wears a corset. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think she wears a corset? Huh? You're taking this girl all the way to Arabia and you're not sure whether she wears a corset? Well, you've aroused my curiosity. I'll never rest until I hear you tell a joke. Could you, uh, could you tell us a small joke? Mm, I don't believe I know any small ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us a wow, huh? Yeah. Uh, did you ever hear the one about the fellow who played on the girls' basketball team? Well, that's pretty good. I like that, huh? <laughs> Is that the sort of thing you laugh at, Marie? <laughs> You're supposed to say, how, how can a fella play on a girl's basketball team? Oh, I see there's more to it, huh? <laughs> well, okay, how can a fella play on a girl's basketball team? He lied about his age. <laughs> That'll certainly kill him in Arabia, then. <laughs> Are you going to be the jealous type of wife, Marie? No, I don't think so. You won't mind if he steps out with another gal occasionally, eh? Oh, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> Suppose you're sitting home all alone and uh, Harry is waking late at the office. You're watching the television matches on the uh, machine. Eh? <laughs> and suddenly you see Harry in the first row at the wrestling matches with a beautiful babe. What would you do? Well, that's impossible. <laughs> Why is it impossible? <laughs> we don't have television. <laughs> this is beginning to sound like Burns and Allen. <laughs>
Marie, forget the television set. Suppose Harry's waking late and you go over to the Palladium and there's Harry dancing with a pretty blonde. What would you do? Oh, I'd walk up to him and ask him to explain. <laughs> well, that's very logical. There's only one thing that puzzles me. What are you doing at the Palladium while he's... <laughs> Well, you're both very nice kids, and in as much as you'll soon be married, in just one minute, you're going to have a chance to make $1,500. Yes, tomorrow is a great day at all DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The brilliant new DeSoto is now on display, and the great Plymouth goes on display for the first time tomorrow. The great new Plymouth is a sensational new high for value in the low-priced field. But you be the judge. Look at it. Then climb into it and get the feel of this car. Put it up hills and through traffic. Give it the toughest tests you know. And as for value, you'll find this good-looking royal riding car is packed with value and ready to prove it. Ignition key starting, improved air pillow ride, the quick true stops of safeguard hydraulic brakes, the lively power of the high-compression engine, and many other features exclusive with the great new Plymouth. Now, more than ever, Plymouth is the car that likes to be compared. For beautiful new styling, for roomy comfort, for easy riding and wonderful handling, for dollar for dollar value. So meet your new Plymouth, the American beauty, tomorrow at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Let's see if a couple of youngsters about to be married are going to get the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Fenneman, explain the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that $20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You selected initials of organizations as your category. Is that right? Here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to risk? Five dollars. What educational organization do the initials PTA stand for? Parent Teacher Association. That's right, Parent Teachers Association. Well, they're on their way, Groucho. They have twenty-five dollars. Ah, you swing along. You got twenty-five dollars. How much of the twenty-five are you going to try? Ten. What government body does AEC stand for? Atomic Energy Commission. Well, you're just wonderful, Marie. Huh? <laughs> they're climbing now, Groucho. They have thirty-five dollars. Here's your third question. You got thirty-five. How much are you going to try? Fifteen. Fifteen dollars. For what informative organization do the initials I-N-S stand for? I-N-S. Take a stab. I don't believe I know that. No, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's the uh, International News Service. They now have twenty dollars, Groucho. All right, you now got twenty dollars. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the twenty are you going to try now? Twenty. What labor organization do the initial CIO stand for? Congressional Industrial Organization. That's close enough. Congress of Industrial Organizations is close enough. And they wind up with a total of $40. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't sneak off to Arabia yet. You still might get the chance at the big question. Groucho, the, yes, secret, George? the secret word is still milk. Perhaps our next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a house mover, Mr. Ab Wilson, and his partner is a housewife, Mrs. Pat Johnson. And here they are, folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. And Thank if you. one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. A house mover and a, and a housewife, eh? Mrs. Uh, Johnson, uh, I'll, I'll bet you're the housewife. Is, is that That's right? That's right. <laughs> and wh where are you from, Mrs. Johnson? I'm from Denver, Colorado. You must be the house mover, huh? Yeah, I'm the house mover. I'm the big boy. <laughs> Ab, Ab Wilson is... That's uh, right. What does Ab stand for? Is that Abe? Just or, Ab. Uh, That's Ab. You well, I never heard that. that name. Is that a, a derivative of Abe or uh, yeah. Abner or what? Uh, uh, well, I guess it would be, you know, you take a house mover, they... The less material you have, the better off you are, you know. <laughs> well, what, what is a house mover? Do you move houses? Or? Yes, sir. You move whole houses? Whole houses, yes, sir. Where are you from, Ab? Walks of Hatchie, Texas. Walks of, is that near Nacogdoches? <laughs> what is the biggest uh, hazard in your profession? Is it housemaid's knee? 
Well, no. It's uh, going over up or down a hill, you know, and get break loose, you know, and get away. And what do you do when they break loose? You stand there with your fingers in your ears and your no. eyes closed? <laughs> What happens to the occupants uh, when you move a house? Do they just pitch a tent by the side of the road and uh, well, no, until no, you're through? They, no, they can live right on in the house. It's <laughs> Suppose they're moving in the house and the husband is still in the, in the bathtub. Well, I'll take him right along. You don't spill no water. <laughs> he might step right out of the tub into the lobby of the Biltmore Hotel. <laughs> How long have you been moving houses? About 40 years. Mm-hmm. Can, you, can you move any building? Yes, sir. Could you move the Empire State well, Building uh, in Chicago? I could if it wasn't for the wind. To... You could move the Empire State Building in Chicago? If it wasn't for the wind, yes. Wouldn't be easy, you know. It's in New York, the building. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make it be a little windy. Well, I suppose many unusual things happen to you oh, in your business. Oh, oh yes. yes. Could yes, you uh, could you remember any outstanding experience well, that you care to relate? Uh, no more than I got to move the house, wrong house on the... I have on the wrong lot, you know. What, what was that, you? I could move the <coughs> house on the wrong lot. Not exactly the wrong lot. I just got the wrong house on the, uh, on the, right house on the wrong lot. See? What do you mean? You moved the lot over to the wrong house? I moved it to the wrong lot. Then I had to get it off before the man caught me, you know. Well, let's start over again, okay. huh? Okay. Could you move the Empire State Building in Chicago? I could if it wasn't for the wind. <laughs> Even though it's in Cleveland? <laughs> What's the difference? Well, thanks to you, Ab. I know all about house moving. Okay, now you two are going you. to get a chance to play your bet your life for $1,500. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big DeSoto Plymouth question later. Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners how much the first couple won. The couple about to be married won $40. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous dogs as your category. Is that right? Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much do you want to bet? And talk right up. $10. Okay. What's the name of the famous collie dog that stars in motion pictures? Uh, Scotty. Is that... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The answer is Lassie. They now have $10. How much of the $10 will you try? Five. What's the name of Blondie and Dagwood's dog? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry. It's well, Daisy. Well, I wanted nursery rhymes, but oh. that had already been taken. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, that's a shame. They now have $5, Groucho. Well, you've only got $5. And here's your third question. How much of the five will you try? Three. What's the name of Mickey Mouse's dog? Mm -hmm. You know? Don't they have any dogs in Denver? <laughs> the dog's name is Pluto. They now have two dollars, Groucho. Well, now you're only down to two dollars. How much of the two dollars are you going to try? One dollar, I guess. One dollar. <laughs> All right. What's the name of the late President Roosevelt's... Of, the, of late President Roosevelt's little Scotty? Now, that's been the papers for a long time. Well, I, I'm sorry. It's Fella. I'm going to give you one more chance to make some money. It's not going to be uh, so easy, so think hard now, and no help, please. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Grant. General Grant is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, it won't be long before we know who's going to earn the chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. George, who's leading at this point? The young couple are ahead with $40, and the secret word is still milk. Just before we went on the air, we went looking through our studio audience for the parents of the most children. And here come the mother and the father who were chosen. Mr. and Mrs. Marion D. Story meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. <laughs> and if you say the secret word, you win 100 bucks in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. and Mrs. Marion D. Story. Marion? Which one of you is Marion? Oh. I am. I thought you were already married. Uh... <laughs> well, that was a whirlwind courtship. Eh? <laughs> Mrs. Story, your, your first name is, is Charlotte, is that right? That's right. Charlotte, huh? Where, where, where are you from, Charlotte? Uh, Bakersfield, California, about 100 miles north from here. Marion, what do you do for a living? I'm a sign painter. Sign painter, huh? How'd you meet Indian sign here, Charlotte? <laughs> oh, I met him on a boat, and it was raining real hard this night, and uh, he uh, 
said, would you share your umbrella with me? And I said, sure. And so... Uh, <laughs> And so, uh, That's a pretty corny approach there, Mary. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> How long have you kids been married? 28 years. Well, you're a fine-looking couple. Now, Mr. Story, according to Fenneman, you two are up here because you're the parents of the largest family. Is, is that correct? Well, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, it is. You mean you only guess you have a large family? <laughs> No, I mean, haven't you counted the livestock lately? <laughs> uh, there's no question about the family. Uh, it's just a question why you're up here, huh? <laughs> Mr. Story, how many times have you been a mother? Twenty times. Is this really true, 20 uh, children, Marion? That is true, 20. That's what she said. Mm. <laughs> Apparently nothing's happened in the last few seconds anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Story, my hat, if it was on, would now be off to you. You're a remarkable woman, huh? Tell me, Popsicle, uh, <laughs> when you see a lot of kids around your house, uh, how do you know if they're all yours? I remember faces. <laughs> you never forget a face, eh? <laughs> Could you give us the names? Could you reel them off for me? Uh... Well, I'll start with the twins. There's Jean and Jane and Jimmy and Jeanette and Gary and Sherry and Eileen and Arlene. That's twins, four sets of twins. Mm -hmm. There's two sets of uh, girl twins, and there's two sets of mixed twins. Mixed twins, yeah. Oh, and the others all goes by the name of Jean and Jane and Jack and Jacqueline and June and so on and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> How old are the children, uh, Mrs. Story? Well, the oldest is uh, from 27 to 3 years old. Mm. Have you ever thought of adopting any children? <laughs> no, it never occurred to me. <laughs> Tell me, Pop, with each new kid, do you go around passing out cigars? Well, I used to. I stopped at about a dozen. <laughs> what do you, you pass out yourself now, is that it? <laughs> well, tell me, Pop. Pop, that's the understatement of the year. <laughs> uh, Paul Bunyan. Uh, <laughs> if you can't remember all the names, how do you know who to call when you want something? Uh, well, if I want one of the boys, I just say, son. <laughs> Aren't you afraid of getting trampled in the rush? <laughs> I know. Now, what kind of living quarters do you have? The Hotel Bakersfield? <laughs> no, we have uh, two acres, and we have a ten-room house, and uh, two showers, and a bath. And... and do you have a cop in the hallway directing traffic? <laughs> Well, with all these income tax deductions, uh, how do you make out around March 15th, Pop? Well, I haven't paid income tax for years. <laughs> you wouldn't want to loan me about eight kids, huh? <laughs> how do you manage to feed 20 kids? Uh, do you do it in shifts? Well, that's easy. I have a budget, and... Um... I buy everything wholesale, and, and <laughs> I start breakfast at 5 o'clock in the morning. I get all the work and one's off to work, and then uh, I've got uh, ten, 10 to get off for school, and, and I got some home, and I finally get through about 7 o'clock at night. And then What's your grocery bill amount to every week, uh, Charlotte? That's not it, too uh, uh, personal a question. Well, it runs to $100 a week. And, um, Suppose the family's having lunch on Sunday. What would you ordinarily find on the table? Well, besides a few of the children, huh? Children are all there. Well, I'll take uh, Thanksgiving Day. Well, uh, we had uh, two thirty-pound turkeys, and uh, we had twenty pounds of roast chicken, and uh, we had a gallon of mashed potatoes. <laughs> 
and uh, 14 pumpkin pies and eight mince pies and six cranberry pies and gallons pie. of salads. And, <laughs> and what do you use for toothpicks, a redwood glove? <laughs> Marion, tell me, as the father of 20 kids, have you had any unusual or unforgettable experience? <laughs> I've had lots of unusual experiences. Uh, we were living in Sacramento, and coming into the hospital, we had to borrow our neighbor's car because ours was broken down. Should have had a DeSoto. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway... We came to the American River Bridge, and we got to the first approach. Why, Mama says, take it easy, Pop. <laughs> so we had the car stopped, and one baby was born. And I says, well, go ahead now. We get to the hospital fast. So the driver got in. We started, and we got to the other end of the bridge. Mama says, take it easy, Pop. <laughs> That's why they call them suspension bridges. <laughs> I'll be sure bridges hereafter. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mrs. Story? Have you had an unusual experience? <laughs> well, uh, when Jerry was born... What number was he? Do you remember? Oh, he was number 12. Number 12. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that very clearly. Robert I got out of the hospital and I went home. Well, there was uh, eleven down with a hoop and cough and measles. Oh. And so uh, you never realized that night when you were on the bay and it was raining and you had the umbrella that uh, all this was going to happen. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll teach you, Mister Story. Never carry an umbrella when it's raining. Huh? <laughs> well, it's it's really been inspiring having you two here tonight, and Mister Story. You have every right to be the proudest mother in the country. Now, you're going to play the DeSoto-Plymouth game, you bet your life. If you beat our other two couples, you get a crack at the $1,500 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is offstage to remind our listeners. The young engaged couple is still ahead with $40. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected nursery rhymes as your category. Is that right? And that's a subject you ought to know a great deal about. <laughs> you have $20, and how much are you going to try? Ten. Who called for his fiddlers three? Old King Cole. Old King Cole is right. <laughs> and they're on their way, Groucho, with $30. All right, you got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to try? 25. 25. Who was asleep under the haystack when he should have been tending sheep? Uh, Come on, no. now. Oh, I, I'm sorry. It's a shame, but it was Little Boy Blue. Very easy to get confused on that. They now have $5. Oh, you're all the way down to $5. All right, now. Here's your third question. You got $5, and how much are you going to bet? $5. Who picked a peck of pickled pepper? Peter Piper. Peter Piper is right. <laughs> on the way again, they have $10. All right, now you got $10. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 10 are you going to bet? All of it. All right, who fell down the hill and broke his crown? Jack. Jack is right. And they wind up with $20. And that means the young engaged couple gets the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. You've got to see it to believe it. You've got to drive it to appreciate it. Yes, that's the new Plymouth. The great new Plymouth that's packed with value and ready to prove it. Prove this to yourself tomorrow at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Let your dealer arrange a demonstration drive. Then compare. Compare the value in this great new car with that in other leading low-priced cars. Compare the new beauty and style, the easy riding and wonderful handling, the great engineering that makes it the low-priced car, most like high-priced cars. Check the prompt convenience of Plymouth's ignition key starting the flashing getaway power of the high-compression engine, the soft velvet stops of safeguard hydraulic brakes, the protection of safety rim wheels, and many other exclusive Plymouth features. Yes, check and compare. For beauty, for power, for room, for riding comfort. Plymouth, now more than ever, 
the car that likes to be compared. See this great new Plymouth, the American beauty, at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow. And while you're there, don't miss seeing the brilliant new DeSoto as well, a car that's truly new, with new features from bumper to bumper, the finest car that has ever borne the name DeSoto. Learn why your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is so proud of the two superb cars he has on display, the great new Plymouth and the brilliant new DeSoto. Here's the young couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $1,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully, and please, no assistance from the audience. Here it is. Frederick Augustus Bartholdi was a famous French sculptor. His best-known work is well-known to all of us. What is Bartholdi's great work? Statue of Liberty? Statue of Liberty is right. <laughs> That's right. You win $1,500. You had the right answer. What are you going to do with all that money? I'm going to give it all to Marie. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with it, Marie? I'll take care of it. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week's big question will be worth $1,000. Well, it's almost time for the Bing Crosby Show, and tonight I understand his guest star will be that incomparable comedian of You Bet Your Life. Hey, that's me, Groucho Marx. See you again in a few minutes, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. When you're in your car, be a wise driver, not a wise guy. This is George Benjamin signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is spoon. S P O O N. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only. Groucho, sorry, my name's Yasmin Khan. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who gets first whack at it? Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a bouncer from a dance hall and an accountant. And here they are, Mr. Alan Landman and bouncer Bill Graves meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, gentlemen. You bet your life. And if one of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. Bill... Uh, Graves. Bill Graves, huh? You're a bouncer at a da dance hall? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. where, where are you from, Bill? I'm from uh, within a stone throw of the Churchill Downs in Lexington, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And you, what do you do? You throw stones around there? Oh, I don't know. Yes, sir. Bookkeeper, Alan uh, Landman? Bookkeeper? Yes, sir. I'll just call you Bookie, huh? 
No. <laughs> you're, not, you're not a bookie, huh? But I better call you a bookkeeper. Is that right? No, that's not right either. I'm an accountant. You're very hard to please, aren't you? <laughs> I'll call you Count. Is that all right? <laughs> or Int. I was Int. Huh? <laughs> Tell me, Count, uh, what do you do as an accountant? Oh, I make income tax returns out for people, give them general advice on their financial statements, and audit their books. Mm-hmm. You keep books, and I'll just call you Bookie, huh? <laughs> And if you get raided, don't come running to me. Huh? <laughs> where, where are you from, Bookie? I was born within a stone's throw of the Fulton Fish Market in New York. <laughs> you were born near the uh, fish market, huh? That's right. Mm-hmm. And did, uh, how long did you flounder around there before you... <laughs> yeah, Al Smith was born around there, wasn't he? The oh, Fulton? that's right. Mm-hmm. What's the most common bookkeeping error you find in your work, uh, Mr. Landman? I would say transposition. Well, you'll have to say more than that. I I mean... That left me as cold as those stones where you were born with them. I mean, transposition of figures. That is, uh, writing $16,489.12 is $16,498.21. Transposing the figures Mm. in sequence. Well, I lost you a long time ago. And, uh, Jersey Bounce, tell me, uh, <laughs> where, do you, where do you work? I work at the Roseland Roof, 833 South Spring Street. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what is Roseland Roof? It is the finest taxi dance hall in the United States. I didn't know taxis could dance. Eh? <laughs> we have some two-legged taxis that dance very well, sir. Some night, if you're off and you have a moment to spare... I'm like off every come... night, huh? <laughs> I'd like to have you come down and visit us. Well, I'd be very happy to, huh? They strap a meter on me, I suppose? <laughs> What do, what do you do at the Roseland Roof, Mr. Graves? I'm the manager, the elevator operator, the policeman. I'm a union man. I work eight hours in the morning and eight hours at night. <laughs> Did you figure that joke out on your boss's time? Or... <laughs> now tell me, Tacky Trot, uh, how, many... uh, how many girls uh, work at your dance emporium? Uh? Between 75 and 100. Those are pretty loose figures to have on a dance floor. <laughs> You, you handle figures, too, don't you, uh, Alan? Uh, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. The figures you handle don't lie, I take it, huh? Oh, I wouldn't say that. You don't have to. I just said it. Huh? <laughs> you ever run, run across cases of simple fraud? Uh, yes. What's a good way to skin a widow out of her mite, for example? <laughs> well, you pad the figures on an expense account. As Steady now, it is. <laughs> well, you're a rascal. That's what you are. <laughs> You pad the widow's figures? <laughs> well, how do you catch a crook like that? I mean, oh, you just use your logic. For example, uh, if a guy submitted an expense account showing that he was in the Sahara Desert and uh, that he entertained some people at a nightclub there for 187.50, you is would there a nightclub in the Sahara Desert? <laughs> Not that I know of. You mean this widow can only get cheated in the Sahara Desert? <laughs> <laughs> she can choose her own site. You mean it would take a lot of sand to skin her, huh? <laughs> now, tell me, does anything exciting ever happen to an accountant? Well, uh, something exciting happened to me once. I got into an airplane conducting five wooden packing cases that looked as if they might have contained cans of beans, and they actually had one million dollars in cold, hard American cash. And did you, did you have a gun with you? Anyway? Yes, I did. I was in the Army as a dispersing officer, and I had a forty-five strapped to my side. Have you ever had anything else strapped to your side? <laughs> mustard plaster. (laughs) Well, there's worse things than that to be stuck with, you know. (laughs) Now tell me, Bouncer, in your job, does anything unusual ever happen? Oh, not a big deal. How much do you charge for a dance at your... uh... Twelve cents a minute. Why your dance is only a minute long? Well, we can give the people more for the money and give them more dancing. It's a fairly shifty answer there. I'm, I'm a Scotchman. You get a faster turnover, is that it? Faster turnover, is it? Yes, sir. They must turn over like a propeller in your place. <laughs> now, do these people pop in just to dance for one minute? Or... Some come in and uh, sit just... around night after night, and all they do is dance the free dancers. <laughs> what night are the free dancers? 
What do they talk about, the ones that don't dance? Have oh, you any they notion, talk though? about uh, general subjects, uh, not uh, what you think. How do you know what I'm thinking? <laughs> How many fights do you have to stop in a night on an average? Uh, since I've been with Rose Land for the last 20 years, we've never had a fight in the place. Well, what but... do they do, go out in the alley and slug each other? <laughs> I worked in a place one time where we had to close on Sundays to pump the blood out of the cellar. <laughs> you don't you don't happen to remember what they did with the old blood, do you? <laughs> Well, you two make an extremely interesting couple, and uh, we're happy to have you with us tonight. You're both experts on figures. Now, in just one minute, you're going to try for the DeSoto Plymouth a thousand dollar question. Just a week ago, the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America introduced the brilliant new DeSoto, the finest car that has ever borne the name DeSoto. It's a completely new model from bumper to bumper. From its beautiful new front grille to its wider rear end, here is the car that is styled for comfort as well as beauty. Every detail from DeSoto's rear window, which was made bigger and lower to provide greater visibility, to its smartly styled new steering wheel, from its bigger, softer pedal action brakes, to its beautiful new fenders that permit easier changing of tires, here truly is a new car in every sense of the word. A car bringing you richness of line that your family will boast of for many months to come. Economy of operation that your pocketbook will appreciate. Drive this great new DeSoto just once, and you'll thrill to it as thousands already have. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will arrange to have you drive it at your convenience. <laughs> Let's see if a bookkeeper and a bouncer will get the chance at $1,000. Fenneman, tell them the rules of your bet your life. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous dates in United States history as your category. Here's your first question. You have $20. How much will you bet? $3. Right, no, no, let's make it Here's ten. Here's a foul level at a racetrack, huh? Uh, he said make it ten. Make it ten. Is that okay make with you, Bill? Make it ten is fine. Okay. What happened on October 12th, 1492? Columbus discovered America. You said it right on the nose, Bill. And we're off to a great start, Groucho, with $30. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $30 will you bet? Twenty. Not $20, no. Uh, make it fifteen. Make it $20, and all right. All right. <laughs> what happened on December the 7th, for 1941? Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. That's a Pearl Harbor. Uh... That's right. Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. <laughs> They're climbing. They have $50. You're climbing. You got 50 smackers. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to go for? Uh, well, we take... Uh, this time, we'll plunge a little. <clears throat> We bet thirty-five dollars. So you're going to bet thirty-five dollars. Okay, all right. What happened? What happened? September second, nineteen forty-five. Was it VJ Day? VJ Day. Do you agree with that? Yes, you agree I do. With that? Well, that's right. <laughs> now they have eighty-five dollars, Groucho. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the eighty-five will you risk? Let's try seventy-five. Seventy-five dollars. What far-reaching event happened on October twenty-fourth, nineteen twenty-nine? The uh, crash. The crash is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $160. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't run away. You still might be high tonight and get a crack at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still spoon. I know that, George. Perhaps our next couple will say it, too. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a chiropodist, Dr. Theodore Dale... And his partner is a housewife, Mrs. Sue Proson. And here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. All right, welcome, kids. Uh, welcome to your Bet Your Life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you find around the house. A uh, chiropodist and a housewife, eh? Doc uh, Dale, is that the way? That's correct. What kind of a name is that? Is that Swiss? Uh, what? Well, it's leftover Piccadilly. 
I had some leftover Piccadilly tonight. That isn't my name. What do you mean, leftover Piccadilly? It's well, English? Way back, the family's name was Piccadilly, and this was left of it. Where, where are you from, Doc? Redondo Beach, California. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mrs. Sue uh, Proson? Mm-hmm. Where are you from, Sue? Boston. You're married? Yes. What does your husband do for a living? Building contractor. How, do, how did you meet your husband? My mother wanted to borrow a hammer. Your mother went to borrow a hammer? Uh-huh. And she borrowed it from a friend, and uh, he had a son, only I didn't know he had a son. Who had a son, the hammer? No, no, it's very simple, really. The friend had a hammer. And that's how you nailed him? Uh, and then, yes. He came over and brought the hammer, and I wanted to get a dog. And when What's I, that? I wanted to get a dog, and when Instead I Instead of a hammer, you mean? Well, she wanted the hammer. I didn't. Oh. But when I saw this guy drive up, and he didn't have a very nice car, and I thought, well, I could ask him to take me for the dog, because my boyfriend had a new car, and I couldn't ask him to take me for the dog. Why? Because he wouldn't let a puppy in his car. Well, when we got home, the landlady met us at the apartment, and she said, you can't have a dog here. Just a hammer, huh? <laughs> so, very simple, really. He took the dog home with him. And on the way home, he said, if you married me, you could have me and the dog. And I said, well, for the dog's sake, I'd think about it. But it took the family two months to arrange the wedding. Had no place to put the dog, I suppose. <laughs> no, the dog didn't want it. But we didn't get the dog. It got lost. Tell me, I want to ask you one question. What happened to this first meal that you were going with, huh? Still around. The one with this brand new car that uh, wouldn't let any livestock in it. Uh, what happened to him, huh? He still got the car. Still got the car and that's yeah. all, huh? Mm-hmm. And you've got a hammer and a dog and a husband and... Uh, huh? No dog. No Just dog. a cat. Now you got a cat? <laughs> Kids, too? Yes, two of them. Kids. And only one cat, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you ought to try to get another cat, huh? That's what you have to worry about. Either that or do away with one of the kids. One of the kids. <laughs> Doc, how did you meet your wife? Did you have a hammer in your hand at the time? Uh, oh, no, but I had a... Uh... Was she going around with some foot pad and you rubbed her out? And... <laughs> yeah. What happened? Well, she, I was, uh, as a student, I I'll was... I'll call you Pick a Lily, huh? <laughs> Pick a Dilly. Pick a Dilly, huh? Uh... I picked the deli one night. (laughs) Well, anyway. I was a student at the foot clinics of New York, and my wife was a patient. And uh, she was kind of cute at the time, and... uh, (laughs) And, uh... He'll he'll appreciate the way you qualified that compliment. (laughs) Well, I, uh... I suggested that, uh, being that she had so much trouble with her feet... Did you write her any footnotes? Or no, <laughs> no. And out of that time... Well, had, uh, up to this time, you'd just seen her feet, is that right? That's right. <laughs> Maybe that's the way it should be. Most fellas, they go around looking at a girl's face, you know. Maybe, <laughs> Maybe should they examine their feet, because they're... <laughs> In most cases, their feet are not made up. You know what you're getting, anyway. <laughs> You two have two of the most romantic stories I've ever heard. <laughs> a pussycat in an old car and a, and a foot doctor. Now tell me, Hotfoot, how did you, uh... <laughs> how did you happen to become a chiropodist? Were you at the foot of your class in school, or...? Well, uh, I started the foot and thought that this profession might work, work my way up. Mm-hmm. You were eventually going to become a dentist, is that <laughs> Become successful. Oh, I see. Why do so many people have foot trouble? And a lot of it's traced back to childhood, and very uh, few parents will take the trouble to take their children to have their feet examined, and you find that 60% of children have foot trouble. Well, what kind of feet do you treat? Uh, uh... Any kind. Any kind of feet? Mm-hmm. I wish you'd come over to my house. My piano is getting pigeon toed the legs. <laughs> well, what's the chief reason that people come to your office? The feet hurt. Well, you ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. <laughs> I knew if I talked to a chiropodist, sooner or later I'd put my foot in it. One or another. <laughs> you mean people have trouble with their dogs, is that it? That's right. And you take care of their dogs? I sure do. Well, then actually you're a veterinarian, huh? <laughs> no, I'm a chiropodist. What's the matter, dog? Didn't you like that joke? <laughs> oh, I thought, well, it's corny. What was that? Corny. Corny, corny joke. 
Well, you ought to know. You're an expert on corns. <laughs> What are the most common uh, foot ailments? Well, the most common we'd say would be uh, Helome Male, Helome Durham, and Halifax. Hello, Hello, my Male, huh? <laughs> Hello, my Male. Hello, my Daddy. <laughs> Why, Joseph Howard sang that, and I wonder who's kissing her now, huh? <laughs> you mean that's a foot disease? <laughs> By the way, Doc, my wife's foot uh, hurt quite a bit this morning. Could you suggest anything that might help? Well, if you tell me where it hurts. Well, it hurts in the seat of my pants. That's why she <laughs> kicked me. I tricked you into that one. <laughs> well, you made a very interesting and instructive team, and we enjoyed having you here. Now, you're going to have a chance to make money hand over foot, Doc. <laughs> you're going to play your bet your life. All you got to do is run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question later on. Fenneman's offstage to remind our listeners how much the first couple won. The accountant and the ballroom bouncer won $160. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you 20 bucks. You selected bowl games. Uh, bowl games. B-O-W-L. Now, you got $20. How much are you going to try? Ten. Talk right up into the microphone. Because over 300 people are listening here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In what city is the Sugar Bowl game played? Sugar Bowl. New Orleans. In New Orleans is right. <laughs> and they're on the way with $30, Groucho. See how easy it is? Now, you got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 are you going to risk? 20. Where is the Orange Bowl game play? Miami, Florida. Miami is right. <laughs> and now they have $50. Now you got 50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to try? 30. $30. In what city is the Shrine East-West game play? San Francisco. San Francisco is on the nose. <laughs> They're climbing now. They have $80. All right. You're steaming right ahead now. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 80 are you going to risk? Talk up, talk right up, into the microphone. She wants to bet 60. She wants to bet 60, and how much do you want to bet? He wants I'd to bet rather 50. bet the whole lady. You would, huh? Okay. okay. You want to go whole hog? You're going for $80. In what island city is the pineapple bowl play? And uh, Honolulu. Honolulu is right. And they wind up with $160. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, pretty soon, be, we're going to know who's going to end the chance at the $1,000 question. George, who's ahead so far? Well, nobody's ahead so far. Nobody's ahead so far. Both the first couples have $160. You mean they're neck and neck? They're neck and neck. Well, let's hope they don't do any neck and neck in here, huh? <laughs> and let's not forget that the DeSoto Plymouth secret word is still spoon. Say, Groucho, we have a surprise for you. Our oh, final I... couple is an Irish war bride and her husband. And here they are... Mr. and Mrs. Wysowski meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers, youngsters. And if you say the secret word, you win $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Uh, Wysowski, uh, you're an Irish bride? Yes. Wysowski, you're one of the Notre Dame Irish. Yes. <laughs> Faith and Begar and Barry Fitzgerald. Uh, sure, and it's a fine thing to be after having you here with us here the night. Huh? How's my broke? Oh. <laughs> They don't talk that way where I come from. <laughs> they also don't talk that way where I come from. <laughs> well, I must admit, my brogue's a little rusty. You know? <laughs> Last night I had an Irish stew and somebody dropped a hot tamale in it. <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe Wysowski, huh? That's right. What sort of work do you do, Joe? I'm a mechanic with Lockheed Aircraft. Lockheed Aircraft? What part of Ireland are you from, Joe? Kewanee. Kewanee, Illinois? That's correct. <laughs> and what part of Ireland are you from, uh, Phyllis? Belfast. Belfast. Huh? How long since you've been in Belfast? About five years. You have no discernible uh, brogue at all, do you? We don't talk the same way as they do in the south. In the south of Ireland? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How long have you been an Irish war bride, Phyllis? Well, we were married uh, the day after St. Patrick's Day in 1945. Mm -hmm. Do you have any little Irish males at home? Uh? No, I haven't. Have you? No. <laughs> Joe, Joe, me lad, uh, how long have you been married? I got married when Phyllis did. <laughs> what were you doing in Ireland? Uh? 
Well, I was an aircraft mechanic for Lockheed. In Ireland? Yes. When you were courting Phyllis over in Ireland, uh, where, did you, where did you take her, Joe? Well, we went for an occasional walk, a show once in a while. Mm-hmm. Well, now that you're an old married couple, where do you take her now for excitement? I think that's the look that won her, huh? <laughs> that was a real Barry Fitzgerald look, wasn't it? Huh? <laughs> Where do you take her now that you're married, Joe? Don't sneak out of this. I want an answer here. Well, we still go for the occasional walk in the show once in a while. <laughs> Say, you're, you're in a rut, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> now, before you met uh, Joe here, how many nice Irish bucks were you engaged to, Phyllis? None. I was too young. In Ireland, the girls don't get engaged, I suppose, until they're around 23, 24, yeah? That's right. Yeah. And how, how long do the engagements usually last? Oh, about three or four years. Takes four years for a boy and girl to get acquainted in Ireland? It's obvious they don't have drive-in theaters over there. <laughs> over here, they have ten-minute intermissions at the drive-in so the kids can get married. Huh? <laughs> have you ever kissed the Blarney Stone, Phyllis? No, that's in the side. But well, since you never kissed the Blarney Stone, would you tell me how old you are? Twenty-seven. Are you sure you haven't kissed the Blarney Stone? <laughs> how old are you, Joe? I'm thirty-five. Phyllis, how old do you think I am? And uh, no flattery now. Oh, I'd say about forty. <laughs> are you sure there's no Blarney Stone in the north of Ireland? <laughs> If you were a pinball machine right now, you'd light up and say tilt. <laughs> Joe, you, you look uh, a little more practical. How old do you think I am? Oh, I'd say you're going on 50. No, I'm going on penicillin. Eh? <laughs> I grow my own, too. I scrape it off old moldy jokes. <laughs> well, you each made a pretty close guess. 40 and 50, that's 90. That's about right. <laughs> Well, this has been inspiring having you here tonight, Aaron Gobra, as we Celts always say. Now, you're going to play the DeSoto Plymouth game, you bet your life. If you beat our other two couples, you'll get a crack at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The first two couples are tied with $160 each. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected capitals of states as your category. Is that correct? All right, you've got $20. How much are you going to try? Ten. What is the capital city of Colorado? Denver. Denver is correct. And they're on their way with $30, Groucho. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to try? Talk right up, Joe. 20 $20. What is the capital city of Nebraska? Lincoln. Lincoln is correct. <laughs> they're climbing. They have $50. All right, you got $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to risk? $40. $40. What is the capital city of Virginia? Richmond. Richmond is right. <laughs> They're really on their way now. They have $90. Well, you're zooming along. You got $90. How much are you going to try? We'll try $80. You're going to try $80. What is the capital city of New York? Albany. Albany is right. And they wind up with $170. And that means that the Irish couple get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. <laughs> It's new. It's beautifully new. It's packed with value and ready to prove it. Yes, that's the beautiful new Plymouth. Now, more than ever, the car that likes to be compared. Drive it. Give it the toughest test you can think of, uphill and through traffic. Let your DeSoto Plymouth dealer arrange a demonstration ride tomorrow. Then compare. Compare the value in this beautifully new Plymouth with that in other leading low-priced cars. Check the convenience of Plymouth's ignition key starting the lively power of the high-compression engine, the soft, velvet stops of safeguard hydraulic brakes, the protection of safety rim wheels, and many other exclusive Plymouth features. Yes, check and compare. For beauty, for room, for riding comfort. Now, more than ever, the new Plymouth is the car that likes to be compared. The car that's packed with value and ready to prove it. This beautiful new Plymouth, the American beauty, 
is on display at all authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And here's the Irish war bride and her husband, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. The Star Spangled Banner was written in 1814 and became our official national anthem in 1931. Before the Star Spangled Banner was written, what song was considered the national anthem of the United States? Okay, what's the answer you two have decided upon? I'm afraid I can't answer it. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The correct answer is Hail Columbia. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $170 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week's big question will be worth $1,500. Well, it's time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. It's good to be on time, but it's better to be safe. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is sky. S-K-Y. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is... The one, the only... Groucho! I wonder what ever happened to that red-headed girl. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman has first to try for it. Just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any young people present who'd like to get married someday. Now, our studio audience selected Miss Frankie Costaletto and policeman Bob Selman. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. Uh, Miss uh, Castelletto? That's right. Frank, I'll call you Frankie, huh? Yes. Where, where are you from, Frankie? I was born somewhere on Brooklyn Avenue here in Los Angeles. <laughs> What do you mean you were born somewhere along Brooklyn Avenue? Well, we were going to the hospital. And I know that on my birth certificate, it just says Brooklyn Avenue. Do you root for the Dodgers? <laughs> uh, how old are you, Frankie? 25. You're a young-looking girl for 25. <laughs> and police, you're, you're a policeman? Yes, sir. Mr. Selman, Bob Selman. Yes, sir. Uh, how old are you? Uh... I'm 27, Groucho. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? I uh, was born on Lake Superior, in Duluth, Minnesota. You were born on Lake Superior? Yes, sir. I was born on the lake. <laughs> What are you, a whitefish? <laughs> what do you mean you were born on Lake Superior? Well, I was born on Lake Superior. My folks were on a fishing trip, and, uh... Did your old man go on fishing while this was... 
And uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a librarian. Mr. What kind of a librarian are you? Public librarian. Now, what's the difference between a public library and a, <laughs> and a private library? Well, uh... Um... Oh, I have a library at home. <laughs> well, we I don't have any books in it, but... <laughs> Good oh. place to hide booze, and... <laughs> Think of a private library. Do you think very often of a private library? <laughs> well, private libraries are usually corporation libraries. They have sort of a restricted clientele, but we like to see everybody at the public library. I always think of a private library, you know. I always think of a kind of an elderly man in a smoking jacket sitting there with a knife in his back. And, uh, <laughs> it's usually around midnight. <laughs> they never read, those fellas. They're always sitting there with knives in their back. <laughs> You're, you're not married, huh? No, I'm not married. Uh, Bob, why, why aren't you married? Not on my salary, Grato. <laughs> Would you like to get married, Bob? Someday I plan to, yes, sir. Well, when? Well, as soon as I can afford it. You mean you're going to stay a bachelor all your life? <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever thought of including uh, Frankie here in your plans? <laughs> well, I just met her, Grato. Well, you're a cop, aren't you? <laughs> Wait till she breaks the law and then pinch her. <laughs> and Miss Castelletto will tell you a thing or two. <laughs> you're still a policeman, aren't you, Bob? Yes, sir. What kind of a cop are you? I'm a probationary officer. You're on probation? <laughs> Why is that? Well, you're on your probation, Groucho, until you've proven yourself to your superior, uh, superior officers. Mm -hmm. You're under constant observation? Yes, sir, I'm under constant observation. Mm -hmm. you, you mean you cracked? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, sir, I uh, have to prove myself first. You have to watch yourself every minute, huh? Watch myself every minute. And while you're admiring yourself in the clothing store, <laughs> across the street, the crooks are robbing the bank, I suppose. <laughs> Miss Castelletto, what do you think of a man who's half cracked under observation and goes around pinching people? <laughs> He's cute. <laughs> I may be wrong, Bob, but it seems to me that you're more than casually interested in Frankie here. You know. <laughs> Why don't you ask her phone number? Go ahead. Don't be bashful. I already have it, Groucho. <laughs> See, Frankie, the long arm of the law is slipping around your waist already. <laughs> Frankie, truly, does he really have your phone number? Yes, Groucho. <laughs> Why'd you give it to him, huh? I don't know. He asked me. I'm used to answering questions. <laughs> ah, the training these young policemen get nowadays. <laughs> Remember, she's a librarian there now, uh, Bob. Yes, she can read you like a book. <laughs> well, I've kidded our policeman tonight, but he, he knows I didn't mean a word of it. I'm sure we've become old and trusted friends, Bob. Yes, sir. And eventually, we'll spend a lot of time together. Huh? <laughs> now, in just one minute, the two of you will play your bet your life for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Drive a DeSoto before you decide. All across the country, prospective car owners are doing just that. They're thrilling to the beauty and performance of this new DeSoto. For here is a car with not just a few new features, but one that is really a new model from bumper to bumper. Start at the front of this car and feast your eyes on DeSoto's brand new full-width front grille. A beautiful grille that gives the car a look of power its high-compression engine so justly deserves. Look at those newly styled rear fenders and see how they add sweep and grace to the entire appearance of the car. Look through that rear window which is larger and also has been lowered to make the visibility far better. And then take this new DeSoto out on the road. Remember, it's the car that lets you drive without shifting. Note its bigger brakes that stop you with far less effort. Feel how easy it is to drive and to steer. Yes, drive a DeSoto before you decide. Tomorrow, see the new, the all-new DeSoto at your authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> Now, let's see if a policeman and a librarian will get the chance at the $1,500. Phantom, and bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. 
The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. You're nothing on me, Phantom, and I don't know what's going on out here either. <laughs> here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected stars and current movies as your category. Is that right? Here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to try? Ten. Who plays opposite Rhonda Fleming in The Great Lover? Bob Hope. Bob Hope is correct. <laughs> and also a good start with $30. Now you got $30. How much are you going to try? Ten. Talk Twenty. About, remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight. Who is the star of Twelve O'clock High? Gregory Peck. Gregory Peck is right. They're on their way now. They have fifty dollars. Here's your third question. You got fifty. How much are you going to try the fifty? Thirty dollars. Who plays opposite George Brent and Robert Young in Bride for Sale? Uh, Claudette Colbert. Claudette Colbert is right. They're really on their way now. They have eighty dollars, Groucho. How much of the eighty will you try? Twenty enough. No way up. Eighty. All of it? Okay. Who co-stars with Wanda Hendricks and Orson Welles and Prince of Foxes? Jerome Power. Jerome Power. Right. And they wind up with one hundred and sixty dollars. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Stick around now. You still might get the chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still sky. Perhaps our next couple will say it. Well, who is next? A television expert and a housewife, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they come. Mrs. Olive Rusuk and Mr. Clifford Wong meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Oliver Rusuk, is that right? Rusick. Uh, Rusick. Uh, Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Rock Island, Illinois. And, and you, uh, Mr. Wong, you're, you're in television? That's right. There's an often we have people from show business here. <laughs> <laughs> what shows are you on, uh, Mr. Wong? I'm not on any show. <laughs> oh, uh, out of work, eh? <laughs> what was your last television job? Well, I uh, repaired a console set today, this afternoon. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You fix television sets? That's right. Well, what makes television work? Well, the... Uh, <laughs> both the... Uh, well, sync pulses and the blanking pulses were transmitted by the transmitting station. It's transmitted on the horizontal polarized plane. Mm. And it's received by the receiver. <laughs> and it's detected at the... Well, I think the secret of television is pretty safe with you, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Rusick, let's forget the whole thing. What, what does your husband do, Mrs. Rusick? He's an ex-musician. An ex-musician? Uh-huh. We've got 15 of them back there. <laughs> it's a good place for him to join, wouldn't it? What do you mean he's an ex-musician? Does he make a living not playing an instrument? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what does he do now? He's working for the school board now. Does he play a uh, xylophone? Or oh, no. Uh, once in a while. What did, he, what did he play before? Well, he played a banjo. And once did he woo someone... you with a banjo? Uh-huh. How? Oh, uh, well, and that, and that isn't how I met him. My father lived on a farm, and I was visiting him, and uh, I wanted to learn how to drive the car, but he didn't want to teach me, so he was taking a nap, and, the, and that afternoon, well, he was going to have this young lad come and help him with the haying. And this when, is the Eddie Peabody character. Yes. <laughs> so when he came and my father was asleep, he decided he might as well take a nap, too, so he crawled up on the haystack. And so I was out driving the car around in the hayfield because that way I wouldn't hit, uh, hit anybody or anything. And so yeah. I ran it into the haystack, and I bounced him out, and he landed on the hood of the car in, in front of the windshield. And that's how I met him. <laughs> Did he have his banjo with him at the time? No, he didn't. Now, uh, Clifford Wong, I'll just call you static, huh? <laughs> Tell me, as a television repairman, just what do you do? Repair television sets. <laughs> Who do you work for, Mr. Wong? Munch Television. Well, if you had to do it over again, would you go into the television business, uh, Mr. Well, Wong? Well, uh, yes, I think I will, but only on your side of the business is where there's money involved. You want to be where I am, where the money is, is that it? <laughs> All right, you ask for it. Go ahead. This is your program, huh? <laughs> You're the comedian. I'm the contestant. Go ahead. Interview me. <laughs> I think this is such a soft racket. You try it, bro. All right. Uh, what's your name? Puddin' Tame. Ask me again, and I'll tell you the same. <laughs> well, what do you 
do for a living? How do you like it? Go ahead, ask me another question. <laughs> what do you usually do for a living? I'm in television. You're I fix in... television sets. <laughs> now, since you're me, go ahead. Tell a joke. Huh? <laughs> well, I tell you, uh, something funny happened to me on the uh, way to the studio tonight. <laughs> Well, there's going to be a lot of radios going to need fixing after this. <laughs> well, I'll Go talk... ahead, shoot, Mr. Wong. Well, on my way to the studio tonight, a man stopped me. Uh -huh. He says, uh, could you let me have 30 cents so I could be with my family? Feeling sorry for the man, I handed him 30 cents. I said, uh, where is your family? This is the answer he gave me, in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> How old a man was he, do you remember? <laughs> no, I don't. What, what was the movie, do you remember that? You tell me. Now, you were going to tell us a joke. Go ahead with the joke. Yeah? <laughs> that is a joke. That's the joke? <laughs> okay, have it your own way. Yeah? What do you do for a living? I repair television sets. Well, stick to it. That's where the big money is. Huh? <laughs> Well, after talking to you two, I'm convinced television is still around the corner. <laughs> now, let's see if you can run your $20 into more than the other two couples and get a crack at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question later. I can't tell you how much they won, but George Fenneman is offstage to remind our listeners. The policeman and the librarian won $160. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. What question category did you select? A. Music, Music. by Jimmy Music. McHugh. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And how much are you going to risk? Shall we bet ten? Talk right ten. up into ten. the microphone now. Ten. Because Bing ten Crosby dollars. is listening, and oh. we don't want uh, old Baldy to miss anything here. Right? <laughs> You're going to bet ten dollars. Here's yes. your first question. Jerry Fielding plays. You give me the name of the song. Play, Jerry. Sunny side of the street. On the sunny side of the street. Thirty dollars. Okay, now you got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? 20 How dollars. much? $20. What is the name of this song? What is the answer you two have decided upon, huh? Take a stand back. Riding around that haystack suddenly made you lucky, Mr. Dawson. <laughs> we just said sky, and that's the secret word tonight, so you win $100 in cash, compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. By the way, the name of that song is I Feel a Song Coming On. Uh, they have uh, practically nothing outside of that hundred dollars. Ten dollars, right? Groucho. You're now, you're now, you've sunk down to ten dollars. And here's your third question: How much of the ten are you going to bet? I will bet five dollars. Five dollars. Give me the title of this McHugh song, okay, Jerry? Don't, don't play me. Don't, don't play me. me. Don't play me. Oh, I have fifteen dollars, Groucho. Now you're riding down the roller coaster. You got fifteen smackers. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? Let's bet it all. Here we go. What's the name of this song? I think you're hearing the law, baby. Stop. And they wind up with $30. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. All right, let's have our third couple, George. And it won't be long before we know who gets the big question. Who's ahead so far, Fenneman? The librarian and the policeman with $160. And the secret word is still sky. We invited some auctioneers and some square dance callers to the show tonight, and here comes the couple selected just before we went on the air. Auctioneer Ken Porter and square dance caller Irene Hanford meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life, folks. And if one of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. We have an auctioneer and a square dance caller, eh? <laughs> Miss uh, uh, Irene Hanford? That's right. You're a square dance caller, is that right? Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. Isn't that a kind of a peculiar occupation for a woman? Well, it might be, but I think women can do anything men can. You really think so, huh? I'd like to see you get into the steam room at the Yelts Club. Huh? 
Where are you from, Irene? Los Angeles. And uh, are you married? No, I'm not. <coughs> I'm a miss. You're, you're a miss. Huh? Well, a miss is as good as a mile. Huh? <laughs> I always say. No, I don't always say that. <laughs> I, in fact, I never say that. I, I haven't said that in years. Huh? <laughs> you're, you're the auctioneer, Mr. Porter? Uh, where, where are you from, uh... I'm from Champaign, Illinois. How long have you been in California, Mr. Porter? Well, I settled here in about 1945. What'd you settle for, 90 cents in a... <laughs> As an auctioneer, 90 cents in the dollar, I suppose. Huh? Are you married, or haven't you ever felt yourself going, going, gone? Huh? Yes, I'm married. You are, you are married, huh? How'd you meet your wife? Did you oh, pick well... her up at an auction? Huh? <laughs> uh, when I got my discharge out of Klamath Falls, Oregon, I came down here to visit... Out of where? Klamath Falls, Oregon. What were you doing up there? I was in rehabilitation camp up there. Oh. What, what do you do as, in a rehabilitation camp? Well, I was a Marine Corps. They was getting me ready for the public, I guess. <laughs> what would you say is the most important qualification for an auctioneer? Well, 95% of it is psychology, softening up the people. Well, is that what you use the hammer for? <laughs> you know... No, I mean, you got to, oh, tell jokes. I'm still trying to recover from the last joke. I had. Okay, let's hear one of the jokes. Eh? Just a small one now. Say about a $2 purchase, huh? I don't mean uh, that. I mean, you got to soften the crowd up, not with a joke, but uh, sort of in a saying, like if they're not bidding... I'll just tell them if they're dead, why don't they lay down? Or... That's a nice joke, I think, to tell them. Or that they have, would... have any of them ever taken you up in that offer? <laughs> How does an auction work, uh, Mr. Porter? Well, uh, you bring up an article and you explain it. For instance, if you're selling a cow, a piece of furniture... Or... Diamond ring or anything like that, you explain it. And tell you have to explain takes... a cow to the audience? <laughs> How do you explain a cow? I'd like to hear. <laughs> How many bids are needed to sell an item? Uh, Two bids, sir. Oh. One bid doesn't make an auction. Well, how do you know when to stop the bidding? Uh, well, when they quit bidding. This is after you tell them to lie down the floor and drop dead? Is that... <laughs> where, do you, where do you do your uh, hawking or auctioneering? <laughs> well, I auction at Auction City and... There is really a city called Auction City? Yes, sir. It's the biggest one in the world. Well, you know, I'm kind of curious to hear you give your pitch. Suppose I got a $1,000 diamond ring here, and I want you to sell it for me. Now, you go ahead and sell it. All right. Uh, here's a very gorgeous diamond ring, ladies and gentlemen. What are you going to give hard it? All right. Now, twenty five bidding now, $30, $30 now, $30 bidding now, five, five now, $30 I'm bidding now, $40 board. Now, ladies and gentlemen... You forgot to say very... drop dead, huh? <laughs> I notice you raise your hand when you're doing that chanting. Why do you do that? Do you want to ask a question? No. <laughs> it helps you pick up bids. Oh, I thought maybe you, then you want to go to the bedroom, eh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Irene, I'm nuts about type sickery. Uh, I've never gone square dancing. Could you describe a typical dance? Uh? Well, you want an easy one or a complicated one? Well, say about medium, huh? <laughs> Tell loose, Irene, huh? Well, how about... Throw your inhibitions out the window. <laughs> well, the uh, first and third couples lead out to the right in circle four. And they go once around, and the working gents go home. <laughs> Did you say the working gents go home? <laughs> yeah. Well, then who do they dance with? <laughs> You've well, only started, and the men leave already. <laughs> and the uh, the girls, their partners, are left on the side with the other two gents in, a, in two lines of three. Well, there's two gents that didn't go home, huh? <laughs> they don't like it at home, huh? <laughs> well, tell me, Gally Kirchie, let's... Uh, could, you, could you call a square dance? Uh... Well, I might give you just one... the way one might start. Okay. You always start out with an alum and left and a grand right and left, you know. So you might start out, well, swing your honey high and low when you keep on swinging that calico. Now it's alamand left with the old left hand. Right to your honey, go right and left grand. Hand over hand all around that ring and a hand over hand with the dear little thing. And you beat your honey and pound it. Well, that's pretty good. I kind of like that, huh? 
Now, suppose you want to set up an auction across the street from a square dance. <laughs> and you wanted to take that crowd away from her. Now, uh, how about you uh, starting your auction and you do your square dance and let's see how the two... Now, one, two, three, go! All right, now, 75 in now, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80,
So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $200 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week the big question will be worth $2,000. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a reminder. A dime seems like a lot of money to a small child, especially when that dime is part of the money you give the March of Dimes. And that child is a victim of infantile paralysis. Send all the dimes and dollars you can spare to your local March of Dimes headquarters. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. gentlemen, the secret word tonight is air, A-I-R. Rally, you'll bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You'll Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Why doesn't that guy get lost? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's supposed to try and take it away from me? A pair of newlyweds, Groucho, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, Mr. and Mrs. Merton Bedford meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And if you say the secret word at any time we're talking, you win $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Is that clear? Clear. Well, you're quite welcome. Now, uh, you're newlyweds, eh? Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Rose Bedford. How, how newlywed are you? Uh, uh, last Saturday. Mr. Bedford, you are the, you are the happy uh, groom? I am. I don't want to seem nosy, Mr. Bedford, but uh, approximately how old are you? 61. 61. Well, you don't look it. And uh, would it be asking too much, Mrs. Bedford, if I inquired as to your age? Oh, we're about the same age. <laughs> we are? I don't believe it. Eh? <laughs> I'll call you Rose. Huh? You don't care. You're married oh, now and you're oh. out of my clutches. Uh. <laughs> now, wh what sort of work do you do, uh, Mighton? I'm a carpenter. A carpenter? What kind of a carpenter? Huh? Finnish carpenter? Well, I mean, you start, too, don't you? Huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> you say a Finnish carpenter. I, di I didn't mean where you came from, your nationality. I meant... Uh, <laughs> so what kind of a carpenter are you? A good carpenter. How, lo how long did you go with, uh, with Merton here before he proposed, Rose? About two weeks. <laughs> Is that true, Mike? That is right. Do you remember exactly uh, what you said when you proposed? I said, I planned a trip to Alaska. Will you go with me? <laughs> and was, was she to regard that as a proposal? <laughs> How many proposals did you have before you married Merton, uh, Rose? Oh, four or five. Well, you did pretty well. Why didn't you marry one of the other boys? Well, I had three from him. <laughs> Why 
Why didn't you grab him the first time he proposed? I did, but he pretended he didn't hear me. <laughs> now, how did you meet Merton? At his first wedding. <laughs> uh, you see, his brother was my sweetheart. And we went to the wedding, and um, Everett and I took Merton and Laura in a 1910 Rambler up to Estes Park for their honeymoon. <laughs> well, I've been on honeymoon twice. <laughs> he, he was married in 1912. Uh -huh. Then I married his brother in 1914. Um, mm -hmm. so what was there about Martin that attracted you most? Do you remember? His was name. It, you... Martin? No, Bedford. My name was uh, Rose Bell Bedford. I see. And you just married him so you wouldn't have to change names? Is that <laughs> yes. I, well, uh, that had something to do with it. <laughs> and now I'd like to ask you a question. May I? <laughs> I've never had a rambler, if that's what you're getting away with. <laughs> okay, sure. Well, I'll answer anything now, within reason. Now, this is a problem that has been presented to my children by me marrying Martin. If their mother marries their uncle, then she becomes their aunt. <laughs> and they become their own cousins. <laughs> but he becomes their stepfather. So well, they are their own step brothers and sisters. Yeah. <laughs> now, will eventually they become their own grandpa and grandma? <laughs> you want to go through that again, Rose? <laughs> My, my, I, I think since he's a carpenter and you're, they're all stepchildren, he can fix the steps, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Has anything embarrassing ever, thing ever happened to you, uh, Martin? Yes. As a coach for the girls' basketball team... You <laughs> a coach? I was coach. We had a practice in the gymnasium. I was the only man present. I was standing in the center holding the ball for the jump-up. Something out of my line of vision happened. And all the girls turned, blushing away. I daresn't look back. <laughs> by and by, the girls came back, and later I saw one of the girls had lost her bloomers. <laughs> what was the score then, do you remember? <laughs> I'm a sportsman at heart. That's the only thing. <laughs> well, you seem like a very happy couple, and I wish you a long and smooth voyage on the sea of matrimony. Now, just watch out for a tidal wave, about five pounds three ounces. Huh? Thank you. Now, in just a minute, you're going to have a chance to make $2,000 in real cash. I don't know what other kind. <laughs> Friends, you know, it really pays to do business with a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. For every one of these dealers from coast to coast has an assignment that means service to you. A dealer's creed, if you like. And it's carried out by each and every person you'll meet at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's. From the skilled mechanics in the shop to the folks in the showroom. That assignment is to deal with you fairly and squarely at all times. To give you the quickest possible service and to charge you a reasonable amount whether it be for a routine checkup or a difficult repair job. For the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers believe in one policy above all others, that the customer's wants come first. That's why you can count on friendly courtesy and genuine consideration whenever you visit an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. <laughs> Let's see if a pair of newlyweds will get a chance at the $2,000. Venom and tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that $20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. 
Here we go. Let's see how high I can build your $20. You selected important cities of the world as your category. Is that right? All of these cities are over half a million in population. You have $20. How much are you going to risk? Now, Rose? Five. In what country is the city of Lisbon? Uh, Portugal. Portugal is correct. <laughs> They're on their way, Groucho. They have $25. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. How much of the 25 are you going to try? Ten. All right. And what country is the city of Nagoya? N-A-G-O-Y-A. India. Is that the answer you two agree no, upon? No, I think it was in uh, Spain. No, no, I, I'm sorry. It's Japan. Oh. That's a tough one. They now have $15. How much of the 15 will you try? Two and a half. In what country is the city of Lyons? L-Y-O-N-S. Switzerland. Do you France. agree with that? France. Do you agree which, uh, now which, oh, which one do you want? Huh? France. France is correct, huh? <laughs> Run away again, they have 17.50. I had a squeeze. 17.50, huh? <laughs> Why, you can get a suit with three pair of pants for that. <laughs> Here we go. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 17.50 are you going to try? $10 again. $10. In what country is the city of Zurich? Z U R I C H. Switzerland. Yeah, you're right. It's Switzerland, huh? Well, they wind up with $27.50. Now, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, stick around. You can still be high for the night and get a crack at the $2,000. Groucho, the secret word is still air. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a married man and a girl who works in a supermarket. And here they are. Miss Helen Noyes and Mr. Burt Cox meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says that a soda Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss, uh, Miss Helen Noyes, is that right? Uh, where, you, where are you from, uh, Helen? I'm from Ralph's grocery store in Burbank. You were born in a supermarket? <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought supermarkets didn't make deliveries anymore. <laughs> I, are you married? No. You're, you're, you're the married man, eh? But, uh, yes. Mr. Cox, uh, where, where are you from? Uh, right across from Covington, Kentucky. I was born. In Ohio, eh? <laughs> Raised in Kentucky. Some people out there have been flooded by the Ohio River, and they want to. <laughs> how, do, how did you meet your wife, Mr. Cox? Back in the sidewalks of New York, back there in Buffalo, New York, and I was coming out of the restaurant. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> you're on the sidewalks of New York, back in Buffalo, New York? <laughs> well, I just happened there, and... I was coming out of a restaurant, uh, very, very cold, and it was the uh, streets were all icy, and the sidewalks icy, and as I came out, she'd come in, and, uh, <laughs> you know, like, and we both went flat, and she said, where are you f come from? And I said, I come from Kentucky, where did you come from? She said, oh, you did, did you, wham? <laughs> she didn't like Happy she Chandler, said, I guess. I come from Scotland. I come from Scotland. Well, I finally you slid her over Scotland, to Buffalo, the Ohio River, and Kentucky. Huh? <laughs> well, it was kind of like... You said he touched all the bases, but... <laughs> okay, anyhow, now you're in Buffalo, flat on the sidewalk, huh? Scotland is cool. I finally got her on her feet. I slid her over the telephone pole and lifted her up and... What, uh, what was that? <laughs> I slid over the telegraph pole, got a hold of it, and grabbed her hand, and we got up. Oh. And then uh, I said, uh, well, let's go in and And then you had a Western us. Union, was that it? Uh, <laughs> in the telegraph pole? <laughs> Yeah, when I, you get married in the East? Uh, I was only noticing her blue eyes, her dark hair, and her red lips, and I wasn't thinking of anything else. <laughs> well, I'll go along with you on that. Right? The buggy ride. Go on, you may fire when ready. I, I took her a buggy you ride. You took her for a buggy ride? The next day, she said she'd well, go Well, what became of the Rambler, huh? Oh, <laughs> not oh no, that was another couple. Right? <laughs> this is really the Department of Utter Confusion here. Right? In Niagara Falls, we took a buggy ride. You took a buggy ride over Niagara Falls? <laughs> driving this horse, my hand got cold, and I kind of slid it up her sleeve a little bit to keep warm. She asked me to. And she said, I'm going to corn in one finger, and I'll take it home mended. And just jokingly, I said, do you mend my, my gloves, and I'll buy yours. And she took it seriously. She said, well, wouldn't that be romantic? We could get married right in Niagara Falls. And I said, well, I wasn't quite prepared. I haven't been... She said, you don't need any money to get married. I said, well, anyhow, uh, I haven't got a ring and anything now. She looked in her hand, was a ring, her mother's ring that she had with her. <laughs> I said, well, he said he came well equipped, this guy. <laughs> we'll go to Buffalo and then we'll come back he probably tomorrow. even provided the telegraph pole. <laughs> then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll get married. She said, I have my purse with me. And she paid the hotel bill and the preacher $5. And she's been taking care of me ever 
ever since like that, nearly 50 years. Very happy. Well, I think you ought to take a deep bow to the audience, and I think you ought to get a big round of applause. Huh? Anybody can start off a marriage, flop down the sidewalk, and then stay married 50 years. <laughs> all the credit in the world, huh? Now, uh, what do you do in a supermarket, uh, Miss Noyes? I almost forgot about you, as charming as you look, huh? I'm a checker. You're a checker, huh? No wonder the boys in the firehouse like to play uh, checkers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Buffalo and fall on the sidewalk, huh? <laughs> I don't want to appear uh, particularly stupid, uh, Miss Noyes, but just what is a checker? Well, I... Check the prices. I'm a cashier. Oh, you're the cashier, huh? Now it begins to register. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no. What do you do? Huh? Well, seriously, I, I check the prices, ring up the things on the register, and see that the things are properly bagged. How do you mean you properly bag the groceries? Is there more than one way to uh, <laughs> well, yes. bag the groceries? Huh? Sure, you have to put all the canned goods on the bottom and the soft things on the top. I don't know why you bother. When I get home, the soft things are always on the bottom anyway. <laughs> Do you, do you have to know all the prices, Miss Noyes? Uh, no. That's too bad. They live next door to me, and they're very nice people, the prices. <laughs> now, tell me, what artichokes go in the top of the sack or the bottom? On the top. You're just checking the checker, that's all. <laughs> now, Mr. Cox, I don't mean to be ignoring you, but I can't think of anything better to do at the moment. <laughs> do you ever do any, any shopping for your family, but... Mm, not much. Do you know the prices? No. Nobody seems to know the prices. Huh? <laughs> Very nice couple. <laughs> Although I must admit they stay pretty high most of the time. <laughs> well, if you don't know the prices, how can you sure you're not being cheated, Bert? I'm not. A gullible mm. fellow, isn't he? Huh? <laughs> Miss uh, Noise, how can he be sure he's not being cheated? Huh? He can always check his sales slip. How do you know he wears one? <laughs> Now, where would you put tomatoes on the top or the bottom? <laughs> well, you're fired. I was speaking of canned tomatoes. <laughs> well, now that my shopping is all done and I haven't got a dime in my pocket, let's see if you two will get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. You run your $20 into no more than the other couples and you get a chance at the big money. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but George Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Bedford, won $27.50. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous discoveries and inventions as your category. Now, you have $20. How much are you going to try at the $20? Five. Okay. Who discovered the law of gravity? Oh, I'm sorry. It was Sir Isaac Newton. Well, now you've got $15. Remember, you're going for $2,000. That's the big money anyhow. Now, how much of the 15 are you going to try? Five. Who perfected the first electric telegraph? Marconi. No, no, that's an Italian dish. No, this was um, <laughs> no, this was Morse. You know, you only got ten dollars. Now, how much of the ten dollars are you going to try? Two dollars. Two dollars? Okay. Who discovered radio? You got to talk. Oh, you got to talk. Yes. Oh, who is it? Yes. Please? No, I don't know. You don't know? It's a good thing you only bet two dollars. Oh, huh? Isaac Newton. Madame Curie. Huh? Madame Curie. Madame Curie is right. Well, we're on the way again. Now they have twelve dollars. Now is your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the try? Uh, how much of the twelve will you try? Shoot, 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 ten. Ten. shoot the shoot the works. Twelve, twelve, twelve. Or ten. That's twelve. twelve. Okay. Yeah. Who advanced the theory of relativity? Einstein. Einstein. I Albert Einstein. Now well, they wind up with twenty-four dollars. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Well, our last couple will be out here in a moment, and then we know who gets the chance at the $2,000. George, who's ahead so far? Well, the newlyweds are leading with $27.50. And Groucho, the secret word is still air. We invited some brownie troop leaders and some public school officials to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Rosalie Jackman and Mr. David Bilovsky, and here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life, kid. And uh, if one of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he gets a hundred bucks instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. <laughs> Jackman? Yes. Very pretty girl, Mrs. Oh, Jackman. You. You're the brownie troop uh, leader? That's right. What, what is a brownie? One of those chocolate nut fudge squares you buy? <laughs> no. You get in the bakery, huh? Yeah? Uh, brownie's a little girl. A little girl scout. Uh, how long have you been married? Eight and a half years. 
I thought you were about 21 years old. Oh, huh? thanks. Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any children? Yes, I have two. Two you girls. You have two. I bet they're beautiful, too, aren't they? Well, we think they're kind of cute. Do they like brownies, too? Uh, yes, one's a brownie, and she loves it. What, what does your husband do? Uh... He's a tool inspector for Manasco. They make airplanes. <laughs> Well, you said something, and you win $100 for that, huh? What did I say? Are you waving to your husband? Yes, You ought to be a... What a nerve you've got of me flirting with you here all doing this. Well, you just said air, and that's the secret word tonight, so you win $100 in cash. Oh, compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. <laughs> now, now, let's, let's, get, let's get back to business, huh? Mr. Belovsky, you're from the public schools? That's right, Gosso. And uh, uh, how, old, how old are you? 30. Well, you, you'd be in about the seventh grade in school now, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, judging from my experience. <laughs> Just what do, you, what do you do in school? Huh? Assistant supervisor of attendance in the city school. Oh, you supervise the attendance, huh? I Why do the attendants need supervising? Huh? I don't supervise the attendance. I supervise the attendance. <laughs> well, why do you say so, huh? <laughs> Would you, would you be a vice to amplifying that, uh, Mr. Belovsky? I'm the uh, liaison man, say, between the school and the home. Well, you can. I don't know what you mean. But... <laughs> I'm the, uh, the one they send out when they try to find out why a child is not in school. You're the contact between the home and the school, is that That's it? That's right. You'd, in other words, you drive a bus, is that it? <laughs> You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you were a truant officer. <laughs> we don't call it that anymore. <laughs> when I was a kid, we had other names for them, too. <laughs> What's the difference between an old-style truant officer and an assistant supervisor of attendance? And don't say the spelling. <laughs> Well, it's a matter of approach. Today we try to find out why a child is not in school rather than just grabbing him by the seat of his Steady pants. now, steady. <laughs> and drag him into school. Uh-huh. In other words, you try to find the reason they play hooky, is that right? Right. Well, I can tell you the reason, you know. <laughs> they hate school. <laughs> <laughs> you must have some interesting stories about your job, Mr. Bozlovsky. Uh, could you uh, give us one? Well, I remember a time when I visited a home and asked for a mother of a boy. I've done that, too. Uh... <laughs> Before I knew what was happening, I was helping in the delivery of a child. They had expe expected the doctor. And you expected that kid uh, to be in school? <laughs> Certainly grabbing him at a young age. <laughs> and what happened? The doctor arrived. <laughs> so did the baby. Now, how are your brownies, Mrs. Jackman? <laughs> are, th are they done yet? Oh, they're fine. <laughs> and while as a brownie troop leader, you get pretty good pay, I presume, huh? <laughs> no, I do it just for the fun of it. Well, couldn't you have fun and get paid, too? <laughs> well, that would be nice. <laughs> what, are, what are your duties as a... I'll call you Rosalie, huh? Sure, that's well. Your husband turned around the other way for a while. <laughs> <laughs> we collect dues a nickel a week. And I buy the handcraft materials and mm -hmm. oh, just all kinds of How things. How many girls do you supervise? Huh? I have about 13 now. 18 girls at a nickel a week? That's 90 cents. That's not hay, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty near hay, but it's not hay. <laughs> Do you teach the youngsters anything about scouting? Oh, yes, we take them on cookout. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Mine is out on Thursdays. Huh? <laughs> and with a hangover Friday, huh? <laughs> we take them out to a park or where they can have a barbecue or a fire. And, and, and then what do you do? Then you call the roll? Huh? Oh, yes, we always call the roll. You cook the roll with the brownies? <laughs> <or> <laughs> Well, I'm sure it's a very worthwhile organization. There ought to be more organizations like that. It huh? certainly is. I'd like to join, too. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's get back to you, Mr. Belovsky. Uh, pretend I'm a high school boy and I'm not in school, and you run into me in Sam's pool room. 
<laughs> now, that's your cue. Now, uh, find out what's wrong, huh? Hello, Groucho. What are you doing uh, here? How do you do, Mr. Belovsky? Yeah? How do you do, Groucho? How do you do, Mr. Belovsky? <laughs> if we keep saying that, you'll never mm -hmm. find out what I'm doing in the pool. It's only fifth period now. You should be in geometry class now. I'll play the six ball on the side, huh? <laughs> now, what'll happen if I don't go back to school? Well, if you don't go to school, Groucho, you'll be a shiftless... Uh, ne'er do well, or maybe even worse. <laughs> That's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> well, I must say it's been very educational having you two here tonight, and people like you who devote their lives to youngsters are doing an important job for the community. Now, you're going to play the DeSoto Plymouth game, you bet your life. You beat our other two couples, you'll get a crack at the $2,000 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The newlyweds are still ahead with $27.50. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You selected Latin songs as your category. Is that correct? Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you risk? Ten. Hmm. What's the name of this Latin song? Play, Jerry. Tibane. Tibane. And it on the way with $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to try? 20 Jerry Fielding will play. You identify this song. Brazil is right. And now we have $50. Listen, you're not spending all your time with those brownies. You wouldn't know that. <laughs> okay, you got 50. How much are you going to try? 40, I guess. Okay, give me the title of this song. Amapola. Amapola. They were climbing with $90 now. What a silly name, Amapola. Isn't that a silly name for a song? <laughs> All right, you got $90. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? 40 What's the title of this Latin melody? <laughs> Green Eye. And they wind up with a total of $130. And that means that they get the chance at the DeSoto play of $2,000 question. Do you know what makes it possible for a car owner to get really expert service at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's? Well, for one thing, the training their service mechanics get. Factory training. Not just when they first go to work for a DeSoto Plymouth dealer, but constant training to keep them up on the new service and maintenance methods that are constantly coming out of the factory. And it's important for all you car owners to get this expert service at a fair price. That's why it pays to go to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer, whether it's an emergency or a routine checkup. So for the best from your car, Drive in where you get the best service at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here is the Brownie troop leader and the school official, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question, Groucho. Well, that's a lot of money. You can buy a lot of brownies for that, huh? <laughs> Here we go for $2,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Here it is. The last emperor to rule on the North American continent was driven from his throne in 1867. Who was this last emperor in North America? What's the answer you two have decided upon? What is it? Montezuma? No, I I'm sorry. It's Emperor Maximilian. Same thing. He was driven from his throne in Mexico by Benito Juarez. Sure. That was a tough one. I'm sorry. What? So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $130 in the quiz plus $100 for saying the secret word. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You 
Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You'll Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $2,500. Well, it's almost time for Bingo the Crosby, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Remember, you can't stop quick when streets are slick. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. secret word tonight is bread, B-R-E-A-D. Really? You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Is that fool still around? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples tonight. It's a lot of money. George Fenneman, who's first to try for it? We invited some pediatricians to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, we selected Dr. Alonzo Cant. His partner is a young mother from the audience, Mrs. Christine Garcia. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 immediately. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. A young mother and a pediatrician. Uh, wh which one is the young mother? I am. <laughs> you, you are? Congratulations, Mrs. Uh, Christine Garcia, huh? Yes. You know, uh, uh, you're named after a 10 cent cigar, did you know that? <laughs> yes, I am. Where, where are you from? I'll call you Christine, huh? Okay. I'm, uh, you call me Garcia, huh? All right. <laughs> Later I'm... on, I'll give you a message from Garcia. <laughs> Where are you from, Christine? Albuquerque, New Mexico. And Mr. Alonzo Stagg, uh, Cass, huh? <laughs> what, what's your hometown? Los Angeles. And Mr. Cass, how, how long have you two been married? Huh? I'm a pediatrician. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't care what your religion is, just as long as you're happy. Huh? <laughs> now then, how long have you two been married, huh? She's not my wife. A fine time to desert her right after she has a child. <laughs> How old are you, Christine? Nineteen. Ni Nineteen? Mm -hmm. huh? Well, you're certainly well preserved, huh? <laughs> you don't look a day over eighteen. <laughs> How long have you been a mother? Uh, my baby is eight months old. Uh, Mr. Uh, Cass, <laughs> uh, what did you say your vocation was? And don't tell me the last two weeks in August, huh? No, I'm a That's a very old joke, huh? <laughs> It's I'm so old, I didn't even get a laugh, huh? <laughs> what is your vocation? And don't tell me the last two weeks in August, huh? <laughs> Maybe the month is wrong. I'll try July. Next week. <laughs> You're a pediatrician, huh? That's right. Is that so? How long have you been a bicycle rider? <laughs> I don't ride bicycles. I take care of babies. Oh, you're a baby doctor, huh? Oh, I thought a baby doctor would be about three years old, huh? <laughs> Like a baby elephant, huh? <laughs> well, that shows you, huh? You don't mind if I call you a doctor, do you? Uh... Well, uh, uh, most uh, doctors like to be called just doctor or, or Al. Oh, I couldn't call my doctor Al. His name is Henry, huh? <laughs> you want me to call you doctor or uh, 
Al, or what? Well, you use your own judgment. That's perfectly all right. Okay, well, uh, tell me, Josephine, how long... <laughs> You brought that on yourself, Doc. <laughs> Do you have any little patients of your own at home? Yes, I have six children. Oh. They're not patients. They're not your patients. Eh? <laughs> Smart kids, they don't trust their old man. <laughs> why, why is that? Why aren't they your uh, victims? Well, uh, usually, patients, yeah. usually it's not considered ethical to take care of your own family. In addition to that, it'd be kind of difficult collecting the bill, wouldn't it? <laughs> How, how old is your husband, uh, Mrs. Garcia? Twenty-three. Is he shaving yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what sort of work does he do? He's an upholster. Uh, how did you meet him? I met him at a dance. My father introduced him to me. What do you mean, your father introduced you? Uh... Well, he knew him. Oh, he knew him? And, uh, and did you evince a desire to meet this man? Or just, uh... Well, no. Did your father drag over everybody at a dance <laughs> and, and say, here's another specimen. Try this one. Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> What, what is the baby's name, Christine? John Joseph. John Joseph? Mm -hmm. uh, any uh, reason why you chose that name? Well, it's John is my husband's first name, and Joseph is my father's name. I see. And he gets, uh, he gets an assist for dragging him over that dance floor. <laughs> how, how much did your baby weigh when it was born, Christine? Six pounds, eight ounces. And what does it weigh now? Twenty-two pounds. Gained a lot of weight, didn't he? Huh? Well, they're supposed to double their weight in six months. At that rate, time the kid is 21, he'd weigh about 2,300 pounds. <laughs> Doc, uh, I mean, Croker, is, uh, <laughs> is, is Christine uh, doing the right thing? Uh? Well, uh, the first job of a baby is to gain weight and uh, uh, keep its strength up. In some cases, that's the last job the bum ever has. Huh? <laughs> How much is your pride and joy eating a day, Christine? Besides baby food, uh, four bottles. You eat four bottles a day? <laughs> That's a pretty hearty kid, you know. Uh, he doesn't is, uh, when you bite him, isn't there danger of flying glass? <laughs> I suppose he just lies there on his back and blows martini bubbles. Huh? <laughs> what did you put in his bottle, Christine? Huh? Uh, his formula, about 160 calories. What's the calorie? Is that any relation to cab calorie? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something in food uh, to make the baby big and strong. You better stick to a plain diet for that kid, huh? <laughs> Every day, wholesome food like bottles and glasses. <laughs> now, Pablo and Pete, suppose you tell them... <laughs> suppose you tell this little mother what a calorie is. Well, a calorie is the amount of heat that it takes to heat a cubic centimeter of water through one degree. Well, if your kid can swallow that, he has a cast iron stomach. <laughs> Doc, what kind of a pediatrician are you? Huh? Well, I belong to the Blue Shield. What's that? What's the Blue Shield? Blue Shield's a, a national organization organized by the doctors. It's a voluntary medical insurance plan where the people pay a certain amount each month. Then they're taken by care of by any doctors they choose. Well, is it like in England? Can they get glasses and toupees and things like that? Well, I don't dispense glasses and toupees. I suppose they'd have to pay. Have you got an old toupee? You're not. Uh... <laughs> not yet. <laughs> well, what do you do as a pediatrician? Well, I uh, take care of the babies right from birth and uh, watch their development, and advise the mothers how to uh, feed their babies and uh, see that they're raised. I hope into being good citizens. Mm -hmm. Do the mother swallow all this hoopla? Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tell me, Christine, does uh, your pediatrician do all this work on your baby? Well, so far he's given him a couple of shots. You mean he shot him? Huh? <laughs> well, we've all got to go sometime, I guess. <laughs> Why'd he shoot him, in the head? No, in the arm. <laughs> I'm, I'm still getting those, huh? <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. He just winged him, in other words. Huh? <laughs> now, Doc, as long as you're here, would you mind if I steal some free advice? No, go ahead. I have a three-and-a-half-year-old daughter, and she loves candy. Should, should I give it to her? Why, of course. How much? Is candy? Well, she can have all she wants, as a matter of fact. All she wants? Yes. Isn't it bad for the teeth? Or? No. Is that so? Well, I'm glad my kid can't hear this. Huh? <laughs> and she doesn't like to drink her orange juice in the morning. What, what should I do about that? Well, you could try drinking it yourself. <laughs> Well, I, 
By the time I get to hers, it's pretty sloppy, huh? <laughs> And during the night, she likes to get up out of bed every few hours. Uh, how can I make her sleep? Try spanking her. Every night, slugging her? <laughs> I don't think it would last very long if you slugged her once or twice. I don't think I would either. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's uh, you're pretty tough with babies, huh? <laughs> Give them a lot of candy, snatch away their arms juice, and slug them, huh? <laughs> Can't wait till I get home with that baseball bat, huh? <laughs> Well, in spite of my kidding, Doctor, I'm sure you pediatricians are contributing a great deal to the health of the community. Now, in just one minute, you're going to try for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. Every DeSoto Plymouth dealer has an assignment that means service to you, a mission to deal with you fairly and squarely whether it be for a new car, a used car, or a simple repair job. Friends, those few simple words stand for a whole way of doing business, a business policy, you might call it, by which more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers across the entire country have made a reputation which, frankly, is the envy of many other folks in the automotive business, or in any business for that matter. These dealers realize that it's good business sense to treat customers right to make courtesy an important part of the day's work of all their employees, to tackle any job, no matter how small, with an honest desire to please you. Now, if that's the kind of place you like to do business with, drive in to any authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, let's see if a young mother and a pediatrician will get the chance at the $2,500. Send them and tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs with beverages in the title. Is that right? Here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to try and talk right into the microphone? $10. What's the name of this song? Play, Jerry. Roll out the barrel. And they're on their way. They have $30, Rocho. Well, now you got $30. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? $20 this time. $20. Let's see if you uh, can identify this one. T for two. T for two. They're climbing now. They have $50. All right, you have $50. How much of the 50 will you bet? Forty. Forty. Give me the title of this song with a beverage in the title. Music, please. Cream in my coffee. Cream in my coffee. You're the cream of my coffee at 70 cents a pound. Now, here's the... La they have $90, $90. $90. They wouldn't have written that song today. Here's your last chance to beat the other couple. Uh, how much of the 90 are you going to try? 20 Twenty dollars. All right. This song is by Hoagie Carmichael. It's got a beverage in the title. Okay. Oh, buttermilk sky. Oh, buttermilk sky. And they wind up with one hundred and ten dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now don't sneak off. You might still be high for the night and get the chance at the twenty-five hundred dollar question. Groucho, the secret word is still bread. Perhaps our next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a shoemaker and a housewife. And here they are, Mr. Marvin Babb and Mrs. Harriet Mosley. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Mosley, is that right? Right. Where are you from, Mrs. Mosley? Sioux City, Iowa, originally. Sioux City, huh? <laughs> Mr. Babb, uh, who do you work for? For Joe Zinke. Are you married, Mr. Babb? Yes. Does your wife think you're a good shoemaker? Well, naturally. Probably thinks you're a fine fellow to boot, too, huh? <laughs> Has she ever done that? She tried a few times. Mm -hmm. Do you have any little hides at home that need tanning? Uh, <laughs> Got one. Got one, huh? How long have, have you been married, Mrs. Mosley? Almost 14 years. Well, you don't look it. Huh? Thank you, sir. You look like a recent bride. Huh? I'm almost old enough to be your mother, I'll be. <laughs> I, I would consider that very seriously about <laughs> 
fine, Mr. Marks. You come out and join the brood. <laughs> well, if I have to be part of a brood, let's get it, huh? <laughs> I want to do my own brooding. Now, uh... <laughs> you, you have children? I'll yes, call sir. you Harriet, huh? Thank you. Yes, I have children. What are their ages? Twelve, eight, and six, and four. Bingo. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, I thought you called my number. <laughs> How did you meet your husband, Harriet? Feet first. Feet first? Yes, sir. He was stuck in a transom. <laughs> was it your transom? No, sir. <laughs> Would you he mind clarifying to... that? Well, he was trying to get into his own hotel room the hard way, I guess. <laughs> he started through, and the transom had closed on him, and he couldn't get out. He couldn't get in. Are you sure that was his room? <laughs> yes, sir, I am. <laughs> because he was making these strange noises. That's uh, the first thing that drew my attention to him. And uh, Well, it's not imagine... the customary position, I No. <laughs> isn't. And he said, uh, well, I have a key in my pocket. That seemed awfully silly, but uh, <laughs> I got the key out of his pocket. Just a moment, Harriet. Uh, just a moment. <laughs> Why was he going in through the transom if he had a key in his pocket? <laughs> Mr. Marks, he's never told me. I honestly don't know. That's the truth. And he still... I went? have my own ideas, but... Uh, They're not your own ideas. They're mine, too. <laughs> Oh, uh, shoemaker, I'll, I'll just call you cobbler, huh? Oh, we don't like to be called that. That's more of a butcher. Uh, well, some of my shoes have been butchered up pretty well. <laughs> so what specifically do you do? Uh, I uh, repair shoes, put on new soles, new heels, make repairs in the uppers. You repair uppers? You mean, <laughs> you mean you're also a dentist? <laughs> Oh, I just shoes. Oh, now what's the... Uh, used to be an old joke about a fellow with patent leather shoes, leather on top and his bare feet with patent on the ground. Uh, <laughs> that belonged to Moran and Mac, the two black crows. Uh, and, and they can have it, I might add. Uh, 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 how'd you get to be a shoemaker? Did you study at Oxford? No. <laughs> That's a kind of a joke, you see. Which shoes are hard? Do you ever sing Shoo Shoo Baby when you're uh, working on it? <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> Which shoes are harder to repair, men's or, or women's? No, women's shoes are much harder to repair. Why, why is it? Well, because of all those fantastic designs and styling. So why, why do they wear such fantastic styles? Uh, Harriet, uh, maybe you can answer that. Why do they wear such well, peculiar suppose, styles? Uh, uh, get the men to notice their feet. Wouldn't they do better attracting attention if they walked around barefoot? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you really want to stop traffic, try going without, uh, well, without looking carefully before you cross the street. Huh? <laughs> what do they put in cheap shoes that make them wear out? Well, they put a lot of belly leather in the soles and the insoles. And... What's belly leather? Well, <laughs> well that's uh, the part of the hide that is the covering for the animal's belly. And then you put well, What's the matter with that? Why isn't that just as good as any other part? Well, that's nice for the cow, but it don't work very good in shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you mean they, ju they just can't stomach that kind of leather? <laughs> Suppose I brought some shoes into your shop and they were in pretty bad shape. Exactly. What would you do to them? They were really knocked around, beat up, and rip, rattle, and run down the hills. I'd start... Put on a new welt, new heels, new heel bases. You do all really that, make huh? them, Really make them look like a new pair of shoes. Seems hardly worthwhile to go to all that trouble. I'm talking about horseshoes. Huh? <laughs> now, can you tell anything about a person just by looking at a pair of shoes? Yes. Well, uh, what can you tell? Give us an example. Well, you can tell whether he's a man or a woman. <laughs> Shoemaker, stick to your last. <laughs> How would you like it if I came down to your shop and tied all the shoelaces together? <laughs> well, I must say I learned a lot about shoe repairing here tonight. Now, you're going to play your bet your life for $2,500. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big question later. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The pediatrician and the young mother earned $110. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected leaders in our government as your category. Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to try? Ten. Who is vice president of the United States? Barkley. Alvin Barkley is right. We're on my way with $30, Groucho. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? 20. Who is the chief justice of the United States? Douglas. No, 
I'm sorry. It's, it's Fred Vinson. Oh, dear. Now they have $10. Well, now oh. you've got $10. Here's your third question. How much of the 10 will you try? You bet the 10 <laughs> Who is the senior senator from Ohio? His father was a president. Taft. Senator Taft is correct. And they're on their way again. They have $20. Now you've got 20 Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the 20 will you bet? 20 Who is the secretary of state? Dean Atkinson. Dean Atkinson is correct. And they wind up with $40. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, in a moment, we'll know who's going to earn the chance at the $2,500 question. George, who's ahead so far? The pediatrician and the young mother are leading with $110. And the secret word is still bread. We invited a number of models to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience chose Dorothy Green. Her partner is Mr. M.A.K. Feldsberg, an artist. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers, including that whistle. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Miss Dorothy uh, Green, is that right? That's correct. You're, you're the model and a very, very lovely one, too, huh? Are, are you married? Yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> Let's quit right here, huh? <laughs> Do you have any uh, little new models at home? Well, they're sort of new. I have three. You have three? Yes, I do. How old are they? I have one six, one five, and one two. Well, you don't look it. Well, thank you. <laughs> Must have got married on your bar mitzvah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mr. M. A. K. Felsberg, is, is that right? Yes. Well, where are you from, uh, Mac? New York originally. Call you Mac, huh? Yes, definitely. Uh, where are you from? New York originally. New York, huh? You're you're the artist, huh? That's right. You look a little drawn. I didn't. Uh... <laughs> I didn't recognize the name. What comic strip do you draw, Mr. I don't draw comic strips. Well, keep trying. You'll get there, right? <laughs> Are you married, Mac? Yes. How, how did you meet your wife? At Carnegie Hall, we happened to have been sitting together. Did you go in there together? Or just, uh, no. Just together. music lovers, huh? Yes. You started out as music lovers, That's is that it? That's right. And you didn't wind up that way, though? No, I carried on with my painting. <laughs> I hope that's the only carrying on you did, Mr. <laughs> Definitely. What were they playing the night you were at Carnegie Hall? Do you remember? Oh, uh, Brown, Brandenburg, and Chester, number two. Well, well forget it's that. It's Bach, you know. It's not Brown. Uh, Bach, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just want you to know that I'm no schmo, you know. No. <laughs> Many a glass of Bach beer I've drunk in my time. <laughs> Have you ever painted a portrait of your wife, uh, Mr. Feldsberg? Yes, as a matter of fact. Where do you hang her? Huh? <laughs> Where did you hang her? Huh? In the living room over the fireplace. <laughs> Isn't it a little warm there? Huh? I'm talking about the painting. <laughs> on this program, we're never sure, Mr. Feldsberg. Do <laughs> you have many paintings on exhibition and galleries? Yes, I have some... Uh, all the way across the country, Boston, New York, Pittsburgh, and a few others. Any and local people? Or yes, I sold, people? recently I sold a painting, quite a large painting, to Frank Sinatra. To Sinatra? Yes. Well, who carried it home for? <laughs> that was probably a frame-up, huh? <laughs> How can you tell if someone has artistic talent? Well, I don't, prim I don't believe in the talent. There is no such thing as There's no such thing as... This will be a great blow to Bing Crosby, you know. <laughs> Particularly since his son is now pushing him off the airway. <laughs> Could I learn to paint a picture of uh, Dorothy uh, Green here? Oh, I think so, with a proper supervision. <laughs> well, if I have to have supervision, I'm not interested. Huh? <laughs> now, what kind of a model are you, outside of being a pretty fair-looking dish there, Dorothy? Uh, <laughs> Are you the new uh, 1950 model DeSoto that's all new from bumper to bumper? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that, no. I'm a photographic and uh, showroom model. And where do you do your modeling? Uh, I work through Carol and Leonetti's agency in Hollywood. House of Charm, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. May I ask how old you are, Dad? Yes, I'm 26. You're a fairly recent model, aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> what, what size are you? What size am I? Mm. I'm a perfect size 12. I don't care what size you are. You're just perfect, Dad. <laughs> what do you say is the most difficult part about modeling? 
Well, I would say the fact that we usually work a season ahead. You uh, wind up in a nice stuffy hot showroom modeling fur coats in the middle of the summer and usually wind up out on the beach in the pouring rain modeling bathing suits in January or something. You wear a bathing suit in the winter? Yes, I have, many times. I can't see what keeps you warm. <laughs> You're not supposed to. <laughs> well, I can dream, can I? <laughs> Now, what kind of models do you prefer to work with, Mr. Felsberg? Well, I paint the sea, landscapes and seascapes. Landscapes. Now, well, <laughs> you stick to your work and I'll stick to mine. <laughs> now, Mr. Felsberg, I want you to disregard anything I've said about you. Your professional reputation is safe in spite of me. Now, you're going to play the DeSoto-Plymouth game. You bet your life. If you beat our other two couples, you'll get a crack at the $2,500 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The pediatrician and the young mother are still ahead with $110. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected maiden names of movie stars as your category. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? 10. All right, we'll try 10. What is Mrs. Humphrey Bogart's maiden name? Lauren Bacall. Lauren right. Bacall is correct. And they're off to a good start with $30, Groucho. How much of the 30 are you going to try? Remember, you're going for $2,500. That's the big one now. Right. Twenty. Twenty. What is Mrs. Tyrone Powers' maiden name? Linda Christian. Linda Christian is correct. Yes. They're climbing now. They have fifty dollars. Now you have fifty dollars. Here's your third question. How much will you bet of the fifty? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Uh, Twenty-five. Here we go. What is Mrs. Walter Wange's maiden name? Joan Bennett. Joan Bennett is right. They're really on their way. They have seventy-five dollars. Now you got seventy-five, and here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the seventy-five will you risk? Two tight. Sixty. Sixty. What is Mrs. Desi Arnaz's maiden name? Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball! And they wind up with a grand total of $135, and that means that they get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. If you own a car, it's important to you to get expert service at a fair price. You don't have to be told that. But I do want to tell you that it pays to go to an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer, whether it's an emergency or a routine checkup. For there, you get expert, courteous service at the lowest possible cost. In fact, that's a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's everyday way of doing business. Now, they're able to accomplish this because they have highly skilled mechanics in their shop. And these experts work with special factory-designed and approved tools. From the records they keep on your car, they're able to tell you, for example, when your engine is ready for a tune-up or new lubrication. They'll tell you when your tires should be rotated to add thousands of miles to their life. So, for the best from your car, drive in where you get the best service at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> And here's the model and the artist, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question, Groucho. Well, you can, you won't have to paint anything for a long time if you guess this, Mr. Felsberg. <laughs> all right, here we go for $2,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. As you know, members of the President's Cabinet are appointed. The portfolio of one of these, however, expires every four years. Which Cabinet member's time expires every four years? <laughs> Okay, what's the answer you two have decided upon? No, I... Uh, I'm sorry, it's the Postmaster General. Yeah. Oh! So that means the big question next week will be worth $3,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $135 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. Your Life is a John Goodell production transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You'll Bet Your Life. 
presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $3,000. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Just take it slow on ice or snow. This is George Fenneman signing off with more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is sugar. S-U-G-A-R. Rather. You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Never heard of him. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $3,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fanneman, who's first? We invited some milkmen and some brewmasters to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected milkman Howard Cram. His partner is brewer John White. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, gents, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word at any time, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, what? something you use every day. A milkman and a brewmaster, eh? A milkman, uh, Ho Howard Cram, is that right? Where, where are you from, Howard? Uh, Park City, Montana. Just a hop, skip, and a jump from Yellowstone National Park. Well, is that the only way you can go? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Mr. Weiss, uh, you're the brewmaster, huh? That's right. Oh, uh, where, where are you from? Omaha, Nebraska. Why aren't you from Milwaukee? Born <laughs> in Omaha. Did you know then you were going to be in the beer business? <laughs> Almost. Almost? Milkman, uh, you haven't turned sour yet, have you? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> who, do, who do you work for? Uh, Eight-Or Milk Farms. Mm -hmm. And uh, Beer Bust, who do you work for? Huh? Meyer Brewing Company. Who, the Meyer Brewing Company? Meyer Brewing Company. How, how, much, uh, how much beer do you brew in a day? Oh, about 900 barrels. Mm. And Milkman, uh, how much milk do you deliver in a day? Oh, I deliver around uh, 550 quarts a day. You deliver 550 quarts of milk a day? Yes. I don't believe it. Huh? <laughs> Let me see you open your big brown eyes and say, Ma! <laughs> now, as a milkman, has anything embarrassing ever happened to you, Mr. Cram? Well, yes, yeah, several things. Uh, one, for instance, uh, my wife and I was uh, walking down the street uh, the other day, and I happened to see one of my customers on the street. And uh, I says, uh, how do you do, Mrs. Jones? And she looks at me and didn't even recognize me. And I was uh, dressed just like I am now. And I says, uh, well, don't you recognize me, Mrs. Jones? I'm your milkman. She says, oh, uh, I didn't know you with your clothes on. <laughs> this must have made your wife very happy. <laughs> How about you, Beer Bottle? Have you ever had any uh, unusual experience, embarrassing? Yes, I remember one incident uh, when I was serving my apprenticeship in the brewery. Uh, this plank was placed across the top of this tank here, and uh, I fell off the plank into this tank of beer. <laughs> and, uh, well, would you have stayed in there if there were pretzels in there? <laughs> I think so. Have you ever been totally dry, Mr. Weiss? <laughs> Do you, you know how to milk a cow, uh, Mr. Cram? Oh, it's easy. There's nothing to it. Well, it's easy to lay an egg, but I bet you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 
I think the least you two could do is shake hands. <laughs> I now pronounce you more than milk, huh? <laughs> Now, in just one minute, you're going to have a chance to make $3,000. For many reasons, the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America believe that their way of doing business has won them many new customers, folks who will continue to be their customers. That's because these dealers have done their utmost to treat you fairly and squarely whether it be for a new car, a used car, or a simple repair job. They've tried to be courteous all along. Well, you, the car owners of America, seem to have appreciated this kind of organization and the attitude it had toward you. So today, in every city and every state, thousands of smart car owners make sure they stop at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Let's say if a milkman and a brewmaster will be the ones who get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. Fenneman, explain the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that $20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets the chance at the $3,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's going on out here. You selected famous friends and companions as your category, is that right? All right, now you have $20. How much are you going to bet? Ten. $10. Here's your first question. You bet $10. What was the name of Robinson Crusoe's faithful servant? Friday. Friday is right, huh? <laughs> They're on their way with $30, Groucho. You remember, you're going for $3,000 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? 20. What was the name of John Alden's good friend? <laughs> so quiet you can hear a contestant <laughs> drop. <huh? laughs> well, I'm sorry. It was Miles Standish. They now have $10. All right. Here's your third question. How much of the 10 are you going to try? Five. Five dollars. Who was Tom Sawyer's best friend? Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry Finn yeah. is right. <laughs> on the way again, they have $15. All right, now you got 15 Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 15 15 Shoot the works. Who was Sherlock Holmes' faithful friend? <laughs> Doctor something. Well, yes, that's right. It was Doctor, you know, Watson the Needle. Oh, Dr. Yeah. Watson. Well, here's one more chance to make some money. If you get this one right, I'll hand over $10 in cash. And please, no coaching. Who was buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> Grant. General <laughs> Grant is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, stick around. Who knows? You may be the ones who get the chance at the $3,000 question. Groucho, the secret word is still sugar. Perhaps our next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected an interior decorator, Mr. Doug Haynes, and a housewife, Mrs. Audrey Forsythe. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. Uh, Audrey Forsythe, where are you from? Oh, uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. You're a very pretty housewife. Too, Thank huh? you. Is your husband as pretty as you are? Uh, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> is he much bigger than you are? Yes, he is. Well, let's forget it, huh? <laughs> what does your husband do, Audrey? Uh, he's in the Army. He's a tax sergeant. A tax sergeant? Yeah, technical. What does he do, sit on tax? <laughs> <laughs> now, what is a tax sergeant? I'm not, I haven't been... Well, a, well I don't know. I've only just... been through five wars, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, I didn't say I was in him. I was just through him. I'm sorry. I'm... Well, it's the grade below a, a master is all I know. And do you see him very often? Oh, he's going overseas. When? Uh, around the 28th, I suppose. Mr. Douglas Haynes, you're the uh, interior decorator, huh? No, Hal Haynes, sir. Oh, Hal, Hal Haynes, huh? Where are you from, Hal? I'm from Auckland, New Zealand. Are you, are you married? Yes, sir. Is your wife in the Army? Huh? No, she's not in the Army. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did you meet your wife, Hal? Well, she was touring in New Zealand with her father, who's Dante the Magician. And um, I went to a dance, and uh, I met her and uh, looked at her and said, Can you see out of those beautiful eyes? And she said, Yes, and two weeks later we were married. <laughs> is, uh, is that the customary approach in New Zealand? 
I don't know, sir. It's the only one I've ever approached. <laughs> well, I think you did it charmingly, huh? Uh, how did you meet your husband, Mrs. Forsythe? I was working at my brother and sister-in-law's cafe during the summer. Well, where was this? In Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Oh. And my brother-in-law is a very ticklish person. I mean, he's just ticklish all over. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You say uh, he's ticklish all over? Well, you mean all over Arkansas? <laughs> you, you, you'll have to explain that a little clearer, huh? Well, Not too clear now, huh? And uh, this morning, uh, I came bursting in this cafe and I noticed this man uh, bending over the drink case. So I ran up to him and I jabbed him in his ribs and this fellow fell practically in the, in the drink case. His hair was red, and so I started laughing, naturally. And uh, when I laugh, I close my eyes, and so Let's I... Let's see, will you laugh? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so when I looked up, you I... You say he's leaving the 28th? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where was I now? Yeah. <laughs> you had your betrothed in a water case or something. <laughs> so when I, I finally stopped laughing, I looked up, and... He's the, um, a very angry man. I said I was sorry that I thought he was my brother-in-law. And then we were married oh, a couple of months later. Oh. Was he dry by that time? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was quite dry. Where do you do your decorating, Mr. Haynes? I work for W&J Sloan's in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Well, how much would you charge to decorate, let's say, fix up the inside of the average five-room house? Oh, about four to five thousand dollars. Now, I don't mean to build a house. I mean... Uh, <laughs> just climb down out of that chandelier up there. Right? <laughs> I mean, how little could you do it for? Well, we could do it for as little as, uh, well, say, 500 or or $1,000. But it really? uh, wouldn't suit a man in your position, Mr. Mark. <laughs> My customary position is horizontal with that. Yeah. <laughs> Now, to be a successful decorator, what do you regard as the most important requirement? Well, you have to know uh, proper balance of a room and... Uh, proper balance in the bank? I well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him grin when I said bank. Huh? <laughs> what else? The uh, layout of the room. I mean, you should have it in conversational groupings. Conversational and... groupings? You mean the furniture sits around and talks to each other? <laughs> Chair. One chair says to the other, he says, my, your legs are crooked tonight. <laughs> you ought to wear a longer valance. <laughs> says, well, my valance in the bank is so bad, I can't afford it. <laughs> no groaning, please, huh? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Uh, Forsythe, has your husband gone yet? Uh, <laughs> tell me, have you learned anything about interior decorating? It sounds expensive. <laughs> Mr. Haynes, would you care to defend yourself? Well, as a matter of fact, a good decorator can save money. Well, at your prices, I'm not surprised. Huh? <laughs> How much did you save last year? Huh? <laughs> How do you generally decide what color scheme to use in a house? Hell? Well, uh, if it's a cold room, you use warm colors. Wouldn't it be better to put in a gas heater? <laughs> <laughs> this is Forsyth, uh, Forsyth. Uh, if this isn't too uh, impudent, what color is your is your uh, living room? It's pink. It's pink. Eh? Mm -hmm. How about it, uh, Mr. Haynes? Is the living room warm? Oh yes. <laughs> How do you know her living room is warm? Maybe she's wearing long underwear. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us more about colors. It, it, it's fascinating. For example, uh, what's a good color for the bedroom? Well, well I would use um, pastel shades. Uh -huh. uh, loud colors have a tendency, you know, to well, keep you awake. Mrs. Forsythe, what color is your bedroom? <laughs> it's a sort of an orange red. <laughs> Sounds noisy. How do you sleep? <laughs> Turn the light out, and it, the colors. Are... 
You say you turn the light out? Yes. Doesn't that keep your husband in the dark? <laughs> now, you're going to have a chance to make $3,000. You run your 20 bucks into more than the other couples, and you get a crack at the big question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The milkman and the brewmaster lost all their money, so this couple has a clear field. Here we go. You have $20. How much are you going to risk? Ten. You selected the uh, large, uh, largest cities of the United States as your category. Is that right? Yes. yes. Now, you're going to bet $10. What is the largest city in the state of Ohio? Akron. Do you agree with that? Toledo. I- I- I'm sorry. It's Cleveland. <laughs> They now have $10, Groucho. Well, that's too bad. Well, you've got $10. Remember, you're going for $3,000. That's the big prize, anyhow. Now, how much of the $10 will you try? Five. Five. What is the largest city in the state of Michigan? Detroit. Detroit is correct. <laughs> well, on the way now, they have $15. Now, you have $15. Now, how much of the 15 are you going to try? Ten. What is the largest city in the state of Massachusetts? Boston. Boston is correct. <laughs> They're still climbing. They have $25. Now you've got $25, and here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the $25 are you going to risk? Uh, $25. Shoot the works. What is the largest city in the state of Missouri? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis is correct. And they wind up with $50. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, in just a moment, our last couple will come up to bat, and then we'll all get the chance at the $3,000. Gentlemen, who's ahead so far? The interior decorator and the housewife are leading with their $50. And the secret word is still sugar. Perhaps the next couple will say it. In honor of Valentine's Day, we invited some people whose occupations are in keeping with the season. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Jack Thorpe, a greeting card writer, and his partner is Miss Frankie Brown, a wedding director. And here they are, folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, children, to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says that a soda Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. A greeting card writer and uh, a wedding director. Huh? Mr. Uh, Thorpe, huh? you're the greeting card writer? That's correct. Mm-hmm. Well, greetings. Where are you from? Huh? <laughs> Los Angeles. Frankie Brown? That's, that's an odd name for a girl, isn't it? My name's really Francis. Oh, well, there's a new movie out called Francis, you know. Mm-hmm. Were you the star of that picture? Not that I know of. It's a good thing. Francis is a mule in this picture. <laughs> Where are you from, Frankie? I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Do you, do you have a husband, uh, Frankie? No, I don't. No. You I have couldn't. nice teeth, uh, Frankie. Thank you. Do, you. do you plan to remain an old maid, uh, Frankie? <laughs> I'm not an old maid. I'm only 22. How old are you, uh, Jack? 25. Mm-hmm. Are, you, are you married? No, I'm not. <laughs> Well, let's find out something about you, (laughs) too. Frankie Gal, where do you direct your weddings? At Hotel Last Frontier in Las Vegas, Nevada. (laughs) How many marriages have you engaged in? About 1,500. And how many engagements have you married in? (laughs) What are your duties as a a wedding director? Well, I arrange for the uh, organist, send notices to their hometown paper, contact the minister, and uh, arrange flowers. You sure you're not a funeral director? (laughs) No, I'm a wedding director. It's a pretty mortuary description, you know. (laughs) You're a wedding director, huh? Well, there isn't too much difference, huh? (laughs) Only thing is, at a wedding, you can smell your own flowers. (laughs) (laughs) Now, tell me about the greeting card business, Mr. Thorpe. Uh, Who do you work for? Well, I do work for Colonial Greeting Card... Uh, Buzzer Cardoza, and several others. Yeah, well, what are your duties as a greeting card writer? Oh, I write verses for greeting cards. (laughs) You mean somebody writes those things, huh? (laughs) How do you know what to write? Well, the simplest thing is the best. The more you say and the less you mean, the better. It's something like the congressional record, huh? (laughs) Well, uh, can anybody be a greeting card writer? No, it takes a special talent. You have to be general, not too specific. For example, if I say uh, to my black-eyed sweetheart, fella couldn't send that to a blue-eyed girl. (laughs) You could if you gave her two shiners the night before. (laughs) Well, 
Well, tell me, Shakespeare, what are the... Uh... <laughs> What, uh, what specifically are the occasions for which you provide this deathless prose? Huh? <laughs> well, we have greeting cards for all occasions. Uh, birthdays, Valentines, congratulations for starting a new business. Congratulations for starting a new business? That's right. And suppose he goes Mahola. What happens then? <laughs> suppose he goes bankrupt. I'll pick up a new verse. <laughs> <laughs> What do you do? Do you say the voice is yet to come? <laughs> <laughs> Suppose you were in love with Frankie here, Jack, uh, <laughs> and you wanted to send her a beautiful Valentine poem. Uh, what would you say on it? Go ahead, whip one out. Huh? Oh, I couldn't whip one right out. I'd have to think about it. <laughs> oh, how long? Huh? Well, would it take me a couple of days? <laughs> By that time, she's married to some desert right up in Las Vegas. <laughs> you know, those desert rats, they trap them with cheesecake up there. Huh? <laughs> don't, you carry, don't you carry any of your epics around with you? Oh, I always carry cards with me. Well, well read it. Read this one. Huh? <laughs> Hi there, Grandma Darling. <laughs> Frankie, Frankie, you certainly got old quick, huh? <laughs> well, Jackie boy, that was pretty old-fashioned. Haven't you got anything more streamlined? Yes, I have a comic valentine here. Oh, you have, huh? It has a picture of a garter and a stocking on it. As the stocking said to the garter, Hook up with me, pal. I ain't been snagged yet. <laughs> I'll bet that'd be a wow in Las Vegas, huh? <laughs> Frankie, while you're swooning from all this sentiment here, let's some talk some more about your job. For instance, uh, where do the people come from who get married in your chapel? Well, they come from all over the world. Well, why? Can't they get married in uh, <laughs> Yugoslavia or Spain? No. Or... Our chapel is... Panama Canal? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't cost as much as having a large wedding in, in your hometown. And then another thing, nobody knows you there, too. Huh? <laughs> well, how much do you charge for this grand larceny? Huh? We have two plans. One is $25. $25? Mm -hmm. The other What do you 15. get for the 25 Well, $25, you get the minister of your choice and an organist to play whatever songs you'd like, witnesses if you need them. No bride? <laughs> <laughs> what do I get for 15 bucks? I'm probably not even there for that. <laughs> what do I get for $15? Well, for 15 you get the same things as you do for the $25, except that you get a live organist. For 15 <laughs> For 15 you get a live organist? Why do you get a dead one for 25 <laughs> Frankie, I'll take the one with the dead organist. Huh? <laughs> That's the one for me. It's ten it's ten dollars more, but it's worth it, huh? <laughs> now, Frankie, what's the largest number of splice jobs you've racked up in a single day, huh? Uh one Valentine's Day we had twenty seven weddings. And th is that what killed the organist? <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are your waking hours on a job like that? Huh? Well, I work from 9 to 5, and I'm on call 24 hours a day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're sort of like a fireman, huh? You yes. slide down a brass pole with a box of rice in one hand and a... <laughs> And a dead organist in the other. <laughs> well, now that you two are practically engaged, let's see if you'll get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. <laughs> Read our other two couples, and you'll get a crack at the $3,000 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is offstage to remind our listeners. 
the interior decorator and the housewife are ahead with $50. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You select the colleges as your category. All right, you have $20. How much are you going to try? Well, we'll start with 10 What college is located at Palo Alto? Stanford. Stanford is right. <laughs> And they're off to a fine start with $30. All right, you got $30. Remember, you're going for $3,000 tonight. How much of the 30 will you bet? 25 25 What college is located at Ann Arbor? Michigan. Michigan. University of Michigan. <laughs> they're climbing now. They have $55. You got 55 Here's your third question. How much of the 55 are you going to go for? 50 What college is located at New Haven? Yale. Yale is right. <laughs> They're really on their way now. They have $105. Now you've got $105. Uh, it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 105 are you going to go for? 100 What do you say, Keith? 100 <laughs> What college is, uh, is at Laramie? L-A-R-A-M-I-E. University of Wyoming. University of Wyoming. <laughs> and they wind up with $205. And that means that they get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question. We're a nation of car owners in this country, and many of us know the inside of our family car as well as the back of our hands. Others don't care about what goes on inside our car, just so long as it's driving smoothly and economically. But whichever case fits you, when you drive your car into a shop for a checkup or some kind of repair job, you do like to know what is going to be done. You like to know why, and of course, how much it will cost. Now, here's one big reason why you'll appreciate the kind of service you get at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. The men who work on your car at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's are service experts. They've had special training, constant training. They've special tools and equipment to work with that you won't find just anywhere. And on top of all these advantages, you'll find they have a courteous interest in explaining to you what will be done to your car, why it's going to be done. And you'll also get an estimate of what the job will cost. That's fair, isn't it? Well, fairness is one of the aims of the folks you'll meet at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the greeting card writer and the wedding director, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,000 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $3,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully. And please, no help in the audience. Here it is. The first capital of our country was New York. For $3,000, where was the second capital? All right, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Annapolis. No, I am. I'm sorry. It's Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> So that means the big question next week will be worth $3,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $205 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you, huh? You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $3,500. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Look out for the driver who doesn't look out for you. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.
Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is table. T-A-B-L-E. Rally. You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You'll Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! That Fenneman's a nice kid. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! <laughs> Here I am again with $3,500 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's first to try and take away all his money? We invited some high school students to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, we selected Myrno Elliott and Melvin Knorr. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. High school students, eh? Well, it's nice to have you here. Uh, Melvin uh, Knorr, is that right? Melvin. Melvin. Huh? Where are you from, Mel? Uh, Eagle Rock High School. Where? Eagle Rock High School. Eagle Rock, huh? Oh. And before that, uh, where are you from? Well, I was born two blocks north of the Warner Brothers studio in North Hollywood. <laughs> Is that with sound or without? Huh? <laughs> and uh, where are you employed? Uh, I don't work. I'll keep you secret, but answer my question. <laughs> Where, where are you employed? Huh? I don't work. I go to high school. You're, you're right the first time. You don't work. <laughs> Mino uh, Elliot, uh, is that you? Mino? That's right. That's kind of an odd name for a girl, isn't it? Mino? Well, uh, mm -hmm. I had a little cousin who was three years old, and he couldn't say my given name, which is really Muriel, and he came out with Myrno, and we liked it so well it just stuck. <laughs> <laughs> What happened to this kid that uh, christened you, huh? Oh, he's still a nice little boy. <laughs> boopity boopity boop. <laughs> uh, that wasn't very nice of me to do that, my but... <laughs> You, you sounded so young, and, uh, uh, well, I just couldn't resist it, that's all. <laughs> what, what school do you attend, my no? I just graduated from Van Nuys High School. Oh. Well, congratulations. <laughs> now that you gradu graduated from school, what are, you, what are your plans? Are you going to look for a job? I, I have a job, keeping house for my husband. Your husband? You mean you just graduated from high school and you've already got a husband? Uh, did he come with a diploma? <laughs> For almost 19 years. You had a husband for 19 years? What did you do? Get married when you were three years old? <laughs> no, I was 14. Well, you married late in life, didn't you? <laughs> You've been married 19 years and you were 14. That uh, comes to around, let's see, swine, swine, see, swine, swine, swine. <laughs> Thirty-three years old you are? Uh, now, how old are you, 26? <laughs> I'm 33. It sounds horrible, but it doesn't feel bad. <laughs> well, you certainly don't look bad, huh? <laughs> You're 33 years old, you've got a husband, and you just graduated from, from, from high school? Well, I was sort of detained a little, you know. When I ran away and got married, I didn't really think I'd ever get to finish, although I always wanted to. And You see, uh, my daughter, Aloha, was going to the school, too. And Who? we, my daughter, Aloha, was in the school with me, and everybody thought we were sisters, and we were listed in the records that way, so it wouldn't discombobulate the teachers that the kids either one, you know. So they wouldn't what, did you say? <laughs> I'd like to add that to my vocabulary. Discombobulate, that's... Discombobulate, huh? Well, what do you look under? Discomboob or... Uh... Did any of the high school bo boys try to make dates with you? Well, Foolish question. <laughs> a few times. A few times. Huh? How about I... the teachers? 
<laughs> Just the students, huh? That's right. And what'd you tell them? You said, well, uh, this one boy used to hide around the staircases. And he kept getting so persistent. So I got him in the corner and I told him that Aloha was my daughter instead of my sister to cool him off. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did that cool him off? That did. Wouldn't have cooled me off. Huh? <laughs> well, who signed your report card when you, your husband? Huh? Oh, I had a system. You see, I was listed at school as Myrna Elliott, so when I took the card to him, I'd sign the cards as Mrs. H. W. Elliott, and then it looked all right. <laughs> See, what kind of grades did you get, uh, Myrna? Well, I was very fortunate. I was able to get all A's for all three semesters I was there. Oh, that's wonderful. Right? <laughs> what grade is your daughter in? Uh... Well, she's just a year behind me in school. She's just a year behind you? <laughs> and is her daughter only a year behind her? <laughs> now, uh, uh, Mel, you're still here, aren't you, Mel? <laughs> you know, you could have graduated while I was talking about <laughs> Well, where do you, where do you work, uh, Melvin? I go to high school. You're still in that school, huh? <laughs> Well, uh, do, you, do you hold any class offices like uh, treasurer? Well, I was a basketball manager. Basketball? I've always wondered about that. You know, why, does, why don't they have a bottom in that basket so the ball doesn't keep dropping out all the time? <laughs> Tell me, do they still have six players on the side? <laughs> That's girls' basketball. <laughs> I was on the wrong team. <laughs> your basketball manager you were? How, how much is your salary? I don't get a salary. What'd they do? Pay you off in dribbles? <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you do as a basketball manager? Well, I uh, keep score for most of the games, uh, time the games, clean the basketballs, and clean the gym floors. You have a pretty important job there, huh? <laughs> That's like a vice president in an advertising agency. <laughs> now, what kind of work do you do? I go to high school. <laughs> Still going to school, eh? <laughs> you better look out. You'll be 33 too before you graduate. <laughs> Well, it's been enlightening having you two here. And Mino, may I say, you're a remarkable woman. And if you play your cards right, pretty soon you'll be the prettiest grandmother in Van Nuys High School. <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to give you, get you a chance to try for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question. The Groucho Marx Program, friends, is being brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And their reason for presenting this program is to tell you something about themselves, to extend a cordial invitation to you to come in and get acquainted with them. For they're sure, once you've paid them that first visit, you'll be back whenever you need anything pertaining to cars. The reason they're so certain about this is that they, and by they, I mean everyone in a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's place of business, are out to see that you are satisfied. No matter what make of car you drive, no matter what year it is, the folks at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers will do their utmost to treat you fairly and squarely. That's their creed. That's your best reason for driving in wherever you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Now, let's see if two high school pupils will get the chance at the $3,500. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Now, let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected songs of the 20s as your category. Is that right? Now, you have $20. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you bet? And talk right up into the microphone. Ten. Ten. This song was first popular in 1925. What's the name of it? Has anybody seen my gal? Has 
What's five the foot two, what's eyes the of blue. That's right, five yeah. foot two. <laughs> well, they're on their way. They have $30 now, Groucho. All right, now you got $30. Remember, you're going for $3,500 tonight. How much is the 30 will you bet? 20 Three. All right, give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. When the Red Red Robin King Bob Bob When the Red Red Robin King Obama. They're climbing now. They have $50. All right, you got 50 bucks. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to try? 40 $40. <laughs> Let's see if you can identify this one. Okay, Jerry. I'm sitting on top of the world. They now have $90. All right, you got $90. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the 90? 80. $80. $80. What is the name of this song? Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, stick around. Who knows? You may be the ones who get the chance at the $3,500 question. Groucho, the secret word is still table. Perhaps the next couple will say it. We invited some deputy district attorneys. To the <laughs> <laughs> deputy district turnips, did you say? <laughs> Why, that's a vegetable. That man doesn't look like a vegetable to me. <laughs> I was trying to say that we invited some deputy district attorneys. Well, why don't you say that, Fenneman, huh? To the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Bill Ritzy, and his partner is a housewife, Mrs. Lillian Watkins. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Hello? Welcome, welcome to your bet your life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you find around the house. A district attorney and a housewife, eh? Practically the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, D.A., uh, uh, are, you, are you married? Answer yes or no. Yes. How'd you meet your wife? And remember, you're under oath. <laughs> well, frankly, uh, she's a minister's now, daughter. Now, call me Groucho, huh? Eh? <laughs> Frankly, left about ten minutes ago. <laughs> She's a minister's daughter, and, uh, and I happen to be taking the collection. Oh, you, you, did you take the whole collection? <laughs> no, there, there were two of us. Oh. <laughs> I see. Well, you split it, huh? <laughs> Tell me, uh, isn't it customary to turn in something to the church? <laughs> well, we try to turn in all of it. Oh, I see. In any event, uh, while taking the collection, she... Uh, she asked me how was business, and... You mean she was a crook, too? <laughs> well, anyhow, you must have got the wedding for nothing, didn't you? No, I, I had to you pay, had to pay, pay for that. You had to pay her old man? So did you get a rebate later on? <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I, are you married, Mrs. Watkins? You've been calling me, Mrs. <laughs> I'm married, and nobody calls me Mrs. <laughs> How'd you meet your husband, uh, Mrs. Watkins? Well, I was working at the Denver Dry Goods in the ladies' suit and dress department. So one day the buyer says, well, won't you take some down to the window trimmer? So I went down there, and uh, I didn't hear the window trimmers come back. And finally, uh, one of them says to the other, well, where did that new dummy come from anyway? <laughs> turns around, I was very angry, and I says, well, I'm no dummy, and here's your dresses, and I walked out, and he says, well, you don't need to get so mad, do you? And what'd you say? And I said, yes, if you come up in our department, we treat you nice. And what was your department? <laughs> Ladies' dress department. Ladies' dress department. Yes. Right? Now, Bill, uh, Bill Ritzy, as the district attorney, just what do you do? Well, I'm not the district attorney, I'm a district attorney. The question was, what do you do? <laughs> Not what are you? <laughs> as long as you brought it up, what's the difference between the district attorney and a district attorney? Well, uh, I'm under the district attorney. <laughs> <laughs> Must get pretty stuffy under there. Huh? <laughs> well, as an assistant uh, DA, uh, uh, what do you do as an assistant district attorney? Well, I'm, I'm not an assistant district attorney. I'm a, I'm a deputy district attorney. Don't tell me you're under him, too, huh? <laughs> yes, I am. Well, you're, it sounds to me you're, you're low man on the totem pole. Right? <laughs> well, what do you do as a deputy district attorney? So far, you haven't done anything. 
<laughs> you go to sleep under two men, huh? <laughs> We prosecute criminal cases. I happen to be d assigned to one of the trial divisions, and... Do you handle burglaries? Yes. Have you ever been caught? Uh... <laughs> where, where do you get your business, D.A.? Uh, do you advertise in the newspaper? <laughs> like uh, Crook Wanted? Uh... No, about 95% uh, per percent of our business comes in from the various police departments here in the county, and, of course, arrest come in from private citizens. Well, that sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> Anything going on in your neighborhood, Mrs. Watkins, that you'd like to bring to the attention of the district attorney? No, not that I can think of. You mean all is serene in your life? Uh, well, can't you think of anything you'd like to complain about? Not all. The lady on my party line just talks too much. <laughs> she keeps talking, and uh, I suppose you don't get a chance to use the telephone. No, huh? I don't. Uh -oh. Sometimes 10, 15, 20 minutes. What, are, what do they talk about? Huh? Oh, she's always talking about what... <laughs> I think we got a case here for the DA. <laughs> the district attorney, what's the penalty for wiretapping? <laughs> well, uh, I've grilled our district attorney, but it was all in fun. Nobody knows any better than I do what a great job the district attorney does for the taxpayer. Now you... Please, don't laugh at that, huh? huh? That's to square me with the cops. Now you're going to play your bet your life for $3,500. You beat our other couples, and you get a chance at the big question later. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but Fenneman's off stage to remind our listeners. The 33-year-old high school girl and her partner won $170. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected capitals of Latin American countries as your category, right? All right. You have $20. How much are you going to bet and talk right into the microphone and loud? $10. $10. Here's your first question. What is the capital city of Peru? Lima. Lima is right. <laughs> and they're on their way with $30. All but ten. You're going to bet. You're going to bet twenty dollars. Is yes. that right? What is the capital city of Argentina? Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is right. <laughs> you now have fifty dollars. Huh? Bet the whole fifty. The whole fifty. All right. What is the capital city of Chile? C H I L E. Santiago. Santiago is right. <laughs> They're really climbing now. They have one hundred dollars. All right. You got a hundred dollars. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much you have the hundred? Will you bet? Bet at all. All right, what is the capital city of Ecuador? Uh, Quito. Quito is right. <laughs> and they wind up with $200. <laughs> hey, watch yourself. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, it won't be long before we meet the last couple, and then we know who gets the chance at the $3,500 question. Fenneman, who's ahead? The deputy district attorney and the housewife with $200. And the secret word is still table. We invited some dog trainers and some piano teachers to the show tonight. And here come the two selected to be on our show by the studio audience just before we went on the air. Mr. Carl Spitz and Mrs. Inez Murray meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Uh, Maury, is that right? Yes. Inez Maury? Yes. Uh, you're, you're a piano teacher, huh? Yes, I am. Very attractive piano teacher, huh? <laughs> I've been thinking of taking up the piano lately. <laughs> Love to have you. <laughs> and Mr. Spitz, you're the dog trainer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been a horrible mistake here. <laughs> We asked for a dog trainer, and we got a dog. <laughs> Are you from Spitzenberg? No, quite a bit distant from Spitzbergen. I'm Where? from near Heidelberg in Germany. Oh, well, you must be a beer expert, huh? <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, miss, uh, are you married, Ina? Yes, I am. You are, yeah. How, how'd you meet your husband? Oh... It was very unromantic at first. Uh, <laughs> How long was it unromantic? <laughs> <laughs> uh, mutual friends arranged a meeting. 
the friends said, we think you two musicians should meet each other. Oh, what does he, what does he play? He's a pianist, too. Did you have the piano movers uh, carry you over the threshold when you got married? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Spitz, you're, you're the dog trainer, is that right? So far, yes. <laughs> well, then we can start from scratch. No. <laughs> Now, I want to ask you a question. You're a dog trainer. Is it true a barking dog never bites? Not as long as he bites. <laughs> well, they say every dog has his day. <laughs> he certainly doesn't seem to be mine. <laughs> What's the best age to start training dogs, Mr. Spitz? Oh, about eight months. You mean you've been training dogs since you were eight months old? <laughs> I mean, the dog is eight months old. Well, that's better. After all, after eight months, you weren't very well trained yourself. <laughs> now, tell me, Chopsticks, what are some of the typical... Uh, the typical excuses your students give you for not practicing? Oh, heavens. There are thousands of them. <laughs> well, give us 900, huh? <laughs> Daddy sleeps all day. The keys of the piano are stuck, won't sound. <laughs> what sort of excuses do your dogs use to get out of their lessons? <laughs> well, the dogs have no excuses. I thought they might say, excuse me, but I have to see a dog about a man. <laughs> what makes one dog vicious and one dog gentle, Mr. Spitz? Well, fundamental, I don't think there's any vicious dog. They Not if you're on the mantle, no, but I mean... <laughs> Do dogs ever become psychiatric cases? <laughs> Do they have dog psychologists? Yes. Which dogs make the best psychologists? <laughs> I suppose the dog lies on a couch and talks about the days when he was a kitten, huh? <laughs> well, let's get back to you, Arpeggio. Uh, do you think you could uh, teach me to play the piano, Ina? Yes, I'm sure I could. Could you sing a scale? Scale? I think so. Would you join me in a duet? <laughs> yeah. Huh? All right, yeah. here we go. One, two, three. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. Wonderful. Yeah, that was beautiful, I know. <laughs> From now on, that will be our song. <laughs> now you're going to play the DeSoto Plymouth game. You bet your life. And if you beat our other two couples, you'll get a crack at the $3,500 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The deputy district attorney and the housewife were ahead with $200. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected royalties, your category. Is that right? You have $20. How much are you going to try? Ten. What is the name of the emperor of Japan? Hirohito. Hirohito. <laughs> now they have $30. $30. Remember, you're going for $3,500 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? Should we try 20 what is the name of the exiled king of Belgium? Uh, king Leopold. Leopold is right. <laughs> They're climbing now. They have $50. You got $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to try? You decide. <laughs> 25 Okay. The little king of Italy abdicated his throne in 1946 and died a year later. What was his name? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Victor Emmanuel is right. <laughs> they now have $75. Well, you got $75. How much of the 75 will you go for? Fifty. What is the name of the emperor of Ethiopia? Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie, happy land. And they wind up with $125, and that means the deputy district attorney and the housewife get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question. A while back, I suggested that you folks drive in and get acquainted with a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. While you're there, visit the service shop. Notice the fine equipment. This equipment is there for you, for use on your car. 
Every DeSoto Plymouth dealer has special tools and equipment in his shop, the kind you won't find just anywhere. These tools and equipment are factory designed and approved. In the hands of skilled mechanics, you'll find these tools can save hours of time on a job. They help a DeSoto Plymouth dealer service experts do better work faster. That, of course, means money in your pocket, as well as a car that serves you faithfully and economically mile after mile. So visit that DeSoto Plymouth dealer real soon, will you? Get to know the folks in the office, the men in the shop, and you'll find that this knowledge will be a big comfort in the thousands of car miles that lie ahead of you. Tomorrow, drive in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. And here is the housewife and the deputy district attorney, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $3,500 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $3,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. There is only one active volcano in the United States. What is this volcano? What's the answer you two have decided upon? I'm going to take a guess. Mount Lassen. Mount Lassen is right. <laughs> That's, that's right. You win $3,500. What are you going to do with all that money? <laughs> what are you going to do with all that money? Well, I got a house that needs going over from top to bottom. Well, I'll, go, <laughs> I'll go over it for $3,000. Huh? I'll go under it for $2,000. <laughs> what about you, D.A.? What are you going to do with the money? Give that money back from the church? <laughs> well, what are you going to do with this, Luca? We, uh... We haven't any youngsters yet, but I'm sure we are going to have some. That... <laughs> well, let's see. You win $3,500 plus $200 in the quiz. You say you really cleaned up tonight, huh? <laughs> Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $1,000. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. The highway is no place for a surprise party. Always signal when you stop, slow down, turn, or change direction. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is door. D O O R. Really? You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. 
And here he is, the one, the only... It's a fine name for a grown man. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! <laughs> well, last week we dropped $3,500, so tonight we start fresh. With $1,000 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who's, who, who gets face whack at it? Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a bachelor and a spinster. And here they are, Mr. Maurice Hollenstein and Miss Irene Tom meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word at any time, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. A uh, bachelor and a spinster, eh? Uh, Miss uh, Thom, uh, Tom? Tom. How do you Tom? Tom. The H is silent, huh? That's right. Like in herring. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> what kind of work do you do, uh, Miss Tom? I handle the uh, retirement records and special pension files for General Petroleum Corporation. And uh, Mr. Havenstein? That's right. The right? uh, name is Howenstein. H-A-U. Uh, Howenstein, huh? Isn't yeah. there a cow that has that kind of a name? <laughs> Close to it. Uh, what, what kind of work do you do, Mr. Hobbenstein? Well, uh, I am office manager for the Owens, Illinois Glass Company. Mm-hmm. Why aren't you married, Mr. Hobbenstein? Well, I think I'm pretty old now. I don't know. Look at Barkley. Look at Mayor O'Dwyer. Huh? <laughs> look at Hedy Lamar. <laughs> I tell you, you look at O'Dwyer and I'll look at Hedy Lamar. <laughs> How old are you, Maurice? 44 now. Well, that's a wonderful age for married, isn't it, uh, Irene? Oh, I think it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just about right, huh? Mm-hmm. Just right, too, I'd say. Now, <laughs> Maurice, how tall are you? About 5'8". And how tall, uh, tall is your ideal man, uh, Irene? Oh, about 5'7", five, 5'8". <laughs> I bet if Maurice was a midget, your ideal man would be about three foot six. <laughs> Has uh, dodging women ever led you into uh, any, led you into any peculiar experience, Maurice? Well, only one that I can think of. Well, that's the one we want. <laughs> Let's have this yarn, Maurice. I don't know how fitting it is, but uh, here in Los Angeles, I took a young lady up to the apartment of a boyfriend of mine, and no one was home. Well, so So, far, you're okay. (laughs) uh, I I couldn't get in, but uh, I knew how to get in because he'd always lose his key, so we would push the garbage can aside and enter You had the garbage can in the living room? (laughs) When you were out in the hall, you could uh, enter through the garbage entrance to get in to unlock the front door. (laughs) Well, that's the wealthiest garbage you'll ever encounter. (laughs) You just said door, and that's our secret word tonight, so you just won $100 in cash. Compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Do you remember what we were talking about when the bell rang? <laughs> After I'd gotten inside, I to go around to unlock the front door. I didn't know that the boyfriend had moved out about three, three weeks before. Well, whose garbage was it? <laughs> when I got inside, there was a man and his wife in bed. I was pretty, pretty dumbfounded, and then I suddenly noticed he was uh, getting out of bed in no uncertain terms. And of course, the front... <laughs> What do, what do you mean, a no inciting time? I can see blood in his eye or something. He was after me. The front door was right handy there, but I didn't go out the front door. I went back out this garbage hole. Well, that's certainly a very romantic interlude in your life. Now, uh, as a confirmed bachelor, uh, Maurice, who cooks your meals and rinses the gravy out of your neckties? Uh-huh. Almost anyone that's around. Irene, are you a pretty good cook? Well, I think I am. What kind of a dish do you like to whip up? Any Anything in particular? Well, I like fried chicken, but then, of course, I do have a recipe that uh, I'm rather proud of that I like to serve to my friends called Rink and Diddy. 
<laughs> Rinkum Diddy, did you say? <laughs> Maurice, do you like Rinkum Diddy? <laughs> Never heard of Rinkum, did he? <laughs> Maurice, you certainly led a sheltered and cloistered life. Huh? <laughs> Irene, you're not trying to poison Maurice. Are you? <laughs> what is Rinkum, did he? Huh? Well, it's it's really a uh, Welsh rarebit. <laughs> Maurice, you obviously need a good woman to look after you. If Irene proposed to you right now, what would your answer be? Would it be no? Yes. Well, you've changed your mind, eh, Irene? <laughs> Here he is, struggling but still alive, huh? Well, congratulations to you two. I know you'll be very happy. And remember, Maurice, the secret word tonight is Rinkum Diddy. <laughs> well, I must say, you make a charming and attractive couple, and apparently you have a great deal in common. Now, in just one minute, you're going to work together for a chance of $1,000. You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America have certain standards which they do their utmost to live up to. You might call this set of standards their creed. It means a lot to them and to you as a car owner. This creed states that every DeSoto Plymouth dealer wants to and intends to treat you fairly and squarely, whether you come in for a new car, a used car, or just a simple repair job. It's the honest desire of everyone in the office and in the shop at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers to serve you to the best of his or her ability. Isn't this the kind of attention you want? Well then, wherever you drive, visit the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Now let's see if an ex-bachelor and an ex-spinster will be the ones who get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Fenneman, bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's going on out here. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You select the cities and states as your category. Is that right? All of these cities are over 50,000 in population. Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to try? $10. $10? Okay. Now, in what state is the city of Providence? Rhode Island. Rhode Island is right. <laughs> And they're on their way with $30, Groucho. All right. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 are you going to try? Ten more. In what state is the city of Jacksonville? Florida. Florida's right. <laughs> they're climbing. They have $40 now. So here's your third question. How much of the 40 will you bet? $20. In what state is the city of Patterson? New Jersey. New Jersey is correct. <laughs> they're really on their way. They have $60. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the 60 will you bet? $30. $30. And what state is the city of Sioux City? Iowa. Iowa. Iowa is right. And they wind up with $90. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Stick around now. You may get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still door. I know that, George. Well, perhaps the next couple will say it, too. We have a butler, Groucho. And the housewife selected from the studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, Mrs. Irene Colt and Mr. Urbano oh, Galandanis. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. A housewife and a, and a butler, huh? Mrs. Butler, you're the housewife? No, I'm Mrs. Colt. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? I'm just a homemaker. You do housewife. Nothing. Right? nothing. 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 What do you mean, nothing? <laughs> and uh, Mr. Uh, Gallandinus, is that right? That's right, sir. You must be the butler, huh? Uh, where are you from? Uh, from the Philippines, sir. The Philippines, huh? Mm. Well, what do you do as, as a butler? Just, just what do you do? Uh, well, uh, see that the house runs smoothly. In the house runs house. smoothly? You work in a trailer? <laughs> What was the best job you, you had as a butler, Mr. Gallandinus? I worked for a millionaire. Oh, a millionaire? Huh? What was their name? Huh? Oh, I would rather not say. That would embarrass him. Well, could you give me their phone, phone number? Huh? <laughs> no, they might be looking for a gardener. <laughs> I know I'm looking for a gardener. He stole my last bag of fertilizer. Huh? Long distance, sir. Tell me about their house. How, how many rooms? Oh, they had 17 rooms in the house. 70 huh? rooms? 
Seventeen. Seventeen room. rooms, huh? And how many servants? Huh? Uh, Fourteen servants. Fourteen uh. servants, huh? What were, they, what were their jobs? Uh? Oh, butler, second butler, chambermaid, upstairs maid, downstairs maid, cook, uh, chef cook, second cook. What does the second uh, cook do? Uh, just uh, no. suck a tash? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. He, he cooks all the food. Now, uh, Mr. Gallandine is in your, in your job with a big household. What's the first thing you do in the morning? Get up from bed, sir. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I, let's say you're up now. I mean, what's the well, what's uh, the first thing you do? Uh, first thing to do is to see that the breakfast is served. So, uh, the, the maids carry the trays to the ladies, and I, the butler, carry the food to the uh, gentlemen, to the boss. Mm. You got the so wrong so. job, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Can't you have a switch with the maids? Eh? Never, sir. Now, Irene, uh, can you have breakfast in bed if you want it? I could if I went out and cooked it and took it back to bed. <laughs> you wouldn't have to do that, Irene. <laughs> At night, all you got to do is fill your hot water bag with coffee. Yeah? <laughs> and in the morning, you could fry your eggs on the electric blanket. <laughs> uh, uh, what else well, do you do on your job, uh, Urbano? Do you help the master with his clothes? Well, uh, when he has no valiser, then uh, I think it takes care of that. Let's say this fellow's a pauper who can't afford a valet. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about the lady of the house? Who helps her with her dressing? Oh, uh, upstairs maids. Uh. How do you know you were asking? <laughs> do you have an upstairs maid, I, Irene? I don't even have an upstairs. <laughs> I had an upstairs maid once, but she gave me a lot of trouble. She wouldn't stay upstairs. Eh? <laughs> well, Mr. Gallandinus, if taxes get any higher, my advice to you is to stop being a butler and become a tax collector. Now, well, you're going to work together as a team for a chance at $1,000. You run your 20 bucks into more than our other couples, and you'll get a crack at the DeSoto Plymouth big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but George Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The Bachelor and the Spinster won $90. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous women athletes as your category. All right, now you have $20. How much are you going to try? $10. With what sport do you associate Babe Dittrickson? Golf. Well, Galop is right. Yes. <laughs> and I'm on my way with $30. All right, remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the $30 will you try? $20. $20. What sport is Mildred Burke famous in? B-U-R-K-E. Mildred Burke. Burke. Mildred Burke. Uh, I'm sorry, it's Indeed. wrestling. She's the world's champion wrestler. Mildred Burke. Mildred Burke. We had her on this program. She threw me twice in three minutes. Huh? <laughs> they now have $10. Well, now you have $10, and here's your third question. Uh, how much of the 10 are you going to bet? Shoot the works. Shoot the works? Yeah. Uh, $5. Five dollars, all right. <laughs> how much you gonna how much you gonna bet, huh? You wanna compromise and make it eight? Okay. Eight dollars? Here's your third question. With what sport is Louise Bruff associated? B-R-O-U-G-H. Uh, tennis. Tennis is correct. <laughs> On the way again, I believe they have $18. All right. Oh, what a mathematical genius that <laughs> Fenneman is, huh? You've got $18. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 18 are you going to throw? Send it on. 15. Okay. With what sport is Shirley Mae France associated? Swimming. Swimming, Swimming is correct. And they wind up with $33. You wind up with $33. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, in just a minute, our last couple will be out here, and then we'll all get the chance at the $1,000. Fenneman, who is leading? The Bachelor and the Spinster are leading with $90. And the secret word is still door. Perhaps the next couple will say it. We invited some tourist experts to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Josette Frontin from the French consulate and Mr. Al Costler, who drives a sightseeing bus. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. 
Miss uh, Josette Frontin, is that right? Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Not very correctly. It is Frontin. Is Frontin? Yes. Oh. You're from the French consulate? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, Parlez-vous Francais? <laughs> You speak French, eh? Huh? Yes, I speak French. Uh, bon appetit. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. You are welcome. I think this guy's a phony, huh? Eh? <laughs> he hasn't said one word of French. <laughs> ah, Mademoiselle uh, O.D. Cologne. <laughs> that means I'll pay for the perfume later. <laughs> Let's see you knock off some French. Oh, bien sûr que je parle français. J'arrive juste de France. Et c'est juste un petit peu pour vous entendre. I knew you were French. Yeah. <laughs> I know lots of French phrases. Hail de France, that means I'm sick of my friends. <laughs> Chateau Briand. That means my hat's on fire. <laughs> Where are you from, Josette? Oh, uh, I am from Dina in Brittany. You're from Dina? Yes. What time did you have that, huh? <laughs> oh. I'm from Hunger. Is that anything like no. that? <laughs> That's not Where is Dina? It is in Brittany by the sea seaside. Oh, I see. Yes. Well, who are you, Mr. Kozla? <laughs> I'm a sightseeing bus driver. Oh. You speak English? Yes, sir. <laughs> What, what dialect do you speak, uh, Al? I'll call you Al. Huh? I'm from Colorado, Grand Junction. Mm -hmm. You speak French? No, sir. It's too bad. It would have been much easier if you spoke French, then we could all three of us converse in the, <laughs> in the language of diplomacy. I hope you don't mind if we speak English. Uh... Oh, I think it would be very much better. Oui, oui, patty for gras. Huh? <laughs> what do you work for, Mr. Kozla? The Tanner Gray Line Motor Tours. And what are, what are the Tanner Lines? Huh? Well, we operate over all of Southern California, Nevada, and, and who do you uh, operate Arizona. Huh? Bus sightseeing buses. You sightseeing operate on sightseeing buses? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you use, a hatchet? Or... <laughs> uh, now, uh, what questions do your touring passengers ask most frequently, Al? Please stop at the next filling station. <laughs> Uh, I want to phone my sister. <laughs> what do they ask mostly, huh? Mostly to uh, how they can get into a movie studio and see movie stars. What are some of the movie uh, stars' homes that you point out, Al? We pass uh, oh, Loretta Young's home and Joanne Crawford, Eddie Cantor, Jack Benny's. And, uh... Don't you go past my house? <laughs> <laughs> we pass within about a half a block of you. <laughs> Well, if I knew when you were coming, I could walk up and meet the bus. Huh? <laughs> well, let's get let's get back to you, Frenchy. Uh, tell uh, what do you do at the French consulate? Uh, are you an ambassador? No, I'm not an ambassador. I work with a French commercial attaché. Attaché? What is that? Is that when you stick somebody with a sword? <laughs> No, that is touché. Touché. Yes. Is two know. attachés one touché? <laughs> Say, I'm picking up quite a lot of the language. Here. No. <coughs> well, that what? Means, just what? Huh? That means attached. Attached. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, tell me, uh, Josette, are you attached to the attaché? Oh, no. The attaché is attached to the French consulate. Well, I hope they'll be very happy together. <laughs> Are you attached to anybody, uh, Josette? No, I'm single. Ooh la la! <laughs> That's French bus driver. <laughs> but I, I think you understand what I mean. Huh? <laughs> well, how is it an attractive French pastry like you are still in the bakery? <laughs> Surely 50 million Frenchmen can't be wrong. <laughs> well, there are not so many French... 
French man in United mm. States. Well, would you have to marry a Frenchman? Couldn't you marry one of the home guard? Huh? Well, I think I could be interested in some American man, especially if he had some of the Frenchman qualities. I see. Well... <laughs> Mon chéri, what do you have in mind? Uh, yes, so uh, I would like him to be kind, thoughtful, gallant, courteous, debonair, and also what you call a good sport. Well, what I call a good sport may not be the same as what you call it. <laughs> uh, how, how do you feel about American husbands, uh, Al? Well, I think they're kind and gentle and big-hearted, <laughs> handsome and well-heeled. <laughs> well, uh, Al, are you that kind of a husband? Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Don't you know what kind of a husband you are? I'm not married. <laughs> Touché, Al. That, uh, that's French, meaning I make the jokes around here. <laughs> What do you find most interesting about the United States, Josette? Oh, I think that is the fact that every people, Germans, Spaniards, English, French, just seems to be happy to live together and just like if they were a big family. They are mm. all American. Well, you're very observant, uh, Josette. Perhaps someday the whole world will see it that way, too. Uh, as secretary for the commercial attaché, just what are your duties? Hmm. My job covers a lot of territory. <laughs> you mean your boss chases you around the office? <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you mean, Miss Contin? Hmm? Uh, I mean I have to answer the phones and the letters, sometimes some funny ones. And uh, also I receive the people wishing to go for a trip over to France. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, I'd like to go to France, and uh, I'm planning on going there next summer. What kind of a trip would you suggest uh, mm. for me? Well, uh, in uh, what are you specially interested? <laughs> the same thing any other red-blooded American. <laughs> the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Well, I, I've learned a lot about France tonight and also about bus drivers. Now, let's see if you two will win the most money and get the chance at the $1,000 question. Beat our other two couples, and that's all you have to do. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is slinking around off stage to remind our listeners. The Bachelor and the Spinster are still leading with $90. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected stars of current movies as your category. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much will you try? Better just take $5. $5. Who plays Samson and Samson and Delilah? No? Uh, That's a pretty no. easy question, now. You should have guessed it. Well, it's Victor Mature. Now you have $15. Well, all right. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight, so that's the big prize. Now, how much of the 15 will you try? Make it 10, then. Make it 10. All right. Who is the male star of Sands of Iwo Jima? John Egar and John Wayne. John Wayne is right. <laughs> Well, we're on the way now. They have $25. All right, now you got $25. Here's your third question. How much of the 25 will you try? Ten. Ten. Who plays the title role in Thelma Jordan? Take a guess. I don't know it. No. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's Barbara Stanwyck. All right, now you have $15. How much are you going to bet now? You better say 15 You All want right. to shoot the works? Yeah. Okay, 15 Who stars in the Western Montana? Earl Flynn. Earl Flynn is correct. And they wind up with $30. And that means the bachelor and the spinster get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. This year, the one thing all of us could count on as far as weather went was that it would be unpredictable. And of course, this is all the more reason to have our cars operating in tip-top shape. 
many, many people have discovered this year that it pays to go to an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer, whether it's an emergency or a routine checkup. For there, you get expert, courteous service at the lowest possible cost. In fact, that's a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's everyday way of doing business. Now, they're able to accomplish this because they have highly skilled mechanics in their shop. And these experts work with special factory-designed and approved tools. From the records they keep on your car, they're able to tell you, for example, when your engine is ready for a tune-up or new lubrication. They'll tell you when your tires should be rotated to add thousands of miles to their life. For the best from your car, stop in where you get the best service at an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. <laughs> And here is the bachelor and the spinster, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you. So think carefully and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. Recently, in a big shakeup of personnel, a new chief of naval operations was appointed to succeed Admiral Denfield, who is the present chief of naval operations. <laughs> What is the answer you two have decided upon? I'm Take afraid I don't know. Well, I'm sorry, it's Admiral Forrest Shaman. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $90 in the quiz, plus $100 for saying the secret word. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $1,500. Before winding up tonight's proceedings, I'd like to thank the radio editors of the United States and Canada for voting our show the best quiz program on the air in the annual poll conducted for Fame magazine. <laughs> well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. The golden rule applies in driving, too. Drive as you would have the other fellow drive. This is George Fenneman signing off with the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. secret word tonight is heart. H-E-A-R-T. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Well, spring is just around the corner. I wish I was. Hey, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who gets first whack at it? We asked if there were any couples here tonight who had been married more than 50 years. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. and Mrs. A.S. Thacker, and here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. 
Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> and if you say the secret word at any time we're, wo- we're talking, you'll win $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. So you two are married more than 50 years, eh? Yeah. Uh, how long have you been married, uh, Mrs. Thacker? 50 years, and last November. And uh, how long have you been married, Mr. Thacker? <laughs> How, do, how does it feel to be celebrating your uh, 50th uh, wedding anniversary, Mr. Thacker? Well, it's just beautiful, yeah. wonderful. About the same as the 49th, I suppose. Huh? <laughs> and uh, how was the 48th? Do you remember that? About the same. About the same. <laughs> well, let's try the 39th. How was that year? Huh? Well, it was wonderful, too. Yes, that was a great year, the 39th. <laughs> how long have you been in California, Mr. Thacker? Twenty-seven years. Mm-hmm. And uh, why did why did you come here? Well, we was living in Spokane at that time, and I wanted a warmer climate. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it have been cheaper to put on heavy underwear. <laughs> <laughs> where where did you formerly reside, uh, Mrs. Thacker? Before that, I mean. In Texas, Gainesville, Texas. Was that near Nacogdoches or Denison or? Uh... <laughs> Yes. I was once pinched in Nacogdoches for playing euchre on the front porch of the hotel. <laughs> Happened to be on a Sunday. You're not allowed to play euchre on uh, Nacogdoches on Sunday. <laughs> As a matter of the fact, the way I play, they shouldn't have allowed it on Saturday. <laughs> uh, may I ask uh, how old you were when you got married, Mrs. Thacker? Twenty. Twenty, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And how old were you when uh, Mrs. Thacker took you out of circulation? Uh, I was twenty-six. Were you seventy-six? I'm seventy-seven now. Seventy-seven. Well, you just passed the spirit of seventy-six. Huh? <laughs> what sort of what sort of work do you do now, Mr. Thacker? I don't work. You're a bum. <laughs> You look so prosperous, Mr. Thacker. <laughs> you worked a mere 50 years and then quit? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Don't you want to amount to something when you grow up? <laughs> do, you, do you have any children, uh, Mitty? Yes, sir. have uh, two sons. You have two sons. That's in Arizona, isn't it? Uh... <laughs> Do you, do you have any grandchildren, uh, yes, Mrs. Thacker? Sir. Yes, sir. I have two. Two. Do you have any great-grandchildren? No, sir. Do you have any great-great-grandchildren? No, sir. You're in a rut. <laughs> now, after all these years of marriage, do you have any pet name for your wife, Mr. Thacker? Yes, sir. I, I always called her Sweetheart. Well, you just said hot, and that was the secret word, so you just won $100 in cash. Compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Thank you. Thank you. And we are definitely using hot as the secret word tonight in honor of the 1950 hot campaign now going on all over America. And Mrs. Uh, Thacker, wh- what do you call 23 Skidoo here? <laughs> call him Shorty. You call him Shorty? Is that for any financial reason? Or... Do you remember who did the proposing when you, uh, when you were engaged, Mr. Thacker? Yes, sir, I did. Well, what did she say after you proposed? I don't have any idea. <laughs> Maybe she said no. How do you know? This, this could all be a horrible mistake. <laughs> Mrs. Thacker, do you remember exactly what you said when he proposed? No. You said no? Well, then I was right. It is a horrible mistake. (laughs) Well, seriously, it's been inspiring having you two here with a 50-year marriage. You've set a fine example for the young couples of America. And I hope you'll invite me to your 75th anniversary. Now, in just one minute, you're going to work together for a chance to win a lot of money. You bet your life. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer pledges himself to treat you fairly and squarely, day after day, year after year. In fact, 
That's the way the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America feel about all the customers they serve. That's their pledge, and they'll do their utmost to live up to it at all times. No matter why you drive into a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's, you'll find it the honest desire of all the folks there to serve you to the very best of their ability. They know that's the kind of attention that will make you a satisfied and steady customer in the years to come. That's why it pays to stop where you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now then, let's see if you two youngsters will get the chance at the $1,500. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that $20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected name the fruit as your category. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, here's your first question. You have $20, and how much will you risk? Ten. What type of fruit is a pippin? An uh, apple. An apple is right. And you're on your way with $30. You're on your way, as Fenneman says. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of your $30 will you try? $10. $10. What is a bartlet? Pear. A pear is correct. Now they have $40, Groucho. Now you have $40, huh? Here's your third question. How much of the $40 will you try? $20. What kind of fruit is a muscat? M-U-S-C-A-T. It's a grape. It's, do you think it's a grape? And you think it's a grape? Well, it is a grape. Ah. Reclining now, we have $60, Groucho. Uh, now you have $60. Uh, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 60 are you going to go for? How much you say, Mother? I said 30 Okay, 30 Listen. then. <laughs> what is meant by a yellow cling? A yellow cling is a peach. Is a peach is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $90. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away now. You might get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still heart. Yes, George. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Yes, George. Just before we went on the air, yes, our George. studio audience selected Blanche Ames, a department store buyer, and Mr. Alexander Atkinson, a married man. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. One of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Atkinson, huh? Right. You're, you're the married man? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very happily married. Very happily married. Oh, well, yeah. There's no point in getting pugnacious about it. Huh? Very <laughs> Atkinson, there's a... are you related to the dramatic critic on the New York Times? I'm related to a former governor of Georgia. Well, that's not oh, quite the Brooks, same thing. Brooks huh? Atkinson. I mean Brooks Atkinson. Oh, yes. He's a distant relative. Is he? Well, he must yeah. be if you're here and he's in New York. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you're, you're, where are you from, Mr. Atkinson? I'm from the land of sunshine, flowers, beautiful women, juicy oranges, and no smog. <laughs> Are you inferring that we have smog here in California, Mr. Atkinson? Oh, uh, that's what I've heard. Of course, I live out in beautiful, enchanting uh, San Fernando Valley myself. I don't get out in Los Angeles very much myself. Let me see. I'm kind of intrigued with San Fernando Valley. The Off promise, hand? The promised land. Well, they've been promising a lot. I don't know whether they <laughs> Offhand, I would say you are a realtor. Is that right? Well, I have, uh, I have a little property down in Florida. But recently I got a letter saying... Uh, that it was underwater? That uh, they discovered... <laughs> They discovered land on my property down there. They discovered land yeah. on your property? That's a mighty good joke. Do you mind if I use that next week? Maybe I might permission, all right. Just, uh, just what is your profession, Mr. Atkinson? Well, uh, back during the Hoover Prosperity that we were having back in the 30s... I, I beg your to, pardon. Uh, you know, <laughs> not, please, not while I'm smoking, huh? <laughs> I got tired of eating the grapefruit and oranges. That's about all I had to eat, so I wanted a little meat. I used to go out and catch the bullfrogs at night. <laughs> I go out at night and catch these frogs, and you take them and fry them in butter. Man, that's better than southern fried chicken. Well, I must try that sometime. <laughs> <laughs> these tourists came down there. 
And, you know, and... these are Yankees. Anyway, they uh, kind of took a liking for these. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do, what do you do now, on? Senator Claghorn? <laughs> time, it's my good fortune to be associated with the finest studio in Hollywood. That comes from the bottom of my heart. That's Warner Brothers. We are really well, doing things. You went on gabbing so long that you finally won $100. You said hot, and that's the secret word. So you win $100 in no cash, kidding. compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Huh? I certainly will. <laughs> Mr. Atkinson, are you related to the Atkinson in New York? Huh? <laughs> Relatives everywhere. Georgia's filled full of them. I got relatives all over Georgia. Yeah, well, you could talk yourself into relatives. <laughs> now, how, do, how do you do, Miss, uh, Miss Ames? How do you do? No, I asked you first. How do you do? Huh? <laughs> this is high-class cocktail conversation. <laughs> you're, uh, you're a department store buyer, is that right? That's right. Uh-huh. How many department stores have you bought this week? I don't buy department stores. I buy for a department store. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Well, which one? Uh, Orbach. You're from Orbach, you say? In, uh... And Philadelphia. Did you buy d department stores back in Philadelphia? <laughs> I'm afraid you don't follow me. <laughs> well, even if I did, there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh... <laughs> Where, where do you do this buying, Blanche? Uh, at Orbox in the Oval Room. And well, what do you buy for them? I buy better dresses. Better dresses? And who buys the worst ones? Huh? <laughs> Did you ever buy any dresses that your store can't sell? Um, I get stuck with a few white elephants. White elephants? Huh? I can see why he gets stuck with them. <laughs> what do you do with these white elephants? Well, when they don't move, why, we usually mark them down for sale. If they don't move, they must be dead, is that it? <laughs> Imagine a store full of dead white elephants. <laughs> must be quite a problem on a hot day. Huh? <laughs> well, wh where do you keep them? Where do you keep these uh, dead white elephants, huh? Well, we hang them on racks. <laughs> oh, no wonder they're dead, huh? Now, let's be calm and go at this thing scientifically, <laughs> Blanche. Huh? Now, what I originally asked you, Blanche, was do you ever buy any dresses for your store that you can't sell? Yes, uh, I'm afraid to... Now, are they changing the styles this year, Blanche? Yes, the trend is more towards the shorter skirt. Do you think we could speed up that trend a little? Huh? <laughs> After all, I haven't got so long to go, you know. <laughs> Well, where are skirts being worn now? And don't tell me around the waist, huh? Where are they being worn now, Blanche? About halfway between the knee and the floor. Hmm. It sounds like you need new elastic in your suspenders. <laughs> well, wake up, uh, Mr. Atkinson. <laughs> How long does your wife wear her dresses? Sir? About two or three years. <laughs> Okay, go back to sleep, Mr. Atkinson. <laughs> I'll wake you up as soon as Thurman runs again. <laughs> well, we know a good deal about department stores and elephants. Now, you're going to work together for a chance at $1,500. You beat our other two couples, and you get a chance at the big question later. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but Fenneman's off stage to remind our listeners. Mr. and Mrs. Thacker, who've been married for 50 years... Earn $90. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected romantic songs as your category. Here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to risk? Ten. Let's see if you can identify this song. Play, Jerry. Sweet and lovely. Sweet and lovely. <laughs> We're on our way with $30, Groucho. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the $30 will you try? 
20. What's the name of this romantic song? Okay, Jerry. Some secluded rendezvous. What is it? Talk up. One answer between you. And some secluded rendezvous. Oh. Cocktails for two. Yes. Cocktails for two. Brother Ray Dolly has fifty dollars. Well, you came through in the last quarter there, Blanche. All right, here's your third question. How much of the 50 will you try? 40. Give me the title of this song. Once in a while. Once in a while. They're really climbing now. They have $90. All right, you got $90. Now, the how much are you going to... The whole 90. The whole 90. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. You're going to go for the 90? Go yes. for the 90. <laughs> What's this song? Give me the title. $180. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, we'll soon know who gets the chance at the $1,500 question. Fenneman, who's ahead? The department store buyer and the married man are leading with $180. And the secret word is still heart. We invited some hobos and some job analysts to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Evelyn Robbins and Mr. Bill Hewitt. Fenneman, where on earth did you ever get a hobo? Oh, you have to ask the hobo, Groucho. And here they come. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome uh, to the DeSoto Plymouth program. If one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Okay, now I'll find out where the hobo comes from. Uh, uh, Miss Robbins, where are you from? Huh? New York. <laughs> New York. How long have you lived out here? Three years. Three years. Uh, well, you add quite some beauty to the local scene. Thank you. Who do, who do you work for? The Ames Bureau of Employment. What do you do there? Well, I'm a job analysis. And what is the function of a job analysis? Well, we interview people, we screen them, and we test them. We try to determine what type of position they're best suited for. You don't analyze jobs, and you just analyze people. Is that right? You could say that. I, I already did say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, by sifting through all the facts about uh, Evelyn here, uh, I gather that you're the hobo. Is that right? Uh? That's right. Uh, let me hear you put a bite on me for a cup of coffee. Now, go ahead. Uh, 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 hobo don't put the bite on anybody for a cup of coffee. Uh, what do you mean? I've had, I've had them ask me for coffee. Huh? Well, that's a tramp. A tramp <laughs> asks you for a <laughs> cup of coffee. A hobo goes out and gets it different. He gets, uh, runs a butcher shop for meat and the bakery for toppings, and then he cooks it up. Bakery for what? Toppings. That's the old bread, stale stuff. Well, if you want stale stuff, just listen to me here. Huh? <laughs> How do you get it from the butcher? I mean, you walk in there and he throws you a hunk of meat? Huh? Well, you give him a song and dance. Just tell him, say, I'm trying to cook up something down in the jungles down here, and I uh, like to have a little meat. It's a good idea to have something under your arm, like some potatoes, and say, look, Mac, I got a loaf of bread here. How about give me a little meat to go with it? They're easy. It's a pushover. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try that tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Tell me, Bill, as a knight of the road, how do you live? Huh? Oh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Like an actor, huh? <laughs> <laughs> where, where, do, where do you live? Well, if I'm working in a city like Bellhop or Dishwasher, I rent a room. If I'm not working, I live in the jungle. Well, when you're camping in... That's suppose your own salt and pepper and everything you get, and you cook it in an open fire and can. Well, suppose you can't uh, get any meat. Huh? Well, I wouldn't be a mulligan still then. No? Well, what would you have then? Huh? I'd be slum gullion, I guess. <laughs> what do you drink with your slum gullion? Oh, battery acid. Battery acid? Yeah. Well, you should at least be able to start on a cold morning, huh? <laughs> Guess what is battery acid? Well, that's fresh coffee. The first time it's, uh, you boil it off. After that, it's no longer battery acid. What, do you, you use it over again? Sure, then it, but it's not battery acid then. That's dishwater mud. Yeah. How many times do you cook it over? Oh, that all depends on conditions. Yeah. <laughs> if you got a lot of coffee, it's not necessary. Sometimes when things are tough, you got to boil it over a lot of times. In my house, it tastes like dishwater the first time. <laughs> How do you keep in touch with people when you're on the road? Where do you get your mail? Oh, mostly general delivery. You know. yeah, well, what kind of work do you do when you're working, Bill? Oh, any kind of work. I've been a sailor. I was a fireman. I worked on deck. I worked in copper mines, been bellhop. 
worked in harvest fields. Mm-hmm. Well, how do you get from place to place? Uh, do you ride the rods? Oh, they haven't rode the rods in 25 years. Uh, I started first on the whole board in 1950, and I was 15 years old. Yeah, I ride boxcars, ride the reefer. What's, the, what's the, a reefer? The reefer's the end of a fruit car when it's not iced. And you ride a, a tender, ride the blinds on a passenger train, ride the deck. Pretty dangerous, isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of car do you prefer? I mean, well, I prefer Pullman. But, uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, in lieu of a Pullman, huh? Well, that depends Let's on say there isn't a Pullman available, huh? That's well, been de-iced. Well, that depends on the weather. If it's in the uh, summertime, I like an open gondola where I can see Just and get the fresh air. <laughs> well, what do you like best about the life you lead? Uh? Well, I like to be free. I don't like to be tied down. I like to go places. I like to get up in the morning when I want to. I don't want to... Wife telling me to get up or sticking a cold feet in my back. <laughs> you you prefer a refrigerator car to a woman, is that? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, this has been very interesting, and uh, having you here tonight, and uh, now you're going to try for a chance at the fifteen hundred dollar question. You beat our other two couples, and you win a chance at all that money. I can't tell you how much our other couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The department store buyer and the married man are ahead with a hundred eighty dollars. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected Islands of the Whirl as your category. Is that right? Now, you have $20. How much are you going to try? Fifteen. $15. $15. What ocean do you find the Hawaiian Islands? Pacific. Pacific Ocean is right. Come on, $35. Well, remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 35 will you try? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. And what ocean do you find Greenland? In North Atlantic. In the Atlantic is right. <laughs> Now you have $60, Gracho. Now you have $60. Here's your third question. How much of the 60 will you risk? 50. In what sea do you find the island of Corsica? Corsica? The Mediterranean. The Mediterranean is right. <laughs> They're really climbing now. They have $110. Say, you must have done a lot of reading in those boxcars. <laughs> Oh, I sailed in there during this war. Oh, I see. Well, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now you have $110. A hundred dollars. In what ocean do you find the Isle of Tahiti? Uh, that's in the Pacific. In the Pacific is right. And they wind up with two hundred and ten dollars, and that means that they get the chance to the DeSoto for the fifteen hundred dollar question. You know, you have a perfect right to be particular about the way your car is serviced. And that's why more and more car owners every day drive in to DeSoto Plymouth dealers. For that's where you get expert, courteous service at the lowest possible cost. You see, DeSoto Plymouth dealers are just as particular about your car as you are yourself. They have factory-trained mechanics working with factory-designed and approved tools and equipment. They see to it that the service they offer in their shops is the best service you can get anywhere. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers throughout America take pride in their reputation for fast, efficient, courteous service. Remember this next time your car needs service. And drive in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the hobo and the job analyst, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. Well, uh, if you win this, you're really going to be able to ride in Pullman's. Uh... <laughs> Here we go for $1,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no assistance from the audience. Here it is. In 1914, the United States Army finished its biggest peacetime job. What is the biggest peacetime job ever accomplished by the Army? What is the answer you two have decided upon? Panama, Panama. Panama Canal is right.
<laughs> well, you had the right answer, so you won $1,500. What are you going to do with all that money? <laughs> Bill, what are you going to do with yours? Well, I... My heart starts, stops jumping. <laughs> And you just said the secret word, and you just won $100 in cash, and now my heart is stopping. <laughs> well, now, uh, Evelyn, what are you going to do with all that money? I don't know. You just dumbfounded, huh? Well, I'll help you spend it, Evelyn. And, Bill, what are you going to do with yours? Well, at first, I'm going to write Why, that... a lot of slum guiding with that, huh? <laughs> that preferred birth you talked about. Oh. Well, you really cleaned up tonight. You won $210 in the quiz and $100 for the secret word and $1,500. All I can say to you both is congratulations. From the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast, you bet your life. <laughs> It's a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $1,000. Benjamin, if you have nothing better to do this week, why don't you see our new movie, Love Happy? Harpo, Chico, and I tell a few jokes and do some acting. It's very educational. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Traffic control begins at your wheel. This is George Benjamin, signing off with more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. The secret word tonight is water. W-A-T-E-R. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... I thought he went where the wild goose goes. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's first? A couple of Irish people selected from our studio audience just before we went on the air. It's our way of noticing St. Patrick's Day, Groucho. And here they are, Miss Beth O'Haggerty and Mr. John Daniger. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. Mr., uh, uh, Dan, uh how do you pronounce it? Danaher. Danaher. Yes. What do you got that G in there? Just to fool people? <laughs> that's, a, that's a real Irish name, huh? Real Irish. I bet your life is a real Irish name. And we got a plug for the show, too. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Patty, me lad? I'm from Roscommon, on the banks of the Shannon, in the west part of Ireland. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds pretty authentic, huh? <laughs> how, how long since you, since you were in Ireland? Forty-two years. And after all these years, you still have a touch of the old sod? You betcha. <laughs> yes, sir. Have you tried Fels Napter and a good stiff brush? <laughs> <laughs> Miss O'Haggerty, o- at least I can pronounce that, huh? <laughs> Beth O'Haggerty, huh? That's right. Which part of Ireland are you from, uh, Beth? Well, I didn't come from Ireland. And how is it you're Irish? Uh, was one of your ancestors a policeman? Both of, <laughs> Both of my grandparents came from Ireland. Oh, I see. Then you're Irish twice removed. Uh, <laughs> I've been twice removed from Ireland myself. 
Well, yeah. if you're not from Ireland, where, where are you from, Miss O'Haggerty? I'm from Los Angeles. Well, you're a fine-looking lass. Thank you. Why is it you're not married, Beth? Beautiful girl like you. Oh, I just never found anyone who... Any man that was strong enough to take me away from my job, my career. What are you, a wrestler? <laughs> What is this tenacious job that you stick to, uh, like adhesive tape, huh? Well, at, at present, it's uh, a secretary in the tax and insurance department at Paramount. Yeah, I was there a couple weeks ago. I was, did a scene do? in Bing Crosby's picture, Mr. Music. Yeah. You didn't see me tripping the light fantastic there. Well, my job doesn't have much contact with the talent. Well, mine doesn't either. But, <laughs> but nevertheless, I'm in that picture. Huh? How, how old are you, Mr. Donegan? Sixty years. Sixty, well, you don't look at him. You're a fine broth of a boy. <laughs> and when I say broth, I don't mean Irish stew, huh? <laughs> well, you're a little old here for Beth, aren't you? Huh? I think so. I really think I am. But besides, I'm married. Well, then it's not very important, huh? <laughs> How did you meet your spouse, uh, Johnny? Well, it's, it's well, about... Well, there's more to it than that, I hope. <laughs> It's about 45 years ago. It was in a small town in the west of Ireland, and she was out on the street chasing a chicken. <laughs> and you were doing the same thing, huh? <laughs> I don't know anyone. I caught the chicken, I took the chicken back, and I put it in the, in the hen house at the back of her house. And then I went back the next night and made my acquaintance, and, well, that's all. I'm married to her now anyway. What happened to the chicken? <laughs> I don't know. I never made any inquiries. <laughs> Patty, do you, sp do you speak Gaelic? A little bit, not much. Well, could you give us a few words? Well, K. Wiltu, Tama Gamai. K. Wiltu Hain, Gamai. Very much. I could. Tasuro Gagan, can take me a reach to. What does that mean, huh? Well, it means, uh, good evening. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Where is your chicken I hope tonight? I'll see huh? you again. <laughs> <laughs> could, could you tell me a joke in Gaelic? No, I couldn't. I, I really couldn't tell you. I wouldn't be able to remember that. Now, what I could tell you is a short one in English, if it's any good to you. <laughs> well, well, frankly, we could use a joke about here. <laughs> let's, hear, let's hear the one in English, huh? Well, it, Don't make a... the English too good or I won't understand it. <laughs> This, uh, this isn't about the English. It's in the English language. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's about Pat that was up on the fourth floor in a building and was on fire. And he shouted to Mike down on the sidewalk, and he says, uh, Mike, I'm going to jump. Catch me. So he jumped, flopped down on the sidewalk, and Mike jumped away from him, and he flopped on the sidewalk and was stretched out. And he says, say, why didn't you catch me? He says, I was waiting to see if you'd bounce. <laughs> Well, Pat, uh, if that joke is any indication, you're a much older man than I thought you were. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Donay, uh, uh, have you ever seen a, lepre a leprechaun, huh? No, I've never seen a leprechaun. What is a leprechaun? Is it anything like a republicon? Uh? No, no. They're imaginary people. Well, know. that's a republicon, all right. <laughs> They're imaginary people these days, too, huh? <laughs> Tell me, uh, uh, how do you usually celebrate St. Patrick's Day, uh, Johnny? Oh, take a couple of nips or something like that. You know. <laughs> Hang around the rest of the day and take it easy. Well, what's the real reason you Irish celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Well, because St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland, and he, he drove the snakes out of Ireland. Mm. And where are they now? Huh? <laughs> and what, after a nip or two, I suppose they all came back again. <laughs> Well, after talking to you two, all I can say is a happy St. Patrick's Day to you both. Now, in just one minute, you're going to work together for a chance at $1,000. You bet your life. When you call on any one of the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, you'll find it's their honest desire to please you, no matter how small the job to be done. The DeSoto Plymouth dealers offer you the benefit of not only the best tools and equipment, not only the factory-trained mechanics, but they also feel it's important to be courteous, to give their customers a square deal. 
That's their creed, their way of doing business. So no matter where you drive, remember there are DeSoto Plymouth dealers anxious to serve you. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now let's see if an Irish Carlene and her partner will be the ones who get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth thousand dollar question. Fenneman, bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has twenty dollars. They bet as much of that twenty as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the thousand dollar question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's going on out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you twenty dollars. You selected capitals of foreign countries as your category. Is that correct? Okay. Now you have twenty dollars. How much are you going to risk? Ten. What is the capital city of Denmark? Oslo. Is that the answer you two agree upon? Do you agree with that, uh, Beth? One answer between you now. Uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's Copenhagen. Now, remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $10 will you bet? Five. What is the capital city of the Netherlands? Netherlands. Don't know. Take a guess, Beth. I can't even think at this point. Well, it's Amsterdam. They now have $5. Now you're down to $5. Now, here's your third question. How much of the five will you try? The five. What is the capital city of Spain? Madrid. Madrid is right. We're on the way now. They have $10. All right, now you got $10. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the ten will you try? Ten. All right. What is the capital city of Portugal? Lisbon. Lisbon is right. And they wind up with the $20 they started with. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away. You may get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still water. Perhaps the next couple will say it. They're a barber, Mr. Arthur Fredman, and a housewife, Mrs. Dorsey Rigney, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. And if one of you says the secret word at any time, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. A barber and a housewife, eh? Uh, Mr. Uh, Friedman, you're the barber, I presume, huh? That's right. <laughs> well, there are lady barbers, you know. <laughs> where, where are you from, uh, Mr. Friedman? 1533 Vine Street, side of Horace Barbershop. Is that where you were born? Huh? Minneapolis, Minnesota. The one. I thought perhaps you were born in the third chair as you come in. Huh? <laughs> you were born where? Minneapolis, Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. The land of 10,000 lakes, and you left all of them, is that it? That's right. Now, where are you from, Mrs. Uh, Rigney? I'm from Green Acres, Washington. What sort of work does your husband do? Uh... Uh, my husband is a disabled veteran, but I'm a truck driver. Truck? What kind of a truck? Uh... Well, now I'm hauling house trailers with a truck. People live in these Oh, things? yes, people live in them. And you pull them across the country while they're living in them? No, I just pull them and, and set them on their lot, and they use that in place of the house, most of them. Oh. Uh, how long have you been a barber, Mr. Friedman? Seventeen uh, years. Seventeen years, huh? You don't look at You're a very young-looking man. Uh, where does your husband get his hair cut, Mrs.? Uh... Well, he doesn't have any steady barber. What, is he stewed? <laughs> <laughs> Do your customers ever ask you uh, what's a good way for a man to save his hair, Mr. Friedman? Yes, they do. Well, what do you tell them? Put it in the cigar box. <laughs> you know, that there's a sister joke to that one you just pronounced over there. It's the one where the fellow writes in and says, How do you avoid falling hair? And the fellow writes back, Step nimbly to one side. <laughs> Incidentally, I know of a hair tonic that'll grow hair in a frying pan. But who wants a hairy frying pan? <laughs> no joke, but then this is a very old frying pan. <laughs> How did you get to be a barber? Did you start out when you were a little shaver? Went to barber college. Huh? I went to barber college. You went to barber college? Yes. What influence has the electric razor had on the barber profession? It cuts down the shaves about 25%. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? Every time there's another razor sold, you raise the price of the shave. Is that it? No. Do you use electric razor? I use an electric razor, yes. Someday I hope to get the chair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's something I've always wanted to know. Where do you get all these old magazines for your customers? We don't have old magazines. Are you buying from dentists? Uh, we don't have <laughs> 
Or are you in business for yourself, huh? Where do you get them? You don't have all magazines? No. Well, if one of your customers brings in the latest issue of Look Magazine, be sure to see it, will you? There's a flattering piece about me and our show in the current Look Magazine. Or maybe it'll help them forget that they just lost your ears in your barber shop. Huh? <laughs> Why is it women don't get bald as often as men, Mr. Friedman? Well, the female is different than the male. <laughs> Well, that's about as accurate a statement as I've ever heard. <laughs> Nobody is more aware of that than I am, Mr. Freeman. <laughs> well, now, let's see if, uh, if a professional clipper like you and uh, can clip an old cut-up like me for $1,000. Now, you beat the other couples, and you earn the chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners. The Irish couple won $20. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You selected songs about anatomy as your category. Is that right? That's right. Now, you have $20. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Ten. What's the name of this song? Okay, Jerry. Well, what do you say, kids? What do you say? Um. I'm if sorry. the smoke gets in your eyes, huh? <laughs> now, remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. That's the big prize anyway. Now, how much of the $10 will you try? Five. Five dollars? Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. Tiptoe through the, Tip -toe through the tulips Tip -toe. is right, huh? They now have $15. All right, now you got $15. How much of the 15 will you try? Ten. Okay, here's your third question. Let's see if you can identify this one for ten bucks. <laughs> What do you say, kids? Take a guess. I'm sorry. It's in my arms. You should have known that. They now have five dollars. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the five will you try? Five. What's the name of this song? Play. Take a guess. Body and soul. Body and soul is right. And they wind up with ten dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, in just a minute, our last couple will try for the chance at a thousand dollars. Fenneman, who's ahead? Well, the Irish couple is leading with twenty dollars. And the secret word is still water. Perhaps the next couple will say it. We invited some collectors from the Bureau of Internal Revenue and some Hollywood business managers to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected collector William Kenny and manager Maurice Dolman. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, gents, to you bet your life. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. A business manager and an income tax collector, is that right, uh, Mr. Uh, Kenny? That's right. You're the uh, income tax man, huh? Yes, I am. I recognized you by your short form, huh? <laughs> Well, where are you from, Mr. Kenny? I'm from uh, Miami, Florida. How long have you been an income tax collector? About seven months. How did you happen to go into this nefarious trade, huh? Well, I uh, took the examination in Florida, and I wanted to come to California. Well, you know, you can live in California without being with the Revenue Department, huh? <laughs> Although it's not easy. You know? <laughs> what prompted you to become an income tax man? I mean, what did you do prior to that? I was a bank examiner for the federal government. <laughs> Do you have a, a nickname, uh, Mr. Kenny? Yes. Uh, what is it? Eh? At school, they call me Frog. <laughs> Why, did you hop around a lot in those days? <laughs> are, are you married, Froggy? Oh, yes, I am. I... And uh, how helpful is marriage from the income tax standpoint? Well, this year... Uh, Wife is worth $600. <laughs> well, everything's in play to these days. <laughs> is that alive, Mr. Kenny? Or... <laughs> Has to be alive, huh? It, uh, she must be alive at the time of filing. <laughs> you don't... 
cab they dropped dead the following day, huh? <laughs> How about children? What are, what are they worth? This year, kids are worth $600. <laughs> Hey, the little ones are worth just as much as the big ones, huh? <laughs> do, do you have any children, Mr. Kenny? Not yet. Not yet. Well, then you're out 600 bucks, aren't you? <laughs> By the process of elimination, I, I presume that you're the uh, business manager, Mr. Dolman, huh? I am. Where, where are you from? I'm from New York. What outfit do you, do you work for? I'm in business for myself. Oh, you mind your own business, huh? <laughs> just what do you do in your business? I, ma I manage the business affairs of other people. Then you don't mind your own business. <laughs> what do you have to know to be a business manager, Mr. Doman? Well, primarily you have to have a good head for business. Is that in addition to the one you carry around now? <laughs> well, Froggy, let's get back to you, huh? You're standing there dreaming of somebody you're going to soak tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Specifically, what is your job with the Income Tax Department or the Bureau of Internal Revenue? Well, we... Pretty fancy name for a crooked outfit. Eh? <laughs> we go out and track down delinquent taxpayers and... Suppose a fellow owes you $7,000 and he has no money. What do you do now? If he's got the money, we'll collect it. If he doesn't... If he hasn't got it, you can't throw him in the can for that, though, huh? If he hasn't got it, no, and he hasn't prepared a fraudulent return. No. But we don't uh, put him in jail if they just don't have the money to pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to know, no? <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what are some of the things we should know about income taxes? For example, should a married man file a joint return or a single return? This year, it would uh, be to his advantage to file a joint return with his wife... And that way he could take advantage of the split income provision. When do I get my split? Uh, <laughs> what's a joint return? Is that a nightclub with a money-back guarantee? <laughs> a joint return is where a husband and wife file one return together and pool their income and prepare one tax return. Now, in filing a joint return, how much am I allowed as a deduction for myself? This year, you would be allowed $600 as... Uh, head of the house. That's just fantasy on your part, you know. Right? <laughs> I'm no more the head of the house than you are a frog, Mr. King. <laughs> How about Mr. Dolman over here? Does he get another 600 off because of his extra head for business? <laughs> now, what is the difference, Froggy, but, uh, between the short form and the long form? Well, the short form, the 1040A, you can That gets claim... in at 11 o'clock, huh? <laughs> you can uh, claim, or that is on the short form, you can claim only 10% deductions of your uh, gross income. Do you carefully examine every form that comes into your office, Mr. Kenny? No, we don't go over every form. We, um... Just uh, look at the above-the-average forms. That is, we... You mean the ordinary form you don't pay any attention to? Well, would you like me to come down and just look at the average form for you? I'm not as calloused as you are, you know. Why don't you examine uh, every form? Well, we just don't have the personnel to go over every form that walk goes in the office. <laughs> but uh, in, in regards to that, I, I want to add that we do pay particular attention to the forms that go into big figures. Mm -hmm. uh, this, could, this could get out of hand, you know, but... <laughs> You must have an army of bookkeepers to go over all those forms. How long does it take you? Well, it doesn't take long. We have a huge machine that is really a mechanical brain. You have a mechanical brain? <laughs> and Mr. Doman has two heads over here? <laughs> I'm the only one around here with a single-track mind. <laughs> I'm still thinking of those average forms. <laughs> now, if you were my business manager, Mr. Doman, how could you save me money on income taxes? 
Well, I... Oh, brother, are you on the spot now? Huh? <laughs> I can see the handcuffs sticking out of his back pocket. Huh? <laughs> I'll bring you an apple pie with a saw in it in the morning. Well, what we do is keep proper record of your deductions. Uh-huh. You know, you know uh, in your business, you listen to the radio, you have to, to listen to other comedy programs that we can take depreciation on your radio. You have to listen to other programs? <laughs> I'd rather lose my deduction and not have to listen, huh? <laughs> Now, uh, suppose I was thinking of hiring you to help me take care of my business affairs, Mr. Dolman. I haven't any, but just pretend, huh? What would you want to know about me? Well, first, I'd want to know if you were honest. <laughs> if I were honest, I wouldn't need your help, Mr. Dolman. <laughs> well, between the two of you, you've succeeded in confusing all three of us. Now, you're going to try for a chance at $1,000. You beat the other two couples, and that's all you have to do. You're pretty smart fellows. I can't tell you how much they won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The Irish couple is ahead with $20. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You selected instruments played by orchestra leaders as your category. Now, here's your first question. You have $20. How much will you try? We'll try for 10 Okay. What instrument does Harry James play? Trumpet. Trumpet is right. <laughs> Off to a good start. They have thirty dollars. I want to. I want to warn you of one thing, boys. You know, if you win any money here tonight, you got to put it on your tax. <laughs> Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty will you try? Twenty. What instrument does Gene Krupa play? Drums. The drums is right. Huh? They're climbing now. They have fifty dollars. All right, you got fifty dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the fifty? Forty. What instrument does Tommy Dorsey play? Trombone. Trombone is right. They're way up there now. They have $90. Well, you slid right into that one with the trombone. Now, you got $90. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? Shoot the, Shoot work. the works. What instrument does Carmen Cavallero play? Piano. Piano. The piano is right. And they wind up with $180. And that means the tax man and the business manager get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. What do you expect of the folks who service your car? Efficient service? Courteous service? Service at a fair price? Well, you get them all when you visit one of the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. You'll find they're not only ready and willing, but able to give your car the very best in service. And that goes for the major repair jobs as well as the simpler ones. DeSoto Plymouth dealers have factory-trained mechanics who know cars inside and out, no matter what make or what year it happens to be. And in the hands of these expert mechanics are the most modern tools and equipment made. Yes, that's the kind of top service you can count on when you drive your car in at the sign of any authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here is the tax man and the business manager, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. Here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you and think carefully. And please, no help from the audience. Here it is. In 1777, the American army defeated the British under General Burgoyne in what has become one of the truly decisive battles of world history. The American victory marked the turning of the tide of independence. What is the name of this battle? Okay, now what is the answer you two have decided upon and talk right up into the microphone? Battle of Yorktown? No, no, I'm sorry. It's the Battle, it's the battle of Saratoga. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the correct answer. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. <laughs> well, you lost the big money, but you won how much? $200, $180 in cash? Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You've 
Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Guan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $1,500. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a reminder. Meeting human needs is the objective of all Red Cross services. Respond willingly to the 1950 Red Cross Fund campaign. Remember, you're not giving to, but through the Red Cross. This is George Fenneman signing off with the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is money. M-O-N-E-Y. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Don't be afraid, he's harmless. Hey, that's me, Groucho Marx! Thank you, thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who gets first whack at us? We invited some railroad conductors and some longshoremen to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected conductor Carl Putt and longshoreman Clarence Blake. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, gents, to You Bet Your Life. And if either of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. A conductor and a longshoreman, eh? Uh, conductor, where are you from? Uh, originally from Des Moines, Iowa. Tell me, who do you conduct for, the Los Angeles Philharmonic? <laughs> I'm a conductor for the Union Pacific Railroad. What train do you work on? Uh, city of Los Angeles. Uh, where do you go on your train? I handle a run from uh, Los Angeles to Las Vegas, Nevada. The city of Los Angeles goes to Las Vegas? <laughs> the city of Los Angeles goes all the way to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Must leave an awful big hole between Glendale and Long Beach. <laughs> That's where the city was yesterday. I mean, <laughs> Longshoreman uh, Blake is your name? Uh, where, where are you from? Uh, uh, originally from Rome, New York. How, how long a uh, showman are you, Mr. Blake? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I know what you mean. Well, frankly, I don't know what I mean either. <laughs> Let's have another go at it, huh? <laughs> how long do you have to be to be a longshoreman? Uh, oh, not very, very much. You mean size has nothing to do with it, huh? Particularly. Then you could be a short longshoreman, huh? I suppose so. Longshoreman, where, where do you work? Uh, down in San Pedro. And, uh, where in San Pedro do you work? On the docks. I thought the docks worked on each other. Huh? <laughs> what made you decide to become a longshoreman? Was it an urge to do uh, uplifting work? Or? No, uh, I believe I love I loved the water. Get that in the bathtub. You, know. <laughs> you like the ocean, huh? Yes, I like, do. Uh, you like the sea. Why aren't you a sailor instead of a landlubber? Huh? Well, that's not a very good way to raise a family. That's not necessarily true. Fish manage pretty well. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> How far out to sea do you, do you get as a longshoreman? Huh? Oh, about 25 feet. <laughs> Clarence, your anchor is dragging. Huh? <laughs> 
Now tell me, Whistle Stop. <laughs> what are your duties as a, as a conductor? Well, to uh, collect the tickets, see that the space is properly assigned, and to maintain the schedule. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought the engineer maintained the schedule. No, uh, I'm the head of the train. I thought you looked familiar. <laughs> You're the cowcatcher, in other words. Yeah? <laughs> Let's take an average day. What's the first thing you do when you report for work in the morning? Uh, compare your watch with a standard clock, and uh, you check against inferior and superior trains. Well, how do you tell an inferior train? Is it uh, <laughs> come from the wrong side of the tracks? <laughs> what time does your train stop at San Badu? Uh, uh, in which direction? Going along the track. Uh, isn't that the customary direction? Well, I mean uh, going east or west. It doesn't make any difference. East is east and west is west. <laughs> and never the train shall meet. <laughs> well, tell me, conductor, what was your most unusual experience uh, on your train? Well, uh, perhaps the most unusual was uh, having babies arrive while en route. You had a baby on the road? Well, yes, I've uh, had two or three. <laughs> well, was it an upper or a lower birth? <laughs> well, tell me, uh, did you throw the kid off because he didn't have a ticket? Or... <laughs> no, the new arrival and the mother was put off at the first stop for hospitalization. Oh, I see. That was probably the first time your train ever had an arrival ahead of schedule. <laughs> now, incidentally, suppose you're racing along and the stalk decides to make a landing on your caboose and you have to stop the train. How do you instruct the engineer? We have a system of uh, whistle signals. I have a whistle signal, too, but no one stops for it. Right? <laughs> uh, well, one whistle, when running, means... Uh, Look to your orders. Well, what do, you, do you stick your head out the window and whistle? Or? No, we have a system of air whistles within the train. You pull a cord. Okay, well, what's two, what's two whistles? Two whistles when standing means to start. Two whistles when running is stop the train at once. You Three want to throw the kid off, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and what, what's the next one? Three whistles. Three whistles when standing is back the train. Three whistles when running is stop at the next station. Mm -hmm. Sounds to me like you're always on a toot on that train. <laughs> How do you get the train started again? Uh, we give the engineer a highball. <laughs> no wonder you're always on a toot, huh? <laughs> what time does your train stop at San Badu? Uh, yesterday it was uh, 721 westbound and 621 eastbound. I don't know what it is today. Oh. Well, as soon as it stops, will you signal for a highball for me? <laughs> now that I know all about railroads and longshoremen, I mean, you're going to get your chance to win a lot of money. You bet your life. Car owners all over the country are familiar with the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. There are more than 3,000 of these signs from one end of this nation to the other. And each and every one of them is a cordial invitation to you to come in and get acquainted. These dealers are certain that once they have a chance to serve you, you'll come back whenever you need service for your car. The folks at a DeSoto Plymouth dealers will do their utmost to treat you fairly and squarely. That's their creed. It will pay you to give them a chance to show you what good service really means. So drive in next time you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember... All dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected farm animals and birds as your category. Is that right? 
Now, you got $20. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? $10. What kind of a farm animal is an Aberdeen Angus? Cow. A cow is right. And off to a great start with $30. You conductor, you've been looking out the window. That's <laughs> All right, now you got $30. What, uh, how much are you going to bet? $20. $20. What kind of a farm animal is a percheron? It's a horse. It's a horse, is right. They're climbing, they have $50. You, Steve, oh, you've been loading horses, haven't you? <laughs> All right, now you got $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 will you try? 40 40 $40. What kind of a farm animal is a Toggenberg? T O G G E N B U R G. I think it's a goat. A goat is right. <laughs> They're really climbing now. They have ninety dollars. So how much of the ninety are you going to try? Fifty. Fifty is right. Fifty dollars. What is a pole in China? Pig. Pig. A pig is right. And they wind up with one hundred and forty dollars. Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealers. Don't run away now. You might get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still money. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a housewife and a gardener, and here they are. Mrs. Sarah Pinola and Mr. Arthur Anders meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word while we're talking, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you use every day. A housewife and a gardener, eh? Uh, Mr., uh, what is it, Anders? I presume you're the gentleman who does the gardening. Yes, sir. Are, are you married? Yes. Since you're a gardener, I'll bet I know what pet name you call your wife. Something you grow in your garden, it begins with a P. You know what I'm thinking of? Mm-hmm. Petunia? <laughs> no, I was thinking of pumpkin. <laughs> but you know your wife better than I do. By the way, what's your... <laughs> By the way, what's your, what's your wife's first name? Peggy. No, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know. <laughs> what, what's your hometown, Mrs... Uh... Mrs. Panola? Racine, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. What sort of work does your husband do? Uh, he works for Los Angeles Transit Line, a bus driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, how'd you meet him? I met him in a shooting gallery where I was working. <laughs> was he half shot at the time? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, he was very happy when he walked in. Oh. <laughs> how was he when he left? Huh? <laughs> what do you mean he was at? What were you doing at the shooting gallery? I was working. Uh, Were you one of the clay pigeons? I was loading up... No. (laughs) I was loading up the guns and taking their money. (laughs) Sarah, you just said money, and that's tonight's secret word, so you just won $100 in cash. Compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. I bet you think money really grows on trees, huh? (laughs) Now, what were we discussing before you shook that money tree, huh? How I met my husband. Oh, yes. You were loaded in the gallery. (laughs) What was your husband doing there? Uh, He was taking an evening stroll. Through a a shooting gallery? (laughs) No, he passed the shooting gallery. Uh Uh-huh. So he saw a girl working there, which was me, and he thought, well, he was going to have some fun. He's pretty shrewd, isn't he, huh? (laughs) The minute he saw you, he said, that's a girl, huh? (laughs) You can't fool old man Panola. He knows he's... <laughs> so? So, he wanted to fool me, and he says, uh, I bet I can outshoot you. But he didn't know what was coming. I says, okay. I says, see if you can outshoot me. So we, he shot about... Is this verbatim? <laughs> <laughs> he bought about $5 worth of shots. It, he'd take one round, and i take one round. And I kept beating him. He said, oh, he was mad. He put his hands in his pocket. He walked out. He was real mad. Then the next night he comes, I outshot him again. That went on for about a week. Well, he did Well, how much did he spend by that time? No, he, he must have spent about $35 that week. Well, he was single. He could afford it. <laughs> we went, and I couldn't shoot at you all. You went where? Where'd you go? We went hunting. Uh, it's in pheasant country up in Wisconsin. Oh. So we went hunting pheasants. And I'm ashamed to say I couldn't shoot a live game. Boy, he was good, though. He could shoot. <laughs> but he says, I won't break your heart, honey. He says, I'll marry you anyway. <laughs> and did you love him by this time? Oh, yeah. I liked him quite a bit. Uh-huh. <laughs> how, how old were you when, when all this happened, when you got married? Fifteen. Fifteen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's hard to shoot a pheasant when you're fifteen, I guess. <laughs> Uh, 
Now, tell me, uh, Mr. Anders, are you, you're still here, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thought maybe you'd gone to seed. Uh... <laughs> as, as a gardener, uh, whom do you work for, uh, Mr. Anders? Well, I work for myself. You're in business for yourself, man. Yeah. Huh? Develop your business by running it into the ground, eh? <laughs> now, tell us, Chris, uh, that's, that's short for chrysanthemum. Uh... <laughs> Do you know how to spell chrysanthemum? Well, it's C H R. Well, you don't have to know how to spell them. <laughs> Mr. Anders, I'm aware of that, but uh, <laughs> where's your factory? On Flower Street? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't have a factory. Fine gardener doesn't even have a plant, huh? <laughs> Specifically, what do you do in your job? Oh, mow lawns, put in sprinkling systems. I used to know a mow lawn, huh? <laughs> have you planted anything in your garden lately, Sarah? Yeah, um, I saw a cactus by some people we know, and I liked it, so I dug it out of their yard and made a hole in mine and put it in there. <laughs> Where were the people? They were home. <laughs> well, how did you plan it? You just dig a hole and I stick it in? I just dug a hole and put it in. I said, either it grows or it dies. So I don't know. <laughs> Sarah, that's a pretty cynical attitude. Uh, <laughs> was she doing it the proper way, uh, Mr. Anders? Well, that's about right. It doesn't take too much knowledge to raise a cactus. <laughs> I guess the big trick is stealing the plant, huh? <laughs> Are any flowers blooming this early in the year, Mr. Anders? Well, there's quite a few early bloomers. On the stand. <laughs> you mean on a windy day, huh? <laughs> you say there are quite a few uh, early bloomers. Do you ever find any ants in those early bloomers? <laughs> This has been all been very educational, Mr. Anders, and you too, Sarah. Now, let's see if a gardener and a housewife will get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get the chance. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but Fenneman is offstage to remind our listeners. The conductor and the longshoreman earned $140. You ready? Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected songs about the weather. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, how much of the 20 are you going to try? Ten. Give me the title of this weather song. Play, Jerry. Talk right up now. Let it snow. The lady says let it snow. $20, Groucho. How much of the 30 will you try? 20. What is the name of this song? Okay, Jerry. On April showers. April showers. They're climbing now. We have $50. Now you got $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 will you bet? $40. $40. Yeah, is that all right 40. with you? Here we go. Play it, Jerry. We're having a heat wave. We're having a heat wave. Now they have $90. All right. You've zoomed up to 90 bucks. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 90? 80 $80. Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. No, stormy weather. Stormy weather. Wind up with one hundred and seventy dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now we'll soon know who gets the chance at the fifteen hundred dollar question. Fenneman, who's ahead? Well, the housewife and the gardener are leading with a hundred seventy dollars, and the secret word is still money. Just before we went in the air, our studio audience selected Miss Margot Heister, a ten cent store clerk. And Mr. J.C. Solomon, a diamond merchant. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you use every day. Solomon, huh? Eh? Right. J.C. Solomon, huh? Eh? You're the diamond merchant, huh? Eh? Right. Where are you from, uh, J.C.? Chicago. Thought maybe you'd be a stone's throw from Los Angeles, huh? since you're in the diamond business, huh? That's right. <laughs> you're from the Miss Heister? You're from the Ten Cent store? Yes, I am. Which one? Huh? Chris on Hollywood Boulevard. Pretty fairly condition to be in Ten Cent. 
<laughs> but, uh, what's your hometown, uh, Margot? Sun Valley. Sun Valley, Idaho? Are you a good skier? No. You never did any skiing? No. Then? That's the way it goes. Huh? <laughs> People in Brazil never drink coffee. Huh? <laughs> People here can't afford it. Huh? <laughs> Uh, are you married, Margo? Yes, I am. Well, let's talk about diamonds, huh? <laughs> Tell me, uh, J.C., do you ever hand out samples? I never hand out samples. You don't give any diamonds don't away, Don't give huh? diamonds away. Haven't you ever given just a tiny little diamond to a beautiful girl? Yes, I did once. <laughs> you slippery old dog, you... <laughs> Did you ever see that girl again? Yes, I do. I married her. <laughs> Was that to get the diamond back? <laughs> do you handle anything besides diamonds, uh, Mr. Solomon? Yes, I do. Rubies, sapphires, emeralds. Precious stone once cost me 500 bucks. Did I get uh, gypped? Well, what kind of a stone did you buy? I didn't buy any. The doctor didn't say he charged me $500 for removing it. <laughs> What, what are the semi-precious stones? Well, they are opals, tourmalines, aquamarines. I thought that's something you found under your house. <laughs> aquamarines. What color are opals? Opals are a variety of colors. Every color under the sun is an opal. That isn't true. Opals are only pink. I watched her hanging them on the line only this morning. <laughs> Which is the most valuable of all the stones, Mr. Solomon? I should judge a diamond is about the most valuable stone. Why, why are they so expensive? Is such because a big demand? Because they are in demand. They are in demand. Well, it certainly is at my house, I know. <laughs> we don't have any diamonds at my house, but there's certainly a big demand for them. <laughs> How much do you charge for the average diamond? Well, they run anywhere from $50 to $3,500 per carat. It's a lot of money for a carrot. <laughs> I don't see how those rabbits can afford them. <laughs> I think I'd better get back to figures I'm more accustomed to. Uh, hello, uh, Margo. How are you? Huh? <laughs> what kind of rings are in greatest demand at your store? Well, I think I'd say engagement and wedding rings. I know a certain gardener who bought one of your rings. Maybe that's why he's got a green thumb now. <laughs> Do you sell diamonds and emeralds and rubies in your dime store? Yes, we do. Hundreds of them every day. You do? Uh, how much would you charge me for a diamond bracelet? A little one. I mean. Various prices. It's according to quality, up to a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very reasonable, Mr. Solomon. How can you have the nerve to charge thousands of dollars <laughs> for a diamond when Margot here sells them for a buck? Well, she sells you pure crystal glass. Do you have any stones that would look good on me? Oh, yes, I have a very nice stone that will look good on you. No, I wasn't referring to a tombstone. I think I'll stick to Opal. She's more on my line. Well, I learned a lot tonight uh, from you two about dime store diamonds. Now you're going to try for a chance at the $1,500 question. You beat our other two couples and you win the chance at all that money. I can't tell you how much the other two couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The housewife and the gardener are ahead with $170. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You selected nicknames of cities as your category. Is that right? You got $20. How much are you going to try and talk right out loud into the microphone? Ten. What city is called the biggest little city in the world? The biggest little city in the world. Uh, Take a guess. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's Reno. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the time will you try? I'll try five. Five? What city is called the Mile High City? No, the Mile High City is the uh, Big Bear Lake. No, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You, you, you had the right altitude, but the wrong town. <laughs> it's Denver. They have five dollars, Groucho. How much are you going to bet? Three. Three. <laughs> What city is called the city of brotherly love? Mm. 
Well, now you're down to two dollars. It was Philadelphia. Oh, might as well. It was Philadelphia. Should have known that from cream cheese. Now you're down to two dollars. <laughs> okay, here's your last chance to beat the other couple. Yeah. <laughs> If you can beat the other couples with two dollars, Mr. Solomon, yeah. you're a pretty shrewd cookie. <laughs> you know, how much you going to bet? All of it. All of it? <laughs> now, let's not go mad here. Right? <laughs> how about a dollar ninety, Mark? Make it the whole two dollars. The whole two dollars? Which, uh, what city is called the Windy City? Chicago. Chicago! <laughs> And they wind up with four dollars. Well, now wait a minute. I don't want you to crawl away from here with only four dollars. I'm going to give you one more question. You get it right, and you're going to win ten dollars. Remember, no coaching, please. Are you ready? Okay, now put your thinking cap on. <laughs> Who is buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> General Grant. Margot got it. But they won four dollars, and that means the housewife and the gardener get the chance to the Soto Plymouth fifteen hundred dollar question. You get the best equipment and the best workmanship whenever you take your car for service to an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. You get the benefit of factory designed and approved tools and equipment. In addition, skilled mechanics who know how to use this equipment assure you of getting a better job done on your car in shorter time. This, of course, means money in your pocket. This also means a car that will serve you faithfully and economically mile after mile. So next time your car needs service, Remember to stop in and get acquainted with a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Learn what so many car owners all over this country already know, that it pays to stop in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here is the housewife and the gardener, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. All right, you ready, Sarah? <coughs> yeah. Get your gun ready? <laughs> Here we go for $1,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no help in the audience. The Earl of Beaconsfield was Prime Minister of England in the 60s, and under his statesmanship, Britain grew to her greatest glory. What was the name of the Earl of Beaconsfield? <laughs> the answer you two have decided upon. Tesla? No, no, it was, it was Disraeli. Oh. Benjamin Disraeli. I'm sorry, the correct answer is Benjamin Disraeli, so that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $170 in cash, plus $100 for saying the secret word. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. <laughs> You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week the big question will be worth $2,000. Folks, be sure to see the article about Groucho and You Bet Your Life in the current issue of Look Magazine. Well, Crosby's waiting in the wings, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Good drivers don't brag about their ability to get out of tight spots. They stay out of them. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.
Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is smile. S-M-I-L-E. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Oh, that fella's just love happy. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's face to try for it? Just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any young people in the audience who'd like to get married if they found the right person. And our studio audience selected Miss Rosalie Page and Mr. Bob Hartham, and here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if either of you says the secret word, you split $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. So uh, you two would like to get married, eh? Well, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Miss uh, Page, is that right? That's right. Rose Rosalie Page. Yeah. Uh, where are you from, Rosalie? St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, where are you from, uh, Bob uh, Hartham? Hartham. Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City. Kansas City. Well, you're practically stable mates, huh? <laughs> How old are you, Bob? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. And Rosalie, uh, what is what is your age? Uh, twenty-seven. That's a lovely age. Uh, how how long have you been twenty-seven? Huh? <laughs> Since October the twenty-seventh. Uh -huh. What year? Nineteen forty-nine. <laughs> it isn't necessary to snarl at me, Rosalie. <laughs> well, you're a very Pretty girl, Rosalie. Why aren't you married? You've reached the age of consent. Well, uh, <laughs> nobody really ever asked me. Well, nobody asked me, and I'm married. <laughs> Bob, uh, have you ever asked a girl to marry you? No, never have. Would you be interested in asking Rosalie? Uh... <laughs> well, I don't know her. Well, these days, that doesn't stop anybody. <laughs> Besides, I can fix that. Uh, Bob, I want you to meet Rosalie. How do you do? Well, now it's all settled now. If I can just find you to a place to live, that's all. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Bob? I'm a room clerk at the Townhouse Hotel. Rosalie, I found you a place to live. <laughs> Anything unusual ever happen around your hotel? Oh, quite a few unusual things. Well, could you give us one uh, an ex example? Well, uh... I remember particularly the first occasion uh, when I roomed my first guest. This gentleman came up to the desk and uh, put a portable radio on the desk and said, um, do you have uh, AC or DC current here? And I went over to the information rack and I hurried back and said, uh, no, sir, neither one is registered with us. <laughs> And you're, you're still working at the hotel? <laughs> Rosalie, who do you work for? Uh, Jerry Ralston. Jerry Ralston? Yes. I thought that was a breakfast food. Uh. <laughs> what, ki what kind of work do you do, Rosalie? I'm a legal secretary. A legal secretary? Yes. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Jer Jerry Ralston, huh? Yeah. What kind of a name is that for a law firm? Doesn't he have a complete lawyer's name oh, like... yes. Shadrach, Meshach, Abdegnio, and Shyster? <laughs> It's uh, Fink, Ralston, Leventhal, and Kent. Oh, see, I knew there were more handles to it. Than that. <laughs> now, uh, Rosalie, as a legal secretary, just what do you do? I start out in the morning by opening up the office and uh, start uh, filing and getting things ready for the boss, cleaning off his desk, and bring my book. And You take dictation, huh? I, and I take dictation, yes. Does your boss have comfortable knees? Huh? <laughs> no, I don't know. Never sat on your boss's knees? No. Fine secretary. Huh? <laughs> Where do you sit in your office? On a chair. You'll never get any work done that way. Huh? <laughs> what kind of dictation do you take from your boss, Rosalie? Well, uh, various pleadings like complaints, answers, and orders nunk pro tunk. And What's that? Orders nunk pro tunk. What is that? Now for then. Now for then. Why don't they say that? Huh? Well, because it's uh, Latin. They don't want to say it that way. Oh. They don't want anybody to know what they just said. <laughs> and, uh, what else do they say? 
<laughs> and then I draw up uh, leases, and uh, oh, yes, I also do briefs. You do, huh? Yes. You take the boss's briefs, huh? Yes, I take his briefs. What do you do, sew patches on them? <laughs> Doesn't he get chilly standing there? Does he? Uh, no, these are uh, legal briefs. Legal or illegal, he's got no right to be standing there. What <laughs> are legal briefs? Well, there are documents that are uh, rather lengthy documents. Oh, are... long underwear, eh? <laughs> Find a way when you're making a court appearance. Eh? Is your chair more comfortable than your boss's knee? Yes. No. Oh, I don't know. Then you've tried your boss's knee. Eh? <laughs> now, what kind of a knee has he got? Is it AC or DC? Eh? <laughs> well, you're really a charming couple, and I hope you'll be very happy together. Now, before we play your Bet Your Life, I'd like to remind you, when you buy Easter seals, you help all crippled children everywhere. Your donations will go to the crippled children in your state. Now, in just one minute, you're going to try for a chance at $1,000. You bet your life. No matter why you drive in to a DeSoto Plymouth dealers, for a major repair job or a simple one, you'll find it the honest desire of all the folks there to serve you to the very best of their ability. Yes, and that's the way all of the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America feel about the customers they serve. You'll find it their creed to treat you fairly and squarely day after day, year after year. Why do they do their utmost to serve you in this manner? Because they want you for a satisfied customer, a steady customer in the years to come. That's why, no matter what make of car you drive, it pays to stop where you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at $1,000. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected nursery rhymes as your category. Is that correct? That's right. Here's your first question. How much of the $20 will you bet? Ten. $10. $10. Uh, yes. What did old King Cole call for besides his bowl and pipe? His fiddle's three. That's right. His fiddle is three. Huh? And they're on their way with $30. All right, now you got $30. Uh, remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? $20. $20. Where did Peter keep his wife? In a pumpkin shell. That's right. He kept her in a pumpkin <laughs> shell. Now they have $50. Well, so far, it's a horse apiece. Now you got $50, huh? <laughs> How much of the 50 are you going to try? Uh, 40 All right. Uh, what did the dish do when the cow jumped over the moon? I ran away with a spoon. That's right. The dish ran away with a spoon. We're really climbing now. They have $90. That's two for the girl and one for you. Hey, you may get married yet. Now you got $90. Huh? <laughs> it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 90? Uh, 80. $80. Who swiped the tarts from the Queen of Hearts? The Knave. Of the Knave of Hearts right. is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $170. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away now. You might get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still smile. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a beauty operator, Miss Lola Phillips, and her partner is a married man, Mr. Herb Parsons. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, you divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss uh, Lola Phillips, huh? That's right. A beauty operator, eh? And Mr. Uh, Parsons, you're a husband? Yes, sir. You're a, you're a husband, huh? Beauty and the Beast, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hi Parsons, uh, where, where did you come from? Oh, out in the audience. <laughs> I, I know you're from the audience, but you weren't born out there, were you? <laughs> uh, how are things in the audience? Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Pretty good, huh? How are conditions out there? Huh? Very fine, very fine. Uh -huh. Well, where are you from, uh, Mr. Parsons? Oh, Somerville, Tennessee. And you, you're from uh, where, Miss? Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, huh? Uh, are you married? No, I'm not. You're not, huh? <laughs> would you like to get married? No, I wouldn't care to, thanks. Oh. <laughs> well, 
That's the closest I've come in a long time. <laughs> now, what sort of work do you do, Mr. Parson? Oh, I shoot guns for Winchester. You do, huh? Yeah. Why doesn't Winchester shoot his own gun? <laughs> I mean you shoot guns for Winchester. What kind of a job is that, huh? Oh, it's a good job. It's it all is, over huh? the country, you know, just shooting guns. Well, who do you shoot at specifically? Oh, I usually shoot for sportsman clubs, you know. Uh, how'd you meet your wife? Did you take a shot at her? Or you... Well. <laughs> how'd you meet her? Oh, well, it was, you know, I married a smart girl. I'll find out later. It happened that there was a large hedge growing beside the walk, and I noticed one evening a little dog ran out and bit me on the britches leg. I didn't pay too much attention to that. I thought the best thing for me to do would be to go in and complain to the landlord. And as soon as I turn into the hedge, she walks out and greets me. Which oh, I, the my dog? wife, the bull. Oh. <laughs> and so uh, I found out later that she was sicking the dog on me so that I would come in and complain, see? <laughs> and she was sick of you, did you say? <laughs> uh, she is now, not then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about the dog? Is the, You still got the dog? No, the dog died. Oh. <laughs> he was lucky, wasn't he? Huh? <laughs> now, do you do anything else besides shoot guns? Do you, do you have any hobbies? Uh... Oh, I'd say my hobby was mm, calling ducks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you call them? Huh? <laughs> I just walk at them and quack at them. If they come by, then that's when I shoot them with the gun. Duck for dinner. That's a pretty dirty trick, isn't it? <laughs> well, come on. Uh, uh, going, they call. How does the wild goose go, do you know? <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's quite an accomplishment at that, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Look, uh, what do you got there? That's huh? a duck call. Well, Wait. how did you know you were going to meet a duck here tonight? Huh? <laughs> you come I always a... care of this. This is a good luck piece. R wrap out a duck oh, call. Oh, maybe huh? the duck. It'll be way off, Johnny, you know, about Is there a duck in the audience? Huh? <laughs> Maybe you all better duck. He may have a gun with him, too. Straight back there. Well, okay, let's have that. That's a hotel in Chicago. Let's shoot it in here. <laughs> and you mean to say that a duck finds that alluring? No, his curiosity gets the best of him when he comes by. Well, he think, what does he think it is? He doesn't know. That's the reason he come by, I think. <laughs> well, who figured that out? I mean? Oh, I couldn't tell you that, but it That's worked. really a giant mind. Somebody figured out. If we can get a sound that the duck doesn't know what it is, we can get a duck. <laughs> well, it's too much for me. Now, uh, where do you do your operating on beauties, Mrs. Uh, Phillips? Uh, at Polly's Beauty Salon, 4875 Fountain Avenue. Well, you're a beauty operator, all right. That plug was a beauty, I'll bet. <laughs> What's the most uh, popular type of service at your fountain of youth? A uh, pen, finger, and permanent waste. What is it? Pen, finger, and permanent waste. Pen, finger, and permanent... That, that's, uh, I used to know a law firm by that name, huh? <laughs> that, uh, that, that finger was such a crook to what a sleazy <laughs> character he was. <laughs> now, what are some of the other things you do for females to help them trap a sucker? <laughs> Well, we give them uh, manicures, pedicures, facials. And they say a thing of beauty is a joy forever. <laughs> Apparently, a thing of beauty is a joy for about three days. <laughs> Why do women go through all this chromium plating process? Well, they want to bring out their natural beauty. <laughs> well, how do you bring it out in jars, huh? <laughs> Now, uh, you mentioned facials before. Just what is the purpose of a, of a facial? Well, it uh, will tighten the skin. Mm. It'll remove crow's feet. Some of your customers have crow's feet? <laughs> <laughs> they keep their shoes on, nobody will notice it. <laughs> well, how do you tighten the skin? Do you use a screwdriver or a socket wrench? <laughs> no, I What do you do, roll it up their back or something? <laughs> What's the latest haircut style for women uh, at the moment? Uh? Well, it's uh, contour cutting to the shape of the head. Uh -huh. Might turn up some very interesting heads. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with a head that's shaped like an ashtray? Eh? <laughs> um, 
Do you ever listen to your customers when they gab to each other? Oh, I'm much too busy. I see, but what do they talk about? Uh, for, e <laughs> for example, what did they say this morning when you were in the shop? Huh? Oh, one lady was talking about how much she lost at Canasta. But you don't listen when they talk, huh? <laughs> Have you been listening intently to all this uh, secret stuff about beauty shops, Mr. Parsons? Mm, very much. Pretty very revealing, much. isn't oh, it, huh? Oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> well, Tommy, which do you prefer, a blonde, a brunette, or a redhead? Oh, I kind of like uh, about between a blonde and a redhead. Well, that's a perfect place to be. Yeah. <laughs> that's certainly better than being between a blonde and a bald-headed man. <laughs> Well, after talking to a beauty operator, I know all the secrets of the opposite sex, and, but despite that, I love them anyway. So help me. And now you're going to play the DeSoto Plymouth game. You bet your life for a chance at $1,000. You beat the other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but Fenneman is offstage to remind our listeners. The legal secretary and the hotel clerk earned $170. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected Irish songs as your category. Is that right? That's right. Here's your first question. You have $20. How much will you bet? $10? Yeah, anything you okay. want. Anything up to 20 What is the name of this Irish song? Play, Jerry. Take a yes. Danny what is it? Danny Boy is all right. <laughs> We're on the way. They have $30, Rachel. Right, well, Miss Phillips, we thought we lost you that time. <laughs> now you got $30. You remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. And if you don't give the, the right answers, he's liable to shoot you when this thing is over. <laughs> now, how much of the $30 will you bet? Twenty. That's $20. $20. Give me the title of this song. <laughs> Back to Maris Band. That's why we have $50. All right, you got $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 will you go for? $40. 40 Okay with you, Mr. Parsons? That's very good. Let's see if you can identify this Irish song. Okay, Jerry. The green is right. We're really on our way now. They have ninety dollars. You've got ninety dollars, and here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the ninety will you try? Let's bet it all. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. What is the name of this song? Did it. you make the shamrocks go or something? <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. It, it's a little bit of heaven. A little we, bit of heaven. You were close to it. I'm terribly sorry. Well, I'll give you one more question. You get it right and you win $10. Remember, no coaching, please. Are you ready? Uh -huh. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Oh, Grant. <laughs> General Grant is right. <laughs> and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, we'll soon know who gets the chance at the $1,000 question. You know, friends, every dealer who sells DeSoto also sells Plymouth. Is that by any chance why they're called DeSoto Plymouth dealers? Precisely, Groucho. How clever. <laughs> now, ask me, how many DeSoto Plymouth dealers there are? All right, Groucho, how many DeSoto Plymouth dealers are there from coast to coast? Well, uh, they're under 4,000. Well, it's over 3,000. Well, that's under 4,000. <laughs> Fenneman, can't you count higher than 3,000? Yes, and you can count on the best in service, a fair and square price, when you visit any authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. An accurate statement, if I ever heard one. Fenneman, who's ahead in the battle for the $1,000 question? Well, the secretary and the hotel clerk are leading with $170, and the secret word is still smile. Just before we went on the air, we asked for couples with an interesting occupation, Groucho. And here comes a pair who was chosen. Mr. and Mrs. John Schleser meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life, folks. And if you say the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, you win $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Uh, Schleser, uh, uh, you're, uh, Ruth Schleser, huh? Yeah. Where, are you, where are you from, Ruth? Oh, Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx. You're really spread all over town, aren't you? <laughs> Where were you born? The subway? Oh, maybe. Who knows? Well, I certainly don't. Eh? Yeah, John, where are you from? 
Belgrade, Serbia. Belgrade, that's Now the they call him Yugoslav. Oh. I wouldn't know. I haven't heard a news broadcast for over an hour. Huh? <laughs> John, what sort of interesting occupation do you and Ruth have, uh, since that's the reason you were picked here tonight? Well, I'm a taxidermist and naturalist. Uh-huh. What do you do uh, as a naturalist and taxidermist? Well, I uh, mount all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, fish. Well, don't be sizing me up, you know. <laughs> You're a taxidermist, eh? Yes, well, you sir. don't look stuffy to me, John. Eh? Uh, how, how old are you, Mr. Schleser? Well, I am 74 years young. Well, you, you, you're very young looking. Very young looking. <laughs> and how, how young are you, Mrs. Hi. Schleser? Would you guess? Well, uh, if you stop wiggling, I'll take a guess on it. <laughs> well, I would say you were about uh, 31. Oh, brother, you're far from it. I'm far from it? Uh-huh. In which direction? Huh? Oh. Now, tell us something about taxidermy. It's a very unusual occupation. For example, say I wanted you to stuff a lion. What's the first thing on the list? Well, uh, first get the lion. <laughs> Well, let's make it a leopard, huh? That's a leopard. <laughs> all right, I've got a line. Never mind where I got it. Go ahead. What do you do, huh? Well, first of all, you know, uh, I think... I know. Him... First you get the line. I know that. First, huh? you get the line. <laughs> That's the first thing. And be sure that he's dead. Then we take a complete mess. Well, how, do you, uh, well, how do you find out if he's dead? Do you take an autopsy or well, send for uh, the coroner? When they come to me, I'm sure they're dead. <laughs> but if they come at you, you're not so sure, huh? Well, you've had wide experience with dead animals. Have you ever handled any live animals, Professor? Oh, yes, I had. Sorriest experience. I was out collecting in Africa, and that day it happened that the lion see me first. <laughs> and I had no chance. Trick pulled my gun, and he made a roaring leap, but he was too close, they mauled me. He must have been a very well-trained lion. He, <laughs> he wanted to stop himself with you. Huh? <laughs> uh, how, how did you get to be a taxidermist? Huh? I loved everything what God created. Immaterial, what kind of animals, reptiles, insects, everything. I was interested in them. Mm-hmm. What's the largest animal you ever worked on, Mr. Schleser? That's... Uh, uh, a brontosaurus. I, I beg your pardon. I, I, I thought you said a, a brontosaurus. Huh? That's what I did. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you did. Huh? <laughs> I can keep this up as long as he can. <laughs> Cocktails, anyone? <laughs> well, this has certainly been very interesting and instructive having you here tonight. You see, if I never met you, I'd never know anything about taxidermy. No. Now, I know practically everything about it. Now, let's see how good you two are at winning money. You're going to play your bet your life for $1,000. You beat the other two couples, and you get a chance at the big question later. I can't tell you how much they won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The hotel clerk and the secretary are ahead with $170. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected biblical questions as your category. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Ten. All right. Who was the wicked wife of Ahab? A-H-A-B. She was trampled to death. I don't know. Well, it was Jezebel, huh? They have ten dollars, Rocco. All right, now you're down at Tim. Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of the ten dollars will you try? Twenty. <laughs> that shows you what you can do when you stuff animals, huh? <laughs> All right, how much of the ten dollars will you try? Well, five. Five dollars, all right. What prophet lived three days and three nights inside a whale? Well, I don't know. I give up. Have you never stuffed a whale? No. Well, this I... one was stuffed with Jonah. You should have known that. Huh? <laughs> they have five dollars now. Now you're down to five dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the five dollars will you bet? Well, I bet... The works? Five. I bet the five. All right. Who led the attack at the Battle of Jericho? I never paid much attention Well, it, to it was Joshua. These are tough Joshua. questions. I'm surprised. I'm not surprised that you don't know them. I certainly wouldn't know them. All right, I'm going to give you another chance to get rich quick. 
You get this one right, and I'll hand over ten dollars in cash immediately. It's a tough one, so think hard now, and no coaching, please. What is the name of the famous president whose daughter is a singer? Oh, Truman. The Truman famous. is right, huh? <laughs> well, this couple lost all their money, so that means the secretary and the hotel clerk with $170 get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. To get expert, courteous service at the lowest possible cost, more and more car owners every day drive into DeSoto Plymouth dealers. That's a wise thing for you to do, too. For DeSoto Plymouth dealers always do their utmost to please you in every way they can. They have factory-trained mechanics working with factory-designed and approved tools and equipment. They make sure the service they offer in their shops is the best service you can get anywhere. And that goes for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers throughout America, all of whom take pride in their reputation for fast, efficient, courteous service. Keep this in mind next time your car needs attention and drive in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here is the secretary and the hotel clerk, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. Here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you and think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. Although there are many walled cities in Europe, W-A-L-L-E-D, although there are many walled cities in Europe, there is only one walled city in North America. For $1,000, can you tell me what it is? <laughs> Okay, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Well, I don't know. I thought it was West well, Point, but I... Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's Quebec, the former capital of Canada. I'm sorry. That, uh, that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $170 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. <laughs> Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You'll Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week the big question will be worth $1,500. Well, Bing Crosby is waiting to use the hall, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. It's a wise driver who believes in highway signs. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is door. D-O-O-R. Really? You'll bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You'll Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! He's the egg the Easter Bunny brought. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. (laughs) 
Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who gets first crack at all that money? We invited some steel workers and some ice men to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected ice man Ray Morgan and steel man Dan Daniel. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, boys, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, you divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Ray uh, Morgan, you're the ice man? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Where do you work? Uh... Work the Union Ice Company in Hollywood. What do you do? Oh, we make and deliver ice. Oh. Well, how, how do you make ice? Oh, we put water in tanks. <laughs> you're welcome, huh? <laughs> You're sort of an American institution, aren't you? How many housewives still look forward to the Iceman every morning? Oh, thousands of them. Thousands? What's mm -hmm. so. How many of them take ice? Mm -hmm. Most of them. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Mr. Daniel, uh, what sort of work do you do? Steel worker. You work at steel? You mean you're a crook? <laughs> Now, why do you commit all this larceny? Uh... U.S. Steelworks. U.S. Steelworks? Yes, sir. Are, are you married? Yes, sir. How'd you meet your wife? Did you steal her, too? Or... <laughs> well, I met her on a blind date. I had a date with her sister, and uh, I went out, and the fellows had me tangled up, and uh, they tangled the girls up, and uh -huh. I met... They tangled the girls up, and I get, the, I get the one I was supposed not to get, and the one that I got, I got. <laughs> You could work for the State Department in that. <laughs> what is your job uh, as a steel worker? Uh, I'm an open hearth operator. Open hearth? Uh, I up the melter. You help the melter, huh? At the smelter? Uh... No, there's no smelter. <laughs> That's only when the melter's in a swelter at the smelter, is that? <laughs> Why don't you have a smelter? We don't have any pig iron. <laughs> Well, if you don't have any pig iron, obviously you have no use for a smelter, huh? <laughs> Why don't you have pig iron? We don't have any iron ore. Iron ore what, huh? <laughs> iron ore hogs, or...? Now, what do you do? How do you help the melter? I help him charge the furnace. <laughs> Why does he charge the furnace? Why doesn't he pay cash for it? <laughs> What do you charge the furnace with, salsa? The scrap, well, the charging ram. <laughs> you mean you have a trained goat? <laughs> now start in the beginning, uh, will you? Well, the scrap is uh, brought up in charging buggies, and we use the ram... Brought up in, in what? Frame, in charging buggies. Charging buggies? Yeah. <laughs> what is a charging buggy? I never heard That's of That's electrically one. operated ram. Oh. Why are you saying you got my goat? I don't know. About that. <laughs> okay, now you got now. Now what happens? Well, I help the. That's where I come in. Really, is as, as a first helper. When we charge the furnace, well, I take over there and uh, melt the scrap down. Where does the white pig come from in connection with this? Well, uh... you have to be hammy to make it, or. <laughs> Well, that's that's good, Ann. <laughs> Frankly, you don't know, is that it, huh? That's right. You've been shoveling that Schweiner eye into that finest all these years. <laughs> and you're having the faintest idea why it's called pig iron, huh? I know why it's called pig iron. It's why? called put in a trough and, and put in a trough. Yes, oh, it's now. put in a trough and, and uh see. cool down. And the pig goes for the trough, is that <laughs> it? <laughs> Now, Rusty, if you had to do it all over again, would you go back into the steel business? Yes, Mr. Marks, why, I would. Why, why would you? Well, uh... I know the pig iron. I know that. <laughs> well, everything... That the trot, huh? Everything that we have today is, uh, is basically steel. Not everything, but not, most not of... A, not, not French pastry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, steel is something that's here to stay, and all of these fine cars is made of the best steel, and uh, you just can't get rid of it. 
That's the truth. 23 years for a U.S. deal, and it's been a fine company to work for. Yeah. That's true. I hear good. they haven't got a quarter, huh? <laughs> Well, let's forget about America's industry for now. In just one minute, you're going to work together for a chance at 1,500 bucks, which is more important. When you stop in at any of the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, it makes no difference how big or how small the service job to be done. The important thing is... These dealers appreciate your call. And to prove it, they make it their business to please you in every way they can. To do this, they offer you the benefit of not only the best tools and equipment, not only the factory-trained mechanics, but they offer you courtesy and a fair deal. Being courteous and thoughtful, being fair and square is their creed, their way of doing business. So wherever you drive, remember... Across this nation are more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, each with an honest desire to serve you. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500. Fenneman, bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected sports personalities as your category. Is that right? Now, you have $20. Uh, Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you bet? $5. In what sport is Sam Sneed famous? Golf. Golf is right. They have $25 now. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of the 25 will you try? Let's take 15, 15 this time. Okay. 15. Doesn't agree with him. He's liable to hit him over the head with an ingot. <laughs> oh, right. In what sport is Jack Kramer famous? Tennis. Tennis is right. They're climbing ground till they have $40. All right, you got $40. Here's, uh, how much are you going to bet on this one? Here's your third question. How much of the 40 $30. $30. And what sport is Johnny Longdon famous? Horse racing. racing. Horse racing. racing is right. They're really climbing now. We have $70. All right. Now you've got $70. Now, how much of the $70 are you going to try? Sure. $70. Bucks. $70? The whole works. In what sport is Ralph Kiner famous? Baseball. Baseball is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $140. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Stick around now. You may get the chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still door. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a baby photographer and a young mother, and here they are, Mrs. Linda Sutton and Mr. Newell Morris. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life, folks. And if one of you says the secret word at any time, you divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you use, you see every day. Well, let's see here. Mr. Newell uh, Morris, that must be you, huh? Baby photographer. Huh? Where, are you, where are you from, uh, baby? I'm a native. <laughs> How many babies do you photograph on an average day? Oh, I snap around 10 or 15. You go around snapping at babies? <laughs> well, at least you're a candid photographer. <laughs> and Miss uh, Linda Sutton, huh? A very pretty name and a very pretty girl, huh? Have you always been this pretty? That's my mother. Well, drag her out, I will. <laughs> Where are you from, Mrs. Uh, Sutton? I'm from outside of Boston. Where is outside of Boston? Well, I'm just on the edge of the Cape. <laughs> well, I got you don't fall off, huh? <laughs> so you're, you're a young mother, is that, is that right? That's right. Uh, how old are you, uh, Linda? I'm 27. And how old is your baby? Well, they were here Christmas Day. I have twins, twin oh, you boys. Have twins, huh? And how old is your husband? He's 28. 28? You know what a steel ingot is? Huh? <laughs> you say your husband is uh, in the steel business? No, he's he's a lineman for the telephone company. Which which phone company is he work for? 
Well, there's only one. No, that's not true. There are many phone companies. You ought to have your husband wise you up to some of these things. <laughs> Can't just go on having twins, you know. There are other... <laughs> In other words, he works for AT&T, is that it? How, how'd you meet him? Oh, uh, I, I met him. I was fishing for eels. <laughs> and that's the best you could do? I come from a family of, of six. I'm the only girl. I have five brothers. And they're always t- uh, my big brother. Well, thanks for the warning, Mr. Sutton. <laughs> uh, my big brother was going to... It was Just a... how big is your big brother? <laughs> well, I have five. Uh, uh, any size you want, I got them. <laughs> now then, we were on the eels, huh? Well, uh, my mother wanted us to go get some eels. Not to eat, but uh, just to feed our cats. We had nine cats. <laughs> so, uh... Nine cats and only five brothers? <laughs> that isn't even two cats apiece. <laughs> Anyway, uh, my brother took me along so I could watch my little brother. Because as soon as I got there, my big brother went away. I think he went talking to some girls or something. So, uh... Really? <laughs> then my other brother... That you mean he preferred girls to eels? <laughs> Can't be much of a man, that fella. <laughs> and uh, he came back in a little while and he had this other fella with him. And he says, uh, hey, sis, this is Sutton. So he reached into the bucket that he had, and he pulled out this great big long eel, and he threw it at me. And I guess he meant me to catch it, but anyway, it hit me right in the face. Is that considered romance in Massachusetts? (laughs) Has strange customs in New England. (laughs) Slapping a girl in the kisser with an eel, I never thought was... Was just the right way to get introduced to a girl, huh? Do you, do you work, uh, Mrs. Sutton? Well, yes, I do. I have a part-time job as a chocolate dipper. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Why did you say... Why did you say you dip? Chocolates. You, you dip chocolates? Dip them in what? Chocolate. <laughs> I, I work with nuts. You take three nuts... <laughs> Mr. Sutton, don't think that I don't. Huh? I've worked with more nuts than you'll ever see. Huh? A girl tells me that she gets married because somebody slapped her in the kisser with an eel. Huh? Well, are, are you? <laughs> Mr. I've been neglecting you, Mr. This, this was such a fascinating saga of love in New England that I just couldn't, couldn't get away from it. Uh, you say you're a baby photographer, Mr. Morris? That's right. How do you go about taking a baby's picture? Well, if they're about 12 pounds, well, you prop them up on a pillow to start. Well, if they're under 12, what do you do, throw them back? <laughs> Are babies like adults in that you can occasionally have to retouch babies' pictures? Oh, yes, you occasionally retouch babies. Well, how, do you, how do you do it, huh? Well, you have to take out the bags under their eyes and stray here. <laughs> you mean those kids have bags under their eyes? That's what they get for staying up all night, huh? Getting the bottle. A lot of those kids are old soaks. <laughs> Who takes the pictures in your family, you or your husband? Well, I take them of him, and he takes them of me. Well, that's the only way you can do it, huh? <laughs> Unless you have arms eight feet long. Well, who takes the best pictures, you or your husband? Well, I do. The pictures he takes, they don't look like me. <laughs> what do you mean, they don't look like you? Well, uh, last summer he took a picture of me in a bathing suit, and it uh, didn't look like me at all. Were you underwater at the time? <laughs> what was the matter with the picture? It was too light. Give us the lowdown, uh, Mr. Morris. What was the matter with the picture of uh, Mrs. Sutton? Uh, it must have been an overexposure. <laughs> Maybe that's why she was under the water. <laughs> Well, I know all about snapping at babies. Now, let's see how snappy you two are with your answers. 
You're going to play your bet your life for the chance at $1,500 of the Soda Plymouth question. You run your $20 and the more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The Iceman and the steel worker earned $140. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected capitals of states as your category. Is that right? Now, you got $20. How much are you going to risk? Fifteen. What is the capital of Kentucky? Frankfurt. Frankfurt is right. <laughs> On their way, they have $35. How much of the 35 will you try? 30. What's the capital of South Dakota? Pierre. Pierre is right. <laughs> They're starting to climb. They have $65. How much are you going to try? Sixty. Sixty. You don't care what he says anymore. <laughs> what is the capital of Vermont? Montpelier. Montpelier is right. A New England guy. Now they have $125. Uh, no, no kissing until the show is over. Huh? <laughs> the whole thing. Okay. Shoot it. rack a here, huh? You've got $125, and you're going to try for this one. What is the capital of North Dakota? Uh, Bismarck. Bismarck is right. And they wind up a grand total of $250. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, we'll soon know who gets the chance at the $1,500 question. And now, a word from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Uh, just a minute, Phantom, and if each dealer has a worry, that'll be 3,000, and this is only a half-hour program. Well, Groucho, actually, words can't do justice to the skilled service you get when you drive your car in to an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer's place of business. In that case, this is the only program in radio that doesn't need an announcer. What I mean, Groucho, is that one must experience how the skilled DeSoto Plymouth mechanics working with the finest equipment can save time and money on your car. One must experience. Shouldn't we try to get a few more people into the DeSoto Plymouth dealers? Maybe three or four? Oh, you know what I mean. So does everybody else. So on with the show. Who's ahead in the battle for the $1,000? The housewife and the baby photographer are leading with $250. And the secret word is still door. We invited some Belgian war brides and their ex-GI husbands to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. and Mrs. Chico Tellez. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word while we're talking, you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Tellez, is that the way you pronounce it? That's right. Tellez, huh? You're a Belgian war bride. Uh, where, where are you from? I'm from Belgium. Hmm. <laughs> That's just what I suspected, huh? <laughs> I mean, what part of Belgium are you from? From Moulinbeek, Saint Jean. Is that anywhere near Brussels? Well, you know, in a country so small, most anything would be close to Brussels. Oh, I don't know. How about Detroit? <laughs> That's pretty far from Brussels. Yeah, I guess so. You're the Belgian war groom, I presume, eh? Chico? No, I'm Say, not. I used to have a brother named Chico. Huh? <laughs> well, it wasn't me. It wasn't you. Could be. <laughs> Chico Telez, huh? What kind of a name is that? That's not a Belgian name, huh? What nationality is it? It's there? a Spanish name. Where Where are you from? Mexico. <laughs> I suppose you were married in Hungary, huh? <laughs> what kind of work do you do, Chico? I are you in love, happy? <laughs> I'm a student at our center, and I'm a photographer. What sort of work did you do in Belgium before you were captured by uh, Chico here? I was secretary. You were a secretary? Mm -hmm. What were you doing for Uncle Sam when you met uh, Lillian? Uh, I was in the signal corps in the photographic section, in the army, of course. Yeah. Were you right up front? Uh... Naturally, I couldn't get out of there. <laughs> do you have any little Brussels sprouts, Lillian? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. You have a delightful accent, Lily, and you speak English very well for us. Thank you. How long did it take you to learn it? About three years. Three years. You're very quick to learn. Do you speak any other languages? Yes, uh, French and, and German. I speak a number of languages myself, you know. 
Should we have a little conversation in Belgium? In what? In Belgium. Just you and I, yeah. In Belgium? That would be impossible. Don't you speak Belgian? Nobody speaks Belgian. There isn't such a language. <laughs> well, frankly, I don't speak it very well myself. <laughs> Why don't the Belgians have a tongue of their own? That's because there are two types of people in Belgium. Men and women? <laughs> No, that's not what I mean. They don't have men and women in Belgium? <laughs> yes, they do, better clear too. up this whole thing, Lily. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, they have men and women, all right. But um, what I mean by two types is that they have Walloon and Flemish people, and they both have a different language, see? Oh, well, could you say something in Flemish? Could you tell me a short joke? Well, I, I'm from the French part. I don't oh. know Flemish very well. Could you tell me a short joke in French? In French? Yeah. Yes, I could. I What's happening? Huh? Uh, you mean in French right away like that? No. Yeah, and then tell me what it means. Huh? Oh! <laughs> I guess I can get away with it. Well, um... <laughs> well, clean it up a little, will you? <laughs> Connaissez-vous l'histoire du monsieur qui, qui fut réveillé à 3 heures du matin par le téléphone à 3 heures du matin et il se rendit compte que c'était le mauvais numéro. Alors le monsieur à l'autre bout de la ligne s'excuse de ce que ce soit le mauvais numéro et de ce qu'il est dérangé. Alors il dit, oh, ça ne fait rien, de toute façon je devais me lever pour, pour répondre au téléphone. <rires> Oui, monsieur. He's really a brilliant linguist, this guy. Well, Chico, explain, and would you explain in English what she just told in French? I think she can explain you. it better. Well, you, you, Lillian, he's shoving it over on you, yeah, huh? Yeah. You tell well, me what you said, huh? Something well, about the telephone, I guess. Yeah, there was something about it. Yeah. Well, it's all about a telephone, in fact. The what? Well, it's about a story of the man that was awakened by the telephone ringing at 3 o'clock in the morning. And so he went to answer it, you know, and he found out it was the wrong number. So the man at the other line uh, excused himself and apologized because he had, you know, waken him up. So he said, oh, it's all right. You're perfectly excused. I had to get out anyhow to, I mean, get up anyhow to answer the phone, see? So... <laughs> Well, if Leopold is smart, he'll never come back to Belgium. <laughs> now that you've lived in California, Lillian, what do you think of Americans? And speak frankly, I'll probably go to jail, but it'll be worth it. Huh? Oh, you won't go to jail for what I say. No. Well, no. how do American men compare with Belgian men as husbands? Well, uh, they're very different. Very different. Uh, see. You see, a Belgian husband is, uh, well, he has an air of superiority and uh, he doesn't want to help his wife in the housework or anything like that, and he's just a boss, you know, that's all. Mm -hmm. And which system do you prefer? Oh, I think America is a wonderful country for women. <laughs> And that's just who it belongs to, too. <laughs> Chico, you were a sucker. You never should have left Belgium. Well, it, it's really been very interesting having you both here tonight, and I wish you a long and happy married life. Now, you're going to try for a chance at the $1,500 question. Beat the other two couples, and you win the chance at all that money. I can't tell you how much our other two couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The housewife and the baby photographer are ahead with $250. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected composers of operas as your category. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now you have $20. How much are you going to try? Well, uh, we don't $10. want... $10. Is that all right, Chico? Mm. <laughs> I suppose so. All right. Who was the composer of Carmen? Alim. Ambroise Thomas? No. I got it wrong. No, I... I... I'm sorry, it was Bizet. Oh, yes. <laughs> they now have $10. You were too Bizet to remember that. That's it. <laughs> well, now you've only got $10. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the $10 will you try? $5. $5. Who oh. was the composer of Lohengrin? 
That's a good question. Oh, wait, wait. Can I see? Can I see? Can I see? Yes. Uh, Wagner. Oh? Wagner. Wagner is right. Uh... Well, they're gaining their money back. They now have $15. Chico, that was not only a good question, that was a good answer, too. <laughs> All right, now you got $15. Here's your third question. How much of the 15 will you bet? And remember, each of, either of you can answer this question, you know. Five. You're going to bet $5, huh? Ten. Ten dollars. <laughs> You're back in Belgium. He's be... the boss over there. Now. Yeah, I can see. All right, who was the composer of The Marriage of Figaro? <clears throat> oh. Couldn't be Mozart, no. Mozart is right. Mozart <laughs> $25. All right, $25, and here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 25 will you risk? 15 Who was the composer of Rigoletto? Uh, is it Verdi? Verdi is right. <laughs> and they wind up with $40. And that means the housewife and the baby photographer with $250 get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. <laughs> Three things you can always count on when you visit any one of the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Efficient service, courteous service, service at a fair price. These dealers are equipped and eager to give your car the very best in service, no matter how major or how simple a repair job. DeSoto Plymouth dealers have factory trained mechanics who know your car inside and out, regardless of what make or what year it happens to be. And in the hands of these expert mechanics are the most modern tools and equipment made. In other words, you can always count on really top service when you drive your car in at the sign of any authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the housewife and the baby photographer, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. All right, here's the lady with the eels and the chocolate dips, and uh, we'll see how smart you are now. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. In the original Constitution of the United States, there are seven articles. How many amendments have been added to the Constitution? You must tell me exactly. What is the answer you two have decided upon? 22. No, no, I, I'm so, it's awfully close. There are 21 amendments to the Constitution. Oh. I'm sorry, that's the correct answer, 21 amendments. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won uh, $250 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth... $2,000. I'd like to thank the readers of Radio Mirror Magazine for voting our show the best of its kind on the air. Well, Bing Crosby's all tuned up and ready to go, so good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. If you can't control your temper, you can't control your driving. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.
Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is name. N-A-M-E. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! That's me, Groucho Marx! <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who gets first crack at all that money? A couple of people with unusual occupations, Groucho, and here they are. Mrs. Lita Griggs, who is wardrobe mistress for a circus, and Mr. Tommy Dalby, stage doorman for a burlesque theater. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, with the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, you split $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Uh, Griggs, eh? Yes, sir. Mrs. Griggs of the Cabbage Patch, is that... Uh... <laughs> Yes, Mrs. Gray. Your no. wardrobe mistress for a circus? That's right. Uh, which circus? For the Clyde Beatty Circus. You had a big circus? They certainly have. They uh, have a how big, big is it? Three ring circus. Three they rings, have uh, yeah. 75 lions and tigers, 200 performers, and the balance are uh, the ticket sellers. Uh, Coachy, and Coachy. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Mr. Tommy uh, Dalby, huh? You're right. You're the uh, stage doorman at a burlesque theater? Yes, sir. At uh, what theater? At the Burbank Burlesque Theater downtown. <laughs> How did you meet your wife? Was she a chorus girl at your theater and she threw you a curve? Uh... No, she worked at the theater. She was a cashier. Oh. Oh, you married into money, huh? <laughs> your wife checks the figures at the front door while you check the figures at the stage door. <laughs> well, that adds up, I think. <laughs> Mrs. Griggs, uh, what, what does your husband do? My husband is a clown. <laughs> Mrs. Griggs, everybody's husband is a clown. <laughs> Let's face it, huh? Is he, is he funny at home? Oh, yes. Could yeah. you give us an example of... Uh... No, not right here. <laughs> How, how did you meet your husband? Oh, uh, I met him at a fox hunt. <laughs> Were you chasing him or was he chasing you? No. What all... do you mean you met him at a fox hunt? Well, I tell you, all circuses have a uh, uh, race. Was he a beagle? <laughs> they have races where pairs ride around the, the big tents, you know, and jump hurdles and all. And this day, uh, I fell in a mud puddle. And he carried me out, and that's the way we met. You went to a fox hunt in a mud puddle? <laughs> I don't understand this. Where, do, where does the fox hunt, hunt come in? The, fo the, fo the, the horses ride in pairs around the yeah. big top. They jump the hurdles. Yeah. I don't know where the fox comes from. <laughs> Uh, you just threw that in to make it more difficult, is that it? <laughs> Do you have any children? I have three girls. You have three girls, yeah. Huh? Three girls. How, how old are they? Huh? They're 16, 14, and 11. Oh, and do they go to they're the circus? All, yes, they, they do. They're oh. all aerialists. Oh, they're all in the circus? Yes. Huh? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. You mean you can tune them in and get television programs? And... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how, do, how do they get to be aerialists? Well, I used to be an aerialist when I was uh, younger and, and thinner. <laughs> So I, I think you're young that. enough now to be a, an aerialist, Mrs. Griggs. Thank you. And thinner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tommy, uh, let's talk about a man's subject, girls. Tommy, at, at your Bayless Theater, how, how is business? Oh, business is always good down there. It's always good. Well, if it ever falls off at your place, business will be better than ever. <laughs> well, who is 
some of the headliners you've known as you've seen parade through your theater there? Well, we've had uh, uh, Betty Rowland, the Ball of Fire, uh, Lana Barry, Red-Headed Heat Wave. And, uh, <laughs> I, These are all pretty hot numbers, aren't they? <laughs> and Lil Sincere, uh, the uh, an- Anatomy Award winner. And right now... <laughs> What was that last one, that Tommy? The Anatomy Award winner. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. Huh? <laughs> Is it pretty exciting being a stage doorman at a burlesque theater? No, it's... Uh, after a while, it gets a little... Well, the first 50 yeah. years must be fun, isn't it? <laughs> Well, after talking to you two, I can see I've lived a very sheltered life. Now, in just, in just one minute, you're going to work together for a chance at $2,000. Whenever you take your car for service to any one of the more than 3,000 authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealers, you never have to wonder about what kind of a job you'll get. For that's where you'll always get the best equipment and the best workmanship, meaning a top job every time. At a DeSoto Plymouth dealers, you get the benefit of factory-designed and approved tools and equipment. Also, skilled mechanics who know how to use that equipment. Getting a better job done on your car in shorter time naturally means money in your pocket and a car that will serve you faithfully and economically for miles and miles. So stop in and get acquainted with a DeSoto Plymouth dealer next time your car needs service. Learn what so many car owners all over this nation already know, that it pays to stop in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Now let's see if you two will be high for the night and get the chance at the $2,000. Phantom and tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected former Academy Award winners as your category. Is that right? That's right. All right. Now, you have $20. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Ten. Who won the Academy Award in 1942 for his portrayal of George M. Cohan in Yankee Doodle Dandy? Uh, James Cagney. James Cagney is right. <laughs> Away, Groucho, with thirty dollars. Well, you got thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for two thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty will you try? Twenty. Twenty dollars. Who won the award in 1940 as Kitty Foyle? Ginger Rogers. Ginger Rogers. <laughs> They're climbing. They have fifty dollars now. Well, you boy, less man, you're stripping right along here. Huh? <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the fifty will you bet? Forty-five. Oh, forty-five. Who won the award playing Father Flanagan in the picture Boys Town? Spencer Tracy. Spencer Tracy. Now they have $95. Are you sure you don't work in a movie theater? (laughs) Well, you've got $95. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much will you bet? $95. $95. All right. Who won the Academy Award in 1945 as Mildred Pierce? Crawford. Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford. $190. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away. You may get the chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still name. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a fireman and a housewife. And here they are, Mrs. Evelyn Russell and fireman Ben Brewer. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. And if you say the secret word, you divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Uh, Russell, where are you from, Mrs. Uh... Los Angeles, California. From India. Where, whereabouts? Uh, well, I'm, I was born in the Southwest. Well, where about Southwest? You mean North Dakota? Or... In California. I'm a native. I have to be in California if you're a native. Not if you're a native of Los Angeles, you don't. <laughs> you could be in Waco, Texas. <laughs> uh, Feynman Ben Brewer, huh? Yes, sir. Hmm. Where are you from? The Smoky Mountains? No, I come from Arizona. With a banjo on your knee? Or... <laughs> 
Uh, what is the... Uh, tell me, Smokey Stover, what is the... Uh, <laughs> what's the proper procedure for turning in a fire alarm? Well, you merely break the glass and pull down the alarm. The important thing is uh, not to delay, to turn it in immediately. Well, most people are reluctant to ring the alarm because they're afraid that they'll break up your canasta game at the firehouse. <laughs> Or poker, whatever they play. What no, do you play? Huh? We don't play any poker. We're not allowed to gamble. We'd be dismissed if we gambled. You mean they can fire a fireman? <laughs> you don't play poker or canasta. Just what do you do between fires? As of late, we have our fire prevention program that keeps us out most of the day in our district. We can answer alarms because we're on the radio and in contact with our dispatcher. And we talk to the taxpayers. Housewives? That's right. What do you tell the housewives when you call on them? Well, shall I... Assume you're a housewife? <laughs> well, many people have. Uh... <laughs> Don't let this tie fool you, huh? <laughs> Come on, let's assume that I'm a housewife, huh? I'd uh, say good morning, madam. We're out here in the street with our apparatus. You we... don't even wait for me to say good morning back to you, huh? <laughs> Let's try it again, huh? Good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. How's tricks? <laughs> What's new, big boy? <laughs> what are you doing later on today? <laughs> okay, now the fire is still burning, I suppose. We're around trying to list your cooperation in helping us prevent fires in this district. Uh huh. Yeah. We want you to watch rubbish in the backyard. Yeah. Keep my relatives out of this, huh? <laughs> we wouldn't want you to put any pennies behind the fuses or allow the curtains to get over near the heater. We don't want the children to play with matches. You're a real killjoy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Russell, do you have any fire hazards at your house? Oh, well, my husband's a fire hazard. Your husband is a fire hazard? You mean he burns up easily? Well, he smokes in bed. <laughs> What's your opinion of smoking in bed, fireman? It's dangerous. <laughs> well, I imagine there's more to it than that, huh? <laughs> what other careless habits do people have that provide fire hazards? Do you have any rule for people to follow? Well, we have one little rule. You want to start over again and say good morning, madam? No, no I'll give you the rule. <laughs> what, what is it? Matches have heads, but they don't have brains. And whenever you start a fire, use your head. <laughs> that won't work. I've got water on the knee, huh? <laughs> That won't work. I've got water on the brain. <laughs> now, where else could I have it? Let's see. <laughs> well, I've kidded our fireman, but I know all of us are thankful that the fire department does such an efficient job, Mr. Brewer. Now, you're going to play your bet your life for the chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The circus lady and the burlesque doorman earned $190. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected radio MCs as your category. Is that right? Now, you have $20. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Oh. Make it 10. Let's just make 10. $10. <laughs> Who is the popular master of ceremonies on People Are Funny? Art Linkletter. Art Linkletter is right. <laughs> Well, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? 25 25 okay. 25 Who is the MC on Stop the Music? Is, um... Oh, darn it. Stop the Music. Fireman, save my child here, huh? Okay, think of what it is. Well, it's, uh, it's Bert we, Parks. You should have known that. We lost. They now have $5, got... Groucho. Well, all right. Now you're, you're down to $5. Oh, well, that's a shame. Here's your third question. How much of the five will you try? Let's try three. Try three dollars. All right. Who is the MC on Double or Nothing? Walter O'Keefe. Walter O'Keefe is right. We're on the way again. They have eight dollars. Now you're climbing. You got eight dollars. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the eight will you try? Let's bet it all, huh? 
Okay, here you go, up the ladder again. Now, who is the MC on Take It or Leave It? Uh, Eddie Cantor. Eddie Cantor. And they wind up with $16. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, we'll soon know who gets the chance at the $2,000 question. You know, friends, when you drive your car into a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's, you'll find they have the old-fashioned idea of courtesy. Fenneman, you mean they kiss your hand as you leave? <laughs> well, no, Groucho, but they do show an honest interest in your problems, a real desire to treat you fairly and squarely. Shall we dance? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, friends, that's important to you folks who own cars, whatever make of car it may be. Well, I have an electric car, and it's quite a shock to my family. Well, enough. Father <laughs> Al, George, which couple is ahead so far? Well, the circus lady and the stage doorman are leading with $190, and the secret word is still name. We asked if there were any engaged couples here tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Ann Lane and Mr. Ken Miller, and here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you win $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, <laughs> Ann, Ann Lane? Yes, sir. That's a very, very pretty name. How, how old are you, Ann? I'm 21. And uh, Ken Miller? 22. You're the engaged boy, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> When is the big day to be, Miss, Miss Lane? June the 27th. Mm-hmm. Ken, why did you pick that day? Huh? Well, I didn't. <laughs> did she pick it? Yes, she did. Mm-hmm. Who's going to be present at your wedding, Ken? All her friends and her relatives and mine. Do you know her relatives? Well, not all of them. <laughs> you will eventually, brother. <laughs> And will you know them? Huh? <laughs> well, if you didn't know them, why why did you why why did you invite them? I didn't. <laughs> uh, are you implying that her relatives are trying to crash the party? No, sir. She invited them. <laughs> are you sure you want to go through with this? <laughs> yes, could I. Could you am. back out now if you wanted to, Ken? Oh, sure. I think so. Well, how could you back out of it, huh? Well, I could. Quit paying on the rings. <laughs> then you you have been giving it some thought, huh? <laughs> and is Ken going to be able to support you all right? I think so. Other fellas support their wives on his income. <laughs> yet, and you're already beginning to turn into the Marshall Plan. <laughs> Ann, do you have a pet name for your boyfriend here? Yes, sir, but I don't want to tell you what it is. <laughs> well, couldn't you clean it up? <laughs> Come on, Ann. What is it, huh? Well, well give us a cinnamon. He calls me it. Bunky, and I call him Punky. <laughs> why, uh, why Bunky, Ken? Huh? Huh? I don't really know. <laughs> well, they're cute names, I think. Thank you. What sort of work do you do, punk? I'm a template maker, Douglas in Long Beach. A what? A template maker. Come again. What is a template maker? Oh, huh? well, a template maker is a... Well, it makes templates, I suppose. <laughs> well, that's clear. Now I understand it. Huh? <laughs> well, what is a template? A uh, template is a pattern. <clears throat> and a pattern is a what? A huh? uh, pattern is a... A structure that they build a part of a ship to and drill holes from that has a bunch of holes. Did you ever read Gertrude Stein? <laughs> now, what kind of planes are you building now? Well, it's called the C-124, and it's supposed to be the largest cargo ship built. How big is it? 
Well, it's big enough to hold two fully loaded buses and uh, 200 fully loaded troops. I don't know if they can get the buses loaded, but they can certainly get the troops loaded. I I wish you'd notify me when you go up for the first time with that one. (laughs) Where do you work, uh, Bunk? I work at Douglas, too. Oh, you work there, too? Yes, sir. What what do you do? I do general clerical work in the planning department. Secretary? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And what's the difference between secretarial work in an aircraft factory and in any other office? Well, I guess there isn't much difference except that you have to be able to understand the boss's terms when he's dictating. Mm. Well, when you start understanding the boss's terms, it's time for you to go home to mother. Huh? have you been carrying the torch for punk here? Huh? <laughs> About two years. How did you meet Ken for the first time? Well, I was working in the tool crib. At You're the a time. very pretty girl. Did I tell you that? Huh? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I was working in the tool crib. I didn't have anything to do with it, Anne. <laughs> if you were a pretty girl, I'd say the same thing about you. <laughs> punk old boy, huh? <laughs> So? So I was working in the tool crib, and he was a riveter on the assembly line, and uh, he had to make approximately two trips a day to the tool crib, but I saw to it that he made about 10 or 50. What is a tool crib? I don't know. Uh, what are you keeping there? Baby tools? <laughs> Uh, Bunk, uh, Bunky, let's let's get back to your wedding. Uh, wh- where are you going on your honeymoon? <laughs> That's a secret. Don't you think you ought to tell him? Uh, where... <laughs> when are you leaving on your honeymoon, Bunky? After the wedding. Uh... <laughs> well, Bunky, you couldn't pick a better time. Huh? <laughs> of course, Ken doesn't care. He doesn't know where he's going anyway. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you two are going to be very happy. And remember, old Uncle Groucho in future years when you're trying to think of a name for your 15th. (laughs) Now you're going to try for a chance at the $2,000 question. You beat the other two couples and you win the chance at all that money. I can't tell you how much our other two couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The circus lady and the stage doorman are still ahead with $190. Now here we go. You have $20. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected bird songs as your category. Is that right? Honeymooners. And how much are you going to bet of the $20? Talk right up, Bunky. She says $10. Give me the title of this bird song. Play, Jerry. Bye-bye, Blackbird. Bye-bye, Blackbird. is right. Right. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. You're on your way now. You got $30, says Fenneman. How much of the 30 will you try? 25 25 What is the name of this song? Flamingo. Flamingo. They're really sorry now. They have $55. You got $55. Here's your third question. How much of the 55 will you try? 50 Let's see if you can identify this one. Okay, Jerry. When the swallows come back to Kentuckian, now they have one hundred and five dollars. You got one hundred and five dollars. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the hundred and five? Hundred. A hundred, huh? I know who has the pants in your family. Okay, give me the title of this bird song. Skylark is right. And they wind up with $205 and 
And that means that they, with their $205, get the chance to sort of win a $2,000 question. Warmer weather is approaching fast, so now is the time to take your car for that spring tune-up to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. With factory designed and approved tools and equipment, with expert factory trained mechanics, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will give your car, whatever its make, a careful inspection and do all the things that should be done to put your car in tip-top shape for the weather ahead. Mechanics will give your car an engine tune-up, will drain and flush your radiator, Check your spark plugs, your battery, and your tires. Put in the right oil. Lubricate the chassis. And do countless other necessary jobs. So don't put it off. Bring your car in right away. Authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealers are well equipped to give you courteous service, prompt service, service at a fair price. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. And here's the engaged couple, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $2,000, the young married kids. Well, if you win this, you certainly will have a honey, wonderful honeymoon. Huh? Are you ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully. And please, no help from the audience. Here it is. The monument to the Battle of San Jacinto, where General Santa Ana was defeated, is the tallest monument in the world. In what state is the San Jacinto Monument? What is the answer you two have decided upon? Texas. Uh, that's right. In the state of Texas, near you... Well, it shows you love will find a way, huh? <laughs> now, what are you going to do with all that swag, Funky? <laughs> well, I'm going to name my first boy Groucho. <laughs> Every time you open your mouth, I'm getting more broken. <laughs> you just said name, and that's the secret word tonight. So you, that means you just want to hide it from here. Compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Let's see, you won $2,000 plus $205 in the quiz plus $100 for saying the secret word. Say, you really cleaned up tonight. $2,305. All I can say to you both is congratulations. From the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from coast to coast, you bet your life. Thank you very much. Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth... One thousand dollars. Well, it's Bing Crosby's turn now, so good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Walkers wise use their eyes. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.
Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is chair. C-H-A-I-R. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! What a ham that guy is. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's face to try for it? We invited some building inspectors and some real estate agents to the show, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Inspector Robert Steele and Agent Thomas Williams. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, boys, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, you split $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Inspector, uh, Bob Steele. You, you inspect buildings? That's right. Stop leering at my framework. Huh? <laughs> I'm as sound as a dollar. <laughs> well, the dollar's only worth 50 cents now. <laughs> and real estate agent Tom Williams, huh? Just what do you do in your job? Well, I sell houses, get rentals for people, and I sell lots. Sell lots of what? <laughs> well, lots of lots. <laughs> Look, you're not up before a Senate committee now. You, know. <laughs> you can speak freely. Come come clean now. You sell lots of what? I sell lots. <laughs> Look, son, we have to finish this thing in 30 minutes. <laughs> now, out with it. What do you do in your job? Well, I sell houses, find rentals, and over the weekend I sit on a house... Sit on a house? Yes, I do. Have you ever laid any small bungalows that way? <laughs> Over the weekend, you you just sit on a house. How do you mean you sit on a house? I well, don't by sitting on a house, a real we, uh, time? we hold a house open for inspection over Saturday and Sunday, and we are there when anybody comes. I see. Huh? Uh, uh, how's business, real estate man? Rather slow, but I did manage to turn over a couple of houses this week. You turn. <laughs> what did you do? Lose a nickel under one of them? <laughs> what do you mean you turned over a couple of houses? I sold some houses. Must be a pretty slick salesman to sell a house that's been turned over, huh? <laughs> well, that's one way to keep the roof from leaking. <laughs> well, what do you do on your job, uh, Inspector Steele? Oh, I inspect houses for the Los Angeles Building Code. Oh, I see. Well, uh, why, why do you do that? Well, so they're safe for occupancy. What if the building is only half safe? <laughs> you use an air wick? <laughs> How do you know if a building is safe for occupancy? Hmm? Well, I check it from stem to stern and from top to bottom. Well, that's a boat, I mean. How do you check a house? <laughs> How do you check a house? Well, we check the... Foundation, the footings, the underpinnings, the framework, the lath, plaster. What kind of buildings do you inspect? Oh, we inspect uh, everything that's over four by four. <laughs> why, why, why'd you pick that figure, four by four? Huh? Well, I suppose that anything under that size would uh, wouldn't matter whether it was safe or not. <laughs> Four by four. Well, yeah, I once knew a girl who was five by five, and she wasn't very safe either. <laughs> she had a good foundation, but unfortunately, it kept slipping. Now, <laughs> well, let's get back to you, uh, Mr. Williams. Suppose I'm a likely prospect, and you think I'm in the market. Tell me your blue plate special for this week. Well, huh? Mr. Marks, I have a dandy over in Sherman Oaks. It's a two-story Cape Cod. Has five be- five bedrooms and four baths, all tile. What about the other bedroom? What do they do? <laughs> they wait till the rainy season starts. <laughs> well, we could put another shower in the basement. 
That would be for me, I suppose. I guess. Now, Inspector, in buying a house, what should the average person look out for in addition to the real estate agent? Well, you can check it for termites. You know, you must always have a term. You're talking about an old house, aren't you? I'm talking about the house he's trying to stick me with. <laughs> Suppose you refuse to appro uh, approve a house because you don't think it will stand up. What, what then? We uh, won't issue a certificate of, of occupancy on the house. And that means? That means that no one can live in it. I see. You mean the house just stands there empty? How, how long does this go on? Well, it doesn't make any difference for 100 years or so. Well, if the house will stand up that long, you should have approved it in the first place. <laughs> Well, now that I know all about real estate and building inspection, let's see if you two are going to be the ones who get the chance at the $1,000 question. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play You Bet Your Life. No matter where you drive, across this nation are more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, each with a desire to serve you. And here is how they can serve you. When your car needs attention, no matter how minor you may think the job to be, you'll find a DeSoto Plymouth dealer ready and eager to give your car full attention. You'll get the benefit of not only factory-designed and approved tools and equipment, not only factory-trained mechanics who know how to use that equipment, but service with a smile and service at a fair price. That's the creed of every DeSoto Plymouth dealer as you'll find out when you drive in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,000. Fenneman, bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous structures as your category. Is that right? That's right. Now, you have $20. How much do you want to bet? And talk right up into the mic. Ten. Ten dollars. Okay. Now, here's your first question. In what country is the Arch of Triumph? France. Vive la France. <laughs> And they're on their way with $30. Now, how much of the $30 would you throw? 25 25 huh? In what country is the Taj Mahal? It's in India. India. They're climbing. They have $55. 50 50 In what country is the Alhambra? Spain. Spain is correct. <laughs> now they have $105. You're taking my money too swiftly here. You've got $105. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of it would you want to go for? The oh. gentleman says, shoot the works. The gentleman says, shoot the... How do you know he's a gentleman? <laughs> I haven't answered the question yet. Okay. <laughs> In what country is the famous Bastille? France. That's right. Is the best... And they wind up with a grand total of $210. It's not true. The Bastille comes from the United States. I... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, stick around now. You may get a chance at the big question. You Rock may off. get a chance. <laughs> the secret word is still chair. Yes, George. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Quite. It's quite okay, George. Just before we went in the air, our studio audience selected a camp counselor and a married man. And here they are, Miss Dorothy Johnson and Mr. Joe Benjamin. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, to You Bet Your Life. And if you say the secret word, you will divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Miss uh, Johnson, you're a, you're a camp counselor, huh? That's right. Very pretty girl. Uh, what camp is it? Uh? <laughs> oh, that's Clear Creek School Camp. Where, where are you from, Dorothy? From Idaho Falls, Idaho. You what was it? Idaho Falls, Idaho. Idaho Falls, Idaho. Yes. I thought you were yodeling there for a minute. <laughs> uh, do you have any children of your own? No. You don't have any children. Since you're a camp counselor, did you meet your husband at a Boy Scout camp? No. Was he a Girl Scout? No, he's nothing. I'm not married. <laughs> he's nothing. That's a fine remark. <laughs> 
Whether you're married or not, that's a pretty rough opinion to have of your husband. <laughs> He's probably a very nice fellow, and you're just temporarily annoyed with him. <laughs> now, Mr. Joe Benjamin, huh? That's right. Well, he used to be a prize fighter by that name. He was one of Dempsey's sparring partners. I boxed for quite a while myself. Did you? That's right. Why didn't you box with somebody else, huh? <laughs> They're pretty punchy when they start boxing with themselves. Huh? <laughs> well, you're not at all marred up, uh, Joe. Huh? You're, the, you're the married man, is it? Not... Yes, sir. Well, why we're on the subject, why is your wife annoyed with you? She's not annoyed with me. She isn't, eh? Well, let's see what I can do about it, huh? <laughs> How old is she? Well, she's pretty young. Well, how young? Is she about three? Uh... No, I mean, she's pretty young for her age. <laughs> how old are you, Dorothy? Eighteen. Eighteen. Well, you're very young for your age. <laughs> Maybe you two are meant for each other. <laughs> well, I'm at it. I might as well fix this fellow up right then. <laughs> Now, at what camp do you do your counseling, did you say? A uh, Clear Creek School Camp. Oh, Clear Creek. Where, where is that? Uh, oh, it's in La Cunada, just past La Cunada. Where is that, in Scotland? <laughs> uh, no, it's... Um... Where is La Cunada? I know where a wee duck and Doris is. But... <laughs> Could be a wee lock and ladder, too. You know? <laughs> or a wee hook and ladder. We had a fine... <laughs> Dorothy Johnson, where is Lock and Lotta, huh? <laughs> you don't know where Lock and Lotta is, huh? This is your first year there? Uh, no, I've been a camper there, and now I'm... A, I just started being a director. Well, how, how did you get there when you went there last year? <laughs> did they blindfold you before? Yeah. <laughs> well, we went on a bus. It's um, in the foothills, uh, let's see. I can't exactly remember the hills. <laughs> it's there. Those kids are going to have a tough time finding it this year. If the counselor can't find it, there's going to be 50 tots roaming the hills all summer. That'll save you help the juvenile delinquency program. How old are these uh, gangsters that you... Oh, they run from about 6 to 12. They run from 6 to 12, then. <laughs> They'll have to if they want to find this place. What are some of the uh, activities at this mysterious camp? Uh, Hiking, swimming. I think they do moonshining out there. <laughs> what do you do, Dorothy? Well, crafts, swimming, hiking, arching. What do you oh. mean, arching their backs? <laughs> arching their backs? Or... No, you know, bow and arrow. Oh, bow and arrow, huh? Yes. Well, in addition to poison ivy, what do the kids get out of the camp? <laughs> We build character. Oh. Could you build me one? Uh, I don't know. Mine is none too good. Huh? <laughs> Suppose a kid objects to having you build his character. What do you do, Dorothy? Oh, we have punishments. You call in the real estate agent and have them turn the kids over, huh? <laughs> Slug them? Or do you just whack them on the bum bum, huh? <laughs> Lay a hand on him. So what do you use, a baseball bat? <laughs> How do you discipline your children, uh, Mr. Benjamin? Well, I talk, talk to her for a while. If that don't work, spank them. <laughs> spank them on the bum bum? <laughs> that sounds like a summer is hard, doesn't it? <laughs> Where did you go last year, Groucho? Why, we had a lovely time. We had two lovely weeks at Spank him on the Bum Bum. <laughs> oh, 
Well, Dorothy, who does the disciplining in your family? I'm not married. All this time and you're still not married? <laughs> Did anything embarrassing ever happen to you, Dorothy? Well, yes. Once up at camp, uh, one of the directors was chasing the snake and uh, snakes... What a sucker he was, huh? <laughs> We don't like to let rattlesnakes roam around the hills. That's right. I don't blame With you. With the kids, you know. I disapprove of it myself. Huh? So we tried to capture this one, and uh, rattlesnakes usually go in pairs. You do? Uh, yes. That's so. very interesting to know. <laughs> so? Well, the snake went under the rock, and uh, this other director asked me to watch if there was another snake. And all of a sudden, he sat down on some uh, yucca bush. And the thing was, I didn't know where to apply the tourniquet. He, he thought it was a snake. <laughs> well, one good tourniquet deserves another. Well, now that we've got that settled, let's see how you make out with some quiz questions. You're going to play You Bet Your Life for the chance of the $1,000. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a big chance. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners. The real estate agent and the building inspector won $210. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected famous stadiums as your category. Is that right? How much of the 20 are you going to risk? About 10. 10. In what city is Soldier Field? Chicago. Chicago is right. They're on their way with thirty dollars, Groucho. All right, you go, you've got thirty dollars now. Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. How much of the thirty will you try? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. In what city is Shib Park? Uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia is right. They're climbing. They have fifty-five dollars. All right, you got fifty-five dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the fifty-five do you want to try? Fifty. In what city is Franklin Field? Annapolis or Baltimore? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. It's it's again Philadelphia. They now have five dollars. Oh, that's a shame. All right, you want to bet the five, I presume, huh? Yes. In, in what city is Fenway Park? That's uh, Boston. Boston is correct. You've practically cleaned out now, but I'm going to give you one more chance to make some money. You get this one right, and I'll hand over $10 in cash. Now, think hard. What city is located on San Francisco Bay? Oh, San Francisco. Grant's tomb is right. Give him the money. Now, they end up with $10. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, we'll soon know who gets the chance at the $1,000 question. And now, a word with our sponsor. Now, there's an original line. Did you think that up yourself, Fenneman, or was it left over from Dr. Christian? Well, Groucho, it may not be original, but what I'm going to say about our sponsor, the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America, is well known to thousands upon thousands of car owners. I don't suppose I can stop you. You get the finest of service wherever you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And do you know why? Tell me, Fenneman, he said with raised eyebrows and a quizzical look in his steely gray eyes. <laughs> because skilled men who get constant factory training are working there, working with the most modern tools and equipment. All right, Fenneman, who's ahead in the battle for the $1,000 question tonight? Well, the building inspector and the real estate agent are leading with $210, and the secret word is still chair. Just before we went on the air, we selected a bachelor and a spinster from our studio audience. And here they are, Miss Burt Banks... And Mr. Olaf Hovden, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the for, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word, you divide $100 in cash between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Miss uh, Bert Banks, is that right? That's right. Can and uh, Mr. Olaf Hovden, is that right? That's right. You're the bachelor, huh? What is that, Swedish? Norwegian. Norwegian. Huh? That's almost the same thing. Isn't it? No, you wouldn't call a Norwegian a Swede. Well, I would have. I was pressed. Uh, <laughs> How old are you, Olaf? Sixty-five. Well, you certainly don't look at a very young-looking Norwegian. And, uh, Miss, Miss Banks, uh, if I'm not too fresh, how old are you? 
You think that's a fair question to ask a woman? <laughs> well, I don't expect a fair answer, so... Uh, would you mind if I guessed? No, go ahead. Fifty-five. No. Fifty. No, you're getting warm. <laughs> Well, at my age, that isn't bad. <laughs> Olaf? Olaf, what sort of work do you do? I'm farming. You're a farmer and you don't have a wife? Who pulls the plow? <laughs> <laughs> you mean that yeah. nursery rhyme about the farmer takes a wife is all wrong? I don't read any nursery rhymes. Well, if I'm successful here tonight, you will be. (laughs) Couldn't you use a wife on your farm? Oh, sure. Oh. Oh, she could feed the pigs and milk the cows and feed the chickens. Is that all she'd have to do? Oh, no. (laughs) Where's your farm? uh? West end of Antelope Valley. Antelope Valley, huh? Yeah. About 70 miles from here. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, are, are you 49, Miss Banks? No. <laughs> 49 and a half? No. Well, if you ever get to 50, my advice is to sell, huh? <laughs> I think you're a mighty fine-looking gal, Miss Banks, despite all this unfunny kidding. Thank you. Now, what what sort of work do you do? I'm in hats. (laughs) I mean, where where are you employed? Saks Fifth Avenue, Beverly Hills. Oh, you work in Saks, huh? Yes. Well, you'd be a big help on a farm, huh? (laughs) When you get through feeding the chickens and the pigs, you could start filling the sacks with potatoes. What do you do at Saks, sir? I'm in hats. You're in hats? <laughs> Must be kind of chilly, isn't it? <laughs> what are the current styles in women's hats? Well, rough sailors. Of course, we sell them. <laughs> we sell them. <laughs> I didn't know there were any other kind. Huh? Olaf, you've been pretty quiet here. What do you raise in your farm? Wheat, barley, and oats, cattle. You're still a bachelor, huh? Well, you haven't been sowing the right kind of oats, Olaf. <laughs> How big is your farm? About 3,000 acres. You ought to plant a little sugar, then you could raise cane. Huh? Well, Some can't, okay. can't raise cane. You can't raise cane? Why not? Raise sugar beets. Oh, here I am trying to make millions of people laugh, and you have to ruin it by throwing in the wrong vegetable. <laughs> How is farm life today compared to when you first started uh, farming? Oh, it's a good deal easier today. More mechanized machinery. Miss Banks, you've just been replaced by the McCormick Reaper. (laughs) You think you'd like to live on a farm, Miss Banks? No, decidedly not. You wouldn't, huh? No. Well, now, tell me, Corn Silk, suppose... uh, (laughs) Suppose Miss Banks decided to leave Saks and take up farming. Uh, What would she do for entertainment? Remember, she's used to life in a big city like Beverly Hills, where the ice cream stores close at 10 (laughs) o'clock. She can go to ladies' AIDS meeting and sewing and card and square dances and entertainment in the house for radio and piano. Well, when things get real dull, Miss Banks, you can always go down to the bakery in town and smell hot bread. (laughs) kind of loaf around there, you know. In the <laughs> now that you two are definitely going to be hitched. <laughs> you can try those hats on the livestock out there. <laughs> Let's see how well you work together as a team for the chance at the thousand dollar question. You beat the other two couples and you win the chance at all that money. Whether or not you win much money, I hope you and everybody else will do something for me. 
join the 1950 Cancer Crusade. Strike back at cancer by giving generously to your local committee of the American Cancer Society. Mail your contribution to cancer, care of your local post office. All right, Fenneman, remind our listeners how much the other couples earned. The building inspector and the real estate agent are still ahead with $210. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected famous hotels as your category. Is that right? Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Ten. In what city is the Mark Hopkins Hotel? San Francisco. San Francisco is right. They're on their way with thirty dollars. Oh, life, you've been away from that farm. <laughs> Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty will you try? Twenty. Twenty. In what city is the Palmer House Hotel? Chicago. Chicago is right. Now they have fifty dollars. Now you have fifty dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the fifty? Twenty. Forty. Forty dollars. <laughs> okay. In what city is the Roney Plaza Hotel? Um, Miami. Miami Beach is right. They're really climbing. They have ninety dollars. All right, you got ninety dollars. Now here's your last chance. Uh, how much are you going to bet on this one? Talk it up, Olaf. Forty. Forty. Forty dollars. In what city is the Waldorf Astoria Hotel? New York City. New York City is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $130. And that means the building inspector and the real estate agent with $210 get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. There's more to getting your car ready for warmer weather than simply changing the oil. To put it in tip-top shape for extra miles of driving, you should bring your car for a spring tune-up to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Expert, factory-trained mechanics using factory-designed and approved tools and equipment will give your car an engine tune-up, lubricate the chassis, check your battery and your tires, flush your radiator, and perform a number of other jobs that will give you thousands of miles of trouble-free driving. First chance you get, stop in for that spring tune-up at the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Any of the more than 3,000 authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America will be happy to serve you promptly, efficiently, and at a fair price. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. And here's the building inspector and the real estate agent, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. Okay, here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you and think carefully and no help in the audience. Here it is. The official yacht of the President of the United States is one of the world's most beautiful pleasure crafts. For $1,000, what is the name of President Truman's official yacht? What is the answer you two have decided upon? Lafayette. No, I'm sorry. It's the Williamsburg. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $210 in the quiz. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget... Next week, the big question will be worth $1,500. Well, Bing Crosby's raring to go, so good night, folks. And remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. 
Folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Don't save time, Mr. Motorist. Save yourself. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is bread. B-R-E-A-D. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Hey, that's me, Groucho Marx, the Queen of the May. (laughs) Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who's first? We invited some girl gas station attendants and some hot rod drivers to the program. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Dorothy Donata and Don Stedman. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll split $100 in cash between you. It's a common word, something you see every day. A hot rod driver and a girl service uh, service attendant, eh? Dorothy uh, Donata? I presume you're the girl service attendant? eh? Yes, I am, sir. I thought so. You're wearing pumps, that's why. (laughs) Where are you from, uh, Dorothy? Oh, I'm from the beer and pretzel capital of the world, Reading, Pennsylvania. Mm. There's a drunk in the first row. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Don uh, Stedman, you're the hot rod driver. Where, where, where are you from, Hot Springs? No, sir, I'm from uh, the Sooner State, Oklahoma. You both look like fairly new models. Uh, uh, Don, uh, how old are you? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. And, and what's your age, Dorothy? Twenty-two. Well, you still got the original paint job, huh? <laughs> are you married, Dorothy? No, I'm not. Why not? Oh, I still have time yet. So have I. Shall we dance? <laughs> Why aren't you married, Don? Well... I still got a little ways to go. Well, if you're driving a hot rod, it won't be long before you'll get there. <laughs> How do you go about building one of your highway rockets? Well, uh, uh, well, you rebuild the front end, put in new kingpins and uh, new shocks all the way around, and uh, then you have to change the gears in your differential. You've got to get your manifold. Some of them are running four pots this year. No, what? Huh? Some of them are running four pots now. Well, I've been half potted, but I didn't know. What, what, what is, is what a, is a pot anyhow? It's a carburetor. Uh, uh, why don't you call it a carburetor? Well, that's just like building a stock car. I see. That would you're too snobbish to call it. A car. <laughs> well, what else? Uh, what else do they oh, do? Oh, well, there this? was one fellow that put. Two front end, one on the front, one on the back. <laughs> well, what, what is the object of that? That sounds. Uh... Well, you'll have to admit it's different. <laughs> you seem to be more interested in freaks than you are in locomotion. <laughs> Uh, Dorothy, uh, how about some service? You've been standing there all this time, and you haven't even wiped my windshield. <laughs> Tell me, what do you think of hot rodders? Oh, I think they're swifty. You think they're what? Swifty. <laughs> Did you know you were swifty? Yeah. <laughs> sure, I knew it. <laughs> now, wait.
Where do you attend your gas pumps, Dorothy? The Gilmore Serve Yourself Service Station, Beverly oh, Boulevard. I see. Thought that's what you, you were there for, to, what do you mean, to save yourself? Well, you just serve yourself. You come in and serve your own gas and wipe your own windshield and check your own oil, and then you pay me. <laughs> if I'm going to do all that, I'll put the money in my own pocket and leave. Huh? <laughs> you call that a service station? Mm-hmm. I suppose a woman drives into your station. Do you make her do all that work? I treat the men and women alike. Well, if you ever expect to get married, you're going to have to revise that policy. <laughs> Not much, Dorothy, but some, huh? <laughs> What do you girls call yourselves? I'm sure you don't refer to each other as girl uh, gas uh, station attendants, do you? No, we call each other gas jockeys. <laughs> There's a whole new language sprung up. <laughs> I'm completely out of touch with the outside world. <laughs> do you save hot rod drivers? Oh, we certainly do. Well, uh, will you save me one the next time I come in there? <laughs> Now, how much gas does the average hot rod driver buy? Well, it all depends how much money they have in their pockets. We had one come in today that bought three cents worth. Well, can he get out of the station with three cents worth? <laughs> what do you do, drop it in his ear? <laughs> Don, how far can you get on three cents worth of gas? Well, I've never been that cheap. I, at least I... <laughs> Well, I've let's assume that you were broke, cents. not necessarily cheap. Let's say you were broke and only had three cents. How far would you go in your car? Well, I bought five cents worth and I got... <laughs> but uh, you wouldn't be so cheap to buy three cents <laughs> Four cents worth. <laughs> Nothing under a nickel, huh? <laughs> okay, how far do you get on a nickel's worth of gas? Oh, well, I almost got home. <laughs> you mean all the way to Oklahoma? <laughs> now, uh, how fast can one of your hot rods uh, travel, uh, Don? <clears throat> well, if you push it, it should go between... <laughs> No, I mean if you're inside the car. <laughs> this is where the nickels where the gas, I guess. No, when I mean push it, I mean you got your foot in the carburetor. Everything you say has another meaning. <laughs> <laughs> How fast did you say you could go? Well, most of them are... I won't say if they push it. Most of them... You can say it again if you want. <laughs> I'm, I'm inured to everything now. You know. If you push it, um, they go from between 120 to 160. Mm -hmm. Well, where do you drive 150 miles an hour? And where are you going? <laughs> and what's your hurry? Well, we're uh, racing against the clock at Lake El Mirage. Does the clock run alongside of you? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, we're racing against time. Time, right? well, He's kind of cute at that. Isn't he? <laughs> Dorothy, do you like him? Sure, I do. <laughs> Very much. Well, I like him too, Dorothy. <laughs> Don, you'll have to choose between us. <laughs> I'm not going to do very well, I can tell you. <laughs> Dorothy, I think you'd be perfectly safe going on a ride with Don here. After all, at 150 miles an hour, he has to keep both hands on the steering wheel. <laughs> Isn't that right, Dad? Uh, no, not necessarily. <laughs> well, if the girl you take out isn't an angel, she will be by the time you get back. <laughs> when you see me crossing the street, all I ask is just stop and wait for about 20 minutes, huh? <laughs> Until I'm safely on the other side. <laughs> how, how carefully do you drive down? Well, most of the, the guys that drive roadsters are, 90% of them are very careful... They take pride in their cars, and they drive them safe, and mechanically, they are A1. We are now trying to get them off the streets from racing by driving it, having the races up at El Mirage, and they're racing against time only, and the cars are in perfect condition, and uh, 
That's about it. Well, my advice for you is to take your car into your nearest DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think during the last war, it was proven that many of the best airplane pilots were kids who had been driving hot rods. Well, <laughs> only let me know when you're coming down my street, will you? <laughs> now that we've discussed the hot rod situation, let's see how well you two make out in the quiz. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,500 question. The best in service at a fair price. That's what the DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America offer you when you take your car to any of them for service, no matter what make of car you drive. These DeSoto Plymouth dealers believe in giving every customer a fair deal. This fair deal consists of expert mechanics working with the best tools and equipment to give you an efficient job every time. Also, a desire on the part of every dealer to treat you courteously and to charge you a fair price. It's easy to see. A DeSoto Plymouth dealer wants you for a steady and satisfied customer. So next time your car needs attention, won't you stop in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer? And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs by Rogers and Hart as your category, right? Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Now, what is the title of this song? Play, Jerry. What is it? Blue Moon Moon is right. And they're on their way with $30. And how much of the 30 will you bet? $15. $15. What is the title of this one? Where are oh, when is correct. They're climbing for our Kelly of $45. All right, you got $45. Here's your third question. How much of the $45? $40. $40. Give me the title of this one. Okay, Jerry. This can't be love. This can't be love. It's correct. They're really climbing now. They have $85. All right, you're right back in that hot rod now. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the $85? Seventy dollars. Seventy dollars. Seventy dollars. Let's see if you can identify this song. And then my heart stood still. My heart stood still is right. And they wind up with a grand total of one hundred and fifty-five dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Stick around now. You may get the chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still bread. I know that, George. Well, perhaps the next couple will say it. I know that, too. We invited some tax assessors to the show and I just... didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected one of them, Mrs. Helen Carr. Her partner, Mr. Bill Redding, is a married man from the audience. And here they come, folks. Meet Groucho Mark. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. And if you say the secret word, you'll split $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. A tax assessor, eh? Uh, that's you, Mr. Redding? No. No, I'm a hotel clerk. <laughs> I thought you said you were a tax assessor. No, you just said that. <laughs> Oh, is that where I heard it, huh? <laughs> then uh, you're a tax assessor, Mrs. Uh, Helen Carr? Yes, I am. How long have you two been married? Huh? Oh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not married to him. No. Well, don't come running to me with your trouble. <laughs> Aren't you ashamed, Mr. Reddick, breaking up a happy home like hers? No, I just met her a few months ago. <laughs> 
Bass Wiker, eh? <laughs> where are you from, you rascal, you? <laughs> Mr. Well, Ruddy, where are you from? Well, I'm from uh, College View or Peanut Hill, Nebraska. That's a suburb just outside of Lincoln. <laughs> I didn't know Lincoln had any suburbs. <laughs> and where, where are you from, Mrs. Carr? Originally Boone, Iowa. Boone, is that named after Daniel Boone? Uh, Boone yes, or? it is. Named after Daniel Boone. Yeah. Do you know what he was famous for? Well, no, I don't. He had a coonskin cap. <laughs> There's a man spent his whole life as a hero, and he wound up being identified <laughs> as a fellow who wore a coonskin cap. Huh? <laughs> when I die, I'll be known as an old mustache, I suppose. <laughs> How long have you been married, uh, Mr. Reddick? Oh, about uh, 31 or 32 years. Mm -hmm. How did you meet this poor misled wife of yours? <laughs> well, I was, at the time, I was a night clerk, and I used to, uh, I had an Excelsior motorcycle. This particular morning, while I was rushing home, and just as I scooted around the corner, why, she was stooping over to set down a pail of garbage. <laughs> it's a very romantic meeting, so... <laughs> I landed up uh, mixed up with the garbage and with uh, with an injured knee, and it took me about two weeks before I was able to ride the motorcycle again. And uh, during that intermission, why she used to come around and sit on my on the front porch. And... That's known as a Freudian slip. I used to know a girl who wore one of those. Huh? Now, Mrs. Uh, Carr, isn't it unusual for a woman to be a tax assessor? Oh, no. Six out of seven of us are women. What is the other one, a giraffe? <laughs> now, as a, a tax uh, deputy, what are your duties? I uh, go around the county door to door taking statements for personal property. Just what is personal property? Huh? Personal property is anything you own or use. <laughs> That's the broadest statement I ever heard. <laughs> You mean I have to pay a tax on my neighbor's shower? No, not... The... Well, I use it all the time. <laughs> now, Mrs. Carr, pretend I'm a housewife and you're making a routine call. Now, go ahead and ask me the usual questions. So, good morning. Uh, I want to take your statement. Do you have any real estate? I have a 50-foot lot. Continue. Uh, how, how deep is it? It's about 30 feet deep. Uh, <laughs> That's only at high tide. Go on. Do you own any, uh, any personal property? Furniture, yeah. All the furniture, furniture in my living room is new. We got it, it by is... sending in soap coupons. Well, what do you have in the other rooms? I have three million bars of soap. Huh? <laughs> well, I can't clean that time. Huh? Well, now that I know all about tax assessments, let's see how well you two are going to make out with your bet your life. Now, you run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The hot rod driver and the girl gas attendant earned $155. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build your $20. You selected pictures on paper money as your category. Is that right? That's correct. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Whose picture's on the five-dollar bill? That's, um, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. You knew that from Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> You're off to a good start with thirty dollars. Well, you got thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty will you bet? We'll bet the whole thirty. The whole thirty. Whose picture's on the twenty-dollar bill? Uh, that's Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is right. <laughs> Now they have sixty dollars. Well, you're really gamblers. Now you got sixty dollars. Hey, here's your third question. How much of the sixty? You bet the sixty. You're gonna bet the sixty. <laughs> Whose picture is on the ten dollar bill? Um, that's uh, Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> They're really climbing now, Groucho. They have one hundred and twenty dollars. Got a hundred and twenty dollars. How much of the hundred and twenty you gonna pay? You gonna bet? <laughs> one hundred and twenty. You're going to bet the whole yeah, way, huh? <laughs> Whose picture is on the one dollar bill? George Washington. George Washington. <laughs> and they wind up with a grand total of two hundred and thirty dollars. Thanks, 
and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And I will soon know who gets the chance at the $1,500 question. You know, friends, when you're out driving in a long automobile trip, keep in mind that there are more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Panama, don't you know when a person's driving a car, he's supposed to keep his mind on the road? Well then, folks, when you're at home, thinking about that trip in your car, remember there's a DeSoto Plymouth dealer near you. I can practically feel his hot breath on my spare tire. <laughs> That's just the warmer weather ahead, Groucho. And it's just one more reason why you should drive in to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Touche, Fenneman. Now let's get back to you bet your life. Who's ahead? Well, the tax assessor and the married man are leading with $240. And the secret word is still bread. We invited some game wardens and some commercial fishermen to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Warden Walter Shannon and fisherman Vince Devlahovich. And here they are. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, boys, to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash between you. It's a common word, something you see every day. A commercial fisherman and a game warden, eh? What is your name? Uh... Devlahovich. Devlahovich, huh? What is that? What is that? Russian? No, that's uh, Yugoslavonia. Yugoslavonia. Huh? Are Are you from uh, Yugoslavia? I was born here, San born. Pedro. Are you a skipper or a member of the crew? I'm a skipper. A skipper, huh? Could you skip around for me here? <laughs> Did you ever wear a Schiaparelli uh, gown or a no. hat or anything? <laughs> You'd think they'd pay to come in, wouldn't you? <laughs> you're, the, you're the game warden, uh, Mr. Shannon? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me, warden. This sounds like old times. Can we call you? <laughs> warden, uh, what are your principal duties? Our principal duties are to watch people uh, who are hunting and fishing. Oh, a television fan, eh? <laughs> or as we say in the business, uh, TV. <laughs> that means terrible vaudeville, huh? <laughs> ah, there are still diehards that listen to radio. Huh? <laughs> Why do you watch people fishing and hunting? Uh, haven't you got anything better to do, Mr. Shannon? Uh, to see uh, if they uh, violate the fish and game laws. Well, can't they violate it if you, without you watching them? <laughs> what kind of laws do they vi violate? They uh, uh, catch and hunt uh, out of season, catch fish out of season, uh, sometimes shoot uh, females. Uh... <laughs> what kind of females? Huh? Such as does, uh, deer. Does females, you mean? <laughs> What do you mean by those females? Uh, and the deer, uh, those uh, females. Are called <laughs> what about them females? Huh? <laughs> or dumb females? That's even more accurate. Huh? Now, Warden, wh what gives you the most trouble on your job? Uh, as a rule, people uh, hunting and fishing out of season. Mm -hmm. Now, when is the deer season? In the southern part of the state. Here, it runs uh, from. About August 7th to October 15th. Well, how can the deer tell when it's open season? <laughs> well, uh, I suppose by uh, the bullets whizzing by. I guess that's true, huh? <laughs> and they know for sure when they see the hunters dropping like flies, too. <laughs> Now, mackerel bait, around here, <laughs> where is the best place to catch sardines? In the ocean. <laughs> no, I, I'm, what I meant was, in what part of the ocean do you catch sardines? Well, offshore of San Diego up to uh, Santa Barbara uh, City. What kind of fish do you catch? Uh, mostly sardines and tuna. Now, how much do you get for your tuna? Well, uh, yeah, the elephant tuna, you get $310 a ton. When we get a load of tuna, which is 90 ton, we uh, split uh, the money. The crew gets 65% of the share, and the boat gets 35%. The boat walks up and asks for it? <laughs> 
Anything unusual ever happen to you when you're off on one of these fishing trips? Well, yes. Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, <laughs> we were uh, pinched by the game warden in, uh, for... <laughs> Why did he pinch you? Well, we were supposed to be fishing in Santa Monica Bay, but... Uh... <laughs> what happened? Well, we paid a fine. Each crew, may have... Each crew member paid a $25 paid a fine. And... and the boat pays part of it, too? Yes. <laughs> the boat walks right down to the police station? <laughs> That's a very intelligent boat, you know. That. I don't know what you need a crew for at all. <laughs> I know all about fishing and hunting. Now, let's see how well you two make out in the battle for the $1,500 question. You beat the other two couples, and you win the chance at all that money. I can't tell you how much our first couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The tax assessor and the married man are ahead with $240. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected national parks as your category. Is that right? All right. Now, talk right up into the microphone. How much of the $20 you are going to try? Ten. Ten dollars. Ten $10. In what state is Hot Springs National Park? Arkansas. Arkansas is right. Well, All right, Roger, with $30. All right, Remy, going for $1,500 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? 25 25 In what state is the Everglades National Park? Florida. Florida is correct. <laughs> now they have $55. $55. Here's your third question. How much of the 55 50 50 In what state is Zion National Park? Utah. Utah is right. <laughs> Now they have one hundred and five dollars. Now you got a hundred and five dollars. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the hundred and five? Hundred. It's okay with me. Hundred. Okay. In what state is Mammoth Caves National Park? Kentucky. Kentucky is right. <laughs> and they wind up with a grand total of two hundred and five dollars. And that means the tax assessor and the married man with two hundred and forty dollars get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth fifteen hundred dollar question. <laughs> Is your car ready for the warmer weather? If not, why not stop in now at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's? To put your car in tip-top condition, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will give it an engine tune-up. This should be done to prepare your car for the warmer weather ahead. So be sure to stop in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer first chance you get. No matter which of the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers you visit for that check tune-up, you can be sure of getting efficient, courteous service at a fair price wherever you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here is the tax assessor and the married man, a winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. Here we go for $1,500. You ready? Yes, sir. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. The Pony Express took nine days to travel from St. Joseph, Missouri, to the Western Terminal. For $1,500, what was the western end of the Pony Express run? What is the answer you two have decided upon? Salt Lake. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's uh, Sacramento, California. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $240 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth... $2,000. Well, Bing Crosby's champing at the bit, so good night, folks, and remember...
Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Two of the most important rules of the road are courtesy and common sense. This is George Fenneman, signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is door. D-O-O-R. I didn't know you could spell it, George. (laughs) You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! What a ham. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples, George Fenneman, who's face to try for it. Just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any young people present who'd like to get married if they found the right person. And here come the two who were chosen. Miss Bergetta Lindholm, Mr. Bill Wendland, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, you handsome couple, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll split $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Bergetta Lindholm, is that That's right? That's right. That's a charming name. What kind of a name is that? Oh, that's a Swedish name. I came from Stockholm, Sweden. From Stockholm, huh? Well, in Sweden, uh, what do you pay for a room in Smorgasbord? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you don't live in Smorgasbord. Oh, you don't live in a Smorgasbord? Well, could you say something in Swedish? How, how does it sound? Tell me what you think of me in Swedish. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Jag tycker ni är väldigt trevliga, men en ganska lustig typ. Now, I dare you to say that in English. I said I thought you were a very nice man, but a funny character. <laughs> Would you mind qualifying that a little more? <laughs> How long since you were in Sweden, uh, Bergetta? Oh, I came uh, over here last year in January. And uh, what kind of work are you, are you doing here in America? I have a job with, with a Swedish consulate. You have a job with a Swedish consulate? <laughs> you know, job is boy spelled backwards. <laughs> In other words, you have a, a backwards boy at the Swedish consulate. <laughs> Bill uh, Wendland, is that right? That's right, sir. What kind of a name is that? Is that... That's a German name, sir. German. German. You, were you born in Germany? No, sir. In Minnesota, in Duluth, Minnesota. Oh. Didn't you like Minnesota? Were the winters too, uh, too rigorous? They were too rigorous, yes. <laughs> I took the words right out of his mouth, didn't I? <laughs> how, how, old, how old are you, Bill? I'm 30. What is your age, Begetta? I'm 25. You're 25? No, you don't look at it. thought you were uh, 24 and a half. Huh? <laughs> would, you, would you like to get married one of these days? I wouldn't mind if, uh, if I find the right one. Uh-huh. Well, why do you want to get married? Well, I'd like to have a home and a family. <laughs> That's a good preliminary step, isn't that case? <laughs> How about you, uh, Bill? Would you, uh, would you like to get married? Yes, I would. Why, do, why don't you marry uh, Miss Lindholm? Well, that'll be rushing things. Well, she isn't rushing. She's Swedish. <laughs> what's, what, what sort of work do you do, uh, Bill? I work for the Associated Telephone Company. In what capacity? Uh, I'm a repairman. Well, in that case, you, you could associate with uh, Miss Lindholm if you were with the Associated Phone Company, couldn't you? Yes. Yeah. She's looking for the right connection. And, uh... <laughs> Suppose my phone isn't working. Uh, how, how do I get you to fix it? Well, you call a repair clerk at the Associated Phone Company. Well, how do I do that? Do I just dial your phone company and tell the girl my phone is out of order? Oh, you go to a neighbor's phone and call. (laughs) 
It happens that that's the one I'm already using. <laughs> How do you think I got in this trouble? Huh? Now, uh, uh, Brigetta, is that right, Brigetta? Mm-hmm, that's right. Sounds like an Irish name. Brigetta, let's be getting out of here. <laughs> now, tell me something about Sweden. Is, is it true that uh, all Swedes are blondes? Uh, well, I would say about 30% of them are light. 30% of them are light, huh? How light? They weigh about 15 pounds? <laughs> I mean, they are light-headed. <laughs> Miss Lindholm, you just lost your job. Uh, <laughs> well, we practically exhausted the subject of telephones in Sweden. Well, let's see how, two you, how you two will make out in the battle for the big question. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life. Have you ever had your car serviced by a DeSoto Plymouth dealer? No matter what make of car you own, you'll find a DeSoto Plymouth dealer offers you the best service you can get anywhere. The folks at a DeSoto Plymouth dealers are certain that once they have a chance to serve you, you'll come back whenever your car needs attention. What's more, they'll do their utmost to treat you fairly and squarely at all times. That's their creed. So won't you give them a chance to show you what service really means? Drive in wherever you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. So you think I'm a funny character, huh? (laughs) All right, let's see if you two will be high for the night and get the chance at the $2,000. Phantom and tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that $20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Okay, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs with numbers in the title as your category. Is that right? That's right. Now, how much of the 20 will you risk? Uh, I think about $8. $8, huh? Is that all right with you, uh, Baguetta? Okay. Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. Three Little Words. Three Little Words is right by Harry Ruby. They're on their way. They have $28, Groucho. Now you've got $28. Now remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now how much of the 28 will you try? Yeah, 15 Okay, $15. What is the title of this song? It has a number in the title. Stab at it. Don't know? Don't know. Well, you've just lost fifteen dollars. I'm very sorry. They now have thirteen dollars. Well, wait a minute. Don't you want to know what it is? It's just one of those things. All right, here's your third question. How much of the thirteen will you risk? We'll risk five. Five dollars. Let's see if you can identify this one. Okay, Jerry. What is it? What's the answer you've decided on? A uh, bugle call rag? No, no I, I, I'm sorry. You're close, but it, it's, it's the 12th Street rag. They now have $8, <laughs> Rocco. How much of the eight will you risk? Three. Or three dollars. Make it five. Make it five. Okay, play, Jerry. Sleepy people. Two sleepy people is right. That was $13. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away. You may get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still door. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a house painter, Mr. Milton Karg, and his partner is a housewife, Mrs. Grace Walker. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life, and if you say the secret word, you divide $100 in cash between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. A house painter and a housewife, eh? Uh, Mr. Uh, Cog, eh? Milt Cog. 
Where are you from, uh, Melt? Coney Island. Coney Island, huh? Were you born on a Ferris wheel? Or... <laughs> on a... Uh... No, one of the flats. You were one, born on a flat? In a flat. Oh, in a flat, huh? They call them apartments out here. I know. They're just as bad, but they're much more expensive. <laughs> Mrs., uh, what is your name? Walker. Grace Walker? That's right. Uh-huh. Where are you from, uh, Grace? Well, I was born in New Jersey. And uh, what sort of work do you, does your husband do? He's a miner, or he would be a miner. Right now he's pruning trees in Texas. <laughs> you say he's in Texas? and He's in why Texas. Why aren't you with him, Mrs. Walker? Well, I'm a miner, too. <laughs> You're a miner? That's right. What kind of a miner are you? I'm a copper miner. I worked a mine for 16 years, mister. Oh, I see. Well, is there any copper in your mine, or you just go down there to escape? Well, I... No. <laughs> There's copper in it. I wish I could get all that's in it out. Why don't you get some strong, brawny men to help you get this copper out? I can get it out if the Navy would let me. Oh, now you're in I'm the Navy, in, huh? Yes, I'm, a, I'm in Gunnery B. You're in Gunnery B? That's right. Oh, Mrs. Walker, am I confused. Eh? <laughs> Your husband is pruning trees in Texas. You work in a copper mine and you're in the Navy now, would you? I'm in the Navy. The Navy just took 1,600 square miles for a gunnery, and I was in the middle of things, and they asked me to get out. <laughs> Did they reimburse you for this? Uh... They will, but I hate to hold my breath until they do. <laughs> Would you like me to hold it for you? <laughs> How did you get to be a miner, Mrs. Walker? Well, I went prospecting. You know, once you get bit by that bug, it's terrible. <laughs> well, that's the only kind of bug that hasn't bitten me so far. <laughs> now, Painter, tell me, how is business with you, Milt? Huh? Picking up right now. What kind of painting do you do? House painting, interior, exterior. Which homes. would you rather paint, the inside or the outside of a house? Well, it don't make much difference. Well, it'd make quite a difference to the house, I think. <laughs> you mean if I hired you to paint the inside of my house, you'd go ahead and paint the outside? No. Why not? Have you got something against the outside of the house? <laughs> Nothing against the outside well, of the house. Well, you better have a ladder against it if you're going to paint it. <laughs> have you ever painted yourself into a corner, Rembrandt? Honest now. Tell the truth. I didn't exactly paint myself in a corner. I painted myself up to a door and thought the door... <laughs> Milk, you just said door, and that's the secret word tonight, so you and your partner spent $100 in cash. Compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Thank you. <laughs> Where were we while you were knocking the door down, huh? <laughs> you were painted yourself? I was painting a floor, and I was painting up to a, to a door, and the door was supposed to, I thought, door open out. Instead, the door opened in. <laughs> and I walked back on the floor and opened the door and then go and paint it over again. <laughs> sounds funny. I don't understand it, but it sounds funny. <laughs> well, now I know all about painting, thanks to you, Milk. Now, let's see how much you two know. You're going to play, you bet your life, for a chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The girl from Sweden and the telephone man won $13. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected nicknames of states as your category. How much of the $20 will you bet? Bet $10. $10? What state is called the Hoosier State? Indiana. Indiana. Back home in Indiana. $30. All right, you got $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 a night. How much of the 30 will you bet? 20 $20. What state is called the Sunflower State? Kansas. Kansas, Kansas. is right. <laughs> now they have $50. Mrs. Walker, you haven't been in that copper mine all the time. Now you got... <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to go for? Oh, 30 All right, you're betting $30. Here's your third question. What uh, state is called the Empire State? New York State. New York is right. Coney Island. <laughs> They're really climbing now. They have $80. All right, you got $80. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 80? Got the 80. What state is called the Bluegrass State? Kentucky. Kentucky, Kentucky is right. And they wind up the grand total of $160.
Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, we'll soon know who gets the chance at the $2,000 question. Friends, no matter what make of car you own, I hope you'll look for the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. What's wrong, Fenneman? Is it lost? <laughs> oh, no, Groucho. But you can lose your driving worries at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's because their mechanics are factory trained in the latest methods. Do they play canasta? <laughs> I can't say, Groucho. Can't say Groucho? <laughs> <laughs> this will make it very embarrassing for you on this program, Fenneman. <laughs> Fenneman, who's ahead in the battle for the $2,000 question? Well, the house painter and the housewife are leading with their $160. And the secret word is still door. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a junk dealer, Mr. Howard Martin, and his partner is Dr. Harry Husky who is a designer and a builder of an electronic brain. And here they are. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, gentlemen, to You Bet Your Life. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. Junkman, uh, Howard Martin, you're the junk man. Huh? Yes, I am. Pretty flashy dresser for a junk man. <laughs> well, stick around tonight. Before the night's over, I may junk the whole program. Huh? <laughs> Where are you from, junkie? Burbank, California. Burbank, huh? Have you ever crossed a vegetable with a, a boulevard or something? Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> Dr. Harry Husky, huh? Eh? You have an electronic brain? That's right. What should um, I call you, Dr. Harry or Husky? Uh, anything that you like. Uh, I'm well, from... now, don't, don't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Doctor? Uh, I come from the Smoky Mountains in North Carolina. Smoky Mountains. Welcome to the smoggy plains of L.A. Huh? <laughs> now, uh, uh, Dr. Husky, you straighten me out about your electronic brain. Uh, precisely, uh, what is it? Um, I, uh, precisely? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a large-scale electronic computing machine. Well, what does it compute? Well, it's, uh, it's just being put together. We still have some parts to put into it. Uh, it doesn't compute anything yet. Can't even add two and two? Uh, <laughs> what a schlemiel that is, eh? <laughs> just a moron, huh? <laughs> now, Doctor, uh, what, what is this, uh, this machine for, this robot? Uh, well, it's to carry out uh, sequences of computations from... To compare figures? If you're going to compare figures, I don't need an electric brain for that. <laughs> it's, it's called an automatic reflex in my case. <laughs> now, as, as a brain surgeon, are you, are you engaged in private practice, Doctor? Uh, no, uh, I'm not an MD. I'm just a mathematician. Uh, I work for the National Bureau of Standards, and the computing machine we're building is being financed by the Air Material Command of the uh, United States Air Force. What does your giant mix master look like? <laughs> well, it uh, uh, covers about 50 square foot of floor space, about uh, 4 foot wide, 12 foot long, about 8 foot high. Look at the junk man drooling over all this. <laughs> What a haul, eh, Howard? <laughs> Doctor, uh, wh what's inside this idiot? <laughs> well, there's a, um, about 2,000 radio tubes, about uh, 40 television tubes, and miles of wire. 2,000 radio tubes? No wonder it's feeble-minded, huh? <laughs> it's got a screw loose, too, I suppose. <laughs> now, junk man, let, let's talk to you for a moment, huh? How do you get your junk? Do you park your horse and wagon outside radio studios and wait for the winning contestants to come out? <laughs> well, people bring it into our shop, and then we have our own pickup trucks to go out to the plumbing shops and electrical places and... Industries and so forth, and bring it into us. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of paper at home, all my old jokes I've saved through the years. <laughs> How much do you pay for paper? Well, at the present time, we're paying about $4 a ton. Mm -hmm. How much are the jokes worth? 
<laughs> well, I'd say nothing. <laughs> that isn't fair. You must have heard the jokes. <laughs> Now, Doctor, when you push a button, what goes on inside this chowder head? Uh, providing, of course, he's got all his buttons by that time. Well, it carries out these uh, operations of addition, and multiplication, division, and so on. It does these at extremely high rate of speed, and you must make sure that the correct uh, instructions are there. Hmm. Say I want to add two and two. Now, how do you go about commanding it? Uh, well, that ought must... to be pretty easy for that Jake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate that machine. <laughs> I didn't like him from the minute I saw him. <laughs> uh, to carry out the addition of two and two, you must tell the machine where the twos are in its memory, and that it uh, that you want the uh, numbers added and where the result is to be placed in the machine's memory. Wouldn't it be just simpler to take off your shoes and count on your toes? <laughs> now, uh, let's, let's say it's been fully instructed. Now, what happens? The, the control part of the machine, or brains of the machine, if yeah. you like, looks at the uh, instructions. What? By How do the... you know it's looking at it? Maybe it's looking at something else. <laughs> They're pretty tricky, those machines. I wouldn't trust them if I did. They'll turn on you like a mad dog, Doctor. <laughs> you be careful when you're alone with that machine, Doctor. I like you. You're a nice fellow, and I don't want anything to happen to you. Okay. Suppose it comes up with five for an answer. What do you do then? Uh, well, it uh, shouldn't do that. You can't... Uh... That's right, but I warned you about the machine. I told you to watch yourself. You just won't listen, that's all. Well, you can't uh, confuse the machine. Probably you gave it a wrong instruction if this happens. You see. Oh, now you're going to blame it on me. <laughs> I haven't even seen the confounded thing. <laughs> Who gets to use that brain, uh, Doctor? As I said, the uh, Air Material Command has financed the construction of it, so uh, Air Force contractors will get to use it. Uh, also, as scientists with uh, worthwhile problems will have access to the machine. Well, you've convinced me. That's some baby you've got there. Now, junk man, wake up. Uh, tell me, uh, how much would you say Dr. Husky's machine is worth? <laughs> How much does it weigh? Now, there's a practical man. All right, doctor, tell him, huh? Uh, it probably weighs two or three tons. Well, I'd say with all the steel and copper and so forth, why, it'd be worth about $100. <laughs> How close is he, doc? Well, it's costing us about 200000 to build it. Junk man, your estimate was very fair. <laughs> After all, we realize you have to make a small profit, too. <laughs> well, Doctor, I'm convinced you're doing a worthwhile work that will make life easier and better for all of us. And I congratulate you and the National Bureau of Standards. All right, now let's play your bet your life. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. I can't tell you how much the other couples won, but Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. The house painter and the housewife are ahead with $160. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected adjacent states as your category. Is that right? Here's your first question. What state is directly north of Oregon? Uh, Washington. Washington. Washington is right. <laughs> Remember oh, you... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> All right. We'll let, leave it up to their honesty. How much would you have bet? We were going to bet 10 That's a fair thing. I trust him. A man who's got a $200,000 machine isn't going to... <laughs> At any rate, it was my responsibility. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now you've got $30. How much of the $30 are you going to bet? <laughs> I'm taking no more chances, huh? We'll bet uh, $25. You're going to bet $25. What state is directly south of Oklahoma? Texas. Texas, Texas is right. 
They're climbing. They have $55. How much of the $55 will you bet? Bet $40. $40. What state is directly north of Alabama? Tennessee. Tennessee is right. Now they have $95. This doctor doesn't need any mechanical help, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> How much of the 95 90 90 dollars. What state is directly north of Missouri? Kansas. Is that the answer you two have decided on? Uh, I, I'm sorry, it's Iowa. That's a shame, that's a shame. Well, you're practically cleaned out, and we want you to go away from here a little better off than when you came in. So if you get this question right, you'll be $10 richer. The University of Ohio is in what state? <laughs> Ohio is right. They wound up with a grand total of $5, and that means the house painter and the housewife with $160 get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. <laughs> You can't be particular about your car without being particular about where you take it for service. That's why more and more motorists every day take their cars to DeSoto Plymouth dealers. For these dealers, more than 3,000 of them from one end of this country to the other offer you the very best service you can get for your car and at a price that's fair. They have factory-trained mechanics working with factory-designed and approved tools and equipment, efficient mechanics who do the job right, who do it fast, and who do it with a smile. Keep this in mind next time your car needs expert attention. And drive in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the housewife and the house painter, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question, Groucho. This is the gal with the copper mine and the, uh, the painter, eh? Well, let's see if you can paint yourself $2,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you for $2,000, so think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. The colony of Rhode Island was founded in 1636 as a haven of religious tolerance. Who was the founder of Rhode Island? you two decided on? The Pilgrims. No, no, I, I'm sorry. It's Roger Williams, pioneer of religious liberty and freedom. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $160 in the quiz, plus $100 for saying the secret word. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week the big question will be worth... $2,500. By the way, folks, if you notice a prehistoric monster glaring at you from the newsstands, don't be alarmed. It's only me on the cover of Newsweek. They have a comprehensive story about us in Newsweek, which appears on the stands tomorrow. Of course, I deny everything. So good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Good brakes stop many accidents before they get started. This is George Fenneman, signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Secret word tonight is foot. F-O-O-T. Really? 
You'll bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You'll Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Brother, what I know about him. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! Thank you, thank you. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who's first to try for it? We invited some locksmiths and some dynamite experts to the program, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected locksmith Robert Eads and dynamiter Robert Crabtree. And here they are. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, boys, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you always have with you. A locksmith and a dynamiter, eh? Mr. Dynamite, uh, Bob uh, Crabtree, is that right? Yes, sir, that's right. What kind of a name is that? Uh, English? That's right. It's not an uncommon name, is it? Well, not as uncommon as Marx. So. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this what I can expect for the next few minutes? You're the dynamite man, huh? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, have you got any with you? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't generally carry it with us. No. That's good. At least we can count on you to stay with us for the whole show, huh? <laughs> where, where, where are you from, Mr. Crabtree? Oh, I was born in Rito, Nevada. Well, uh, how did you... Did you come by train, or were you blown out of town? Huh? <laughs> where, where, do you, where do you work, Mr. Crabtree? Oh, I work for the Hercules Potter Company here in Los Angeles, and uh, Mr. Locksmith, what is your name? Eads? It, uh, where'd you go to school? Did you go to Yale? <laughs> I went to Fairfax. You went to Fairfax? Yeah. Oh. Beatrice? Or, uh... <laughs> and, uh, where do you work, Mr. Downtown. Eads? I own my own business, Speedo Key Service. The Speedo Key Service? Mm. What does that mean? That means speed and oh. service. <laughs> Have you ever been locked out at home? Yes, I have. <laughs> He's got a nice business, this fellow. Huh? <laughs> he ain't getting his own house. Why? What happened? I just lost the keys. <laughs> now, what, what kind of jobs are most common in, in your business? Oh, Mr. opening Eads? cars, opening homes, what? opening automobiles, homes, oh. offices, changing combinations, mm -hmm. general repairs, installations. I change my combinations about three times a week. Huh? <laughs> I change them more often, but I have to wash them myself. Huh? <laughs> If you think my combinations are washed out, you should see me around 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> How do you change the combination of a lot? By the rearrangement of the tumblers or the replacement. What do you mean, tumblers? You mean they have midget acrobats inside? <laughs> what, are, what are tumblers? Tumblers are the uh, pins, that uh, the different length pins that oh. uh, go to make up the combination of the lot. Oh, TNT, that's you, Dynamite. Uh... <laughs> By the way, what does TNT stand for? <coughs> no, it stands for Try Night to Oh. I thought it stood for uh, tamales, knockwash, and tortillas. Huh? <laughs> that's a pretty explosive combination, too. <laughs> Do you have many accidents in your profession? Well, the average powder man only has one accident. <laughs> That's the most conclusive statement I ever heard. <laughs> what would happen if you accidentally dropped a stick of dynamite? Well, probably nothing. However, we don't recommend dropping any dynamite. Why not? Well, in the first place, it's made to explode, and we treat it as such. Mm -hmm. What happens if somebody drops a stick of dynamite? Would he, would he be fired? He probably wouldn't be fired. Well, you mean if you could find him? If we could find him. <laughs> well, I've learned a lot about locks and dynamite. Now, let's see if you two are going to be the ones who get the chance at the $2,500 question. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play You Bet Your Life. And now, an important bulletin from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Quote, Here's good news for the many thousands who are waiting for a new DeSoto or a new Plymouth. 
The production lines at the factory are really humming, and beautiful new cars are rolling off the line. We suggest that you contact your DeSoto Plymouth dealer at your earliest convenience. End of quote. Yes, folks, that's good news to all of us. More and more people will now experience the thrill of driving a DeSoto, the car that lets you drive without shifting. So be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Now let's see if you two will get a chance at the $2,500. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that $20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,500 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected American expressions for English words as your category, right? Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you bet? $10. $10. They call it a lift. What do we call it? Elevator. The elevator is right. And they're on their way up with $30. Well, you just raised yourself to $30 here with that elevator. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? Let's make it 25, Red. 25. All right, that's dynamite. Yeah, and the English expression is accumulator. Accumulator. What, what do we call it? Additive. Adding machine? No, no. I'm, I'm sorry. It's a tough one. It's a storage battery. Hmm. They now have $5. Here's your third question. How much of the $5 will you bet? $4.95. $4.95. <laughs> the English expression is tram. What is our expression? Elevated Streetcar Street Street is right. Well, on the way again, Groucho, they have nine ninety five. Uh, what? <laughs> How much of the nine ninety five are you going to bet? Nine ninety five. All right. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. In England, they call it a pub. What do we call it? A bar. A bar we is knew right. That one. <laughs> and they wind up with nineteen dollars and ninety cents. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away. You may get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still foot. Foot, huh? Which one, George? It doesn't matter. It does to me, huh? Perhaps our next couple will say it, too. We asked for volunteers from the audience who had interesting stories. Just before we went on the air, Mr. Harold Price and Mrs. Florence Schwartz were chosen. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to, welcome to your bet your life, youngsters. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Harold Price, eh? That's right. Well, I'm happy to see that you came down to the program tonight. I'm always glad to see a price come down. <laughs> Harold, what sort of work do you do? I'm a fry cook. Fry cooks. I always thought cooks were hard-boiled, didn't they? <laughs> Where do you work right now? At the greasy skillet? No, well, I, I came out here from Buffalo, New York, and I'm going to get something pretty quick now. <laughs> I'm going to get work right away. In other words, you're unemployed, is it? Well, I'm unemployed. Did you quit or did you get fired? Well, got fired, I guess. When will you know? <laughs> well, I hope you land something real soon, Harold. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Schwartz? Yes, hi. Uh, where are you from? Are you from Florence? Um, n- I'm from New York City, the Lower East Side. The Lower East Side. Uh, mm-hmm. Fenneman says you uh, you two have had some uh, interesting experiences. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Schwartz, uh, what's happened to you? Well, uh, ye- uh, years ago when I went to work, I met my husband. He, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, w- he was a, a bloomer cutter. He was a... <laughs> he was a bloomer cutter, did you say? <laughs> Were you a bloomer girl at the time? No, I was. I was much thinner, and these were. Uh, I had. A, you had to make work for stylish stouts, and I only weighed 105 at the time. <laughs> Mrs. Schwartz, I'm an expert on double talk, but uh, uh, triple talk throws me. So, you, uh, Mrs. Schwartz, huh? So he would. We'd have layers of cloth, and he'd have to cut them. I'd be slicing them. I'd have to slip them. He was a bloomer cutter, and you were a bloomer slicer. Right? That's right. And that's 
That's how you met? And Slicing and I cutting was, your way through the east side. I was working on this table, and, and every time we'd look at each other, they'd be getting cut wrong, so we'd have to cut them a little smaller. <laughs> so anyway, what happened? Well, anyway, the boss says, the boss says that I was distracting uh, this cutter from his work. I can understand I, that, huh? And that I'd better look for another job. So it was during the Depression at the time, and I couldn't find a job. So he says, I think I'd better marry you. <laughs> so you won't start haunting me about a job. Uh-huh. Well, that certainly was a note of despair on his part. Right? Mm-hmm. That's what he says. Tell me, Mr. Schwartz, were you modeling these things at the time? Well, I, uh, well sometimes I did when they were cut short. <laughs> Well, maybe we better cut this short, huh? <laughs> uh, Harold, wh- what's your story, huh? Well, one day I was uh, broke. Next day I had $27,000, and a few days later I was broke again. Well, that's the income taxes for you, huh? <laughs> what happened to the $27,000? Gave it to a lawyer. That sounds logical. <laughs> maybe you better go way back to the beginning and, and uh, tell me everything, Harold. Well, I was walking down... Uh, Main Street here in Los Angeles. I was broke, and didn't have a room, didn't have any money, and uh, I kicked a package, a newspaper package. When I kicked it, all these bonds, securities, were spread out all over the ground. You found stocks and bonds on the sidewalk? That's right. It must have been curb stocks, huh? <laughs> well, what'd you do next? Huh? Well, I looked at them, and I realized that they were pretty valuable, and I turned them over, and I saw that they'd been signed, and that they were negotiable and... You mean you could uh, actually have, have turned these into cash? That's right. That's what you, they told me. Who told you that? Oh, everybody told me. Even a boot black, even a shoeshine boy. Do you usually take financial advice from a boot black? <laughs> you should have come to me immediately, huh? <laughs> now, after you talked it over with the boot black, uh, did he take a shine to you when he found out you had... <laughs> After you realized the socks were so valuable, what did you what did you do with them, Harold? Well, I I borrowed a dime from a fellow I knew, and I headed for the bus station. Now you're talking, huh? <laughs> How far did you expect to get on a dime? Well, not very far. I I took the dime and I put them, checked them in a, one of these check locker boxes for it. It's a good thing that key man wasn't around, huh? <laughs> well, that was an ingenious hideout. Then what did you do, huh? Well, I uh, tried to locate the people that had them. There was a name on him. Yeah, so? Didn't have any money, so I went to a blood bank, got a sold a pint of blood, got $4 for it, and I started phoning everybody in the phone book by the name of the owners of the stocks and bonds. And? Well, I couldn't locate them, so I took them uh, to the Los Angeles Times in the hope that the newspaper would find the owners for them. Well, you're a very honest man, huh? Harold, if everybody in the world was as honest as you, there probably wouldn't be very many people with $27,000. When the owner of the stocks was identified, uh, did you get a big reward, Harold? Well, I got this suit here, $50 suit and $25 in cash. What else did you get? Well, I had a lot of other interesting things happen to me. I had quite a few offers for jobs. One woman called up and said she was 28 years old and considered quite pretty and that I looked a lot like her ex-husband. She thought I was cute and that he was a rat. (laughs) She said she'd like to have an honest husband. Well, you'd have been provided with cheese anyhow. (laughs) Well, what are your plans for the future? Which of the jobs are you going to take, Harold? Well, I'm going to take whichever one has the most security and the most promising future, whatever it is. Well, you better marry the girl whose husband was a rat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's been refreshing talking to you, uh, talking to an honest man. I rarely encounter one. Now, let's see how well you two can make out in the battle for the $2,500. You're going to play your bet your life. You run your $20 and the more than the other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The locksmith and the dynamiter won $19.90. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected stars of, of current movies as your category. Is that correct? That's right. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you risk? $10. $10. Who's the male lead in Chain Lightning? 
Uh, Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. Well, we'll just start with $30, Groucho. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now you have $30. How much are you going to try? Fifteen. Fifteen. Who is the leading man in Francis? Um, what's his name? There? Donald O'Connor. Donald O'Connor. Donald O'Connor is right. <laughs> We're climbing. We have $45. Fooled me. I just said the jackass. Huh? <laughs> You got $45. Now, here's your third question. How much of the 45? Bet 30. Who plays the lead and Willie comes marching home? Uh, tap dancer. Dan Daly. Dan, Dan Daly, Daly is right. <laughs> now they have $75. Okay, now you got $75. Now, how much are you going to bet? Now, talk it over, kids. Bet 50, I'd say. Bet it all. <laughs> <laughs> Who plays the young man with a horn? Um... Kirk Douglas. $150. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And I will soon know who gets the chance at the $2,500 question. What would you do, friends, if you were to get up some morning and find your car won't start? I'd get back in bed, Fenneman. <laughs> well, smart folks would call out their DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Because he'd send the man over to fix up your car and get you back on the road. In my pajamas, huh? I'll thank him to let me alone. Well, Groucho, most folks will thank their DeSoto Plymouth dealer for the kind of fast, courteous treatment he's willing and ready to give. All right, Fenneman, I'll thank you to tell us who's leading in the battle for the $2,500 question. Well, the honest man and the housewife are ahead with $150, and the secret word is still foot. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a perfume sales girl and a county fair official. And here they are, Miss Libby Kohler and Mr. Tex Condon meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, folks. And if you say the secret word, you'll spread $100 between you. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss uh, uh, Libby uh, Kohler? Kohler. 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 You're the perfume sales girl, eh? That's right. Where are you from, Cologne? No, <laughs> Reading, Pennsylvania. Where? Reading, Pennsylvania. Oh, a pretzel bender, eh? <laughs> How long have you been selling perfume? Oh, about ten years. Well, you had a very fragrant note to our program. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Condon? Yes, sir. And wh where are you from? All of you, I mean. Huh? <laughs> Originally from Texas. I'm now living... <laughs> This lady in the front row knew her because she used to be a panhandler. <laughs> we insult anybody around here. We don't. <laughs> Unfortunately, we mean it. Now, where are you? Uh... <laughs> You're from Texas, huh? And, uh, Originally, uh, but I live in California now. Well, that's quite an admission for a Texan to make. <laughs> I'm a displaced Texan. <laughs> Are you, are you married, uh, Tex? Yes, sir. How many children do you have? Uh? I have three. Three, huh? Yes, sir. Are they all uh, as big as you? No, two of them. They're all girls. Two of them are five feet eight and five feet nine. One of them's only five feet seven and a half. <laughs> She's probably from Oklahoma, huh? <laughs> Miss, Miss Kohler, are, are you married? No, sir. You sell perfume? You haven't trapped anybody yet, huh? No, sir. What kind of perfume do you sell? Repulsive number five? Huh? <laughs> I always get a kick out of the names you people choose for your products. So what are some of the scents you sell? Oh, voodoo, taboo, shocking, white shoulders. <laughs> what does what does white shoulders do for a woman? Well, uh, not so much what it does for the woman as what it does to the man. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do uh, at county fairs, uh, Mr. Condon? I judge livestock. Judge, I'll be big about this thing. The air is all yours, huh? <laughs> well, let's see how good you are. Let, uh, let me hear you judge me. Go ahead and be sure to notice all my fine points. Well, uh, what are you? I mean... <laughs> If I have to answer that, the whole thing is off. Huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm a Brahma, Judge. 
Any fool can see I'm not a Holstein. <laughs> do, you, do you judge Brahmas? Oh, yes. I just... Uh... Well, you, you're a Brahma critic, in other uh, yes, words. Yes, uh... indeed. We handle a lot of them, and... Uh, I judge... say, you're a Brahma critic? Uh... Yes, sir, Brahma critic. Who do you work for, the Daily Moose? <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, go ahead and judge me, huh? Generally speaking, you, all, you have all the fine points of a, an outstanding animal. <laughs> you have a uh, very well-shaped head. You have... Uh, for good... what? Uh... <laughs> well, for a good Brahma... You have fair shoulders, but I, I'd say they could be a little thicker, a little fuller, your shoulders. Well, my head makes up for that. <laughs> well, uh, how, how do you judge cattle? What do you look for in a cow? General confirmation, quality, and showmanship. I never heard of a cow with showmanship, huh? Is that when a cow is a good hoofer? <laughs> no, not exactly. How much does a prize cow bring? These top cows, good cows, bring anywhere from, oh, 12000 to $20,000. A cow is worth $20,000? Oh, yes. Gee, you wouldn't think a cow would be smart enough to save all that money. <laughs> she probably made it in a bull market. Huh? <laughs> How much is a bull worth? Huh? Not a wool worth, but a bull worth. Huh? <laughs> Oh, good. Uh, real top, outstanding bull sold for six to five thousand dollars this year. A bull is worth forty five thousand dollars more than a cow. Oh yes. I hope you girls all listen to that out. <laughs> well, I've always said it was a man's world. <laughs> How much does a prize bull weigh, Judge? Good bull weigh from sixteen hundred to eighteen hundred pounds. How much does that come to a pound for a sixty five thousand dollar job? Well, uh, don't figure them, but pie, you don't eat those bulls. <laughs> what do you do with a bull? Put it in a jewelry store window? Oh, Suppose this... I did eat it. Well, if you did eat it, did it, uh, well, let's see, it'd figure around $150 a pound. Well, that's just what the Beverly Hills Butcher charges. <laughs> well, you've both been very interesting and very nice people. Now, let's see if you'll beat the other two couples and get the chance at the $2,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. I can't tell you how much the other two couples won, but Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. The honest man and the housewife are ahead with $150. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You select the cities of the world as your category. Is that right? All of these cities are over 300,000 in population. Now, you have $20. How much do you want to try? $10. Are you an auctioneer at times, too, Judge? <laughs> yes, sir, I am. In what country is the city of Genoa? Italy. Italy is right, huh? Well, off to a good start with $30, Groucho. All right, now you got $30. How much of the 30 will you try? 25. In what country is the city of Baku, or Baku, B-A-K-U? India. Do you agree with that? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the Hemingway is told back here. Huh? <laughs> it, it's Russia. They now have $5, Groucho. All right, here's your third question. You're down to five dollars. Now, how much will you bet? Three dollars. Three dollars, huh? <laughs> In what country is the city of Helsinki? Norway. No, you're close, Judge, but not close enough. It's Finland. They don't have two dollars. Well, now you're down to two dollars, huh? Now you can put it on the third race, or you can bet it here, whatever you want. <laughs> well, we bet one dollar. You're going to bet a dollar. <laughs> In what country is the city of Valencia? Spain. Spain is right, huh? <laughs> All right, you're practically cleaned out. We want you to go away from here a little better off than when you came in. Now, if you get this one right, you'll be $10 richer. After what state is the Mississippi River named? <laughs> Mississippi. Mississippi is right. <laughs> this couple winds up with a grand total of $3. And that means the honest man and the housewife with $150 get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. <laughs> to 
To get the most mileage from your car, you'll find it will pay you to take it for service to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's. For that's where you get the benefit of factory-designed and approved tools and equipment and skilled factory-trained mechanics who know how to use this equipment to do an expert job on your car in shorter time. To you, this means a saving of money and a car that will give you faithful, economical service mile after mile. So next time your car needs service, no matter what make of car it is, take it to an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the honest man and the housewife, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question, Groucho. Right. Here we go for $2,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Here it is. The Comstock Lode is one of the richest deposits of gold and silver in history. Many present-day fortunes were started in the mines of the Comstock Lode. For $2,500, tell me, in what state is it located? Nevada. Decided upon. Nevada is right. <laughs> well, you had the right answer, so you win two thousand five hundred dollars. What are you going to do with all that money? Well, I think open up a little hot dog stand or something, a little small. Good, good. <laughs> Mrs. Schwartz. Gee, I don't know. I only know I thank you very much. Well, let's see. You won $2,500 plus $150 in the quiz. You really cleaned up tonight. Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Thank you. Thank you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth... $1,000. By the way, folks, I want to warn you that I'll be on the cover of Quick Magazine that's out tomorrow. I suggest all dogs be kept on leash and small children be locked indoors. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. When driving, showing off doesn't pay. This is George Fenneman signing off with the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is tree. T R double E. Really? You bet your life. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, a comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only. That's logical. This is National Pickle Week. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who's first to try for it? Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected the mother of a large family and an expectant father. And here they are, 
Mrs. Lois Mayer and Mr. Charles Weiss meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Ma, Lois Ma, you're the mother of a large family? Yes, I am. Pretty young-looking gal, aren't you? <laughs> how, how large is your family? I have eight children. You have eight, eight children? Eight children. Well, you certainly don't look at it. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Weiss, you're the Please. expectant father? Yes, sir. You don't look at either. Huh? <laughs> do, you, do you have any other children, Mr. Weiss? Uh, no, sir, this is my first. Oh, your first, eh? <laughs> well, you better rest a while. The first one is the hardest. <laughs> where, where are you from, Mr. Weiss? Uh, I was born in New Haven, Connecticut, raised in Newport, Rhode Island, moved to New York, and then came out here about a year and a half ago. Who was after you? <laughs> And uh, Mrs. Ma, what does your husband do for a living, uh, Mrs. Ma? Well, we just started catering not so long ago. To each other? <laughs> well, where are you from, little mother? I'm from Leona Mines, Virginia, and huh? I lived in Cincinnati, Ohio, after I was married, and then we came to California. Is that the customary route? Uh... <laughs> now, tell us something about this catering you mentioned. Uh, what sort of a business is it, specifically? Uh... Well... Uh, we put on dinners for parties. Any particular kind of food or just... Uh... Whatever you choose. I see. Well, I choose the food after I eat it, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you charge for a dinner like that? It's according to what you're going to eat. You're pretty cagey, aren't you, huh? <laughs> well, uh, approximately, uh, Lois... Oh, anywhere from a dollar and a half to two and a half a plate. And, uh, suppose you put something on the plate. How much extra? I'll just call you Charlie, huh? Not you, Mrs. Moore. I mean you, uh... What sort of work do you do, Charlie? I'm a sales representative for Admiral... for America's number one television set, Admiral. <laughs> Did you just make that up? <laughs> Did you get me one wholesale? <laughs> Come around. <laughs> Does anybody ever buy anything retail anymore? Huh? <laughs> How old are your children, uh, Lois? Oh, I have them all ages. <laughs> you got one around 79? <laughs> what do you mean, all ages? No, what? Uh, 15, 13, 12, 9, 7, 6, 4, and 8 months. You just got under the wire there with that man. <laughs> With a family your size, Lois, uh, how large a hotel do you run? We have four bedrooms. How do you get them all out in the morning, I mean? Do you put them on a conveyor belt? Or... <laughs> <laughs> well, hardly like that. I, well, I have five boys and three girls. And I well, wake the oldest girl up first, and the baby wakes up instead of the oldest girl. And I go around yelling, quarter of seven, quarter of seven. <laughs> Suppose it's eight o'clock. Do you still yell a quarter of seven? <laughs> How do you discipline the youngsters? Oh, they're pretty well behaved most of the time. You never take a swipe at them? Or... <laughs> Only in self-defense. <laughs> Did you have trouble finding names for all these kitties? No, we have a book at home. <laughs> well, uh, Lois, my advice to you is it isn't too late. Throw the book away. Huh? <laughs> How about you, uh, Mr. Weiss? Have you got a definite name for your youngster? Yes, we have. You are? What are you going to name it, huh? Well, we don't know yet. <laughs> That sounds pretty definite, huh? <laughs> sounds like an Indian name, huh? <laughs> what is the kid's name? We don't know yet, Jones. Huh? <laughs> what do you mean you have a definite name, but you don't know yet? Well, you? we don't know what right, it'll Charlie be. Charlie Weiss, what kind of talk is that, huh? <laughs> we don't know what it'll be yet. <laughs> you mean there's a likelihood that it may have wings and fly out the window? <laughs> Which would you prefer, uh, Charlie, a boy or a girl? 
Well, it doesn't make much difference to us as long as it's a baby. <laughs> but why do you want a baby? Huh? Well, what an odd thing to wish for, huh? Well, after we're through here, talk to Mrs. Uh, Moore about it. Maybe she can get it for you wholesale. <laughs> well, it's been very instructive talking to you two, and I hope you'll both be very happy. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for $1,000. To millions of car owners across this nation, the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer stands for two things. The best in new car values, the best in service. Next time you're at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's for service, make it a point to find out about the two truly great new cars he sells. One is the brilliant new DeSoto, the car that's really new inside and out, bringing you more beauty, economy, and comfort. The moment you see the new DeSoto, you'll note its clean, modern design. The graceful new lines that sweep back from its magnificent new full-width front grille to its smart, roomy trunk. It's a thrilling car, this all-new DeSoto. The car that lets you drive without shifting. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell the beautiful new Plymouth. The car that likes to be compared. <laughs> Now, let's see if you two will be high for the night and get the chance at the $1,000. Fenneman, explain the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected mountain peaks of the world as your category. Is that right? That's right. Now here's your first question. You have $20. How much will you risk? $10. All right, where is uh, Mauna Loa found? M-A-U-N-A, capital L-O-A. In the Hawaiian Islands. The Hawaiian Islands is right. We're off to a good start, Groucho. We have $30. All right, remember you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? 25 25 In what country is Popa Catapetal found? In Mexico. Mexico is correct. <laughs> They're climbing, they have $55. You've got $55, and here's your third question. How much of the 55 do you want to try? 50. Where is Mount Everest found? Oh, Everest in Tibet. <laughs> They're really climbing now. They have $105. 105. <coughs> 105. You're going to shoot the whole we'll thing? We'll shoot the work. All right, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Where is Mount Vesuvius? Uh, Mount Vesuvius is in Italy. <laughs> All right. And they wind up with a grand total of $210. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Groucho. Yes. The secret word is still tree. Perhaps the next couple will say it. They might. Just before we went on the air, we selected a housewife from the audience. A good idea. <laughs> Her name is Mrs. Mary Ann Hughes. A splendid notion. And a hypnotist, Mr. Fred Schneider. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. And if you say the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Schneider, you're the hypnotist? Yes, I am. Well, don't look me in the eye when you answer me. <laughs> Somebody has to stay awake around here. <laughs> now, Mrs. Uh, Hughes, uh, Marion Hughes, huh? Marion Hughes and Repented Leisure, isn't that the... Uh, what they say? <laughs> no, I guess not. Huh? You're, you're the housewife? Yes, I am. Well, you're a very attractive housewife. Huh? Thank you. What does your husband do, Mrs. Hughes? Well, he works for food craft. Food craft? Mm -hmm. He sells pickles. <laughs> how, did, how did you meet him? Was he pickled at the time? <laughs> no, he, was, he, he wasn't old enough to be pickled when I met him. How old do you have to be to be pickled? <laughs> well, how, how, how did you meet him? Huh? Well, I met him in a blacksmith shop in Illinois. He was uh, molding a brand for his pony. And he had heated the iron and he had formed the letters M-A-X. And he put them in this big tub of water. Mac? Because they were hot. Uh -huh. Was that the pony's name or your husband? No, that was his name. He was oh. going to brand his pony, Mac. Yeah. What was the pony's name? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Didn't the pony have a name? Well, I didn't ask him. I don't know. <laughs> don't you think it was rather unfair to the p pony to... I I'm sorry. I should have asked the pony. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, there you are with the pony and Max and the... I hadn't noticed my my husband very much. I mean, he put the brand in the tub of water, and a devil's horse came flying by, and what's I... That, what's that? A devil's horse? A devil's horse? Uh-huh. Well, Was there... he getting shoed, too, in the black... <laughs> <laughs> what's a devil's horse? Well, those those huge varmints they have back east. They fly through the air, and they look like a little horse, only they're an insect. And if they bite you, it's just sure death, they say. <laughs> Who, who are they? <laughs> I mean, I've always wanted to track that down, they say. Well, that's, that's what I've heard all my life. And oh. I saw this coming at me, and I didn't like it. Well, I got excited, and I fell over in this tub of water on the top of this brand. <laughs> and uh, I got branded. <laughs> Isn't it a little embarrassing to walk around the bathing beach with Max stamped on you? Huh? No, it really isn't noticeable at all. So I, I still don't see how this culminated in marriage. The mere fact that you were named Max at the time. Matter of fact, all three of you were named Max by this time. But what about you, Eye Strain? I... I... <laughs> What kind of a brand do you carry? Are you, uh, are you married? Yes, I'm married. Some hypnotist. She caught you napping, eh? <laughs> Tell me, Svengali, what are some of the uses? <laughs> what are some of the uses for hypnotism? Well, it's being used a great deal medically today, especially through this last war. Mm -hmm. uh, such things as uh, overcoming and removing phobias, bad habits. Could you hypnotize me and cure me of my insomnia? Mm, yes. Huh? Yes, I think so. Yeah. I doubt it. I don't have insomnia. <laughs> I just can't sleep at night, that's all. <laughs> Could you hypnotize me and cure me of uh, smoking cigars? Well, any ordinary person you could hypnotize. <laughs> Answer my question. Can you hypnotize me? Well, I don't know. I have to try it first. Well, flattery will get you nowhere. <laughs> I guess I'm safe in ordering another box of cigars. <laughs> Can you show me how to hypnotize somebody? Try it on Mrs. Hughes here. Sure, I'd be glad Mrs. To. Hughes, do you mind if he hypnotizes you? Oh, I don't think I like that. <laughs> oh, you don't want to give up smoking cigars either. Huh? <laughs> Well, how do you hypnotize somebody? Uh, uh, could, uh, what's the first step? Well, the first step is to get their attention, have them concentrate on your voice, and then have them think of figures or numbers. As you count, for instance, to five, they'll go deep asleep. Then you begin counting one, tell them to relax and grow heavy, their legs and their arms. <laughs> Two, they're growing very... Are you trying to give me the double whammy? <laughs> well, I wasn't trying very hard. <laughs> Can you hypnotize a whole audience? Uh, a large portion of a whole audience. I did a, a demonstration at the Long Beach Municipal Auditorium several years ago. Mm -hmm. There were about 3,500 people there, and several hundred actually went to sleep. <laughs> ever occur to you that perhaps the show was lousy? <laughs> well, now that everybody's in a trance, let's play you bet your life for a thousand dollars. You run your twenty dollars into more than the other couples and you get the big chance. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners. The expectant father and the mother of eight children won $210. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected American Patriots as your category. Is that right? Now, here's your first question. How much are the 20? Ten. What was the name of the American statesman who said, give me liberty or give me death? Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry is right. <laughs> They're on their way with $30. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Uh, how much of the 30 will you try? 25. 25. What was the name of the soldier and statesman who avenged the Alamo at San Jacinto? Was it Sam Houston? 
Sam Houston is correct. They're on the way now. They have $55. And here's your third question. And how much are the 55 50 What was the name of the patriot in charge of the Boston Tea Party? He also signed the Declaration of Independence. Sam Adams. Samuel Adams is correct. Yeah. Now they have $105. This gal has read a number of books. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are the 105 100 100 What was the name of the woman who supposedly said, Shoot if you must, this old gray head, but spare your country's flag? Jane. Jane? Uh, it wasn't Bessie, no. I, I'm terribly <laughs> sorry. It was Barbara Fritchie. Well, that's tough luck. You bet all your money you wound up broke. I'm going to give you another chance to make some money. Get this one right and you win $10 in cash. Now, think hard. Who was buried in Grant's tomb? Ulysses General Grant is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And I will soon know we'll get the chance at the $1,000 question. Mr. Car Owner, what have you done about the warmer weather that lies ahead? I'm sending my long underwear to storage. <laughs> but what about your car? Is it all set for the miles of pleasant motoring? Can you count on it for smooth operation on vacation and during those summer weekends? Better visit a DeSoto Plymouth dealer real soon. Let his service experts tune up your car. Bring in your violin, too. You see, friends, a car that's been checked by DeSoto Plymouth mechanics will zoom along the road and purr like a cat. May even drink milk. <laughs> so take the man's advice, folks. Bring your car, your violin, and your cat in wherever you see the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. All right, Fenneman, who's ahead in the battle for the $1,000 question? Well, the mother of eight children and the expectant father are ahead with $210. And the secret word is still tree. We invited some boxers and some ballet dancers to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Patty Taylor and Mr. Art Aragon. And here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you see every day. A boxer and a ballet dancer, eh? Um... Which are you, uh... I'm the boxer. You're, you're the boxer? Huh? Uh, wh what is your name? Art Ar Ar Aragon, huh? Yes. Where are you from, Art? I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh. Before we proceed, let me caution you. Uh, on this program, you're liable to hear bells occasionally, Art. Uh, don't come out swinging if you do. Huh? <laughs> what is your fighting weight, uh, Art? Uh, 135, stripped. Did you say strapped or stripped? Huh? <laughs> Now, how much do you weigh with your clothes on? I don't know. I never weigh with my clothes on. <laughs> you must draw a nice crowd when you get weigh at the end. <laughs> Are you married, or haven't you lost a fight yet? Uh? Oh, I'm married, but we don't fight at home. You don't, huh? In the morning, does your wife have to count to nine before you'll get up? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Twinkle Toes? Let's find out something about you. Uh... You're, you're a ballet dancer, huh? Yes. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, what is your name? Fifi? Uh, Patty, huh? <laughs> Patty Taylor. Are, are you married? No, I'm not married. You're not married, huh? For a ballet dancer, apparently you're not on your toes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see you get up on your toes. Huh? In these shoes? Yeah. You need toes for that. Oh, you have toes, huh? About ten. Hmm. Did you say you were about ten? No, 18 now. Well, you just said 10. 10 toes. Oh, 10 toes, but you're 18. Yes. It could be worse, you know. You could be 10 and have 18 toes. Huh? <laughs> I knew a guy like that once. <laughs> he was really two girls, but I don't want to. <laughs> now, one punch. How do you train for a big fight? Well, uh, let's see. I get up at 6.30 in the morning. I go run. I come back and I go to bed. <laughs> Wouldn't it be simpler to just stay there in the first place? <laughs> Once you're up, why don't you stay up? Well, uh, that's not all of the training. I got a little bit more. There is? What else? Well, I get up at 10 o'clock and I eat my breakfast. Then I go back to bed. <laughs> you, uh... You must have a fortune tied up in pajamas. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> huh? 
Then what do you do? Well, I go train the gym for a couple of hours, then I go home and go to bed. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> then I get up at about uh, 5 o'clock and I eat my dinner, go out and take a walk, and I come home and go to bed. You don't, you don't see much of the outside world, <laughs> do you? <laughs> Why do you do all that work? Why is there so much uh, sleeping and jumping up and down? Well, how do you want to get in top shape? Top shape? Well, who wants to be shaped like a top? <laughs> now, what are the first things you have to learn about ballet, Patty? Um, well, the first thing would be the five basic uh, dance positions. And what are the five basic dance positions? One, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> Well, you, you ask a ridiculous question, you get a ridiculous answer. Yeah? <laughs> On the other hand, Aragon only has two positions. <laughs> Vertical and horizontal. <laughs> uh, could you describe the first dance position, Patty? Well, position number one, you have your feet together, your heels together, and your toes pointed outwards and push your heels forward. Well, that sounds pretty simple. So okay. <laughs> now, what are some of the basic steps of the ballet? Oh, there's tourjetés, pirouettes, glissades, assemblées, jetés, and entrechacatres. What time do you stop at Nacogdoches? <laughs> Isn't all that stuff Greek to you, uh, Art? It's French. It's French. <laughs> well, all I can say is vive la France. <laughs> What qualifications are necessary to become a good uh, ballet dancer, Patty? Oh, most of the qualifications are physical. You should have a sturdy body and flexible and a slender figure. And uh, it's good to have long legs, but it isn't necessary. Well, uh... <laughs> the legs should certainly be long enough to reach the floor, Patty. <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you two. Now, let's see how agile you are in the quiz. Now, you beat the other two couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. I can't tell you how much the other two couples won, but Fenneman's off stage to remind our listeners. The mother of eight children and the expectant father are ahead with $210. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You select the sporting terms as your category. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Now, how much you want to bet of the $20? Ten. Talk right out loud in the microphone. Like the fight was over, and you were saying, Hello, Mom. <laughs> a Texas Liga... Uh, is an expression in what sport? Baseball. Baseball is correct. <laughs> On the way, Groucho, with $30. Well, you hit that over the fence. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? 25? 25, 25 20, she said. 25. A lob shot is an expression of what sport? L-O-B. Oh, wait just a moment. A lob. It's a, a tennis. That's right. Tennis is a... <laughs> That's right now. He has $55. You got $55, and here's your third question. How much will you bet? Forty. Uh, riposte, I guess, R-I-P-O-S-T-E, is a maneuver in what sport? How do you spell it? R-I-P-O-S-T-E. You guess. Riposte. <laughs> Football? That's, no. No. Uh, uh, that's a tough question. It's fencing. It's a... They now have $15. That's a shame. All right, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much is the 15 will you try? All of it. All of it. A stymie is an expression of what sport? That's, I'm, that's easy, huh? I'm stymied. <laughs> no, not marble. I'm stymied. You stymied a guy. Gee, that's simple. <laughs> stymied. Stymied. I thought it was marbles. Or... Well, I was thinking of golf, but I guess they have stymies and marbles. But I'd say you're right. <laughs> they wind up with $30. And that means the expectant father and the mother of eight children with $210... Get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. <laughs> to serve you efficiently, to serve you promptly. Those are the aims of every DeSoto Plymouth dealer. No matter what make of car you drive, no matter what sort of attention it needs, a DeSoto Plymouth dealer is well equipped to give your car the very best in service. 
skilled factory trained mechanics, the most modern tools and equipment made, service at a fair price, and prompt, courteous treatment every time. That's the kind of service you get when you drive in at the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. That's the kind of service that means extra miles for your car. From coast to coast, there are more than 3,000 of these DeSoto Plymouth dealers, each with an earnest desire to serve you. And here is the mother of eight and the expectant father, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. Here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please no help in the audience. Here it is. The Panama Canal, one of the great engineering feats of all time, would never have been possible if it weren't for the discovery of the Isthmus of Panama. For $1,000, tell me who discovered the Isthmus of Panama. All right, what is the answer you two have decided upon? Uh, Balboa. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but it was Christopher Columbus on his last voyage to the New World. Well, that's the correct answer, so that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $210 in the quiz. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth... Fifteen hundred dollars. So good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. May is National Car Safety Month. So remember, check your car, check accidents. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is book. B-double-O-K. Oh, you're always saying that. You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! I thought he was still hibernating for the winter. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who's first to try for it? We invited some nightclub hat check girls and some ballpark vendors to the program tonight... And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Betty Schumann and Mr. Al Weissman. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, you beautiful people, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> I mean you, Betty. Yeah? <laughs> and if you say the secret word, you'll split $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. Uh, Weissman. Huh? Oh, I've seen you be at the ballpark. Huh? Thank you. What ballpark do you do your hawking, uh, Gilmore? Huh? Hollywood ballpark. Hollywood, yeah. What kind of items do you sell to the ball fans? Peanuts, Cracker Jacks, soda, popcorn, cushions, programs, novelties. What kind of novelties? Flags, hats, baseballs. You mean if you get hot peanuts, that's a novelty? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's 
tell me, uh, Al, is there much difference between the taste of your cushions and your popcorn? Well, <laughs> in the color. And uh, Betty, uh, uh, Schumann? Uh, Schumann. Schumann, huh? You're a mighty pretty girl, Betty, huh? Thank you. At what nightclub are you employed, Betty? At Ciro's. Yeah. Pretty expensive joint, isn't it? Ciro's isn't a joint. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it's a pretty expensive honky-tonk, isn't it? Ciro's isn't a honky-tonk either. Well, at least we agree it's expensive, don't we? Ben? Maybe for some people. That's true. Some people do find it expensive. <laughs> Only the people who go there. <laughs> what do you do at uh, Ciro's? I'm a combination hat check and cigarette girl. Well, you've got a very nice combination there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell me, uh, uh, Betty, uh, do, do women check their hats in your honky-tonk? Very rarely, mostly coats. What kind? Oh, chinchillas, mink, sable, Persian lamb. You mean you have all those animals in that little room? <laughs> Why do women check those valuable coats? I should think they'd never want to let them out of their sight. Well, if they were to take them to the tables with them and they got up to dance, they'd be left all alone. You mean some skunk could come along and go away with the mink? <laughs> Do people check other things besides uh, hats and coats? Occasionally. Do any of your customers uh, ever check their husbands? No, but I had a man check a toupee once and a woman check a girdle. <laughs> I don't know why a woman would want to check a girdle. If she stayed in a nightclub long enough, she'd be strapped anyway. <laughs> <laughs> why would a woman check a girdle in a nightclub, Betty? I don't know, sir. I didn't ask her. It wasn't any of my business. Well, I consider it mine. Huh? <laughs> the next time a woman checks her girdle in your place, you tell her I want to know why. <laughs> now, how much do you charge for checking a hat? There is no charge. There isn't, eh? <laughs> what do you mean, no charge? In a nightclub, they charge for everything, including the air you're choking in. <laughs> no charge at all? There is no charge. You tip whatever you wish. I see. Whatever tip I want, eh? That's right. Suppose I left an asparagus tip. <laughs> <laughs> now, Frank, put it. Take me out of the ball game. Do you, do you, uh, do you get many tips like uh, Betty gets at Zero's? What, from those baseball fans? <laughs> I have never heard venom expressed in such simple terms. Huh? <laughs> I didn't realize you were so sensitive, Al. I thought perhaps occasionally you got a foul tip. Uh... <laughs> I thought occasionally you got a foul tip, you know. <laughs> now, what kind of a costume do you wear, Betty? And, and make it brief. <laughs> well, it's strapless. It's very short. And we wear long opera hose. Well, that's brief enough, I guess. <laughs> Doesn't an outfit like that make people stare? Well, yes. Mostly the women. You mean the men don't stare? <laughs> yes, but in a different way. <laughs> Naturally. Well, a man wants to see what happens to his hat. That's <laughs> well, you two have taught me a lot about night work. Now, let's see if you're going to be the ones who get the chance at the $1,500 question. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life. When you take your car for service to a DeSoto Plymouth dealers, notice all the special tools and equipment in the shop. The equipment that helps the expert mechanics do better, faster work on your car. Find out also about the two great new cars he sells. There's a brilliant new DeSoto. Truly a magnificent car. Truly a new car, front to back. From its impressive full-width radiator grill to its smart-looking, newly designed rear end. You'll be amazed by all of its new features. You'll enjoy driving it. For DeSoto is the car that lets you drive without shifting. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the beautiful car that likes to be compared. <laughs> Now, 
Let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500. Phantom, and bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You select the drinking songs as your category. Is that right? That's right. right. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to try? Ten. 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 All right, $10. Here's a song everyone should know. Play, Jerry. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 are you going to try? Twenty. $20. What is the name of this song? <laughs> what do you think, kids? There's a tavern in the town. We now have $10. That's a shame. All right, now here's your third question. You have $10. How much are you going to try now? Five. Five dollars? Give me the title of this song. Okay, Jerry. Whip and Poop. The Whip and Poop song. Oh, we're on the way again. They're now at $15. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 15 will you try? All of it. All of it. Shoot the works. Give me the title of this song. Kids. It's Little Brown Jug. I'm going to give you another chance to make some money. Get this one right and you win $10. Now think hard. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Grant. General Grant is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now don't go away. You may get a chance at the big question. Now before I forget it, I want to thank George Rosen and Weekly Variety for the special showmanship citation... They gave us last week. It was a very high honor, and all of us on the show are sincerely grateful. Fenneman, you may proceed. Groucho. Yes. The secret word is still book. It is. Perhaps the next couple will say it. We invited some hospital dietitians to the program, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Shirley Phillips. Her partner is a married man from the audience, Mr. Charlie Harvey, and here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life, and if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Miss uh, Phillips, eh? Shirley Phillips. That's right. For a dietitian, you're a pretty tasty dish. Where are you from, uh, uh, Shirley? Cedars of Lebanon Hospital. Were you, were you born there? No, I'm from re really from San Francisco. Oh. And Mr. Uh, Harvey? Yes, sir. Are you one of the Harvey girls? Uh, <laughs> where, where are you from, Charlie? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. What sort of work do you do? I'm a former grave digger. <laughs> Well, why did you quit? Is everybody dead? <laughs> why, did you, why did you quit, huh? Well, I had a better chance for a job out here, so I came out here. What, what are you doing now, John? I'm a warehouse man now, sir. What are your duties as a warehouse uh, man? Well, I'm filling crates now. Shipping crates. <laughs> Same job, but you're indoors, that's all. <laughs> You, you are married, eh, Charlie? Yes, sir. How did you meet your wife? Well, she was working in Kelly's Oyster House in Philadelphia, reading tea leaves and palms. Reading tea leaves in an oyster house? Huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> what happened? Well, she read my tea leaves in there one time and told me that I was going to marry a widow with two children. And uh, a while back a later, I came back over there and I said, well, I've looked all over town and I can't find a widow with two children. <laughs> She says, well, you've been looking at her every, every time you come into the Kelly's Oyster House. She was a girl. <laughs> well, did you marry her just so you wouldn't make a liar out of her? Is that right? <laughs> why, uh, you're not married, huh, Shirley? No, I'm not. Why, why aren't you married? I'm not ready to get married. How long would it take you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> is, uh, is that the only reason you're not married? <laughs> no. But it seems like every time I meet somebody, either they're not interested in me or I'm not interested in them. But well, don't be discouraged. <laughs> Someday you'll meet a man and neither one of you will be interested in <laughs> And then you'll have something in common and you'll probably get married. Huh? <laughs> Just, uh, what do you do on your job, uh, Miss Phillips? Well, I write diets and I check trays. Do you make up the diet for the entire hospital? No, I don't. Who, who does that, sir? Uh, the head dietitian. The head dietitian? You mean there's a diet just for heads? Huh? <laughs> Has anything unusual ever happened in your kitchen, Shirley, like putting something appetizing on the tray? <laughs> Apparently, there are a lot of ex-patients here tonight. <laughs> well, sometimes uh, for breakfast, we've had some people order cheese blintzes and Finn and Hattie. Cheese blintzes and Finn and Hattie, huh? Well, it's the same plot as Abe's Irish Rose, huh? <laughs> Has anything embarrassing ever happened to you, Charlie? Well, not embarrassing. I wouldn't say embarrassing, but I was well, called... Well, what would you say, huh? <laughs> I was called out of bed at 1 o'clock in the morning to go back to the cemetery. Were you alive at the time? <laughs> well, uh, I was the foreman of the grave diggers, and I was the only one that had the key to the tool house. It seems that uh, some fellow had gone through the... Somebody was eager to get buried? and. <laughs> No, it seems like he had a few too many, and he was walking through the cemetery and fell in an open grave. <laughs> Just looking at you has made me hungry, Shirley. Uh, how much food should I eat in a day? Well, that all depends upon the type of work that you do. Uh, a laborer should have about 3,000 calories, and uh, a white-collar worker about 2,200 calories. Well, I'm a white-collar worker, but my laundry didn't come back. Huh? <laughs> Now, answer my question. How much should I eat, Shirley? Well, what do you do? Well, I can do 85 and the wind's with me. <laughs> I not only can do 85, I am 85. <laughs> now, answer my question, Shirley. How much should I eat? Well, uh, looks like you sit down most of the time, so... <laughs> I'd say about 1,500 calories. <laughs> That's about one meal a day, isn't it? <laughs> Is there any food that's on most diets? Oh, I'd say uh, meat or milk. Mm -hmm. In most cases, you'd say milk is good for the figure? Yes. Have you ever looked at a cow? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been nice talking to you two, and as soon as we're through here, Shirley, you and I will go out and have a banana split and some mashed potatoes. <laughs> now, let's see how well you'll make out in the battle for the $1,500 question. You're going to play your bet your life. Run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners. The nightclub girl and the ballpark vendor lost all their money, so these people have a clear field. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected well-known husbands and wives as your category. Is that right? Yes. Sir. Now, how much of the 20 are you going to try? Ten. David O. Selznick is married to a famous actress. What is her name? Uh, Teresa Wright. Do you agree with that? Uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's Jennifer Jones. Yeah. And they have $10 now. All right. Well, you're down to $10. Anyhow, you're going for $1,500 <laughs> tonight, and that's the big money. Now, how much of the 10 are you going to try? Five. Five. $5. Who is actress Lynn Fontaine married to? Alfred Lund. Alfred Lund is right. <laughs> now they have $15. All right. Now you got $15. Here's your third question. How much of the 15 are you going to try? Ten. Ten. Who is designer Gilbert Adrian married to? Janet uh, Gaynor. Janet Gaynor is right. <laughs> They're climbing. They have $25. Well, uh, you're the Gaynor now. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 25 are you going to try? 20. Who is Lily Pons married to? Um, Andre Castellanos. Andre Castellanos. And they wind up with $45. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And I will soon know against the chance at the $1,500 question. Folks, I don't have to tell you that summer is almost here. No, Fenneman, but you will anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and summer means that the best days to drive your car are right on top of it. I wish you'd drive more carefully. I will, Groucho. 
and more enjoyably, too. Because now's the time when I and thousands like me... I won't comment on that horrible thought. <laughs> now's the time when we smart car owners get set for those fine summer weekends and for vacations by visiting our DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Benjamin, that's your idea of a vacation? Your family visiting a DeSoto Plymouth dealer? Well, the time your car spends at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's, folks, will make every mile you drive this summer more enjoyable. That's true. More economical. Yes, it is. Safer. Yeah, and safer. For expert service and checkup at a fair price, see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. All right, Fenneman, who's leading in the race for the $1,500 question? Well, the dietitian and the married man are ahead with $45. And the secret word is still book. We invited some sets of identical twins to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Janny and Joey Pope. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kiddies, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Identical twins, eh? I'm glad somebody told me. <laughs> Otherwise, I might have accused one of you of being up here twice just to confuse me. <laughs> which one are you? Uh... I'm Janny. You're ja Janny, yeah? Yes. How do you do? And, uh, and which one are you? I'm Joey. You're Joey. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> You're Joey Haha? <laughs> That's an Indian name, huh? <laughs> Is your name Janny Ha Ha? <laughs> I've heard of many Ha Ha, but I don't know. <laughs> you two certainly look alike, and I think you should know each other. Janie, shake hands with Joey, huh? <laughs> I don't anybody move. Stay right where you are. <laughs> now, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Janie, uh, how, how old are you? I'm 20 years old. Joe, you are Joey, huh? Yes. <laughs> Since you're identical twins, you're exactly the same age? Yes, I'm 22. <laughs> You're 22 and she's 20? No, I'm 20 also. <laughs> oh, that's like uh, Joey Ha Ha, huh? <laughs> uh, Janie, are you, are you working? Uh, no, I'm going to UCLA. Uh, and Joey, uh, where do you work? I go to UCLA also. How can your teachers tell you apart? Well, when we're together, they can tell us apart, and when we're not together, they, they can't tell us apart. <laughs> Why do I get involved in things like that? I'm not a kid anymore, and you kids are not helping either. <laughs> Janie, would you mind going over what she just said, slowly and succinctly? <laughs> well, what she means is that when we're separated, uh, they can't tell us apart, but when we're together... It's easier to tell us apart. <laughs> Cocktails, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Joey, does everybody have the same trouble I have? I'm Janny, that's Joey. Oh, this <laughs> Answer my question. Does everybody have my trouble? Well, yes, I guess. What's your trouble? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, Mrs. Anthony, I come from a family... <laughs> I come from a family of five boys. I was standing here five minutes ago minding my own business when <laughs> suddenly I went off my rocker. <laughs> now, Janie, do you have any boyfriends? That's you, Janie, over there. Yes, I have How one. How do your boyfriends tell you apart? Well, uh, they have a lot of trouble telling us apart, but on the other hand, we have trouble telling them apart because they're also identical twins. We all get mixed up. <laughs> Have you ever played any tricks on your boyfriends? Well, for instance, one day uh, I uh, walked into class and uh, this boy ran up to me and said, Joey, and I didn't want to say I was Danny. I said, yes. And he said, can you go out Saturday night? And I said, uh, I'd love to because Joey hadn't made a date for Saturday night. So Joey walked in and I told her and she already made a date, so I had to go out with him. And, <laughs> and so we both happened to end up at the same place and, and I introduced the boy and uh, he said, well, which one is Joey? And we wouldn't tell them and... Uh, they still don't know to this day. I guess it's just as well. <laughs> Have you any experiences like that that you'd care to relate, Joey? That's you, Joey, over here. Well, in high school, we had quite a lot of fun. Uh, Janie was better in geometry, and I was better in history. 
And uh, I uh, flunked a geometry test once, and so I had to make it up after school. So Janie went and took it in my place. <laughs> And so she brought the blue book up to the seat. <laughs> Joey, that did it. You just said book, and since that's the secret word for tonight, you and your partner split $100 in cash, compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> now, where were we uh, when you dented my checkbook? <laughs> Well, I brought the blue book up to the teacher, and as I was handing it to her, we both wear different rings, and I forgot to change my ring, and uh, that's the only way the teacher could tell us apart, and she knew I had a pearl ring, and this girl that brought it up had a ruby ring, so she caught us in the act, but she was very nice about it. <laughs> Just kicked you out of school, huh? <laughs> Well, Joey, uh, you two not only look exactly alike, but you even dress exactly alike. Do you always dress the same? Oh, yes. What about boyfriends? Do you, do you like the same uh, boyfriend? Oh, no. Uh, that, we've been very lucky about it. Yeah. <laughs> Your taste is quite uh, Very much the same yeah. twin. But yeah. the twins are alike, so it doesn't make any difference who goes with who. <laughs> you don't care which one you get, huh? No. No. <laughs> I guess when you've seen one twin, you've seen them all. <laughs> well, it's certainly been nice looking at you girls. Uh, now we're going to see if two heads are better than one. You're going to play your bet your life. You beat the other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. I can't tell you how much the other two couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The dietitian and the husband are ahead with $45. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected animals and birds of fact and fiction as your category. Is that right? Yes. All right, now you have $20. How much are you going to try? $10, Harper. $10. $10. Harper, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Rachel! <laughs> My name happens to be Al Ritz. All right, Janie, that's you over here. No, I'm Joey. Oh, no, not Joey. <laughs> From now on, you're Janie, huh? Eh? And you're one of the Dolly sisters. Okay. Eh? You're going to try $10, and uh, what animal do you associate with Mrs. O'Leary? Cow. A cow is right. <laughs> I'll do it have $30. All right, now you got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? 20 What bird do you associate with Edgar Allan Poe? Uh, raven. raven. The raven is right. They're climbing. We have fifty dollars. All right, you got fifty dollars. Here's your third question. How much are you going to try? Thirty. Thirty, I think. Thirty. All right. What bird do you associate with the ancient mariner? Oh, um, um, uh, wait a minute now. The uh, seagull. Oh, it, it was, was a dove. It was a dove. No, like... it was a gull. <laughs> we just studied that uh, last uh, week. Well. Uh... <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, think, I don't think you had your mind on it at the time, though. It's the albatross. Yes, the they now have $20. Well, you've still got $20. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 20 are you going to try? Oh, all of it. What invisible animal do you associate with Frank Fay in a successful Broadway play? Rabbit. Planet? The rabbit is right. They wind up with $40. And that means the dietitian and the husband with $45 get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. When your car needs attention, it's important to get the very best service you can get. That's why you should always drive in at the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. For there's where you get a top service job every time. Expert factory trained mechanics working with factory approved tools and equipment do better work on your car and they do it faster. That means money in your pocket. Add to this the DeSoto Plymouth dealer's constant desire to treat you fairly and squarely. And you have all the reasons why it will pay you next time your car needs attention. 
to take it to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the dietitian and the husband, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. Here we go for $1,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please no help in the audience. Here it is. Children the world over know about American Indians and early pioneers because of the writings of one of our greatest authors. He wrote The Deerslayer and The Last of the Mohicans, among others. Who was this man? All right, what's the answer you two have decided upon? I think it's James Oliver Kirkwood. No, you had the first name right, but I, I'm sorry, Charlie. It's James Fenimore Cooper, so that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won uh, $45 in the quiz. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you. Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $2,000. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. When driving, look ahead of the vehicle ahead to give yourself more stopping distance. This is George Fenneman, signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is dress. D R E double S. Really? You bet your life! <laughs> the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Rocho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only. Groucho! Why doesn't he give up? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who's first to try for it? We invited some Scotch war brides to the program tonight, along with their husbands. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. and Mrs. Clarence Parsons. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, Scotties, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll win $100 in cash immediately. It's a common word, something you see every day. Uh, what is your name? Nan Parsons, huh? Mm -hmm. You're a Scotch war bride, huh? That's right. Uh, how old are you? Uh, 25. 25? Yes. 25 year old Scotch, huh? <laughs> well, you look smooth and mellow, uh, man. <laughs> and if you ever need a chaser, give me a ring sometime. <laughs> You're the uh, war bride's husband? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Clarence uh, Parsons. Uh, right. uh, how old are you, Clarence? 29, sir. Uh, are you Scotch, too? No, I'm half English and half Irish. Oh. Half and half. Blended, eh? <laughs> Where are you from, Clarence? Tulsa, Oklahoma. And what part of Scotland are you from, uh, Nan? I'm from Wisha. Wisha? Wisha, oh, Scotland. Oh, I know that song. When you wish upon a star. <laughs> Is that the, the theme song of the village? No, no, it isn't. Is it uh, 
For her cheek is like the bloom of the hither, her neck was like the swan. <coughs> her face, it was the fairest I had ever looked upon. Yes, the sure as my name is John. When I get back again to Bonnie Scotland. <laughs> That was one of the things that contributed towards Vaudeville's death. <laughs> how, how long have you two been married? Uh, six years. Nan, how long have you been oh, married? Six years. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Clarence? I'm a manager of uh, Carnation's demonstration store here in Los Angeles. It's Carnation Ice Cream Company. Oh, and what do you demonstrate? The uh, dispensing of ice cream, sundaes, malts. You don't milk any cows in the window, right? No. <laughs> Not recently. What were you doing when you met uh, Butterscotch here? Uh... I was with uh, Lockheed uh, attached to the 8th Air Force in, in Ireland at the time. I was on leave on vacation when I met her. How did you trap this fellow? Uh, and I'm curious about it. Uh, what method does a hail and lassie use? Uh... Oh. <laughs> I uh, think they uh, over usually... Uh... <laughs> well, there must be more to it than that, huh? <laughs> you uh, apparently worked very fast, didn't you, Nan? Uh, I guess so, but ordinarily, uh, why, did, why you did you wait four years? You usually, you usually wait four years? Yes, uh-huh. Why do you wait so long? Oh, Does it take the groom that long before he'll cough up the two bucks for the license? <laughs> To uh, trust them. What's that? It takes that long to trust them. It takes four years before you know whether you can trust them. <laughs> it takes longer than that, kid, but you just don't realize it. <laughs> you don't seem to have much of an accent, Nan. I thought all Scotch girls talked about the broad brick moonlich nicht and nicht. Well, Why I is it you don't have a burr? Not even an errand burr, you know. <laughs> that be treason, make the most of it. Eh? <laughs> I did have a, an accent when I come over at first, but I lost it. You lost it, eh? Well, I'm, I'm sorry you did, because I think it's very charming, this Scotch accent. I'm crazy about it. Are there any other Scotch war brides that you visit occasionally, ma'am? Yes, my sister. Do you have any relatives uh, over here besides your sister? Uh, my in-laws and uh, my uh, closest relatives are overseas in Scotland. Your close relatives are in Scotland, huh? <laughs> going to be crazy about that crack, Nan. <laughs> are, are the Scots really thrifty, Nan, or is that just a kind of a legend, huh? Oh, they're the average Scot, just as thrifty as you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, that certainly answers my question. <laughs> now, Nan, in Scotland, I understand the husband is invariably the boss. Is that true? Do the males always wear the pants in the family? Oh, some, yes, and some have kilts. Well, don't you find it confusing when someone says your slip is showing and uh, you don't know whether the remark is intended for you or your boyfriend? Well, you're both very nice kids and you have every Scottish right to be happy. Huh? Now, let's see if you're going to be the ones who get the chance at the $2,000 question. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life. You'll never have to wonder about what kind of service you'll get when you take your car to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. For well, that's where you always get efficient service, courteous service, service at a fair price. Yes, and that's where you'll find out about two truly great new cars, DeSoto and Plymouth. The brilliant new DeSoto with its sweeping lines is new from its magnificent full-width front grille to its smart-looking newly designed rear end. Inside and out, it's as beautiful a car as you've ever seen. Inside and out, it's as practical a car as you've ever dreamed of. When you drive the new DeSoto, you'll be thrilled by the surge of power at your command. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the beautiful car that's packed with value and ready to prove it. Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $2,000. Phantom, and explain the rules. All right. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. 
Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs with time in the title as your category. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you risk? Ten. Ten dollars. Give me the title of this song. It's Rudy Valley's theme song. My time is your time is right. And they're on their way with $30, Groucho. As Fenneman says, you're on your way with $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? 25 25 What is the name of this song? It has time in the title. Apple Blossom Time. Apple Blossom Time is right. They're climbing. They have $55. You have $55. Here's your third question. How much of the 55 Fifty. Fifty dollars. They get along famously, don't they? <laughs> this song was made famous in the picture Casablanca. What's the title? As time goes by. As time goes by is right. They're really up there now. They have one hundred and five dollars. Man, you had me scared that time. I thought you were going to blow the duke. You got $105. <laughs> Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 105 will you try? All of it. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. You're going to bet $105. What is the title of this song? Okay, Jerry. Time on my hands. Time on my hands is right. And they wind up with $210. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away. You may get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still dress. Dress. Perhaps our next couple will say it. Perhaps. Just before we went on the air, we selected a married man from the studio audience and a hotel housekeeper. And here they are, Mr. Phil Sonis and Mrs. Vera Isoldi. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life, kids. And if you say the secret word, you divide $100 between you. It's a common word. It's something you see every day. A housekeeper and a husband, eh? Mrs. Uh, Vera Isoldi, uh, you're the housekeeper, huh? Yeah. Where are you from originally, uh, Vera? Uh, I was born on 12th Street, New York City. I'll New... call you Vera, huh? That's right. Uh, New York City. That's right, but I'll call you Vera anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you have a charming accent, uh, Vera. What is it? A touch of English. Mr. Phil uh, Sons? Sonnes, yes. Sonnes. So what kind of an accent is, is that you've got? That's huh? California. <laughs> what part of California do you come from originally? Chicago. I was under the impression California only extended as far east as Pennsylvania. <laughs> However, I understand they have an option on New England. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? Uh, I'm a house-to-house salesman for the Kelligan Software Service Operation. <laughs> you sell houses, you say, from house to house? No, I sell soft water. Sounds like a pretty soft job to me. <laughs> Vera, let's get back to you. I'll, I'll return to you in a moment. Here. Don't think you've heard the last of this off water. <laughs> You're a housekeeper, you say, Vera? Uh, yes. Uh, where do you keep house? A flamingo in Nevada. Keep house Las for Vegas a flamingo? Huh? You mean you run a bird cage? <laughs> no. What is a flamingo? It's the most beautiful hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, Las Vegas. Oh, a squirrel cage, huh? <laughs> Sure, you got me all confused. What does this menagerie look like? We have wonderful grounds and a very, very nice casino. Was well, that big casino or little casino? <laughs> what, what is the casino? Well, it's uh, where the guests come to gamble. Wiped out is what we call it. <laughs> Do you get any free shots at the roulette table? There, there? I don't. I don't gamble. I don't understand gambling. That doesn't stop the other people in Las Vegas. <laughs> you say you don't gamble at all? You don't understand it? What's a double six in craps? Boxcar. <laughs> I see. You don't understand gambling, but you understand, you understand railroading. Is that it? <laughs> Now, Vera, has anything unusual ever happened in, in your casino, like somebody winning? <laughs> well, I've passed through sometimes and heard quite a noise because uh, the people have uh, 
won the jackpot. What is the jackpot? Well, it's slot machines, I believe. And You're not so they... certain now, as you are. Well, I don't understand very much about it, but I know some of them have put some money in, and out comes the out comes, out the, comes jackpot, the proprietor. As they anything. say it. <laughs> Out comes the proprietor and fixes the machine so no money will ever come out again. <laughs> where, do you, where do you live in Las Vegas? Well, the management uh, gives me a room and bath. <laughs> I understand the room, but who gives you the bath? <laughs> manager, eh? Well, it's a very old joke, but it's a very old manager, too. No, 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 it's a young manager. A young manager. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, in that case, you take a shower. Eh? Now, Mr. S- uh, Sonnes, uh, you might as well wake up. Do you... Uh, <laughs> tell us about this job you do, this soft water swindle well, that you... Uh... <laughs> it's a matter of going house to house and trying to sell this housewives on the advantages of all the soft water services that they have to available to them. And just what are they? Well, there's mostly Cully Culligan soft water service. That's the one I'm associated with. That's that double with. talk again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> do you help your wife with the housework? Occasionally. How much do you help your wife? About as much as other husbands. <laughs> you ever wonder what those other husbands are doing in your house? Eh? <laughs> How long have you been married, Phil? About ten years now. Now, how'd you meet your wife? Well, again, it gets back to the soft water business. I was a house-to-house What's sales... the name of it? The Culligan Soft Water. <laughs> <laughs> rang the doorbell, and this very irate young lady came to the door. She was very much provoked, and her hair was in shambles. But shortly after I got in through... Shambles? A... In shambles? <laughs> well, is that near there? <laughs> When did she get her hair back, huh? Well, uh, after I got through telling her about my product, she threw her arms around me, kissed me, and we were, the next night we had a date, and I was able to explain to her the advantage of soft water. (laughs) (laughs) Is is that the customary reaction you get? (laughs) If you use the proper approach, it's the customary reaction. Do you need somebody to work the other side of the street? (laughs) Maybe we could combine. I could use hot water across the street, huh? (laughs) Well, Vera, I've made up my mind, and I'm flying to Las Vegas in the morning on my flamingo. But right now, let's see if you can clean up in the battle for the $2,000 question. You've got to work together as a team and run your $20 into more than the other couples to get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Phantom is going to remind our listeners. The Scottish war bride and her husband won $210. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You select the colors of flowers as your category. All right, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Five. <laughs> All right, what color is a gardenia? White. White is correct. <laughs> now they have $25, Groucho. Well, I should say white is right. Now you got $25. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 25? Fifteen. Fifteen dollars. What color is a daffodil? Yellow. That's right. <laughs> They're on the way, they have $40. All right, you've got $40, and here's your third question. How much of the 40 30 $30. What color is a poinsettia? Uh, uh, red. red. Red is correct. <laughs> They're climbing, they have $70 now. All right, you've got $70, and here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 70 Shoot the moon. What color is lilac? Purple. Purple is right. <laughs> and they wind up with $140. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. I will soon know who gets the chance at the $2,000 question. Friends, you'll find a DeSoto Plymouth dealer ready and eager to serve you no matter where you drive. I'm driving my friends a distraction. Like to come along, Fenneman? <laughs> well, I'll go as far as the nearest DeSoto Plymouth dealer, Groucho. I don't want you any further, Fenneman. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where I know there's expert factory trained mechanics who give your car and my car the same watchful care a mother gives a baby. Did you ever try to burp at a soda? <laughs> Expert mechanics work with factory designed and approved tools and equipment to give you the best service job you can get, no matter what the make of your car. 
So visit him the very first thing tomorrow morning. Now, won't that look pretty? All those people driving around in their pajamas. <laughs> All right, Fenneman, who's ahead in the battle for the $2,000 question? Well, the Scottish couple are ahead with $210. And the secret word is still dress. We invited some glass blowers and some movie stuntmen to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected glass blower Richard Seaman and stuntman Bob Morgan. And here they are. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, boys, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Uh, Richard Seaman. Yeah. You're a glass blower, is that right? That's right. Well, blow me down. Where are you from? Kansas City, Missouri. Mr. Uh, Morgan. Uh, Bob Morgan? Uh, you're the, you're the stuntman, huh? Yes, I am. How's tricks? I don't <laughs> do tricks. I do stunts. Well, how's stunts? Huh? <laughs> where, where are you from, Bob? Mount Carmel, Illinois. Pretty sticky place, isn't it? <laughs> well, why do you do your glass blowing? Uh, I don't, Mr. Seaman. At the Glasscraft Company. The Glasscraft, huh? Is there anything like the Chris Craft? Uh, <laughs> no. That's a boat, isn't it? That's a boat, huh? <laughs> well, this is a boat glass blowing. We're talking on a boat noon. <laughs> so what do you do in your job? Well, we take molten glass and on the end of a blow iron and form it into different shapes like uh, perfume bottles or television tubes. What's your most popular item? Uh, the television tubes. They're in most demand right now. Why is that? Well, they're scarce and everybody wants them. Everybody wants them? <laughs> For there. Not people who are employed in radio. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had the hiccups while blowing a light bulb? <laughs> And all you got were percolator tops? And... <laughs> Let's get back to you, stunt man. Just why, what do you do in your job? Well, I double actors and stars in the business. You mean double actors? Whenever they uh, have a hazardous stunt that an actor can't perform or shouldn't perform, why, they call a stunt man to do it. You mean if there's something an actor won't do, they hire you for the job? Uh, yes, that's right. I don't see how you make any money, huh? <laughs> I didn't think there was anything an actor wouldn't do. <laughs> now, how much would you charge me to jump off a hundred-foot cliff? Oh, about ten dollars a foot. Well, that's cheap enough. All you have is two feet, huh? <laughs> now, how much would you charge me to jump off a, off a curb? Uh, I don't jump from curbs. Well, how do you get across the street? <laughs> How do you manage a double for a star and keep the audience from uh, getting wise? Well, they generally select you because of your physical resemblance to the star. They keep our back to the camera, profile, so forth, and keep our face out of the camera as much as possible. In many cases, the audience has their back to the picture, too, you know. <laughs> our listeners would like to know how you do some of these stunts. For example, say you jump off a 500-foot cliff. Uh, how do you manage it? Well, ordinarily, they will... Uh, Put a parallel about ten feet below the top of the cliff, and a stuntman will jump to the parallel, and they'll cut away to a long shot of a dummy flying through space and landing. Do they ever get confused? <laughs> Not yet. Now, glass blower, are you getting the jitters listening to all this mayhem? No, I have. How did you get to be a glass blower? Well, did you start off to school one morning, twirling your books, and say, "When I grow up, I'm going to be a glass blower, <laughs> and nobody's going to stop me"? That was the last thing I ever thought it would be. Just looking for a job and... <laughs> well, you went someplace where they were blowing glass? And, uh, yes. Uh... And they asked you if you had any experience? And you lied, huh? That's right. <laughs> How do you blow glass? Do you chew up all milk bottles and puffs? <laughs> no, we take uh, molten glass and... Uh, we make different uh, articles out of it. After you get it on the end of this uh, blowpipe, I... About four or five feet long, while you can blow it into different shapes. Or can you can you uh, control the uh, shape of the? Oh yes, any, things to come. Any in? shape you want. You can. Huh? Mm -hmm. Well, I know what shape I want, but I don't know whether you can do it. Huh? <laughs> now, what happens after the glass is shaped? Uh, we anneal it. I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> it's annealed. It's it's anneal. I thought it was a television tube. <laughs> no, it's anneal. A n n e a l. You don't have to spell it. All the kids are in bed by now. Right? <laughs> what has an eel got to do with all this? Is it, is it a live eel? No, it's not an eel. It's an eel. <laughs> you know, we can be sued by Abbott and Costello. But... 
I think this guy's blown his top. I better humor him. What, what is the eel doing in your blowpipe? Well, by that, I mean, a kneel, you take the glass over to a furnace and you take the strains and stress out of it. And that's a kneel. <laughs> Boy, you're a whiz at clarifying things. <laughs> All right, now let's see how a glass blower and a stunt man make out and you bet your life. You beat the other couples and you'll get a chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. I can't tell you how much the other two couples won, but Fenneman's off stage to remind our listeners. The Scottish war bride and her husband are still ahead with $210. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You select the tools of the trade as your category. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to try? How much do we got? You have twenty dollars. Oh, you oh, may ten. wind up with twenty. Ten dollars. All right. Who uh, who would use a mortar and a pestle? Uh, either a chemist or a scientist. Well, I think that's right. It's a pharmacist, but I think you had it right. Huh? <laughs> Run away with thirty dollars, Bracho. All right. You're running along. You got thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for two thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty will you try? Twenty. Twenty dollars. Who would use a stick and a press? A printer for one thing. That's right, a printer is right. That's <laughs> right, we have $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50? Talk it up now. <laughs> 25. How much? 25. $25. Who would use a transit and a plumb bob? Uh, a surveyor. A surveyor is correct. <laughs> now they have $75. All right, $75 is your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 75? $50. $50. Who would use a scalpel and a suture? Doctor. A doctor or a surgeon is right. <laughs> they wind up with $125. And that means the Scotch war bride and her husband with $210 get the chance to DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Courteous service at a price that's fair. That's the creed of every DeSoto Plymouth dealer. When you drive in for service at the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer, you can count on this. Expert mechanics working with factory-approved tools and equipment will give your car the careful attention you want it to have. They'll do a better job on your car in a shorter time, and that means money in your pocket. It also means a car that will give you faithful, economical service for miles and miles. So next time your car needs service, stop in and get acquainted with a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. And here's the Scotch war bride and her husband, the winning couple, <laughs> all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question, Groucho. All right, kids, here's a chance to make you the two richest people in Scotland. Here we go for $2,000. <laughs> I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. President Truman recently made a cross-country trip to participate in a dedication at a great new dam in the Columbia River. For $2,000, what is the name of this important dam? Okay, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Grand Coulee. Ah, that's right. <laughs> that's right, you win $2,000. You had the right answer, so you win $2,000. What are you going to do with all that money? I'd She's like... going to do it. Oh. <laughs> what I'd are you going like... to do with it, uh, I'd like man? to... Uh... To give uh, my husband's mother some of it, help her out. She's been so wonderful to me. Couldn't you help her out for less money than that? <laughs> All right, you win $2,000 plus $210 in the quiz. You really cleaned up tonight. Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Your life 
is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $1,000. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. from the National Safety Council. Don't wait for a rainy day to check your windshield wipers. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is tree. T R E E. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! That's logical. This is National Pickle Week. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who's first to try for it? Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected the mother of a large family and an expectant father. And here they are... Mrs. Lois Mayer and Mr. Charles Weiss meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Ma, Lois Ma, you're the mother of a large family? Yes, I am. Pretty young-looking gal, aren't you? <laughs> how, how large is your family? I have eight children. You have eight children? Eight chil children. Well, you certainly don't look it. Huh? <laughs> and uh, Mr. Weiss? You're the expectant father? Yes, sir. You don't look at it either. <laughs> you, do you have any other children, Mr. Weiss? Uh, no, sir. This is my first. Oh, your first, eh? <laughs> well, you better rest a while. The first one is the hardest. <laughs> where, where are you from, Mr. Weiss? Uh, I was born in New Haven, Connecticut, raised in Newport, Rhode Island, moved to New York, and then came out here about a year and a half ago. Who was after you? <laughs> And, uh, Mrs. Ma, what does your husband do for a living, uh, Mrs. Ma? Well, we just started catering not so long ago. To each other? <laughs> well, where are you from, little mother? I'm from Leona Mines, Virginia, and oh. I lived in Cincinnati, Ohio, after I was married, and then we came to California. Is that the customary route? Uh... <laughs> now, tell us something about this catering you mentioned. What sort of a business is it, specifically? Uh... Well... Uh, we put on dinners for parties. Any particular kind of food or just... Uh... Whatever you choose. I see. Well, I choose the food after I eat it, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you charge for a dinner like that? It's according to what you're going to eat. You're pretty cagey, aren't you, huh? <laughs> well, uh, approximately, uh, Lois... Oh, anywhere from a dollar and a half to two and a half a plate. And, uh, suppose you put something on the plate. How much extra? I'll just call you Charlie, huh? Not you, Mrs. Moore. I mean you, uh... What sort of work do you do, Charlie? I'm a sales representative for Admiral... for America's number one television set, Admiral. <laughs> Did you just make that up? Uh, <laughs> did you get me one wholesale? <laughs> Come around. 
Does anybody ever buy anything retail anymore? Huh? <laughs> How old are your children, uh, Lois? Oh, I have them all ages. <laughs> you got one around 79? <laughs> what do you mean, all ages? No, what? Oh, um, 15, 13, 12, 9, 7, 6, 4, and 8 months. You just got under the wire there with that man. <laughs> the family your size, Lois, uh, how large a hotel do you run? We oh, yeah, have four bedrooms. How do you get them all out in the morning, I mean? Do you put them on a conveyor belt? Or... <laughs> <laughs> well, hardly like that. I, well, I have five boys and three girls. And I well, wake the oldest girl up first, and the baby wakes up instead of the oldest girl. And I go around yelling, quarter of seven, quarter of seven. Suppose it's eight o'clock. Do you still yell a quarter of seven? <laughs> How do you discipline the youngsters? Oh, they're pretty well behaved most of the time. You never when... take a swipe at them? <laughs> Only in self-defense. <laughs> Did you have trouble finding names for all these kitties? No, we have a book at home. <laughs> well, uh, Lois, my advice to you is it isn't too late. Throw the book away. Huh? <laughs> How about you, uh, Mr. Weiss? Have you got a definite name for your youngster? Yes, we have. You are? What are you going to name it, huh? Uh, we don't know yet. <laughs> That sounds pretty definite, huh? <laughs> sounds like an Indian name, huh? <laughs> what is the kid's name? We don't know yet, Jones. Huh? <laughs> what do you mean you have a definite name, but you don't know yet? Why? Well, we don't know what Why, it'll Charlie be. Charlie Weiss, what kind of talk is that, huh? We don't know what it'll be yet. <laughs> you mean there's a likelihood that it may have wings and fly out the window? <laughs> Which would you prefer, uh, Charlie, a boy or a girl? Well, it doesn't make much difference to us as long as it's a baby. <laughs> Why do you want a baby? <laughs> well, what an odd thing to wish for, huh? <laughs> Well, after we're through here, talk to Mrs. Uh, Moore about it. Maybe she can get it for you wholesale. <laughs> Well, it's been very instructive talking to you two, and I hope you'll both be very happy. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for $1,000. To millions of car owners across this nation, the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer stands for two things. The best in new car values, the best in service. Next time you're at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's for service, make it a point to find out about the two truly great new cars he sells. One is the brilliant new DeSoto, the car that's really new inside and out, bringing you more beauty, economy, and comfort. The moment you see the new DeSoto, you'll note its clean, modern design, the graceful new lines that sweep back from its magnificent new full-width front grille to its smart, roomy trunk. It's a thrilling car, this all-new DeSoto. The car that lets you drive without shifting. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell the beautiful new Plymouth, the car that likes to be compared. Now let's see if you two will be high for the night and get the chance at the $1,000. Fenneman, explain the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected mountain peaks of the world as your category. Is that right? That's right. Now here's your first question. You have $20. How much will you risk? $10. All right. Where is uh, Mauna Loa found? M-A-U-N-A, capital L-O-A. In the Hawaiian Islands. The Hawaiian Islands is right. Off to a good start, Groucho. They have $30. All right. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? 25 25 In what country is Popa Catapetal found? 
In Mexico. Mexico is correct. <laughs> They're climbing. They have $55. You've got $55, and here's your third question. How much of the 55 do you want to try? 50 Where is Mount Everest found? Oh, Everest in Tibet. Really climbing now. They have $105. 105. <clears throat> 105. You're going to shoot the whole we'll thing? We'll shoot the work. All right. Here's your last chance to beat the other couple. Where is Mount Vesuvius? Uh, Mount Vesuvius is in Italy. <laughs> All right. And they wind up with a grand total of $210. <laughs> Good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Groucho? Yes. The secret word is still tree. Perhaps the next couple will say it. They might. Just before we went on the air, we selected a housewife from the audience. A good idea. <laughs> Her name is Mrs. Mary Ann Hughes. A splendid notion. And a hypnotist, Mr. Fred Schneider. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. And if you say the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Schneider, you're the hypnotist? Yes, I am. Well, don't look me in the eye when you answer me. <laughs> Somebody has to stay awake around here. <laughs> now, Mrs. Uh, Hughes, uh, Marion Hughes, huh? Marion Hughes and Repentant Leisure, isn't that the... Uh, that the... <laughs> no, I guess not. Huh? You're, you're the housewife? Yes, I am. Well, you're a very attractive housewife. Huh? Thank you. What does your husband do, Mrs. Hughes? Well, he works for food craft. Food craft? Mm -hmm. He sells pickles. <laughs> How did, how did you meet him? Was he pickled at the time? No, he, was, he, he wasn't old enough to be pickled when I met him. How old do you have to be to be pickled? <laughs> well, how, how, how did you meet him? Huh? Well, I met him in a blacksmith shop in Illinois. He was uh, molding a brand for his pony, and he had heated the iron, and he had formed the letters M-A-X, and he put them in this big tub of water. Max? Because they were hot. Uh -huh. Was that the pony's name or your husband? No, that was his name. He was oh. going to brand his pony, Max. What was the pony's name? I don't know. I don't... <laughs> didn't the pony have a name? Well, I didn't ask him. I don't know. Don't you think it was rather unfair to the p pony to... I I'm sorry. I should have asked the pony. <laughs> well, there you are with the pony and Max and the... I hadn't noticed my, my husband very much. I mean, he put the brand in the tub of water... And a devil's horse came flying by, and what's I... That, what's that? A devil's horse? A devil's horse? Uh-huh. Well, Was there... he getting shoed, too, in the black... <laughs> what's a devil's horse? Well, those those huge varmints they have back east. They fly through the air, and they look like a little horse, only they're an insect. And if they bite you, it's just sure death, they say. <laughs> who, who are they? <laughs> I mean, I've always wanted to track that down, they say... <laughs> what I've heard all my life, and oh. I saw this coming at me, and I didn't like it. Well, I got excited, and I fell over in this tub of water on the top of this brand, and uh, I got branded. Isn't it a little embarrassing to walk around the bathing beach with Max stamped on you? Huh? No, it really isn't noticeable at all. So I, I still don't see how this culminated in marriage. The mere fact that you were named Max at the time. Matter of fact, all three of you were named Max by this time. But what about you, Eye Strain? I... I... <laughs> What kind of a brand do you carry? Are you, uh, are you married? Yes, I'm married. Some hypnotist. She caught you napping, eh? <laughs> Tell me, Svengali, what are some of the uses? <laughs> what are some of the uses for hypnotism? Well, it's being used a great deal medically today, especially through this last war. Mm -hmm. uh, such things as uh, overcoming and removing phobias, bad habits. Could you hypnotize me and cure me of my insomnia? Mm, yes. Huh? Yes, I think so. Yeah. I doubt it. I don't have insomnia. <laughs> I just can't sleep at night, that's all. <laughs> Could you hypnotize me and cure me of uh, smoking cigars? 
Well, any ordinary person you could hypnotize. <laughs> Answer my question. Can you hypnotize me? Huh? Well, I don't know. I have to try it first. Well, flattery will get you nowhere. <laughs> I'm safe in ordering another box of cigars. <laughs> Can you show me how to hypnotize somebody? Try it on Mrs. Hughes here. Huh? Sure, I'd be glad Mrs. To. Hughes, do you mind if he hypnotizes you? Oh, I don't think I like that. <laughs> oh, you don't want to give up smoking cigars either. Huh? <laughs> well, how do you hypnotize somebody? What's the first step? Well, the first step is to get their attention, have them concentrate on your voice, and then have them think of figures or numbers. As you count, for instance, to five, they'll go deep asleep. Then you begin counting one, tell them to relax and grow heavy, their legs and their arms. <laughs> Two, they're growing very... Are you trying sleepy. to give me the double whammy here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't trying very hard. <laughs> Can you hypnotize a whole audience? Uh, a large portion of a whole audience. I did a, a demonstration at the Long Beach Municipal Auditorium several years ago. Mm -hmm. There were about 3,500 people there, and several hundred actually went to sleep. occur to you that perhaps the show was lousy? <laughs> well, now that everybody's in a trance, let's play You Bet Your Life for a thousand dollars. You run your twenty dollars into more than the other couples and you get the big chance. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's offstage remind our listeners. The expectant father and the mother of eight children won two hundred ten dollars. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected American Patriots as your category. Is that right? Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20? Yeah. What was the name of the American statesman who said, give me liberty or give me death? Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry is right. <laughs> They're on their way with $30. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Uh, how much of the 30 will you try? 25. 25. What was the name of the soldier and statesman who avenged the Alamo at San Jacinto? Was it Sam Houston? Sam Houston is correct. <laughs> on the way now, we have $55. And here's your third question, and how much are the 55? 50. What was the name of the patriot in charge of the Boston Tea Party? He also signed the Declaration of Independence. Sam Adams. Samuel Adams is correct. <laughs> now they have $105. This gal has read a number of books. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are the 105? 100. 100. What was the name of the woman who supposedly said, shoot if you must, this old gray head, but spare your country's flag? Jane. Jane. Um, wasn't Bessie? No. I, I'm terribly <laughs> sorry. It was Barbara Fritchie. Well, that's tough luck. You bet all your money you wound up broke. I'm going to give you another chance to make some money. Get this one right, and you win $10 in cash. Now, think hard. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Grant. General Grant, Grant is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers, and I will soon know who gets the chance at the $1,000 question. Mr. Car Owner, what have you done about the warmer weather that lies ahead? I'm sending my long underwear to storage. But what about your car? Is it all set for the miles of pleasant motoring? Can you count on it for smooth operation on vacation and during those summer weekends? Better visit a DeSoto Plymouth dealer real soon. Let his service experts tune up your car. Bring in your violin, too. You see, friends, a car that's been checked by DeSoto Plymouth mechanics will zoom along the road and purr like a cat. May even drink milk. So take the man's advice, folks. Bring your car, your violin, and your cat in wherever you see the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. All right, Fenneman, who's ahead in the battle for the $1,000 question? Well, the mother of eight children and the expectant father are ahead with $210. And the secret word is still tree. We invited some boxers and some ballet dancers to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Patty Taylor and Mr. Art Aragon. And here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. 
And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you see every day. A boxer and a ballet dancer, eh? Um, which are you? Uh... I'm the boxer. You're, you're the boxer? Huh? Uh, wh- what is your name? Art Ar- Ar- Aragon, eh? Yeah. Where are you from, Art? I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh. Before we proceed, let me caution you. Uh, on this program, you're liable to hear bells occasionally, Art. Uh, don't come out swinging if you do. Huh? <laughs> what is your fighting weight, uh, Art? Uh, 135, stripped. Did you say strapped or stripped? Eh? <laughs> now, how much do you weigh with your clothes on? I don't know. I never weigh with my clothes on. <laughs> you must draw a nice crowd when you get way at the end. <laughs> Are you married, or haven't you lost a fight yet? Uh... Oh, I'm married, but we don't fight at home. You don't, huh? In the morning, does your wife have to count to nine before you'll get up? Huh? <laughs> what about you, Twinkle Toes? Let's find out something about you. <laughs> you're, you're a ballet dancer, huh? Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, what is your name? Fifi? Uh, Patty, huh? <laughs> Patty Taylor. Are, are you married? No, I'm not married. You're not married, huh? For a ballet dancer, apparently you're not on your toes. Uh. <laughs> Let's see you get up on your toes. Uh. In these shoes? Yeah. You'd need toes for that. How uh, you have toes, eh? Uh. About ten. Did you say you were about ten? No, eighteen now. Well, you just said ten. Uh. Ten toes. Oh, ten toes, but you're eighteen. Uh. Yes. Could be worse, you know. You could be ten and have eighteen toes. Uh. <laughs> I knew a guy like that once. <laughs> It was really two girls, but I don't want to. <laughs> now, one punch. How do you train for a big fight? Well, uh, let's see. I get up at 6.30 in the morning. I go run. I come back and I go to bed. <laughs> Wouldn't it be simpler to just stay there in the first place? <laughs> Once you're up, why don't you stay up? <laughs> well, uh, that's not all of the training. I got a little bit more. There is? What else? Well, I get up at 10 o'clock and I eat my breakfast. Then I go back to bed. <laughs> you, uh, you must have a fortune tied up in pajamas. <laughs> What do you do? Well, I go train the gym for a couple of hours, then I go home and go to bed. <laughs> That's true. Then I get up at about uh, five o'clock and I eat my dinner, go out and take a walk, and I come home and go to bed. You don't you don't see much of the outside world. <laughs> do you? Why do you do all that work? Why is there so much uh, sleeping and jumping up and down? Well, how do you want to get in top shape? Top shape. Well, who wants to be shaped like a top? <laughs> Now, what are the first things you have to learn about ballet, Patty? Um, well, the first thing would be the five basic uh, dance positions. And what are the five basic dance positions? One, two, three, four, and five. Well, you, you ask a ridiculous question, you get a ridiculous answer. Right? <laughs> On the other hand, Aragon only has two positions. <laughs> Vertical and horizontal. Right? <laughs> uh, could you describe the first dance position, Patty? Well, position number one, you have your feet together, your heels together, and your toes pointed outwards and push your heels forward. Well, that sounds pretty simple. So <laughs> now, what are some of the basic steps of the ballet? Oh, there's tour jetés, pirouettes, glissades, assemblées, jetés, and entrechacatres. What time do you stop at Nacogdoches? <laughs> Isn't all that stuff Greek to you, uh, Art? It's French. It's French. <laughs> well, all I can say is, vive la France! <laughs> What qualifications are necessary to become a good uh, ballet dancer? 
Patty? Oh, most of the qualifications are physical. You should have a sturdy body and flexible and a slender figure. And uh, it's good to have long legs, but it isn't necessary. Well, uh... <laughs> the legs should certainly be long enough to reach the floor, Patty. <laughs> Well, it's been very interesting talking to you two. Now, let's see how agile you are in the quiz. Now, you beat the other two couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. I can't tell you how much the other two couples won, but Fenneman's off stage to remind our listeners. The mother of eight children and the expectant father are ahead with $210. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You select the sporting terms as your category. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Now, how much you want to bet of the $20? Ten. Talk right out loud into Ten. the microphone. Like the fight was over and you were saying, hello, Mom. <laughs> a Texas leaguer uh, is an expression in what sport? Baseball. Baseball is correct. <laughs> On the way, Groucho, was $30. Well, you hit that over the fence. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you try? 25 25 she said. 25 A lob shot is an expression of what sport? L-O-B. Oh, wait just a moment. A lob. It's a, a tennis. That's right. Tennis is <laughs> Now he has $55. You got $55, and here's your third question. How much will you bet? Forty. Uh, Ripost, I guess, R-I-P-O-S-T-E, is a maneuver in what sport? How do you spell it? R-I-P-O-S-T-E. You guess. Ripost. Football? No. No. Uh, uh, that's a tough question. It's fencing. It's a... They now have $15. That's a shame. All right, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much is the 15 will you try? All of it. All of it. A stymie is an expression of what sport? That's, I'm, that's easy, huh? I'm stymied. <laughs> no, not my, but I'm stymied. You stymied a guy. Gee, that's simple. <laughs> stymied. Stymied. I thought it was marbles. Or... Well, I was thinking of golf, but I guess they have stymies and marbles. But I'd say you're right. <laughs> they wind up with $30. And that means the expectant father and the mother of eight children with $210 get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. <laughs> to serve you efficiently, to serve you promptly. Those are the aims of every DeSoto Plymouth dealer. No matter what make of car you drive, no matter what sort of attention it needs, a DeSoto Plymouth dealer is well equipped to give your car the very best in service. Skilled, factory-trained mechanics, the most modern tools and equipment made, service at a fair price, and prompt, courteous treatment every time. That's the kind of service you get when you drive in at the sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. That's the kind of service that means extra miles for your car. From coast to coast, there are more than 3,000 of these DeSoto Plymouth dealers, each with an earnest desire to serve you. And here is the mother of eight and the expectant father, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. Here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. The Panama Canal, one of the great engineering feats of all time, would never have been possible if it weren't for the discovery of the Isthmus of Panama. For $1,000, tell me who discovered the Isthmus of Panama. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Uh, Balboa. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but it was Christopher Columbus on his last voyage to the New World. Well, that's the correct answer, so that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $210 in the quiz. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. B. 
Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You'll Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $1,500. So good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. May is National Car Safety Month. So remember, check your car, check accidents. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is hand. H-A-N-D. Hand? Oh, that's me, huh? You bet your life. <laughs> the National Broadcasting Company presents Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz show transcribed from Hollywood. Groucho meets our first contestants in just one minute. Henderson, Olson, and me. We're, We're the NBC, NBC Bandstand Three. We sing, and we play, and we keep things gay on NBC Bandstand every day. That's Henderson, Olson, and me. A me. The latest hit tunes. And old favorites, too. Games, gags, and guest stars to entertain you. Olson sings the songs you love, we found. Henderson makes the big band sound. We're live. We're fun. The blues will run. From Henderson, Olson, and me. Enjoy 90 wonderful minutes of music and fun with Skitch Henderson and the band of stars, Dorothy Olson and me, Bert Parks, MC. Live on NBC Bandstand weekday mornings over most of these stations. From Henderson, Olson, and me. We're the NBC Bandstand 3. From Henderson, Olson, and me. We're the NBC Bandstand Here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with the chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. George, who's first? Groucho, I'd like you to meet Angeline Papadakis and Joseph Interlegi. So both you in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you each take home an extra $50. It's a common word, something you see every day. Angelina Papadakis and Joseph Interlegi, yeah? Papadakis and Interlegi, it sounds like an intersection in Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I can just hear a young couple saying, I'll meet you at 3 o'clock in the morning at Papadakis and Interlegi. <laughs> and, then, and, and be sure to bring your switchblade. <laughs> no matter. My name is Joseph Interlegi. I N T E R L I G G I. I you can spell it too. Can you spell it? No, I'm sorry, I can't. Angela, why are you sorry that you can't spell it? You ought to be very happy about it. Angelina, you're taller than uh, Joe, so I'll start with you. I assume Papadakis is a Greek name, is that That's right? That's right. So I'll dispense with that question. Now, what part of Guatemala are you from? <laughs> I'm from Enid, Oklahoma. Are you married? Yes, I'm married. Oh, how did you meet Mr. Papadakis? Well, I met him at a Greek baptism. And my husband was, my future husband, was a godfather. So he, um, he was spending all his time with me from then on. Uh -huh. And my father-in-law wanted him back in San Pedro to tend to business. And not in Los Angeles, so he says, hurry up and marry her and get her over with. <laughs> so what business is your father-in-law in? Well, he has five liquor stores. <laughs> and uh, who runs these stores? Oh, my husband. Well, would you have married him if he'd had five grocery stores? 
Well, I would have married him if he had five banks. <laughs> well, that I can understand. <laughs> Angeline, what keeps you busy? Uh, do you work around the five liquor stores, or do you confine your activities to uh, housework? Well, I have a husband and three boys to take care of in my house. But in the evening, I, I go to university, to, and I take extension courses. You take care of three kids all day, and you still have strength enough to go to night school? What's yeah. the reason for the evening courses? Are you getting ready with a good sideline in case prohibition comes back? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to work for a, a BA and then a master's and eventually a PhD. Mm -hmm. That's very impressive. What do you want to be, finally, ultimately? Ultimately? Eventually. A writer. A writer. Huh? All the writers I know would rather be in the liquor business. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Mr. Interleggi. Uh, My name is no, Mr. Interleggi, Mr. Grachima. My name is Joseph Interleggi. I-N-T-E-R-L-I-G-G-I. -G -G -I. You know, I'm getting so that I can spell it now, too. <laughs> well, let's find out some facts about you. Are you of Italian descent? My father and mother are. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, where were you born? Emin, Indian. Where? Emin, Indian. What is it like in Amman, Indiana? I don't know, but because I was young. Well, is it anything like it is in Muncie, Indiana? Well, I can't remember because I go away from uh, Amman, Indiana to Cleveland, Ohio when I was uh, four years old. You went to Cleveland when you were four years That's old? That's right. Where'd you go, for the World Series? No, from Cleveland, Ohio, Daddy and Mama take me to Sicily. Oh. How long were you in Italy? Sixteen years. Oh. I'm from Sicily. Sicily. C-I... <laughs> You spell Sicily. Well, C I. So far, you're spelling Chicago. <laughs> you Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Can please? S I C. S I C. I N T E R L E G G R. <laughs> Sissy Interleggi, yeah? Now, what did you do in Sicily, Joe? Did you have a job there? Yes, I have. What did you do? Well, when I was the age eight years old, when, like I say, when Daddy take me to Sicily, I used to take my shoes off and socks and mix the clay on my, on my feet and uh, start to mix the clay. And the age 11 years old, already I was a profession to make 1,000 brick every day. You made 1,000 brick every day? That's right. And when I was at the age of 14 years old, I have a seven men under me. <laughs> were, you in a, were you working in a cemetery then? <laughs> I used to work in my farm. That's home. an old joke, Joe, but uh, it's okay. that's a very grave situation, having to say. This is on a very intellectual plane, this conversation, and I hate to change it for one as sordid as money, but I know you want to get a crack at the big money, so we're going to play You Bet Your Life. And remember, Joe, your partners. Yes, She's a college girl, so <laughs> before you answer, you discuss it with the lady over there. All right. Yeah. All right, you selected facts about presidents. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. What musical composition is traditionally played upon the entrance of the president? Talk it over. Talk it over. Hail the chief. Hail to the chief is right. That's one right. Now then, what president was originally a very successful mining engineer? Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover is right. That's two right. What president was nicknamed Old Hickory? Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is right. Get the next one right, and you have $1,000. Oh, boy! <laughs> <laughs> That's not a very dignified attitude for a mother. <laughs> in, in what city was George Washington inaugurated? New York. New York City. There's no use fooling around with us. She knows all the answers. And you got four in a row, so you won $1,000. <laughs> Well, you won $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and at the back end of the show and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at 10000 And no matter what you decide to do, Thank thanks you. for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Out of it, actually. In just a moment, our second couple will join Groucho to play You Bet Your Life. Thanks for your carefulness. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bob Hope speaking for the National Safety Council, and I just want to say thanks for the memory of winters you have spent without an accident. Your eyes and mind are never blind for all your charismas, and we thank you so much. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you drive with extra care in the wintertime, take a bow and take a special tip from the National Safety Council. Poor visibility is a great winter driving hazard. 
Keep your lights, windshield wiper, blades and defroster in good condition. Keep the icicles off your eyelashes and see your way through the winter safely. Thanks to your carefulness, you'll keep your winter free of traffic tragedies. And it pays you so much. Mitzi Lynn and Ralph Barry are waiting to talk to you now, so Fortune Glenn, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mitzi Lynn and Ralph Barry, is that right? Where are you from, Mitzi? Well, I was born in Trenton, New Jersey, and I lived part of my life in uh, Long Branch, New Jersey, which is a summer resort, mm -hmm. then came to California with my parents, and now I'm living in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, are you married? Yes, I am. How long have you been married? Eleven years. Eleven years? You don't look as though you've been married a day more than two years. Do you realize that? <laughs> you don't mean that. No, I don't. Occasionally I tell little white lies up here. <laughs> well, you're a very young-looking woman, anyhow. What does your husband do? Well, during the week he's a barber, but on the weekends he plays drums. In the barbershop? No. He plays drums on weekends, huh? Yes. I guess on weekends it's a relief to look at some skin that doesn't have hair on it. <laughs> Take your time. We have no place to go. <laughs> Mr. Barry, there's something familiar about you. You're somebody I should know. Let's see. Barry, Barry. Let's see. Is it straw? No. Huckle? No. Goose? No. Raz? I'm Wild Red Barry, the professional wrestler. <laughs> Wild Red Barry? I never heard of him. I know who you are, Red. I knew it all the time. I've never seen you wrestle, but I'd like to go to one of your rehearsals sometime. <laughs> Red, I'm going to ask you a straightforward question, and I expect a crooked answer. Now tell me, is wrestling really fixed? No. I knew I'd get the truth out of you. <laughs> now, Red, if you can throw these other wrestlers around like you throw the bull, you should be the greatest wrestler in the world. <laughs> Have you ever thought of that? I am the greatest wrestler in all the world. You are? On what basis do you make this modest claim? Have you ever won anything of importance? I mean, in the ring. Gracio, for your information and edification, I was world's light heavyweight wrestling champion three times. I was light junior heavyweight champion of the world one time. I was champion of all Texas. <laughs> I was Central States heavyweight wrestling champion and Heart of America heavyweight wrestling champion. Is that sufficient evidence? How do you account for your success, Red? You don't seem to be particularly large and muscular. How can you beat all these gorillas? Uh, are you better at memorizing the script? <laughs> because of my brilliant intellect. Because I cause my opponents to proceed into stated bewilderment. Genuine uncertainty and disturbing sense of inferiority and on the horns of dilemma, and I paralyze, pulverize, terrorize, demoralize, eradicate, destroy, demolish, ostracize, and drive him to the sodden depth of despair and right to the mat. You just talk him to death, is that it? <laughs> have you had any mishaps in the ring? I mean, have you ever had any bad bruises? I have had my ribs broke, my collarbone, my shoulders. My hands are broke up. My teeth knocked off. Had enough. Wait a minute. You said the secret word. Okay, Ducky. Up in the up in the bird nest. You said the secret word, so you win fifty dollars. With the conversation you were making there, you were bound to say the secret word. You <laughs> said every other word. Now tell us what happened to you. What have you uh, broken in the ring? I've had my ribs broke, my collarbone, my shoulders. My hands are broken up, my teeth knocked off. I've had enough stitches in this eye here to make Grandma a quilt. And I had my neck broke and my back broken. Well, Red, now I remember where I've seen you. You were hanging up in a meat market. <laughs> now, how can you have bro all these bro broken bones and still say that you're in good physical shape? Why? Because medical authorities tell me at Mayo Clinic and Research Kansas City, where I go through every year, that I'm a specimen of physical perfection. Yeah. And I'm just like a 16-year-old boy. I have the proclivity and the endurance, the stamina, 
an orderly mind, tiger sharp brain, and split second accuracy in all the attributes that it takes to be in physical condition. This is what the doctor told oh, you at yes, Mayo? He, he told me that. He says, you have it, boy. And how soon after that did they take the doctor away? <laughs> Right, you know, I'm astonished that a man of, of action uh, can be so articulate. How do you account for this uh, streak of Demosthenes here? Due to the fact, uh, Groucho, the cause of so much misunderstanding in this old world is the fact that people are not able to express themselves adequately, accurately, and convincingly, and expressively. So I've uh, made it a habit and took plenty of time out so that people can understand just exactly what I have to say, so that even the most stupid dolt among them may understand what I have to say. So why are you looking at me that way? <laughs> Fred, I would never suspect that you had such a sensitive nature. Do you have any examples of your tender side that yes. you care to give us? Got you. I'm glad you said that. Well, because no one will ever know when that little black drop will fall from an angel's trembling pen and stain that final unfinished paragraph in the book of life. So if with pleasure you are viewing any work a man is doing, if you like him or you love him, let him know it. Do not withhold your approbation until that pastor makes oration and he lies with snow white lilies o'er his brow. For it makes no difference how loud you shout it. He'll never care about it, or he'll never know how many teardrops that you shed. So if you feel there's some praise due him, now's the time to shoot it to him, because he cannot read his tombstone when he's dead. If you don't get the Pulitzer Award for poetry this year... There's something screwy going on at Columbia University. Brad, that was simply beautiful. There isn't a dry eye in the house. In fact, I'm afraid to look. I wouldn't be surprised if nobody's left in the house. <laughs> Hello out there! Well, this has been a most enlightening evening. It's one of the most enlightening evenings I've spent in years. I'm still in the dark, but it sure has been enlightening. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. Will you throw Mr. Fenneman over your shoulder? <laughs> No, he wouldn't do that. I'm glad. All right, now, you selected folk tones and old-time favorites. The orchestra will play the tune. You tell me the name of it. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Tell me this name uh, of this old favorite. Play, Jack. <laughs> with me, Henry? I'd be glad, but my name is Groucho. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, wait for the wagon. Oh. You have one wrong now. Don't get the next one wrong or the game is over. No, I know you play this. Uh, what is it, Jack? That's close enough. Tending on the old campground. On the attending tonight on the old campground. You now have one right again. You know what can happen if he goes out of here broke? He's liable to throw you over her shoulder. You? Not me. No, I'm sitting down. Huh? All right, what is the name of this old song? Play it, Jack. Oh, where has my little dog gone? I don't know, but that's the right answer. You have two right now. Now, what is this one? Hit it, Jack. Over the morning? Oh, the bear jumped over the bear. The bear went over the mountain. That's a dirty trick, giving him a, a song with two names. I've never heard it called Bear Went Over the Mountain. I've always heard we won't go, won't go home until morning. So it's always one of the Bear Went Over the Mountain, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the name of this old favorite, Professor. My old Kentucky home. No, I'm sorry. That's where the bear went over the mountain. <laughs> I think you got four in a row, so you win $1,000. Oh, oh. Give her a big kiss, right? Oh. Well, that's the Wait a minute. Now, just a moment. You won $1,000. You can keep it and quit a bear went over the mountain. And... <laughs> or you can come back at the, end, at the end of the show and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at $10,000. So go over there and sit down on his lap and think about it. And no matter what you decide to do, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. We'll find out if any of our contestants will try for $10,000 in just a moment.
In Robin Hood's day, that was the sound that used to get the news around. Yes, the men of Sherwood Forest used to shoot message-bearing arrows from relay point to relay point until everybody got the news. Well, a message can travel fairly rapidly for a short distance via bow and arrow, but the system wouldn't work very well for news that had to travel many miles to its destination. Keeping up with events is even more important for us today than it was for Robin Hood's men, harassed as they were by the sheriff. And fortunately, we have the fastest means of communication ever devised. We have radio. And NBC Radio, with news on the hour, keeps us posted on worldwide events wherever they happen, as soon as they happen. In our day and age, this is the sound that really gets the news around. This is Leon Pearson inviting you to keep up with the news on the hour all day, every day, over most of these NBC stations. Agracho, uh, Mitzi Lynn, and Wild Red Barry have decided to keep their winnings, but our first couple wants to tell us their decision, so here they are, Mrs. Papadakis and Joseph Interlegi. Would you come in, please? Interlegi. Uh, you're right. No, Interlegi. Interlegi. I-N-T-E-R-L-I-G-G-I. -G -G -I. All right. Now, you won $1,000. If you decide to try for the 10 and you fail, you wind up with a total of 500 What are you going to do? You can quit. Well, you can go ahead. I'd like to continue. You want to continue? What about you, Joe? We'll continue. All right. Now, get together and you pick a number from 1 to 10 and then spin the wheel. If any number besides the one you pick comes up, this question is worth two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. However, if your number comes up, this question is worth ten thousand. What number do you want? Five. Is that all right with you? Five. Well, I like eight. Well, I'll take thirteen. <laughs> we'll give you eight. No. You want eight? Eight. Eight. All right. Eight. All right. Give it Fine. a time. <laughs> number was eight and it came up four, so this question is worth two thousand dollars. You ready? During World War II, a family of five brothers, all saving on the same destroyer, were lost when their ship went down in a battle in the Pacific. For two thousand dollars, what was the family name of these five celebrated Navy heroes? <laughs> Dindalaggy, what is the uh, answer? Geez, I don't know, Mr. Bratton. What's the answer? I saw the movie, too. Well, I don't know. It's the Sullivans. Sullivan boys. That's right. I'm sorry you missed it, but you wind up with a total of 500. That isn't too bad. Congratulations, and thanks for being Thank with you. us. <laughs> You Bet Your Life is transcribed in Hollywood. Produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman reminding you to tune in again next week, same time, same station, to hear the one, the only, Groucho. For the housewife, the wage earner, investors big and small, commentary of vital interest on pocketbook news tonight on most of these NBC stations.